Mm -hmm. Making such random noises. God. It was like it was silence for like ten seconds, and my, my, my eyes directly went to my router. My router is like, am I dead? Is it gone? <laughs> oh my god, that was interesting. You went from router to router. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if if that's because you're conflicted about the. I don't know if that's it's European versus American or British versus American or what. I, I have no idea. I, in German, I say router. So <laughs> it's uh, it's it's, ra it's a it's a router. It's, wait, no, sorry, a router. It's a router. <laughs> <laughs> it's a router. That, that that for me, it's a router. router. A router and a router are two different things in the U.S. Oh my god. Well, I mean, isn't isn't like there's. It's it's router though, right? Like root router is how it's no route. I just because you find the route, <laughs> follow the route. Well, no, but but what I'm saying is like, you know how it's called Route 66? It's it's not yeah, I was about to route say, yeah, 66. it's regional. Route 66. Yeah. No one says Route 66. However, we like here wow, is everything weird. is route except for when you're speaking of specifically Route 66. <laughs> it's thing I, it's an, um, it's the like, only thing I can think of is router router, which is like is used for unclogging like sinks routes for uh routing the enemy yeah I don't know route. Route is you route. also have those yeah which so, is r-r-u-t so it's a big so, mess the english language but a plant is affixed to the ground with roots and it has roots yeah, and that's, that's right with two o's it's true yeah <laughs> wait I, I well there's a couple <laughs> words like that right pronounced the same yeah. but different spellings and vice versa mm. wombo like wombo yeah or edgy the hedgy. <laughs> like you might you might tout something, but if you toot, you should apologize. Why isn't, is Rudy's voice so yeah. damn deep? I can't but help that. Everyone sounds deep. My voice. Change it. No, what? Me, oh Fringy. Me. I'm well, not often accused of having a deep voice. Every time Fringy wakes up, he has like an illness for an hour. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll be fine. Don't yeah. worry. Um uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Isn't isn't it so weird that in Spooktober we had what we considered a really good show and a really bad show? Yeah. That is spooky. That that's scary. I'd say so. It's like I'm I'm terrified. Jesus had something bones. to do with it. He sent it from the heavens. Oh no! Oh no! Not the mosquito. There he here. is, <laughs> taking his route. <laughs> Always when I'm live. The only time it hadn't happened when it was live was when I was in a call with rags. I think that's like the the ultimate thing. It has to be when someone can hear it from the other side. I never ever hear it otherwise. Those mosquitoes just hate that I'm streaming. Which, by the way, someone said, holy shit, how am I going to catch up on your other 15 streams this month? It's like, yeah, I know. So many well, things happening. This is what separates the real fans from the pretenders. We actually yeah. uh, played Jackbox Party Pack 7 last night, and oh my god, Fringy, you're gonna love uh, <laughs> two of the games in there when you eventually get yeah. to play them. Oh, what? Why? The well, I don't even, I don't even want to spoil great. it. I would rather you experience yeah, them when we get around to it. Okay. Uh, one Just of them the, though was so the bad. As soon as it started, we all decided to quit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were done with it the second it had explained itself. We were like, the oh, one God, that was man. that seemed to have the most work and effort put into it and the most production value, we just were like, nope, we're not even doing this. It hurt to even think about it. If I can't draw a penis fighting a butthole, then <laughs> yeah. honestly, I just don't even want to bother. What is the point? I underestimate okay. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, lots of fun. The highlight for me probably was anti duck woman versus duckman. That was There's no a fairy night of golf at the end. <laughs> yes, uh, we went through all the nightmare maps. I, th I think that um, like that that one Jackbox party pack. It'll be fun to like put at the end of an EFAB or something every once in a while. Huh. Just just cause, especially if there's like at least five people still here or something. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe six is needed. I wouldn't. I'd need to check. Um, but yes, uh, some people wanted us to acknowledge again. Uh, uh, Movie Bob has been released from his ex escapist contract. He's no longer working with them, I guess. He has escaped uh, the escapist. Uh, which, oh, I the way, they, him to, they would not allow him to stay. Um, someone had it's, it's like linked it in the Discord. There's like this new channel trailer or something that came out relatively recently, or at least something that's like um, it's Wait, Yahtzee what? talking about the benefits you can get from. Uh, I think being a Patreon for for, for um, 
escapist and there, there's a lot of different things it was like oh you, you know you can get videos early you can get um, access to like the, the badges and stuff and one of the things was um you can get access to our uh our q and a's and it showed uh yahtzee answering them in like a in like a video uh, vlog format and then it showed jack packard doing it and then it showed movie bob doing it and i was like uh <laughs> mm. <laughs> i think he's gone <laughs> Get Jay Longbone on stream, Mola. She was she was with us yesterday. She streamed yesterday, yeah. yeah. That that lady got a life, right? She can't be dragged onto every single EFAB. Um, yeah, she got asked many times to provide wet farts. We did. <laughs> uh, maybe it's because we're talking about the boys. That kind of makes sense. But uh, we did talk to her a bit. Because that in... shows a wet fart, yeah. Yeah, she she wasn't a fan of season two. In fact, I think she took up um, a stake against it quite early as well, to people's dismay. Um. Because, yeah, we'll be talking about it today. And I don't know what the general sentiment around it is right now. I think it's like 50-50. Yeah, but yeah I hear, I hear I a bunch is, of both. I think that, uh, my, my, uh, you know, the, people people turning on it at a very specific point. Um, yes. As opposed to we much, much earlier when it was bad. But, you yeah. know. Hopefully <laughs> today we we'll be able that. to prove uh, from a, <coughs> that a it was always standpoint bad. that it and was that garbage. Was, yeah. But... I will. It's totally understandable why that particular moment uh, <laughs> pissed everyone off. Okay, which one was it? Especially a country club. Um, it was the opening one with with Episode Fat seven. Neil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny. Lots of people call him Fat Neil. So many people have no idea what that reference is, and I'm just like, oh yeah, I should. Yeah, okay, we shouldn't call him that. You guys should. Oh uh, yeah. They're just confused. That that whole scene is just a complete <laughs> like. Nothing works. It <laughs> it's it's incredibly stupid. Um, some people who watched uh, Rags and I stream about the finale will have heard a bunch of the criticisms we're going to be laying out today, but still mm -hmm. plenty left. I thought before we start, though, uh, we could talk a little bit about uh, the haunting of Bly Manor. We haven't actually said anything really on EFAP about it yet. Um, yeah. So the way we did it was we got six people together and we, we, we watched The Haunting of Hill House. Um, with half of us having seen it before and the other half not having seen all of it. And um, that might get pressed into something at some point. In fact, you four, three, have seen uh, the the sort of initial render of, of what it can look like. And um, I'm just trying to work on getting the rest done. And the, 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 it'll, it'll be a new format for EFAT, potentially. We'll have to see what you guys think in terms of whether or not it goes forward. Um, but the idea is that it's like a companion piece to to you watching the show yourself, because I when we did the Mulan one, right? There was there was some there was some comments there saying that, that they'd like to see us watch more stuff that's good. But the the obvious problem that we've raised before is that we end up not saying anything at all when the yeah, episode's going. Just, yeah, you when a go. show's good, you want to <laughs> enjoy it and absorb it, and and, and you want to really focus. And, and when so, shit's bad, you could just just poop all over it, and it's fun, and you can laugh at it. Ha ha. Yeah, and, and and so the format is essentially just a super cut of the episode and then us discussing how much we liked it. <coughs> and so it's not going to be quite as entertaining as something like Batwoman, but we'll see what you guys think when uh, I pop that out. We ended up doing it for Bly Manor too, and um, we, we were relatively happy with Bly Manor. Rel like it was oh rel yeah, <laughs> we were, um, not to undersell it, but <laughs> Bly Manor is... Um... Like it phenomenally may well be one good. of the greatest seasons yeah. of television ever made. Yeah, I, probably my favorite lightly, show that way. I've ever seen. Yep, it was pretty uh, phenomenal. I mean, yeah, and because uh, the more I've thought about it, the ratio of how good it is to the number of episodes. <laughs> um, yeah, um, and, and, and it we, seems we would have watched it all in one single sitting, but we, yeah. some of us had like jobs and stuff. Yeah. But we we Maybe. almost did. We would have. Yeah. And I and that that's how good it was. Yeah, it's um it's incredible. Um it, well, I just saw somebody in chat say Blind Manor was pretty mad, like a four out of ten. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> it's like I don't think we've ever rated a show as close to a ten out of ten. To a ten, but that show is as close mm -hmm. to a ten as I think you can get. Yeah, can I uh, ask about the uh the haunting? Is it um is it like more scary as in like genuine making the person feel terror or is it more just jump scares so i would say that um the the way to look because they're both they're both horror shows but like hill house is more traditional horror in the sense of you know spooky ghosts kind of looming around and 
Uh, whereas I think Bly Manor, it definitely has that angle, but it leans a lot more into a, a more like ex, uh, I guess existential kind of horror or like a psych, kind you know, of more psychological aspects of it. Yeah, I would yeah. say psychological. Um, um it's very yeah. very few jump scares then on those. Very few. It's the fewest I've seen yes. in, in an entire season yeah. of a horror I, show. I, I just I hate There's pleasantly jump scares. Few. They're so cheap. They just I don't know. There's yeah, um, there's not there's not none, but I'm more than happy with the couple that there are in terms of the context of how they're delivered. The uh the the thing with the how much we're praising the show though is is absolutely a hot take. It might be hotter than the boys being bad uh, for season mm -hmm. two. A lot it's of people insane. think Bly Manor is very bad. A lot of people think it's very boring. A lot of people uh, considered it just it's just a slog. Painful. It's and, been um, painful. And yeah, the the six of us, the other two, by the way, were uh, Jay and Theo. We were we were pretty blown away with how well written it was. Uh, yes. So <laughs> that'll I don't know what will happen with that eventually, but um, our entire experience watching it was recorded, and I'm going to try and chop it up so that there's something on the channel mm -hmm. in relation to that because I don't really want to say too much I'd rather people go and try and check it out yeah um but if uh, if you don't like it you're wrong <laughs> Bly Manor had a 62 from critics on Metacritic and 50 from user user reviews oh, oh fucking oh, hell I can't believe it they probably this, these are people Mandalorian's 93 <laughs> <laughs> this, oh, hey, it, it Mandalorian hurts. is great you you stop that it's so good great as in a great my nerves oh um, Bly Manor's not gonna get an Emmy, is it? <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's not not enjoyed, which is a shame. But um, like I said, I, I I always hope that Mike Flanagan keeps on keeping on with 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 his style. He's really fucking yeah. good, and I hope this doesn't dissuade him. There's a lot of crazy fucking articles that were written uh, post what like two episodes of watching. It's like this show is what it says it is. <laughs> There, there was a shocking amount of reviews that were just explicitly, this show isn't scary enough for me, one out of ten. That it, yeah. it made us upset. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. Come on, Bola, be objective. What do you think I'm wasn't, doing? <laughs> yeah. Wasn't there are. a review that said that the show isn't scary because ghosts aren't real? That, <laughs> that was an article. Yeah. Yeah. Article. yeah. Like, no kidding. That's... <laughs> like we kind, we we kind of you know that Go, you know that and like ghosts other don't things even... like superheroes aren't real either. And God, I hate to hate to see your reaction when you find out about Star Wars and Jedi. Mando isn't great. I'm still not sure it's as bad as you say. Except Episode Six. Why wouldn't you go for Four? Yeah, Four is generally four is the, the one disaster that's episode. So, yeah, Four is a disaster. Four is one of the worst episodes of TV I've ever seen ever on anything. Which one was that? The, that that's, was the that's one the, where they're defending the town against giant ATAT. Oh yeah, that was. Oh, I think that that's was the pretty... last episode I've seen. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I actually didn't. I didn't mind the Mandalorian. I thought it was okay. Um, I mean, there was lots of, lots of like plot convenience and some other stupidity that like, why didn't why didn't uh, Mando just go and tear apart all of the uh the jawas it's like they really don't stand a chance against them like he could have easily kind of just wiped them all out but then he's like no they have a big big tractor thing he's like okay that's not really an issue but well, um you don't think so the tractor no i mean he could have easily killed like many of them and he just wasn't well, he shooting tried, at but he them. failed i don't know <laughs> like i, I think if he actually job. tried he could have like, he wasn't really trying <laughs> no, I, I think I think it was meant to make them look like more of a threat than they really are. I, I don't I don't believe for even a moment that the Jawas with their little shock sticks would stand a chance against him. They they did a pretty good job. Man, I'm just spotting hot takes everywhere. Someone someone said Tron Legacy is better than Hill House or Bly Bell. What? Someone said. <laughs> um, like this, no idea as good as Hill House. This is someone else said a, baff a baffled. Why is it not as good? Just someone tell me why. Was it a, ba a baffled that EFAP even like Hill Please. House as much as they do? What the hell's going on? <laughs> it's so weird. I, I feel topsy turvy land. It is topsy turvy land. I guess we gotta get long form in depth reviews out. Yes. That's the only way to do it. Just give me one reason that doesn't say it's boring, not scary. Please. Please. Because well, remember, what bores you is pretty subjective. 
like well yeah because the response is oh it didn't bore me well now we're at a standstill yeah. or <laughs> it's not scary well it scared me um also yeah i guess uh, i should say welcome to efap 105 that's our intro <laughs> okay that's hey. yeah i remembered <laughs> Go um why matter got Please. some we need more shows like that oh absolutely fuck <laughs> <laughs> hopefully like i said hopefully our recording supercut thing can 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 help but uh yeah we have been S chat just chill out for a second you're distracting me with the hot takes <laughs> so, um our new new guest for the for the day who had popped on for i think like a half hour on a previous episode it was like 15 um, minutes yeah yeah uh before um do you I, I guess you want to go by blame the controller and then blame just, as the name just... right blame or just btc is what everybody refers to me as there you go uh welcome welcome yeah i believe you, you've you've seen a decent chunk of the show before right uh, once or twice here and there um you uh you weren't happy with <laughs> jay just said the boy <laughs> season two is boring and not scary <laughs> <laughs> um scary bad <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Blame, you, you, you weren't a huge fan of The Boys Season 2, huh? You didn't, didn't think it was too good? No, I'm, the thing is, is I, I really enjoyed the first season. I was incredibly hyped for the second season. but And, and I knew that they were going to do woke stuff. Like, it was, it's inevitable. But I was hoping that it would be at least kind of, like, balanced. Or, at a minimum, that it would be entertaining. But it wasn't. It was, like, just so blunt and on the nose and... And it just, after like the first episode, it just went downhill. And then I started noticing that there was lots of, lots of issues with it. Uh, particularly the, the final episode is just atrocious. Uh, but lots of like plot convenience, contrivance, jetpacking, and just other, other ridiculousness. And it, I, I think it has to do with the fact that the, the show creators were making their own stuff up they weren't adapting anything from the comics anymore instead like they were making almost everything up their self and you could tell that there was a significant drop in the quality um i mean that that could be tied to adaptation it. I, I, is i would yeah. assume that they're also really incompetent because a lot of their ideas could have just been done better as opposed to them losing a um a structure to not necessarily copy but like uh, adapt uh, but yeah, I, I've heard lots of different things about the comic. I, I have equally heard that the comics are way better really and the bad. comics are terrible. Yeah, yeah, I've heard a lot of conflicting stuff about the comics, and we don't generally worry See, too much about that um, mm -hmm. here. We're, we're we don't take adaptation arguments really all that not, not seriously. I guess <laughs> uh, things should stand on their own. Uh, but we hear a lot of mix, but that's kind of comics in general. We hear a lot of positive stuff about comic versions of things and a lot of negative stuff about comic versions of things. Yeah, we see yeah. different people arguing back and forth with their sort of... There's a, lot, there's a lot of fighting about which which ones are what things and how good they are and what, what things we count, what things we don't, which writer, which era, and it's always just like, we're always like, ah, fucking... Uh, yeah. <laughs> moving away. Yeah, I I mean, I definitely think that it should be able to stand on its own. I am familiar with the comics. Like, I know all of the, the spoilers and the twists and everything that happens in the comics. So, I mean, th at, there is there's a level of comparison just for the simple fact uh, that, like, what they did with Black Noir in the show is so, so much worse than what they did in the comics. Like, uh, and I don't... I don't want to go too much. Well, we, into we, uh, we can talk about it because we've we've told our audience before. Because I so you know from... you guys know what happens with Black Noir. Then yeah, we've seen um, I think we've seen the uh, season two. Yeah, yeah, we've seen right. it. Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, like what happens comics. in the comics with Black Noir? Yeah, oh, well, uh, okay. Well, so may as well say it right now. So everyone in chat, this is going to have all spoilers for everything. The boys, spoilers. okay? Comics and show. It's all coming out. Be afraid. In case that wasn't already obvious. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So, from what I heard, I think it was Nerdrotic that told me, or, or someone else, I, I can't remember, but uh, the idea is that Black Noir is secretly, like, people don't know, but he's a, he's a clone of Homelander, and he ends up being the one Correct. that has to, he's like the contingency plan, and he ends up killing Homelander. Yes, so in the comic, all the super bad stuff is actually done by Black Noir, and, like, it's this massive, massive twist, and it, it works really well in the comics, I think. 
And what did we get in the show? We got an allergy to tree nuts. It's <laughs> like it's like um... when you compare, you know, again, I I do agree that they need to stand on their own. But when I when I compare the two, it's like, OK, well, one is significantly worse than the other. Um, also, people keep asking, what is jetpacking? You remember in Game of Thrones how Littlefinger and Jon Snow had jetpacks and every episode they would like be at a completely different location? You'd be like fast or traveling. Even... Yeah, yeah, basically fast traveling. Yeah. But one of the one of the jokes on the on the Free Folk uh, Reddit was um, his jetpack. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I meant by jetpacking. Like in one of the episodes with Butcher, he has to go and visit his mother, so he's just like, boop, he's there. And then he talks to her, and then, like, right at the end of that scene, he's back at the hideout. It's like, what? Come on. So, like, they just, they make the characters fast travel a lot more, uh, particularly with, um, again, episode eight. Yeah. Maeve does, like, <laughs> <laughs> serious, like, oh, Wait, man. So what did you say? Get, That's you know, not she's... inherently bad. It's like, the idea is that it's an impossibility. I mean, yeah. she's even immune to the whole you can't fast travel when enemies are nearby. She can even do that, so. <laughs> kind of OP, but okay. She is, this is mod. <laughs> she's admin. Um, but anyways. So, so, yeah. Oh, wait, before we get started, I suppose, uh, Blame. What do you, who, what do you think's better? Christmas or Halloween? Ooh. Christmas. There you go. Fair enough. Well, you're on the way to get out of here. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's half of us think Christmas is better. So more than half. Half, half of us well, are more right than half now. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> me and Mel can take you. In fairness, me and Mel look like the most psychopathic out of the avatars, so <laughs> <laughs> we can take you. It, uh, it's a shame that you can't see the whole picture from Avatar because I'm I'm about to punch a little clown boy in there. <laughs> of so all the targets, it's uh, like, like little red hair on the on the, on the bottom. You can see like a, kind of a face. <laughs> But yeah, I was uh, I was thinking, and you you're all gonna know where I'm going with this, except maybe blame. Uh, we start with one of the last scenes from the season one finale before we jump into season two. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to do you want to guess which one I'm talking about, Freaky? <laughs> uh, so, so um, it, when we watched uh, season one, um, one of the things that was immediately I think we knew was going to be a problem was that um, Homelander blew up a baby. No. Um, no, butcher, <laughs> yes. butcher, butcher. Uh, yes. and the, uh, not Homelander. Uh, yeah, Billy blows up a baby, and my immediate thing is like, oh, I think the show's gonna forget about it, um, because my god, like it kind of it kind of <laughs> yeah, destroys to, Billy. To do it in a mechanical sense, right? So Billy's plan is, I'm gonna <laughs> threaten to kill Stillwell, um, or just straight up kill her in front of Homelander as my form of revenge, right? Or a way to get, it's just a way to get to him. Um, but of course that's fucked up when Homelander comes down the stairs holding a baby. They have a reaction shot from Butcher where he's just like, fuck. Like, this can and, yeah. and it allows, it's good, it allows the scene to happen where they all can have a discussion, but the big, the big subversion is that he blows Stillwell's head off himself. It's like, oh. Because of course they've got a whole plotline going. All good stuff. Except when Billy's like, well then, fuck it, and blows himself up, but, <laughs> but it's like, but the baby was still in the room, and season two is like, it's fine because the baby's alive. It's like, no, that's yeah, not fine. Alive. Yeah, can, they, I, they don't... can I point out, though, that we see Butcher ig uh, ignite the explosives, and then it takes, what, maybe a second or so? So Homelander has to get Butcher and get the baby and get far enough away in the matter of about a second. Yeah, may Wouldn't I say that, like this kill mean... the baby from oh, simple... absolutely Whiplash would destroy both of them. But can I just say <laughs> this is probably one of the most impressive and heroic things Homelander has done in the show, and it's really amazing to me that they had that happen. Um, yeah, can anyone give me like... a reason why Homelander would have rescued the baby? Yeah, I, no, he, he there's have. no reason. And I, no I think reason. the only reason he did was so that people uh, who've already oh, said it in chat right dead. now that um hey the baby didn't die though yeah that's, yeah, that's, that's why that doesn't change anything that's guys. why the writers I mean, had homelander save the baby was because butcher doesn't have baby blood on his hands but the yeah, thing is though, he made the choice do it. it doesn't matter yeah. if the baby died or not so the problem is he chose to do it uh yeah which, before we even get to the events of season two makes it really hard to be like man i love billy butcher the baby killer. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
uh, kind of everyone's destroyed at this point. I can't think of any one character well, we'll that I actually sort of want to we'll, we'll, be we'll okay. Get it's fine. We'll get. We got to start nice and soft, right? You see, you got to start. We'll, we'll just we'll just inject some things into people along the way, and then we'll come down hard once we get to the further episodes. Uh, but so this is before season two even happens, and I'd say it's a major issue. Now, our prediction before watching season two was that they would have a throwaway line that the baby survived, but that they would never address the fact that but but Butcher chose to blow up a baby. We were, I would say, 99% right. Because in, yeah. um, in there's a scene where they say, like, you know, Butcher, you killed Stillwell, which, by the way, we'll get to all of these things, but why would they believe a news report from Vought? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Either way, yeah. Uh, Butcher says she was dead before I blew her up or whatever, and then Huey's like, that's supposed to make it okay? Which, for one, it's like, well... I mean, kinda. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that means I didn't kill but her. But two, it's like, wait, Huey, do you know that there was a baby in the room? Nobody, nobody's <laughs> calling him out for this. It's like, oh damn, I think the show's choosing to forget it. Yeah. Which is a real kinda shame. Kind of like they forgot about uh, A Train's heart condition later on. Oh, like I said, <laughs> we're gonna try and go chronological. That one's a fucking insult. <laughs> that one's. There's lots of them, but um. Yeah, I was just because like I think season two starts off with saying like yeah, baby was found seventeen miles away. It's like, uh huh. <laughs> and it's just no way. Of... There would be a liquid baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just frustrating because it's like you do realize this doesn't exonerate Butcher, right? Like it, it doesn't. Well, this he's, is the thing. It makes it difficult yeah. to even talk about him as a character now because it's like so. Um, he's good. He's. Like, I guess he's like, he's almost, he's worse than the Punisher. He doesn't even seem to have a code. He just, mm -hmm. he'll, he, he wants revenge and he'll do anything he can to get to it. Uh, yeah. Even killing babies, Nerd which Roddick. makes it really hard to root for him. Yeah, Nerd Roddick talks about this quite a bit with, um, the Butcher in the show is like fairy godmother compared to the Butcher in the comic. Like, he um, is, he is Punisher times a hundred in the comic. He's super super hardcore well, it seems the like they've let portions of that leak in but by accident i, I don't know because i would make it a huge deal that he's like in order to hurt homelander i'll even kill a baby like that's a huge character thing that's yeah, not that it's just never even brought like, up it's yeah. not yeah. even in the, they in the comics in the comics butcher kills his friends like people that he considers <laughs> to be friends he just straight up murders them so like with no remorse at all so, like, what? there's there's no comparison. Look at this. He's a self-professed killer since the episode two of season one. I don't see the issue. It's uh, a baby. It's, it's a baby. <laughs> yeah, soldiers yeah. are killers, but that doesn't mean they go around blowing up babies indiscriminately without any warrior care or without repercussions and people without anyone holding them fight. account for it. For killing a baby, like other bad people say that you're even worse when you yeah, kill again baby in prison. The show forgets. Homelander protected the baby. Do you understand well, yeah, how crazy this is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell me the mechanism by which this occurred in the show. Tell me how Homelander was able to, in a split oh, yeah. second, save not only the baby, but also Butcher. Without breaking their spines. <laughs> <laughs> Liquefying them. <laughs> um, yeah, so Butcher in the show is um, often framed as, like, cool badass and also the one that we root for. But then at the same time, they just have these little moments where we're like, wow, that's, uh, hmm. Not sure he's the guy I thought he was, question mark, but the show, like, you can tell they want to forget the baby one. Um, oh, yeah. As for the... There, there, are, there are other moments of Butcher being a fucking idiot in this season. I'm trying to think of times where he's done something, like, morally reprehensible. There's not that many moments, are there? Not, no. Not really. Um... I'm thinking of the the guy they kill, him and Starlight. Technically, both of oh, them are involved right. in and that. And Starlight says, well, yeah. I don't care. Man, what a hero. <laughs> we'll get, yeah, we're going to get to that <laughs> one, too. Starlight's the one that kills him. Butcher Butcher just wants to threaten him. But Starlight's yeah, we'll get to that, that one. Him. I mean, well, in fairness, Butcher approves of what she did, so... True. Um, so yeah, it makes it, makes it complicated to... Uh... Speaking... From a utilitarian perspective, baby. is it worse to kill a baby or an adult? Um... So the idea with killing a baby is that they're absolutely innocent. There's just nothing about them yeah. that could possibly have done anything yeah. to anyone. And it's not yeah. their fault they're even here. So it's supposed to weigh on a character, at least to some degree. But if you're telling me that that is who but Butcher is, he'll just kill anyone and everyone in order to move along in life as for what he wants to do. It's just like, damn, okay, yeah, he's not the guy I thought he was, I guess. 
Also, that yeah. creates issues for if he's willing to kill innocent babies, then what is ever going to stop him in the future? Like, how do you how do you possibly balance that for the rest of your show once you establish what he's willing to do? Um, I think you could actually work that quite well if if you had competent writers, because you would then have Butcher essentially willing to do whatever, but at the same time, the other characters would have to kind of adjust, and, and there would be less trust between them, and there would be kind of like a, a subtle conflict even among the boys, and stuff that happens like again oh, yeah. later in the comics. Um, but uh, also, speaking of, of babies, we missed out on uh, a, a really, probably one of the most horrific things ever placed in a comic. Are you aware of what Black Noir did to a baby? With uh, is this the like, like he punched one to death or something? No, he ate it. Oh, he ate one, right? Yeah. Um. Okay. So it sounds I'm I'm kind of getting the impression that the comics are just really edgy. They're, <laughs> like, they're really yeah. That's kind of what I'm getting. Hey, reminds from me this. of the show. Oh man, well, got, got several people in chat saying you don't understand the character of Butcher. Uh, oh boy. Um, I'm sorry. I never got any indication in the TV show that Billy was willing to kill children. Um, yeah. <laughs> No, I don't buy that. And the show doesn't actually buy argue. It. They think that they've exonerated him, and they haven't. I would argue his core motivation is soups being allowed to do whatever the fuck that they want, and innocent people die, and they're not held accountable. And then you have him killing an innocent child for the fuck of it. So I, yeah. I actually think it's completely against his core. Yeah, because this whole reason he's involved in this is because supposedly he thinks that Homelander killed his wife. And don't cite the fucking killed. comics. When we're talking yeah, about the character of the show, the right? Comics. Let's not do that again. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, that, that's interesting as well because uh, the you know some of the things that people say happen in the comics. To me, it sounds like the comics are a different tone from the show almost completely. To to be able to have a scene where a character's eating a baby, I'd be like, seems like probably goes to um, crazier places. You probably just can't do that on TV. Even like, it's just not going to happen. No one's going to put that on your television network. I actually saw as well when we briefly brought up the Starlight thing, which we'll get to, back-to-back -to -back chat where someone said um, a Butcher essentially forced her to kill the guy, and then another chat <laughs> said, uh, why the hell didn't she just stand in front of the gun? She's bulletproof. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a good question. Good question. That's a good yeah. question. She, she, is that. A, she is immune to 50 cals, but she's not immune to hey, pistols. Small... Oof. Wait, wait. <laughs> to oh, small, boy. Uh, I'll get you. Uh, People were bringing, I saw people bringing that up. He brought a 50 cal to pause Starlight, right? And in season two, yeah. they bring pistols to fight Stormfront. Like, I, I <laughs> well, know no, so. In, in fairness, wait, 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 they wait, wait, have... wait, 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 wait. So they, that, that's what they use to shoot at her when their RPGs are fucked. Or at least before that, yeah. I think. Before they even go to the RPGs, which I just find amusing. Like, the, they seem to understand the kind of power they're dealing with sometimes. Also announcing the RPGs for something they had. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was That was a really good moment, too. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I, I say this. We're all rushing ahead, which we will do. But uh, the season starts with... Uh, we, we, we've we got the, the contracts going, or, or whatever. The, the, the combo of the, the, the soups oh. are moving in with the military. Um, <laughs> and so it's a, it's a good way to start the season, where we get some information on how this works. The government, the DoD with, uh, with Vought. Now... <laughs> we're not going to be able to cover every issue in the show because uh, it's just too many. I, I, well, I, we would need to go through each episode with, uh, with a fine tooth comb, which we we've been unable to do up to this point. But I might be trying to do that as time goes on. But I know about this one. It's really interesting. They they talk about three significant things um, with the DoD. The first we, we can just do them in whatever order. Well, the the first one was that uh, they all report to uh to Gus Fring. Yes, and Gus Fring's justification for that, when the DoD questioned it, is, hey, that's what other military contractors do. Yeah, as if this is even remotely the Precedent same. Is, <laughs> like, you you have something like Homelander, and it's like, yeah, this guy from this corporation gets to decide what he does. Um, Oh, and if I need to have any visuals to prove anything on screen, I've got all the episodes ready, so it's, it's no problem. But, um, the fascination to me that the government would be like, yeah, okay, Gus Fring, you can control where and when and what all your heroes are doing in the field of battle as a part of our conjoined relationship. I find that fucking insane, but 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, it follows the, a, a similar sort of thematic uh, consistency in the show, which is that Vought just sort of gets to do whatever. and do whatever they want. They're yeah. not really punished in any meaningful way ever. Uh, they just sort of get to get away with everything. Which is actually a good lead into the next part, which they say um, <laughs> the collateral damage Ooh. being the death of innocents in the field of battle. <clears throat> much a covered topic, as was in, in Civil War. Uh, publicly, uh, officially, the, the, the number will be 0%. No such thing. We'll never be doing that. But the cone of silence, meaning what the DoD will be asked to cover up if it should happen, caps out at 34%. Yeah, why Why 34%? <laughs> like, How could they possibly even keep that under wraps? Like, it seems like why, would they be, why would they be cool with 34%? <laughs> collateral damage. How like, shitty are your heroes? <laughs> They're just like blowing up thirty four percent of people. Wait, forty four thirty four percent of what? Of the city? Yeah, of what exactly? Well, of, of the what? of the populace <laughs> in, in the place, I guess. <laughs> we can keep forty percent of deaths of the whole city. On yeah, the I, I do so like 33. the idea that thirty five percent is 30. just too much for what? <laughs> like, why is it thirty four percent? What's that mean? <laughs> well, thirty four percent's a third, right? So yeah. Sure. yeah. So you'd think that if it was 33%, right, which is, you know, a third, people would just be all right with that? I was like, yeah, a third of the populace died when the superhero did a thing. It, it's fine, though. Well, it's you know? not. Yeah, that's no good. way. It's not, that's not even what so, they're saying. It's the, to the public, it's zero. Like, we will not have but, any collateral damage. But what the DoD is willing to cover up would be up to 34%, which... To which the DoD would say no. <laughs> I just, I find <laughs> that so bizarre. Like... Yeah. It's, um, 34% is a completely arbitrary number. It and is. I, yeah. it is arbitrary. <laughs> from yeah. from uh, when I was deployed, um, no. <laughs> you do not have. <laughs> no. No. Well, just no. Um, um, none, hey, superheroes, none, no. though, they for some reason, even though they're stronger and faster, they are allowed more. They have a less damage. standard than regular soldiers. <laughs> yeah, you'd think it'd be the total opposite. Well, you also have to consider, like, when you're talking about actual military operations, right? Like, we are incredibly careful when we send in artillery shells or uh, rockets or, or, or when a, an Apache goes and takes out an area or something like that. It is, like, precision when they take out somebody. But when you're talking about, you know, a superhero who is essentially immune to everything except small pocket knives and we'll get to that later on but mm-hmm. when you have a superhero that is immune to nearly everything and they can go in and surgically remove you know bad guy one bad guy two bad guy three like you don't have to worry about hitting the whole building and flattening it with artillery when you can have a guy go in and just take out each one of them so the idea that you would have to have really anything more than I, I would think that collateral damage would be extraordinarily rare, yeah. almost yeah. yeah, almost non-existent compared to like whatever. I mean, if if you're doing thirty four percent, then basically you're just saying Homelander can go in and laser out like the entire buildings and which, like half yeah. the city. Which, by the way, and, like, just to jump forward a little bit, right? He can't even get away with it because most people have phones, and that's what a major plot point of the season is. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, except for me. Thirty four percent. Except for me. <laughs> That memes. But what I'm suggesting is like, ah, cone of silence, unless someone has a phone. Which is everybody, pretty much. We're in the modern world. Which is everyone, yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's a inter- another interesting one. The final piece is that they need a new designation for Compound V in the hopes of keeping it under wraps. And he says explicitly, uh, if the world finds out that these are flowing through the veins of all of our superheroes, like, it'll be chaos. He yeah. just announces this in a room with like twenty plus people and a guy delivering food. Um, and a guy delivering food. <laughs> that was funny, so funny. weird. What, what I will say, in case anyone thinks I'm trying to be disingenuous, the guy delivering food is clearly like a member of uh, whatever the DoD or Vault or whatever. But the, the 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 problem is he's just walking in and out of the room. The doors are open, and they're talking about some of the most sensitive information as far as they're concerned ever. Plus, um, do you think yeah. that everyone in Vought knows that? Yeah, and, and and of course, then he says that. Uh, so this new designation, it, uh, the the response from uh, it's actually Bobby from Supernatural. So I'm just gonna say it's that's his name. He um he he says like the only person who could do that is the president. And what are you gonna do? Strong arm him into doing it? And Gus is like, yes. 
I just, I just like, I'm just like um, um, no. <laughs> that's not how this works. It's, it's really interesting. I know the character. I know you're trying to play this character, but it it doesn't make sense. <sighs> just go to the White House and tell the President of the United States to do whatever you want. <laughs> like, all right, um, that'll work well. I mean, it it does sound ridiculous, but I think one of the things that kind of works in Bot's favor is that the superheroes and the seven in particular are perceived as paragons of justice and virtue and no one whether they're privately or politically wants uh, publicly wants to be seen as opposing you know homelander opposing the seven opposing why would you want you know because you have to understand politicians their number one thing is getting reelected. so um I don't think that a politician would be comfortable with uh, giving a private corporation the ability to do whatever they want when they yeah. control assets no, no, and I would. tanks and stuff. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't think that they would. But you, you can use that as leverage for further. Sure, but like you can't. I, to, I, I don't believe that some they control the White House and then just be like, "Yeah, we do whatever we want." You can't stop us. They would. Like it doesn't matter if the pop if the populace think they're cool. Like. You're not going to surrender that much power to a private company, especially one that could potentially, like, destroy your government. <laughs> At Muller, it sounds almost exaggerated, like a satire. Don't you get it, uh, guys? Oh, well, well, shit, I get Guys, we've solved it. There are no flaws. It's all just satire. <laughs> all satire we we yeah. figured it out. It's all satire. Any potential issues we might have, satire. This is terribly like one-sided. Um... <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I mean, we all think it's shit. Um, mm -hmm. well, but in fairness, it's not like we're just saying it's shit. We, yeah, we've we got references. For why we think that. I don't understand how it's not one sided when it's Star Wars. I find that interesting. Hmm. But whatever. Not, 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 not implying a bias there, some people. I actually saw someone say that, in fairness, about Butcher, he was established from episode one to be a, not a do gooder because he tricked Huey into thinking he was like FBI. This is somehow on the same level as executing an innocent <laughs> baby. Like, I don't understand. But I will continue. Um, th this is. Uh, this... I'm okay, sorry. Because um, a lot of people are saying that I don't understand real world politics because I said that a, a, go a government like the United States wouldn't just capitulate to a, a, a corporation that has the potential to actually destroy their government. <laughs> Um, yeah, like that, that's not gonna happen. To it's not gonna fucking happen. If you think it's happening, you're shockingly naive. I don't know. Hey, man, say. Facebook and Twitter are analogous with a company that develops superheroes who are bulletproof and can shoot lasers out of their eyes. <laughs> oh, Come this is on. gonna be a fun like, night, isn't this it? This is gonna be painful. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, well, there's a, it's it's ridiculous. It's insane. That you think that 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 a government would give up basically being the government? Rags is satire. It's satire. But satire though, yeah. would mean that they wouldn't. Well, if um, it was satire, then they would. They still would wouldn't. It would still be what they would do in real well, it's life. Well, it's just interesting to me because that, that's the perfect writer's tool, right? Like, you can. Whatever satire, stretches like, you want to make, want. it can yeah. just be satirical of a real life thing. And what that means is the real life thing, but not what the real life thing does, a more extreme version of it. So nice. Um, I mean, yeah, the Cinema Sins would be very happy. It just that's just a joke. It's just satire. It's just not that I'm inaccurate or that doesn't make any sense or it's nonsensical or that's inconsistent with itself. It's fine. Just don't worry. It's all satire. So the scene is intercut with Black Noir taking out the terrorist that we, well, super villain is the name they give him uh, from season one. The one who seems to be able to blow away like a whole room at a time. Like that's his power. And uh, Black Noir comes up to him and the guy uses the power and. Uh, it's it's treated like he's majorly shocked that Black Noir doesn't get killed by it, which I find interesting because Black Noir will be world famous. Um, and of course, this guy should know that it's only a matter of time he would... before yeah. he's going to bump into a superhero. But the, I guess the more interesting part than that is that he's clearly wounded the shit out of Black Noir. Um, do it again. And he just doesn't yeah, do it do again. It again. <laughs> he just gives up, I guess, and his head's chopped off. Uh, yeah. this, this happens a couple times in the season where it's just like, hey, your power didn't kill them, but it did something. Maybe use it again. Um, well, I'd say the most another... egregious would be Starlight with Black Noir. Well, some another thing to to consider is the fact that 
these people with powers are not immune to their own powers. We saw that several times with characters. Uh, what's his name? Lamplighter burns up, right? And then the acid spit guy like melts his own face off. So it's very that clear that weird. these characters... <laughs> It's it's very clear that these, yeah, I don't know how like he can produce spit in his mouth and throw it out, and yet when it uh, touches from the other way, it still melts. Like it doesn't make any sense. But the point point I'm trying to make is that this guy has the ability to blow up a room, uh, which means that he's immune to the power, or perhaps he is like somehow super durable, right? Mm -hmm. But Black Noir cuts his head off with a normal fucking sword. So, like, yeah. you can't, like, how... This is this is another I... issue, like, later on, where they turn on, like, characters' invulnerabilities just get turned on and off depending on who they're going against and what the plot needs to happen. Oh, for and sure, it's, yeah. It's, ag- it's aggravating because, realistically, it, that guy who, like, blew up the whole room, like he should essentially be killing himself every time he uses his own power if he doesn't have, you know, any kind of super invulnerability. I mean, so yeah, it's he, just... he took less damage than Black Noir. Correct. He, he was completely unfazed Which, by, the, by way, the massive explosion, um, and yet he doesn't have invulnerability, so what the fuck? I got a correction and then a complaint. So back in Rags and I's stream, uh, I think Rags highlighted, like, how is it that Black Noir can actually administer an EpiPen? Um, because he, he's so strong. If he's but, so strong, I should No, he's so as, resilient. As we well, do you, when, when you say resilient, do you mean like... How does he pierce his skin? own skin to well, administer yeah. the drug? I saw people talking about it, and they were like, wouldn't uh, someone who's really strong be able to possibly puncture themselves with... So that doesn't change well, no, the hardness of the syringe. Like, yeah, what about the hardness which, of the EpiPen? Which is yeah, where the conversation went. The but then it evolved the to... Hang on. <laughs> Jeez. This always happens to me. I want to make a different point, so I set it up, and then the setup is assumed to be my point, and so I'm just like, no, wait, I'm not done yet. So that was the conversation. But then someone referenced how, like, if he can um, uh, take all the slashes that he takes from, from Kimiko in Season 1 and then super regenerate, maybe that's his power. It's not necessarily that he's really strong. It's like, well, but he survives a blast from the crazy supervillain. Like, he must... He can't just be super regeneration. Yeah, and all the bombs in the house that are trapped. Yeah, that too. Like, it's... And this is something... Another thing the show really benefits from is just staying nice and vague on people's powers until they accidentally let slip something like, oh yeah, Homelander as a child could breach the speed of sound. You're like, oh no, you shouldn't have said yeah. that. You really shouldn't have said that. Yeah, this is a W oh, fap. Sorry, please. but it, it's not over yeah, yet. Sorry that this, I'm sorry that this show's terrible and you aren't accepting that out of what, actually, what you want us to say. The show's bad. They actually did address this in Marvel with the Hulk where they wanted to like calm him down and inject him with some stuff, but they couldn't use normal steel because it would just, like, even if you were super strong, it would just like bend. So they had to use adamantium in order to actually get through his skin. So... Like they could do that in the show, but like obviously they don't. They don't care. Well, the problem is like the show has established that that for the most part there are no te- there are no counters to these heroes, which is baffling. Mm-hmm. Again, I can't believe that the U.S. government would be cool with a <laughs> bunch of superheroes who are bulletproof and potentially like tank proof, even existing, especially yeah. once they discover that it was from a compound. Like that was an administered actual substance in you can object. Yeah, in secret. This is By why it's very frustrating yeah. when people are like, oh, you don't understand politics. Like, because politicians wouldn't be concerned about a compound which can make you impervious to small arms fire. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Like with all the regulation that exists in everything, the idea for like, that yeah, just especially guns can... for normal people. Yeah. Um the the idea in the show, which goes back to the whole Vought can just, like, apparently get away with anything that they want, even after they're discovered, is the idea that after it is discovered and shown to the world that Vought is the one who manufactures the superheroes through Compound V, and they're the ones who are in charge of it all, and also all these superheroes happen to work for Vought, and also Vought wants these superheroes to be in the military. Like, the idea that they're allowed to continue operating as a corporation is insane. 
Yeah, you think that they would be absorbed into the Although, government at that point. Says, stop really stop made, highlighting the stupid comments. It's like, what do you mean? These are these are the arguments being made right now against our now, points. I'm sorry if all the defenses of the show are indistinguishable from stupid gonna, I've, comments. I've read out many and tried to provide context. It's like, you read out the stupid ones. It's like, what? Hey. Well, then give us good ones. <laughs> what, what do you mean to do? Like, <laughs> then provide good defenses of the show. This is live. This is not me, like, fishing through several and finding the stupidest one. That's... <laughs> also, I feel bad for all the people who I've been reading. They're like, oh, wow, I'm the stupid comet, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's okay to discuss this stuff through, because we're, we're literally in the first few minutes of episode one. This is considered yeah. the good portion of the season, so we're going to get a lot of pushback on this. And we're only like five minutes in. Yeah, <laughs> when, we, when we get all the way to the back end of the season, it'll it'll come full mm. full picture, I'm sure of it. Um, so yeah. I'll tell you what, what, I, what I was about to say, it's, it's just also insane that they do this without having like a real contingency, contingency plan. Yeah, like the fact that they're, they're, they're no... just eat more soups. It's like, uh, okay. Well, especially, that... especially when we know that Homelander is pretty unstable. It's kind of weird that they don't right. have like a bomb in his head. That that's why yeah. they they have Black Noir in the comics. Like he that was that was actually built into it. He was the contingency plan. I feel like he... that's not even good enough. You need yeah. a non superhero <laughs> way I mean, to stop least... superheroes. But I mean, at least the comics made an attempt. Sure, but but I yeah. still think makes that's an not... attempt. I still don't. I still don't think that's good enough. I think that um, if if Vought is meant to be like a real company that exists, they need a non superhero, non we're relying on one person means of stopping superheroes. There should be some sort of like reversal of Compound V, or there should be some way to actually just kill them. I well, can't believe is... that they don't have a kill switch. Yeah, that's what I was waiting for this whole season. Actually, Wait, it's nuts. Like, what, their plan was what? the kid. Like, what yeah, a crazy plan contingency kid. plan. That's like an 18-year <laughs> contingency plan. Like, what? Yeah. what if Homelander After... goes insane within these 18 years? Yeah, it's like, what if you have to... It The show attempts to do the whole there is a contingency in a horrible way that makes no sense and makes Vaught look like a bunch of incompetent idiots. The idea in the first place that Vaught would even create Homelander without a contingency that they already have prepared is insane. The fact yeah. that their idea of a contingency is to let Homelander grow up to adulthood and then end up impregnating somebody so that <laughs> his son will have superpowers that will allow the son to maybe one day, if they can convince the son to do this, be the contingency so that if Homelander needs to be killed, they can use his son against him. And, and again, you haven't even fixed the problem. You've just replaced Homelander with Homelander. You haven't actually done anything. You still have a problem. What now, who's the kid's kid contingency? Insane? Does yeah. that kid have to have a kid now? And it's just this really horrible father son like contingency system. Like it, it's insanely ridiculous. This Most, is yeah. fucking ridiculous. Most of the soups don't have that enhanced invulnerability. Like, you can just shoot them in the head and then, like, no more soup. But not the seven, though. Starlight well, is impervious uh, to bullets. Maeve well, seems to be impervious Except Lamplighter. Uh, when he the was. other thing yeah. with um, Compound V is it seems to be more like just like a mute, mutant type thing where you don't know what you're going to get, yeah. right? Like, it's not like you can predict that Homelander was going to yeah. get basically Superman powers. Like he could have gotten, you know, the they had to have known that was a possibility, right? I still think like that's what they were coming um, for. Because Black Noir in season three could end up still being the contingency, but it's like again, why no that's... kill switch? What the fuck? Yeah. Because even Black Noir is dodgy. In fact, uh, what if Black Noir was killed on one of his missions? It seems yeah, as though, he, you know, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Just saying, <laughs> he's he's clearly killable. If you if one of the if he bumped into an almond joy, like while on one of these missions, yeah, what if Homelander um, used an almond joy? Well, there's our go there goes our content. We made our contingency to have an almond joy. Energy. Oh yeah, by the way, that's a, that's like almost public knowledge now. Like all of the boys know, and who knows how long before like. Hmm. <laughs> you gotta, this is, like as soon as Homelander knows about that, like exactly how is Black Noir gonna be a threat? Also, Black I, Noir I can't I fly. That, I don't think he's gonna be used in even. Uh, what I think is gonna happen from here forward is Black Noir is gonna be used as a prop. He's gonna show up when they want him to, and then they're gonna stuff him back away into the broom closet, um, like they've been doing. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, it, 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 but it's gonna be even worse now, right? So, uh. 
I've just noticed several people in chat saying that Homelander is like impervious to nukes. I didn't know that because if you're referencing the comics, you got to stop because that's we can't talk, we can't fudge both of them. But if he's impervious to a nuke, then this show, I don't see how this show could ever work. I don't if see how you can beat him. Kill, yeah. Like Why the would they create that, something that's unbeatable? Unless we shove a bomb yeah. up his ass, is that going to be the way we do it? Well, again, we've talked about this. You can kill Homelander. He, surely he has to metabolize food and, and ingest well, it liquids. It gets complicated because it's like, does he, breathe. does he not grow hair and sweat and all these functions? Yeah. Like, so surely there's like, there's mechanics going on he inside there. He has metabolism, yeah. And, and that opens up like possibilities, I would imagine. Just, well, again, just that's that literally, of, like how in season, in does season he breathe? One, they forget is... that, yeah, if he, if he needs to breathe, <laughs> suffocate him. Surely, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, and, and I'm not suggesting that it's easy, him. just that, yeah, can he be killed? It's like, I guess we'll find out in whatever season they kill him. Killed, my god, <laughs> why would they make him like that? That's the thing. Why well, would yeah. you make something that you have no contingency for? More like, and if chill your contingency out, the show is just is a, in, the boys is just a show, chill out. It's like, I, I honestly don't uh, know. I've been here before. I don't just I, that, like, I, yeah, I, how could you have watched EFA? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly so what don't know should we be doing? Like should we just be him? saying it's great, or no? What? Just be chill, Rags. Chill out. I honestly don't know how they're going to to deal with him in the show because, and I I don't want to bring up the the c word, but um, in in the comics, the only thing that kills Homelander is Black Noir. They basically kill each other. How does he? How does, what's the method? Like like punching to death or lasers or something? They they yeah they use super strength and their laser eyes and they basically tear each other apart like physically tear each other apart and then black noir ends up winning but he's like he's god he's like all kinds of gruesome like he's missing an arm and a leg and he's just like bleeding all over the place and he uh and can you stab him in the eye just butcher jabs a crowbar in his eye and then like ah cracks his his head open and his brains just fall out but the only the only thing that can kill those two is basically each other so like i don't know what they're gonna do in the show because there's nothing that's comparable to homelander like he's just other other than I his mean, son i guess i believe that a nuke would blow him up by the way just the way that nuclear weapons work i don't um, buy that anybody's impervious to nuclear well, weapons uh, but, of what know, i'm confused whatever. about is uh <laughs> Homelander can fly. Isn't Black Noir going to have a lot of trouble yeah. with that? Yeah, yeah what if Homelander so. flies around shooting his lasers at Black Noir? It's like, uh, done, over. And also, he can travel at the speed of sound. Black Noir isn't that fast. No. No, it, there's, there's no way that he, Black Noir in the show is even remotely comparable. By to... the way, traveling at the speed of sound through somebody? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to hurt. I mean, yeah. we kind of saw that in episode one. Exactly, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> also, uh, I saw someone say uh, Stormfront was a contingency. Wasn't she? Stormfront was made was before she... Homelander. Way before. Also, but she can't... How does she kill him? Uh, how does that work? I know, but what I was saying is, wasn't she like brought back because of the whole Compound V situation getting out of control? So yeah, it wasn't, about it wasn't about uh, Homelander from what we could tell in the season. Or whatever they they're... And again, it's not a contingency because you've just replaced one bad guy with another one. You haven't fixed no. your problem. You've just delayed it. Stormfront was the first. Was the first yeah. to use yeah. compound yeah. V. So yeah, <laughs> that's the <a> whole topic <laughs> too. Um, I saw someone say, uh, "Sorry, you can't assess anything beyond internal consistency." It's like that's our whole thing. So, so <laughs> let's assume that's true. That's a whole fucking lot, buddy. That's, well, yeah, I guess at that point I'd be like, you mean the script? Because, yeah, we can't quite get much of anything else when it comes to writing outside of the script, so I'm okay with that. Um, Someone said, go ahead. No, no, I, I was going to continue, so you go ahead. If Rag, uh, someone said, Rag seems, seems, to like home, seems to think Homelander was created intentionally. Did that happen in the show, or was it a coincidence that they took advantage of? Um, they, are they aware that he was created intentionally in a lab? Yeah, like I, this is seems pretty explicit. Uh, <laughs> I've seen the Discord chat complaining about EFAB chat. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> this is quite a funny little civil war. Uh, Homelander, I wonder Homelander what Homelander this week's civil created. war will be about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Homelander was created intentionally in the lab in the show, but 
they didn't know what powers he was going to get. So. Well, what Man, they, what talk they about a freaking when they lucky got dip. A specific, uh, outcome that they have like one super super soup. I just assumed that they would have had multiple test subjects, and he was the one that. Yeah, you know, they probably through. Did. threw the babies away when when they didn't have the powers that they wanted or something. Yo, isn't there a throwaway line about how Compound V can make you explode? I imagine that happened to a couple of <laughs> test subjects. Frank, another one no, exploded. No, it only really happens to adults. So in children, it's extremely stable. Um, but in adults, it does one of a couple things. For an adult, it will either give you powers, make you go crazy, or explode you. That's pretty much the three things that happens as an adult. So one of the, the things, the reason why we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but the reason why Lamplighter and uh, Stormfront were experimenting in that um, facility was to make a more stable version that could be used in adults. Yeah, oh, yeah. And because Stormfront's whole goal is to get Compound V out to many people as you can, build an army and like take, take out all the people who aren't white, question mark? Sort of, yeah. <laughs> Just more like control rule the world kind of thing. Yeah, because you got to stop them from committing the white genocide, as she white. made quite clear. Um... She, that comes out of nowhere, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could say it comes out of nowhere. You could also say that she's just... She's all of the characteristics of a hyper-racist, uh, and you see that dripped in, and then it's just too hard to ignore. Um... And it, it gets a little bit funny because you're just like, oh man. Yeah, she's she's <laughs> yeah, she a goes cartoon. Again. She's a cartoon person. When 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 she's like, oh my god, Gus Fring, he's smart for his kind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I mean, at one point she says, "Let's make America safe again." It's yeah. like grown. Uh, didn't uh, didn't the the writer of the show say that all the superheroes were inherently MAGA? Yeah, Eric, yes. Eric Christie, I believe his name is. Said yeah, that. um, and he's, uh, I saw a tweet from. His show, though. It was actually one I read all... like an hour before this. He said that uh, people shouldn't be like conditioned through the MCU because uh, he, he referenced how that their control over cinema for so long that someone's always going to be there to save you. He said that was a bad message. Hmm. <laughs> is like I don't even know where to begin. It's like uh so you like of all the things to take away from each of the MCU movies, which by the way, plenty of them are shit, like messaging wise, like, oh thank goodness someone will always be there to save us. Like I don't I don't even I mean, that's it's not even like, cross my mind Civil really. Not about that, that's for sure. <laughs> well loads of them aren't about that. Like the, the yeah. they're all individual character studies for the most part. I think I believe I believe his main point was that all superhero comics are inherently uh what's that f word fat fat fascist something like that oh my god he said Um, so and and like something i don't know i I forget but it was dumb uh yeah he's got a bit of like a i think because i saw loads of people arguing with him on twitter he he was saying like all the heroes are uh, usually stand up for the like they're usually nationalistic or whatever and, and and people were like pissed that he would even i think you think he may have mentioned superman and people were getting really angry that superman was considered like a maga type superhero because <laughs> <laughs> i think if you're very into the comics you'll have plenty of citations for exactly what the values are for each of these characters and to lump them in as a group of superheroes that's just what superheroes do it's like oh careful yeah. Um, but the thing is, it's a combo, it, it like combos in with, with a lot of anti, sort of MCU, or, or just superhero sentiment lately, like, in terms of film, there's, there's lots of that, but, like, I think that comment went a bit too far for a lot of people. Um, oh yeah, and of course, people would want to cite Black Panther, I doubt he'd have the courage to say that about Black Panther publicly. <laughs> I mean, their entire spiel was isolationist. Well, that's the funny part, right? He's probably the most uh, applicable, at least in the first half of his movie before he uh, opens up the borders and stuff. Um, He admitted Black Panther was kind of fascistic. Oh my god. Um, Well, maybe then. Maybe he went through with it. Uh, I wonder, does that word mean anything anymore? No, I'm not sure. Okay. So, moving on, we've got... um, the intro to the deep in a bar and he's being a drunk he's being belligerent he's asked to leave that about sums up his entire season arc yeah (laughs) yeah pretty much 
What a wasted character. Um, I f I don't even know how much we're going to be commenting on the deep. I might just skip the deep scenes and we can just talk about it as a whole now. So, uh, the I can't remember which writer or if it was the showrunner said in a comment that like he's supposed to be making fun of different things that happen to like high bo uh, high tier celebrities, and he was like, season one was like the disgraced uh, sexual offender sort of thing, and season two is the recovery in like a form of a church, and that people picking Scientology as what it's satirizing. A mistaken because it's just a combo of basically all faiths of any kind and the uh, sort of the corporatism that gets involved with it and that it's all for naught and that's really funny <laughs> because the deep sucks yeah <laughs> it's just like okay then which is funny because yeah, I, I know was... several people who are really invested in the deep uh, I don't know if they realize some of their fans actually liked him uh, yeah it's just well, I was awkward. curious I mean, I, I would have like, been What are they going to do with the deep? You know, what's going to happen? Is he going to have like a redemption going on? Is something? But in it season actually, two, he's just nothing happens. Yeah, I thought they were going to have some kind of a redemption arc, or at least like an attempt or something. But well, yeah, the, like the show is too cynical nowhere. to give him anybody that. You know, yeah, I think so. Um, people. That's the thing with this show. Everybody in the seven is awful except for Starlight. Well, well, she's a murderer. <laughs> and now, yeah. yeah, and now she's a murderer. So. Um, the the scene where he's like, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but when the girl he's with is like putting it in season one, she's putting her fingers in his gills, and he's like finds it horrible. I thought <laughs> that the point with that oh, yeah. was to try and make him feel like, oh my god, I'm on the other side of this now, and that's that was yeah yeah yeah. yeah and so you like ah, oh, so we're gonna get uh, a sense from him that he's like, what I had done was wrong, the way I was operating was wrong, and it's time to build myself back up. And I actually think that fans well, that's would have liked I, that. Yeah. That's what I thought was going to happen when we watched it, but that scene just ends and no, he, they he's never beyond redemption. About. That's you know. we, we yeah. spend time with him talking to Patton Oswalt for some reason. <laughs> yeah, um, oh, it's so, so weird. Horrible. You think about the scene where that woman is super um, insistent with him, and it seems like the this perfect sort of setup of you know the shoe being on the other foot, but they just drop it, and that scene ends, and nothing happens. And I just want so, to have their jokes. Like I said. I guess I, I, I guess jokes. that scene was instead it was this is a woman who gets turned on by his gills. I guess so, yeah. So that was that was it. Well it certainly didn't so, know amount. there's no I don't think any consistent through line on him like trying to make up for the se sexual harassment he's done in his life. Uh, it doesn't seem to be. And even if they were on the surface, I, I don't think any of us would have gotten that from him as a character. I don't think we've had what we need to really give us the nah, impression that he so. feels like, oh my god, like my life, what have I been doing? What have I done? Sort of thing. I mean, but, he did bring that up when when they killed the whale, and he ended up talking to Starlight. Yeah, but it's hard second. to tell how then, sincere it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It it did. It it seemed it seemed at least somewhat sincere to me that he was going to try to make it up, but. I think the the main motivation for him at that point and even continuing on was not necessarily about being redeemed, but about getting back into the seven. And the way yeah. to get back in the seven is to be redeemed. And for, so, for reference, by the way, like the I, I think that there's pieces that they could easily have formed a for Larkin, but they weren't interested in doing that. And again, that's not that isn't actually me being critical of it. It's me stating that their goal was to make a joke out of him in both season one and two. We're supposed to be laughing at his misfortunes. Mm -hmm. Like I don't like I never laughed at any of that. Yeah, but I, well, it's not I, funny. I found it really it's weird funny, and confusing. Yeah. It's sad and awkward. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that I thought was even worth a chuckle was the fresca stuff. Like I would get like a little Little... I was about to ask what the point of the fresco was. So they actually explained what it was. They said, okay, so Eagle needs to offer a drink to the deep, but what is he going to offer him? They don't want to offer alcohol or anything. And then someone just says, well, how about a fresca? And they thought it was funny, and they just made it into a running joke throughout the entire show. But what's the joke? Oh, yeah, the, what joke is the joke is that it's like a, it's like a weird... The weird drink they like drink that no that only weird people would drink basically yeah. it's basically i've never heard of fresca so i it, you yeah know, me neither. Totally lost that, that me. was actually it was it was yeah. it supposed to i thought it was going to be like an allegory for like drinking Kool -Aid. the kool-aid yeah. or something i actually thought it would be like the the thing they use to convert people because yeah like it's got something in it no it was it was just a running joke that they thought was 
that what that they thought was stupid and they thought they wanted to keep including it. Well, I mean, it, it is pretty stupid because yeah. it amounts to nothing. A part of me thought it was like product placement. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. Um, I was actually uh, asking as well. I was like, is this even a real thing? Because I had no idea. But apparently Fresca is real, I think. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wouldn't categorize uh, almost anything to do with the Deep as like uh, contradictive or even really contrived. Just... Um, it just kind of, you know, it didn't work for me. That, that, and I don't. I think a lot of people felt that way. That seemed to be the main sentiment. It was a, um, well, a waste of time for the most part. Uh, the joke quality and frequency was probably not worthwhile for an arc that was apparently supposed to be very, very funny. Yeah, I I keep getting told that it's supposed to be funny, but none of it was funny. Well, I, I, I know didn't that laugh. Oswald. I know the Patton Oswald scene lasted like ten minutes longer than it should have. <laughs> yeah, that went on for yeah, a while. Yeah, that one was. Uh... They did it twice too. Yeah, like, I don't, that's uh, actually that's another that's another complaint I have about this show is they repeat scenes again and again. Like whenever you have a new scene or a new chapter or something, I'm sure you guys already know this, but you're supposed to advance the plot in some way or another, and they they have a lot of repeat scenes where nothing actually gets advanced like we had a whole bunch of interactions between starlight and a train where they don't trust each other he thinks she's hiding something blah 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 and then they do it again and they do it again they had that same scene essentially three times in one episode and it's like why like i don't understand why you keep doing this and there was other ones too i forget what they are off the top of my head but like the Patton oswald gill scene they could have done that all in one go they didn't have to have multiple scenes for that I mean, I just, I do wonder, like, is it, they just hope it, they sort of running on the, the shock values, like, the gills are speaking to him, and maybe it, it does work for some people, just being like, oh my god, that's so absurd, and um, the joke being that he spends that long getting over it and gaining confidence just for Homelander to be like, they're disgusting. And it's like, oh, that, that was, that's the payoff, you know? That's the, the part where we go, oh, the deep. Yeah, but you have to listen to ten minutes of Patton Oswald to get there, and it's not worth it. Well, I, I mean, I just... I don't know why they didn't actually take it more seriously that that because you know for anyone to say like oh they didn't because it's satire or whatever like there's plenty of dramatic moments in this show there's lots of them this show is a drama f I would say but would you say it's like an even split for drama comedy or you you call it something else um I'd say it's a juvenile drama I mean yeah because um... it's trying to be funny but. Well, like, I, you know, for just to yeah, just to give I, an example, Butcher like trying to cradle his wife as she's bleeding to death. It's like, yeah, that's nobody's gonna be like, well, it's supposed to be funny. Like, no, that that's of course the goal is to create and establish stakes and then have drama, dramatic payoffs. Um, I mean, the big payoff for the season, like, the, is drama until they decide that they you know, want to transition into jokes. So I'd I'd say it's more drama than comedy. Yeah, I would say it's a drama bedrock with comedy from. Uh, yeah. Just my view, I guess. Um, so, yeah, we could probably just uh, keep moving. Um, we find yeah. out that the boys are now in, like, an undercover place uh, posing as, like, an electronic store or something. I can't quite remember the specific one. Or comic store. Or trade-in store, I think it is. You just trade stuff. Um, I'm and, gonna store. It's not relevant, really. You know, uh, and Huey is, is leaving under the, the guise of picking up some aloe vera, I think it is. And he meets up with, uh, with Starlight, which... Oh, Funnily so enough, sweet. this is the best example of their meeting in the entire season, and it's still something I take issue with. Yeah. So they establish they have burner phones that they um they they, they like never use uh, again. The, 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 she goes to the subway, which you can't track superhero chips in the subway. Apparently, that sounds like a bit of a concern. <laughs> like for what? Um, I yeah, I I think it actually. It does kind of make sense, though. Well, like, I'm okay with, I mean, like, I... if, if it's the material interfering just like it did in season one. Like, I, I get it. It's just that she's the dodgy one in the seven. So you might want to have someone tailing her, uh, I feel, if you, if you were Vought. But then, of course, that assumes Vought is competent, which I wouldn't want to do that. That's, uh, that's, that's me that's... establishing them out of character. Productive. I shouldn't, shouldn't be doing that. Um but I was I was relatively happy with with the amount of effort they put into this particular meeting. But then they speak really loudly in a train with loads of people about how this is really sensitive and how they have to be really careful. 
And I was just like, can you? I don't, I don't know. Another real little running thing in the show is the discussion of extremely important private information in public places or in front of random people. And yeah, like, if either of them, which is funny, by the way, because it's both sides. Mother's Milk is very, like, paranoid about Huey. And of course, he gets really pissed off when he finds out he's actually been contacting her, because I guess that was, like, a, a worry he had. But then she's got all of Vought and the potential of Hoblander. Like, if if ever he decides to follow her any day in each of these episodes, it seems like it would have uh, paid off for him. Um, I mean, not to mention the fact that she's one of the most recognizable people on the planet. They both I mean, are. If, she, he's a wanted criminal people, in that city. If, I mean, if, if people, like, if you have, like, uh, all these, like, paparazzi and, and other pic people taking pictures of... Um, you know, like Celine Dion when she's out grocery shopping. I would think that people would recognize... There'd be people stalking her. Um, I, but yeah, also, I, would... uh, I just remembered, like, why are they still... Why are the boys still in New York? Why would they stay in New York? Why wouldn't they leave? Yeah, just to like, clarify, they've chosen that they don't even want to... They yeah. don't even want to pursue killing superheroes anymore. They want... They, they're like... So it, it's just, I guess, that they, they were like, yeah, it was the only thing they had. Yeah, why the city where they live? Uh... Appar apparently that's because it's it. like friends of Frenchie or whatever that they managed to get in there. And it's just like, okay. Uh, so yeah, they, they're coming up with a new plan. We discover that they're, they're, the wider context is they're looking for someone who works with Compound V and is someone that they can blackmail. And they find a target and they give it to her and it's uh, someone she used to know from like Bible camp or studies or, or something. They, they knew each other when they were younger. And of course... The scene establishes that her and Huey have a have a wonky relationship. Things aren't going too great, and and there's just this awkward line where this is obviously not the first time they've spoken. This might even be several times after the first time because of this whole plan coming to fruition. But she's like, I can't remember what he says. I wish I had the line, but, she, but she's like, uh, you lied to me throughout our entire relationship back then. That is still an issue now <laughs> it's just, it's a, like it's delivered in a way that's like we would of course know it he would know it she would know it but uh, but it needs to be said in case anyone's missed it that's uh that is their issue um i don't know if that's ever explicitly dealt with like she can tr i can trust you again rather than they just go on that road trip and it seems to uh fix everything for the most part this is stuff i would know if i was no, to rewatch it no because um so when they what was it uh they they go on the road trip i think um or there's there's another part where where he's hiding something from her and she's like you know oh, yeah, she, she knows that he's lying i forget what it's about or or, or the specifics I of it but um, she knows that he's lying and he's like nope nope nothing to tell you yeah and they they show close-ups of both of them um because it's clear that she can figure it out i can't remember what i was about either maybe chat will have uh um wasn't that at the same time when butch did the deal with edgar and he didn't like he, for some reason he didn't want to do the whole compound V re, uh, reveal, even though she has the the test tubes. Oh, no, yeah. it was about the supervillain. That's right. It was about uh, Kimiko's brother when they w he found out uh, about the 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 supervillain on the dock, but he didn't tell her about it. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pretty much all of these are nitpicks so far. Yeah, uh, Butcher killing yes, a baby is a nitpick. You're right. Butch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. We're we're just doing satire, so it's all good. Yeah, you're not supposed to take EFAP seriously, guys. Jeez. Uh, so moving on, it's established that uh, all of our characters wanted uh, pr pretty hardcore. This is I don't know why I'm mentioning this because it's not relevant for the rest of the season. Um, they, of course, can walk around willy-nilly all the time. It doesn't seem to cause them any trouble. And then they're not wanted by the end of the season. We're going to get to all that shit. It's fucking absurd. And we're reintroduced to Homelander properly. He's uh, he's missing Stillwell. Not happy. He's drinking her milk, I it guess. Still in the fridge, frozen. Ugh. Um, it's a bit, yeah, a bit weird, but I suppose in character, that's fine. And then we're moved forward to when they have an introduction for the potential of a new superhero to the Seven. It's um, kind of kind of like a Daredevil knockoff. He's basically uh, Daredevil, yeah. He's blind, yeah. but he has heightened senses, and he seems to be pretty pretty accurate and uh, excited. And he's a fan of Homelander, and Homelander blows open both of his eardrums, I guess, with blood to the actually point that there's a blood pouring. Blood actually coming out of the floor. Yeah, yeah, and it does not stop. It doesn't stop. Yeah. <laughs> It's well, it, your immediate thing is like, man, for that wow, much to come out that quickly, like, uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I'll try and show it now so people can see. And yeah, just, uh, I guess not. He's going to get paid millions of dollars for life to keep that one quiet. So um, a Good lot of people, I heard a lot of people saying they love this part. Uh, we were like, what the fuck? Like, what? Uh, it's like, where to begin? So um, Homelander's whole thing is image. And uh, he puts a lot of effort into coming across as like Superman. Um, but there are times where, of course, he, 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 would, he shows his true colors. And the, some of the favorite moments people have for the show when... Uh, he gets angry and his eyes go red and you're just like, oh shit, because it's, it's just an interesting little concept in the first place because we're so used to the wholesome Superman. Um, so he just did this to someone who's like a big fan of him, who's going to have to be paid off to stay silent, just like they established yeah. in season one is, is a thing that they do at Vought. Um, and for no other reason than Homelander saying like, he can be hurt. And it's he like, can be hurt. Um, no, there, there was that. another reason. And I, I think the other reason actually is... Oh, you're talking about the, the fact that he wants to be the person who okays the members yeah, of... Yeah, he sees, he sees the Seven as his... But he still um, could. What's that? But he still could. Like, he, he, he just, literally he denies the person the getting into the yeah. Seven when he could have just said, like, yeah, okay, I approve this one. And it's just gonna... It, it can cause him so many issues... But he's just like, oh, I'm annoyed. The, and this is, this is going to be the first of many examples of Homelander being incredibly petulant in this season. Uh, to the point of destroying his own reputation very easily if he's not careful. The point was showing Ashley that he's in charge. He could have done that. Oh, a what a way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it, what a fucking way to try and do that. That creates so many more problems than it solves. Wow. Well, of all the ways to do that, <clears throat> this well, is the, the way to is do like, it. The problem is... um. I, I feel like uh, the show forgets that Homeland was always demonstrated to be pretty calculating and cunning. Like, he, he would do ruthless things, but it was always in advancing a goal. Like, um, like yeah, this fucking move was plane, retarded. Right? He abandons the plane and then uses it as leverage, but slapping somebody's earballs to explode... <laughs> Just yeah. because you're mad, like there's not a lot of utility to that. In fact, it's and he's just not even mad at him. Problem. He's mad at Ashley. Yeah, yeah. yeah the guy didn't he do already... anything. <laughs> like, but not to imply that Homelander has some kind of moral code outside of rescuing babies from butcher. Of course, that's something that he does. <laughs> um, the she's already scared. she's already scared shitless of him, anyways. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, like she's not even the person to, to talk to about this. He has to go up to Edgar. So it's just like a weird, just a weird Plus, scene like, to me. Vort knows that he killed Stillwell. They have to if they covered it up, right? Or well, oh, I'm wait, guessing no, he's selling the that, lie. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. They don't know. Scratch that one. Vought Scratch probably, that. Yeah. Man, I, I kind of forgot how big that pool gets. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, the idea You're that. Dead. <laughs> like, yeah, this guy's basically dead. That's his brain blood. <laughs> That's his brain. <laughs> Potentially, I can't be sure. Um, yeah, like this creates so many issues. This guy, who knows what this guy is going to go off and do? Like, or, this guy probably has this a guy's family. Clearly, a thing. He's got his own gym. He's being uh, he's he's well known enough that they might you know potentially they invite to him, him into seven. the seven. Yeah, like yeah. this guy's a thing. He's got a costume, an outfit, and a name. He's got his gym set up. Like this guy's an important figure. Again, People are gonna wonder, like, what happened to him? Where'd he probably go? Probably has a family. <laughs> I'm just has saying. a family. And probably once, has a bunch of adoring fans. Once you have people who care about him, they're gonna be like, "Dude, what the hell happened to you?" And so they've got to pay him off. And I'm assuming that's I, th that's what they had to do. And, and, and at that point, it's just like Homelander. Do you remember that speech you gave to the Seven in season one? We told them how they were all fucking up. You're fucking up, dude. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Pretty big time, actually. You're doing th this isn't even in favor of some other goal. This is just you being fucking stupid. Um, because you could argue that it was in favor of another goal, but there's there's more than one way to achieve what he was trying to achieve. One of them being just go and talk to Edgar like straight away. Um, so... I mean, when he does have his conversation with Edgar, he doesn't use any kind of physical intimidation. Instead, well, I mean, that scene it, doesn't work at all. <laughs> you know, but it still, it still still makes the, the point that he knows how to to, to uh, resolve things without just, you know, using the 
the super strength and violence and stuff. Like he can try to yeah. to control and manipulate others using his intelligence. And for whatever reason, he just chooses not to. A lot of people are saying he's dead. He's not alive. There'd be nothing to cover up outside of just faking his death. Well, what the fuck? Uh, what? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> it's just that easy. That doesn't though. fix right, the go. problem. It still, you still, it, it, if the Christ. problem is having. <laughs> God, but it was funny, so it's fine. Um... <laughs> was it funny? Because I just found it baffling. Uh, this, this, so next we find out about the the guy who can regrow his limbs is is on the side paying people. Well, people pay him to let them chop parts of him off. Uh, yeah, and that. and Starlight manages to catch him doing it. Um, I guess we just have to assume that like they did enough surveillance and they had an access to enough things. They eventually found out about this, and so they've got that on him. And then uh, the boys, like I said, have mostly decided that they're not going to get involved with soups anymore. But someone comes in who's got this major wound, and it's and they're speaking a different language, and and uh, the word soup is said, and it's 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 the a soup did it to them, and so the boys are like ooh. A, a way to get them back on the trail, and they see um, a recording at, at, at the place where this happened of um, a soup getting off a like, like a ship uh, who's been smuggled in, and he picks the whole ship up with telekinesis and slams it against a dude. It's like, oh, jeez, we're dealing with a potential soup nightmare, and um, obviously it's like a moment for them to be like, maybe we shouldn't quite give up on, on this whole thing yet. Um, I think it's, it's something for them to think about anyway. But then we got problems, <laughs> immediately, because I suppose we, we, you could say this is jumping ahead a little bit, but I don't think so. The, um, that's Kimiko's brother, and she knows this, uh, and she does fuck all to tell them this until it's way too late. Uh, well, she, she tries to, but I, I no. like... No. Like, it's, <laughs> no. The most, it's the most... Well, like, the show is... I, I, let, me, let me rephrase that. The show tries to make it appear that Kamiko is attempting to tell them, but she does it in the most, like, minimal way possible. Like, she spends about three seconds trying to tell Frenchie, then gets frustrated and storms off. Like, mm -hmm. you would assume that something of that importance, she would try to be a little more convincing. Oh, but I, think, I think you'd assume in general that they would have already have developed a better system of communicating with one well, another. Well, let's, let's do this from the beginning, right? So what does she have access yeah. to? She has a native language, presumably, but she's mute. She can understand English perfectly spoken. She has no idea how to write English. That is her... Repertoire. Also, she has a made-up uh, sign language that she's refusing to teach Frenchie. I'm going to allow that because it's not uh, uh, the important part. So, she, let's say for example that I can speak English just fine, but I can't understand any of it how it's written whatsoever. I've never touched a pen or seen anything written. So, if I write down a word that I think is translating "brother" to Fringy, and he reads it out as "boy," then I need I I can understand what I've written to him now. I can be like, ah, so I've just told you boy. That's actually not even remotely useful, really. Uh, so I've got to keep trying. Instead, she just walks off. When this is incredibly important information, when she knows that the group are trying to tranquilize her brother and give him away to, is it the CIA? Or the FBI or something? Yeah, so that um, they can get cleared. So she should be, and, and for all she knows, this is a fight that her, her brother or her friends could get hurt because they don't know they're on the same team. So her attempts to do this are pathetic. Like staggeringly pathetic um and it's completely out of character because she would of course even the stupidest of people can draw or point to an image that represents family yeah. or as i said on the stream with rags you point to the security footage and then you point to your own heart and then you have the people go what what do you is that do you know this person then you nod then you go, well, oh shit, that already changes everything. Hell, just, just point point to your ring finger. That would be enough. What? I mean, if, they would assume husband well, yeah, then, it, right? But <laughs> either way. Well, well, yeah, that's the thing. That would still get the same point across, that this is a special person to her. Yeah, um, but besides, she has a native language. She can just Google what the word for her native language for the word brother is in English, and then just point to that. She could just write out the word in the native language on a piece of paper and give it to and them, and they could use their it, phone and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that means, okay. So, uh, yeah, that's incredibly stupid, and it was really hard for us to watch episode one add to when we, we were all trying to figure out what exactly her language abilities are, and by the end of the season, we were like, yep, so that was really fucking dumb. Mm-hmm. Well, another, another thing is, sorry. 
I was just going to say another thing is her even finding the little piece of origami anyways. Like yep. the dude picked up a, a ship and slammed it into the dock and there's pieces of debris everywhere. And like the one little thing that happened to be like away from the debris is the is the single piece of origami that she would recognize. I don't know. Seems a bit of yeah. a stretch. Also, yeah, she's choosing not to speak, which arguably makes this even worse. <laughs> it's like, maybe yeah. speak to save your brother. I don't know. So someone, someone said, siblings can't marry rags. It's like, so the point that I'm trying to make that <laughs> everyone else understood was that if you point to your ring finger and then you point at somebody else, pretty much everybody will be like, oh shit, are like you two engaged? This are person's you married? important to you. Which, yeah, this person's important. And, and if it turns out, no, this was my brother, I just had to get the idea across, that's fine. But if you're trying to save someone's life, that kind of a difference isn't going to matter. Yeah, all she has to do is establish he's important. That's it. Um, I mean, I don't really want to say much about this, but for some reason, the the label super villain tests better with with a, a selection of audience members. Super terrorists. Yeah, we, we we were just like, why wouldn't why. Supervillain sounds cartoony, but I don't know. Let's just say I mean, satire. I, I don't really care about that point that much. I just thought it was dumb. I guess it was their attempt to go back to, oh, look, the, the superheroes are still corporate and they're going with yeah. the thingies. I was like, no, I want my thing, though. Man. I guess I'll just uh, skip deep <laughs> scenes. Yeah, yeah I'll just skip them. them. There's, there's, nothing. there's nothing really to say about them, honestly. Um, yeah. I mean... Like I'm, I'm curious about them in the third season, mostly from a meta perspective of what the writers plan on doing with them, because the character mm -hmm. I don't give a shit about. I'm, I'm just, I'm curious what their plan will be for the, the show and what they're, what he's going to be for the show. Uh, so Going, yeah. uh, I was sorry. Go ahead. If I, if I can interject, going back to the, the whole super terror, super villain thing. Remember that they have like this massive library of movies and fictional comics and content based on the seven, you would have to assume that they would already be using the term supervillain to describe the opponents in those movies. So they're, they're acting like it's like it was just created out of thin air at that very moment when pretty much everyone would already be familiar with it. I thought they would have come up with a label well before then, like that was sticking. I feel like the public would have done it by now had they not. Well if the whole if Fox's whole point was to engineer these super terrorists so that their superheroes could be utilized against them to fight, you think they would have had a name ready to picked out? Uh, they didn't though, right? Oh, it was Ho Homelander's uh, plan was to create the supervillains, and he's the one who wants to push supervillains. Oh, I got you, I got you. Yeah, I got um, you. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. So, so who do they use as the villains in the movies? Then that's actually another. The, in the show, it's just yeah, the people Homelander, that like, Homelander got A Train and everything to. Yeah, to he, whoever a -train ended, was a ended up system. popping up. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, so it's revealed that um, Huey's been talking to Starlight, and uh, MM's very very pissed at him. And there's like, th there's a consistent thing throughout the season of Huey being sort of beaten down and not being able to stand up for himself. And by the end of the season, he says, "I am not gonna, I'm not gonna just attach myself to other things. I am now going to join this other group of people because uh, that is me group, yeah. striking out." It's a <laughs> yeah. The Huey. I'm gonna stand hilarious. on my own two feet by working for a different organization. It's, if, yeah, what's a, weird is that I'm, I, we're sort of skipping to the end, but the the justification he gives is that he wants to fight Vaunt the right way. Though you would think that after everything Huey has seen up to this point, the last people that he would have any kind of faith and confidence in would be governmental bodies to try and stop Vought the right way with how little that's worked. Yeah, that's, I think that's a fair point. Um, and because the boys are carrying on, too, by that finale. It's like, huh. Yeah, they get their and own like, it wasn't office just space. Anyway. He was attached to them. He was like, I thought the whole point was that he was the unassuming, useful member. He even makes a point about how that could be the case, but I guess the season is trying to argue, like, no, actually. He's kind of just there. I, like, I okay. find it weird that he doesn't see any value in this group, though. You well, know what yeah, mean? that's friends. odd. Like, yeah, they'd yeah. be like, you're the only family that I've ever really had. You believed in me in ways my parents never did. Or, you know, you were you people came to my you know rescue and you helped me when you needed it. 
Yeah. Wait, well, was... um, what's her name? Grace or uh, not Greg? Um, she at the end she creates a group or, or a group that has been created to specifically monitor and keep the superheroes in check like you it think is that a organization already exists <laughs> yeah so think? but the thing is is wouldn't huey like that would be the the single most uh impactful Suitable. way of 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 keeping them in check by I being don't think so. that. no if anything he huey should be incredibly disillusioned by the inefficacy of the quote-unquote proper channels to keep vought and the superheroes in check with how much they basically don't do anything, how Vought's allowed to continuously get away with things, how they get allowed to have power. Um, if anything, I would expect Huey to, at the end of the season, completely and totally believe that as much as he doesn't like it, the only way that he's going to actually be able to affect and change things is to be you know, underhanded and you know, have these espionage-level tactics. Well, that's that what the boys they did have been using. earlier. Like Grace, uh, Grace, Mother's Milk, um, Butcher, and Frenchie, they were that's what they did. Like, they got dirt on these the superheroes and stuff like that. Yeah. And they were they seemed unofficial, and right? That's that's what they, yeah, that's what they did with like Lamplighter and some of the others. It goes more into it in the comics, but regardless, they all... they were kind of like uh, it was kind of like a like a black on black type group within the government that didn't really answer to anyone. They just kind of got funding and did their own thing in order to keep the superheroes in check. The reason why it stopped was because Lamplighter killed Grace's family and she bailed and the whole thing just kind of collapsed. But at the end of the season, it's been put back together and she's in charge of it again and she wants Butcher to go and, and be a part of it once more. I still think so yeah, this is Huey, like Huey would choose that more than he would choose joining up with like a person running for Congress against Vought? It seems like a weird yeah, thing for him to it, do. Yeah, because it comes out of nowhere. It is it weird. Does. He just yeah. like shows up at this office. He's like, this is what I want to do. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, it's not very fleshed out. Like, Huey just has a couple of sort of beats where it's just reestablished that he's he's kind of like not that suitable for the boys, even though he totally is. Yeah. Um. And, I, and this scene is right after we learn that um, What's her face? The uh, AOC looking chick, uh, the head exploiter lady. Victoria After Vick. she's revealed to be the head exploiter lady, now you have you know argue, the, arguably the protagonist of the show now working right underneath her in her office. It's supposed to be like a oh kind of thing, and I yeah. think that's the only reason that they did it at all. Yeah, it's supposed to. That's, that's a hook for season three. It's like oh, how is yeah. that going to yeah. go? Because uh, um, he's probably he's going to get access to something at some point that'll change the plot line, which. We'll have to see when that happens. Um, and then I guess... Alright, go ahead. Well, I was just going to introduce like how the, the rest episode goes, so... Uh, oh, I was about to... Yeah, I was about to say that this we have the first of our, like, ten dozen blackmailing scenes in this season. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> they do it a lot, and there's never any leverage. Like, yeah, the characters uh, think they have leverage, but they don't. Two different... Pretty much every single time. To different, yeah, you're right. To different degrees of success, each of these blackmail situations go into different like levels of stupid they are. Um, the one for this one that is just so funny to me is um, she's like, "I'm gonna show people that you've been, you know, moonlighting or whatever." And it's like, yeah, that that could be bad for him, I guess. And maybe Vault would fire him, but versus company sabotage, uh, and it could also make you yeah. lose your job and the whole corporation falls apart. Like, I don't understand how this could possibly match up. And he even says to it, which I don't know why they included. Well, actually, no, I can speculate on that in a second. He says, like, if you make me do this again, I'm just going to tell everybody what you're doing. And walks off. And it's like, oh, maybe you should have said that the first time. Like, why, <laughs> why is it that you're, you're willing to do one, but not any more than one? Like, it's interesting. And it's because, of course, they want to limit how many Starlight has access to. That one is very important. Which oh, obviously has one, the, yeah. the scene and... between her and A-Train is makes it more stressful then. And I... I guess while you're saying that, I was thinking um, that about about the Huey thing is like you would think if if he was with the boys this whole time doing all the stuff that they did and it was under the table, then at the end of the season when they get like government assistance basically in their own office and supplies and stuff and they're more official, you think that would be more reason for him to stick around with them because it's quote unquote the writer channels now. Well, again, I I think if, well, if Adam, you ask me which 
group uh, Huey would join up with. It would be the boys V2, boys. if you will. Yeah, yeah. undoubtedly. At, at a minimum, it's going to be semi-official, and it's going to be well-financed. So, you know, you don't have to live underneath a pawn shop anymore. Yeah. And just they also it would also get protections, right? Yeah, they, they would get special access. Okay, this isn't, uh, special this isn't access like a public protection. Yeah, it's not like it's a public group that's, you know, working for um, you know, some you know, Congress and whatnot, right? Like this is a, like a black on black type organization where, you know, there's a, a line somewhere in the congressional budget that just allocates you a couple million dollars for a hammer. And it goes to this group like that's that's the kind of thing that they're doing. And, you know, not only that, but you also have the protection of like you're not going to show up on wanted posters or anything like that anymore. Like if yeah, something all of happens, the problems you had, exactly, they're going to go away. Gone. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But he's like, nah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's you. Yeah, they they get to be Call of Duty Black Ops, and and he decides like, nah, I don't nah. want to. I don't want to be. I want to work for a politician <laughs> um, who I barely know. I want to go door knocking and and hand out flyers to fight Vought. <laughs> he was really stressed when mean? he was with the boys. You guys just not remembering that. <laughs> just. <laughs> Oh, when, right. when he was, when he was in the like whale, it, remember when he was stressed out in the whale? That's that's oh, that's yeah. it. See, you can't handle being with um, the boys anymore. And so, when the season makes it explicit that he's choosing not to attach himself to people rather than I can't deal with the sort of the different excursions we end up on, I'm not mentally equipped to do it. That that might have been an interesting arc, but that's not the one that the season uh, purports. It's uh, it's the if you remember, he just he's he's just not doing his own thing. He's not standing on his two feet, I think is the quote that he says, right? Yeah. Something like that. So thank goodness by the end he does. By affixing him, yeah. By affixing himself to another <sighs> Yeah, it's really good stuff. Yeah. Um, to an even larger, or more public, even more amorphous, better like funded organization <laughs> full so, of work, working for a politician that as far as we know, he barely even knows exists, but okay. And yeah, and so of course, uh, the, the fast forwarding again, but the, the blackmail scene that is the first of what I want to I want to conservatively guess seven blackmails in the uh, season. I think that there may well be a blackmail in every episode of this season. <laughs> and they're all um, fucking dumb, and we're going to get to them, because my god. Yeah. Uh, Some of them are... I mean, the, the last one, man, really takes the cake. Yeah. <laughs> the last one. <laughs> oh, Maeve? Hmm? Oh, yeah, Maeve. Yeah, yeah, yeah Maeve. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, makes, it makes no sense at all, but we'll get to that. So we introduce Stormfront. And uh, yeah, recording some fun. herself on a phone, and uh, she's... you know she's in the seven, but they didn't tell Homelander, <laughs> like because they didn't think that would cause any problems at all. Yeah, which is weird, so... by the way. Without him going nuts and killing Daredevil, like notwithstanding, um, it's it's weird that you wouldn't tell the boss of the seven who's coming. You might want to just well, yeah, because then Gus says like, "Well, I make the decisions." It's like whether or not you make the decisions, you may as well it's tell. probably still worthwhile to tell him first. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? What What do you lose by telling Homelander we've got a new member? I don't understand. Well, yeah, because they didn't tell him and they didn't tell Maeve clearly either. Nobody knew. She just sort of rocked up on it, set. Didn't so even like, even yeah. the assistant didn't know. No, she didn't know. And she's like terrified. And this is all being. St oh, this is where we started really having trouble when we were watching this. We were like, okay, you can't have Homelander looking unhinged with his assistant looking terrified with this new hero being like, hey, everything's so great, woohoo. But at the same time, Stormfront's saying, like, do you really think um, th this place isn't real? Do you really think Storm uh, that the Maeve and Homelander would want to get anywhere near like the grunts? Or she, she makes some kind of disparaging yeah, right. comment while streaming it to the world. 1.8 yeah, million people. Not. It's like, what, are you, what, is, what is already happening? This is the first of many chat, okay? So calm down. But Vought allow Stormfront to shit all over them throughout the whole season, and they have one throwaway line to explain it, and it is laughable, and that's in the last episode. I don't even remember. What was the throwaway line? That she makes people angry, and anger drives up their oh, stocks. Oh, which is funny, right? You can make people angry without undermining your entire ad marketing campaign. I don't, I don't <laughs> like, see yeah. how With... the frontline superhero for your corporation about superheroes shitting on you is going to raise your stocks. I don't see how that makes any sense at all. 
Yeah, in in the first season, such a this is part of what we liked about the first season was how incredibly corporate Vaught was in terms of everything yeah. that they did, and Top that to seems wonder. to be just like disappear. Uh, it, it seems to be just missing from the second season. It's wow. nowhere to be seen. They just inexplicably don't do that anymore in a lot of the places that they clearly should be doing it. It's really frustrating because throughout the whole season, Vort has become astoundingly incompetent. Like, yeah, yeah, they amazing. might as well not even exist anymore with how how much of a minimal presence they have, uh, and the fact that they take no steps to prevent any of the bad things that happen from happening. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And remember, in the first season, that every one of the seven was like busy pretty much all day. That like dates, 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 appointments, whatever. Yeah. And then, and then the second season, Annie just goes on a road trip with uh, the other guys, and no one gives a shit from Vault. Well, yeah, in the second season, there's no, there's, there's basically no scenes of the heroes doing hero work. Like, there's only a couple, and each of them is Homelander fucking up big time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all we get. Like, we get a scene where Homelander shoots a laser through somebody and kills like a teenager, and then a scene where he crushes some dude's head. What, how are you going to cover that one up when well, a bulletproof no. man decides to kill a man who just has a gun? <laughs> what the hell? Oh, they, they did, did that this season in one, too. The first season, yeah. Oh, yeah, two, season they, one. He yeah, shot there's, us there's first. gunmen. You're bulletproof. And they, yeah, <laughs> like, there's no excuse to kill the criminal. You, He cannot hurt you. It is not possible for him to hurt you. You have no justification for killing him. And yet you slowly him. punch his heart out of his chest. Slowly like, punch uh, his heart out, yeah. <laughs> This is the thing. Don't don't assume from everything you're hearing from us that the boys season one is some kind of untouchable masterpiece. Okay, it's not. Yeah, it's um, five yeah, it's out not. of ten, but we still like it. We still we like, like it a lot. It, well, think, yeah. we still liked. I say liked season two. Uh, it was the end of episode two that I we like uh, about this show. We, yeah. we stopped. There are that... things to like. Yeah, I wish. I like. I like Homelander. I, I definitely like Anthony Starr as the actor. Uh, yeah. I don't like Homelander so much anymore, but I like the idea of Homelander, and I oh, definitely yeah, like really Carl good. Urban as Billy good. Butcher. Like oh, these yeah. are just great, cool yeah. characters. That's why it's frustrating, though, because it feels <laughs> yeah. like being wasted. It does feel wasted. Yeah, I agree. You feel like there's a lot of what a great idea, on, you know? Yeah. Like what a great idea, and it's just being squandered. Um. So yeah, so, uh, what's next? Yeah. I guess the big payoff we move to oh, now is no. uh, head explosion. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, our our contact with was she the deputy director? She was the deputy director of the CIA. And, yes, uh, she apparently had managed to piece together that uh, AOC was behind it all. Maybe and AOC killed her before she could get that information <laughs> out. Um, yeah, and, and the theory apparently goes, no one else knew this. Yeah, I, I, I'm curious if she was able to piece it together from one extra bit of information from the boys. I wonder what kind of files she may have, or what are the people who were involved, I don't know. Either way... And does that mean AOC was following her around? <laughs> like, I guess, I guess she, she had to be close by. by. She, um, Vaught, she had to be within eyesight. She's got, if, if we're to believe that she works with Vort, which is very, very likely, then she's got the power of Vort behind her, so... Right. Can I point out that when you are that high into management, you don't do any of that by yourself, and that you have no. like all these little minions? So there would be possibly a, a few or dozens of agents that would have all of this information that would be compiling it and giving it to her. It's not like someone that high up is going to go out like by herself and and start like snooping around like that's not and imagine if she uh imagine if she was wearing like a microphone game over for for Vort. There's, there's lots you of know? ways this could go wrong but let's assume it all went the exact way aoc would have preferred we're gonna call it that because i can't remember what her name is and a lot i've uh, seen so many people victoria newman it's victoria <laughs> newman that's her name well, loads of people call her it as well, and I thought it was funny because she kind of. I, I can see <laughs> well, how the, the, that's yeah. that the comparison. Uh, so of course, her plan is to blow up her so that no one she can't reveal that. But at the same time, Vort and uh, AOC want to create carnage on both sides in order to um, to get the government to want to buy out Vort's or buy Compound V and start supplying it. To the populace. To that's... law enforcement, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know if we should wait until the last episode to talk about that, but that's that's that was mind-blowing, that that was the overall plan for Vought. Uh, 
Because, yeah. because of course, Gus in I think the first episode says we're a we're a pharmaceutical focused company. That's the, our goal is to make money through yeah, pharmaceuticals. They want to sell Compound V as much as they can. It's five million a pop. They say that is a shit ton of money. They're going to be able to make uh, astoundingly I mean, cheap. Well, that's the, that cheap, too. Yeah. That too. <laughs> it's it's uh, it blows my mind it's, uh, to all several ways at once. But um, so the way to do it is to create a lot of fear about the super terrorists, and at the same time. Uh, at fuck the same time, creating potentially super terrorists. Like, yeah, and fuck with both sides to make it look like Vought isn't the one that's doing it. And, like, I don't know why you'd need super terrorists to sell Compound V. I don't you know think why you need to leave the boys that... alive. Yeah, like, just... If, you, if your goal was to sell that stuff to just whoever could buy it, <laughs> and damn the consequences, well, I guess. Well, I guess getting the government just, to buy it, it is, like, the best well, source of money funny, and it's right? legal. <laughs> For such a an effective corporation, it's weird that you would give away effectively the the one product that is making you billions of dollars through like marketing and advertising and merchandise and military contracts. If if you give it away, you no longer have the seven is not a thing anymore. You can't make no. money off of that because it doesn't matter. There's like ten million superheroes. You've destroyed your business, but the show thinks that it actually would save the business. Well, that's what the, that's, I don't get they want to convert their business from what it is to pharmaceuticals. They just for some reason. Is, surely, if you sell that much Compound V, eventually people are going to replicate it or some shit. Uh, oh uh, yeah, uh, people will figure it out. Of course, it's a sci-fi juice, but it was synthesized. What in like? Was it, did they say the '60s was the first? Time they did it. Well, if if Stormfront was made in the nineteen like forties or something. Or the fifties, yeah. Might have been, I guess yeah. it's, it's been like seventy years. Um, so yeah, because the, they're already uh, as as season two begins, uh, they have deals with the military already. Um, it's just it's just an interesting decision that they're making with the pharmaceutical thing. But we can get more into that when we hit the last episode. For now, it's just uh, AOC blows up her, but she leaves the boys alive, presumably alive, yeah. because the boys are a thorn in the soup's side, and she wants to create. Some more chaos there, but I, I don't. I, I, I would just consider them that they're not really that useful. They could easily turn on you, especially when the conversation they were having with this woman was about how there's a coup happening in Vort. So like you, you'd think they would be a little too dangerous to left alive, but fuck it, she does. Um, and I'm sure that's not going to bite her in the ass as time goes. I don't on. think. I don't think she's. I'm not convinced that she's actually working with Vought. I am. I am. I think that has to be it. Um, and I've seen people point out that, um, and I people are saying this is clever. I don't really think it's very clever at all. <laughs> where um, in the scene where uh, Deputy Director CIA head blows up, they're driving away, and I think MM's like, "Who did that?" Frenchie says, "I don't know." And then in the next scene, it cuts to uh, Gus watching uh, AOC on TV, and that's meant to be like, "Oh, that's a clue." And it's like, "Well, it's not a clue. I have no reason to assume that this person is blowing up people's heads, but." Yeah, that's uh, the heavily. We don't even, is that is the, the first time we even see her? It is the first time. That's I think yeah. that's well, why people think that it's clever. Fring is foreshadowing. Think, yeah. Okay, foreshadowing doesn't have to be explicit yeah. beyond just an implication. Um, uh, I it, it uh, probably works for Vort. That's I guess the, I ultimately yeah. like if Vort decided like we would like to sell Compound V, like surely the government would just buy into that straight away anyway. Or they'd say no. Or prevent them or from being able to sell it, it whatsoever. But at that yeah. point, you'd think there'd be more trouble than just selling it. As in, like, there'd be problems with the superheroes in general. And of course, I don't I see why like... the government wouldn't create a, a, a relationship there. Yeah. Like, well, I do think that Vought would be aware of of uh, AOC having powers. Because, remember, you have to get the dosages as a kid. And you know, a couple decades ago when she got the dosage, it would have been a heavily controlled, still highly secret. And they would have known because you look at uh like Maeve's parents and, and Starlight's parents and, and all that. Yeah. Like they they opted into it. So I think Vought would be well aware that AOC got one of the doses, right? But maybe I don't know, maybe she, I don't know. I'm still not entirely convinced that she's working with them. Maybe they will try to manipulate her at some point, or and maybe that will generate conflict. It just seems like she's not really doing stuff for Vought. She's doing stuff for herself. I think that they're going to try to position, because she's running for a re-election. I think they're going to try to position her where like she's going to be the next you know, president kind of thing. Like I think that's where uh, she's aiming well, for. Here's, here's my concern, right? So like, 
I don't believe that Vort does. Because she, if she has superpowers, it means she's had Compound V, and I don't believe that Vort is unaware of that for anybody. I believe that they would know every single person in the world, including the super terrorists who are actually injected with it. And if they know that she has the power to blow people's heads up, I can't believe that they wouldn't have her on their side or kill her. Like, barring that. Well, um, A-Train gave it, just just spilled it out to other countries, right? Through Homelander. I don't think oh, Vault really do know sure, who has but, it. But, like, um, so the question then becomes that if he's been doing that, she got it, what, injected herself with it to get the power to blow up people's heads and then go from there? Like, is that is that's that actually kind of interesting? Yeah, I guess she she just she she uh I don't know what her history is. Maybe they'll do that in season three. But I remember, guess, yeah. remember also that the powers are unpredictable. So just because you get a dosage doesn't mean that they Vought is going to know what powers you're going to get. Also, there doesn't really seem to be any outward like outward kind of uh, 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 what do you call it um, show basically of when she uses her powers like yeah her eyes change color but who cares um like it's not like you know homelander flying up in the air and using laser eyes right or stormfront using mm -hmm. that like victoria uh can just make head people's heads pop by just kind of like thinking about it and then and even the other character what's her face cindy like she has to use her hands and motions and stuff in order to actually make stuff happen but aoc just kind of does it so well, they might be aware of her having a compound V, which I think they would, but they might not be aware of what her powers are or any of that. I mean, they could, of course, come to the conclusion well, that what her what I meant was like, regardless of what her power is, if they know that she has compound V, they're either going to try and recruit her or kill her. That's all I could ever see being the thing for Vought. I don't see why they just let her continue to exist without trying to do any but then again they let uh homelander visit the sun despite the fact that he's meant to be a contingency for homelander oh, and don't man. do anything to stop That's... him so well see yeah. fringy i know that everyone's gonna want to jump to defenses of vote on that one in terms of like master plans there and stuff none. but they literally <laughs> say hopefully he gets bored yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking that might be the stupidest line the entire fucking show i couldn't believe they said that <laughs> hopefully he gets hopefully bored hopefully he gets bored <laughs> <laughs> um, so stupid. Mm. So uh, after that is the scene where Homelander and Gus uh, both vying for like you know alpha position, but uh, I guess and neither of them have it. Well, well it's Homelander weird. has all the leverage, doesn't he? Really? Yeah, Homelander literally holds all of the cards, and the reason that he's, I guess you could call figuratively beaten, is because Gus yeah. says you're not our main asset. But that was never <laughs> like, like a pro. Down. Do, who cares? Homelander's <laughs> like a god. He's in the room with you right now. And and Homelander, Homelander could, could destroy, destroy the company. He could destroy every. He could destroy Earth <laughs> potentially. Yeah. I I'm not sure exactly how he could do it, but uh, I don't know. Fly through the core at the speed of sound. That probably would fuck it up. <laughs> I mean, he can survive nukes apparently. If he could survive a nuke. I guess he could survive ten maybe, million maybe. degrees or whatever. Uh, either way, I found it a really odd scene, and then when Homelander leaves, they do this, um, they do this thing, they do it throughout the season with many characters. You know the shell shock effect? Where they, they like, it's zoomed in, sometimes it's blurry, sometimes the camera rocks, and they just play, like, a, a tinny sound. Uh, yeah. Yeah. they do it a lot, and for this one, it's obviously that Homelander is very stressed out, because he's just been, like, shown up where he was looking to have complete control of Vault, but it, much like the blackmail scenes, we were just like, um... Why, why would this be like complete control? I don't really like. I don't see why Homelander wouldn't still have all the leverage, considering he could destroy Earth. I, I don't see why that isn't yeah. used. Because of course he uses it against Maeve in the finale, but he doesn't use it against Edgar for some reason. Yeah, he uses it against Maeve despite the fact that he could immediately fly through her and then problem solved. <laughs> but we'll get to that, I guess. Yeah, I well, can't, I can't uh, help but you know, think about it. It's so stupid. Episode one might be, you know the best of the season so <laughs> this that um yeah. oh this is it yeah they're all recovering and of course things are getting spicy and uh she's like don't lie to me huey on the phone and, and he clearly does and he then lies. uh butcher comes back and that's what we close out with yeah and 
we guess we just move straight on to episode two. <laughs> yeah, no reason not, because we got a lot to get through, so we may as well just keep going. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, because again, we're not up to the really bad stuff yet. <laughs> like, we're getting there. It gets worse. <laughs> so yeah, Butcher, we get a, a, just a little flashback where he was um, he was dropped off yeah. uh, by Somewhere Homelander, and he immediately tries to remember the place that he saw his uh, his wife. Um. <laughs> And it's funny because he he finds out through a, a coincidental news report, I guess, that he's now a wanted criminal. And uh, the person talking to him is like, "Oh my God, you're the guy on the TV!" And he's like, "Ah." Oh. Yeah, but he just happens to play the thing that he needs to hear at the one time he happens to be by that TV. That's like, good stuff. Oh, okay. yeah. right, and then for the rest right. of the season, not a single person on the planet recognizes him. <laughs> no, it, yeah. it gets so much worse. They clearly gave up at some point. Yeah, at least it, at least it's their identity. With that one. And then, uh, and then we have the scene where they establish what episode two is about, which is I'm I'm butcher, I'm the leader, you're not uh, yeah, it's a Huey. Huey. <laughs> That's and that gets, so transparent. It gets solidified in the in the ending drama, which oh my god, I'm looking forward to us getting to because that's it's some great <laughs> Um, so I got a, I got it on screen here. This is Kimiko's attempt to prove to the other teams that, that hey, that's my brother. She wrote boy girl, boy girl, boy girl, boy girl, boy. Good job. So she can do boy and girl, not brother and sister, not family. Well, we've we've been over it. All the many, many, many mm -hmm. different ways she can fucking get this message across. And if anyone in chat says, hey, "Guys, she doesn't know the English language written," it's like, yeah, please. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> Does she have eyes that are able to interpret visual information? <laughs> Um, and this is the super awkward part that I mentioned earlier, where Huey calls out Butcher for being a fucking shit person, and he's 100% right. He says, like, yes. he abandoned all of you. I was the one who saved it. And he was like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I had faith in you guys to rescue yourselves. <laughs> Which, uh, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> just amazing. Um, and of course they don't oh, bring yeah, up the baby, good. because that would cause major issues. As if any of these characters would be able to stay on the team if they knew that Butcher blew up a baby. Or tried. Um, I don't know. Uh, they can be pretty murdery themselves. Um, I'm willing to accept that they will have limits on that one, but I could be wrong. I thought Butcher had limits on that one, so... Yeah, so, yeah. I guess we'll see. Um, so yeah, this was... We were so confused. We got a scene of Homelander just hanging out with his kid. We were like, oh my god, like... I, th I thought we were going to be getting, like... This is cataclysmic for Vought. This is... It's, the whole plan <laughs> is falling apart. Like, our Godzilla is hanging out with the fucking kill switch that we designed for him like we what he's just yeah. like what are we doing and it's just like we don't get answers for that for another is it this episode where she she gets the answer it it could be uh i think it is ah uh, do, 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 i'm just skimming no it's not this one it's the one afterwards and yeah so it's just really really strange we're just like i guess this is just happening now uh, he's just hanging yeah. with the kid which by the way is is nightmare fuel for vort surely like having the dad influencing the kid isn't that really, really bad? It's gonna make it harder for the kid to kill Homelander if that was the goal, eventually, possibly. Yeah. Either way, uh, one can argue, well, what are Vought supposed to do? And it's like, that's a really good question, actually. It just yeah. highlights how fucking stupid Vought are. Um, they another, don't even, they don't even really... try to get them out of there whenever Homelander is busy with something else. Yeah, like, just, like, just take them yeah. somewhere. And if you remember, that is the plan in the season finale, to take them somewhere else. Another thing to keep in mind is if they're trying to use him as like the contingency, they're doing a really stupid job of it because remember, until Homelander shows up, Ryan doesn't even know he has powers. Like he never even knew it. So they're making app so Vod is making absolutely no attempt whatsoever to help Ryan gain control of his powers and to master them into a into a way where he would actually be useful. <laughs> against homelander so like what what are they what are they expecting he's gonna do just like one day magically like i guess the, the, they were hoping to give him as much of a, a wholesome normal life as possible and then get him to train powers once he's but he's... you can yeah but those two aren't in con, con yeah, i know uh, i know yeah conflict I, I, yeah. i'm just trying to <laughs> I mean, we're, trying, at, we're trying we're trying and and with all the other soups like Maeve and Starlight and and the Deep and all them like they all you know get their powers early and and they start developing in them and they still have families and blah 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 and you know different levels of success with those but again like if you're just not 
I don't know. Homelander could break the speed of sound at like six or something, right? What was it? And uh, I can't remember specifically, but know... yeah, it breaks the speed of sound. But this kid doesn't even know how to use any of it, and it just seems like at what like at what point are they just going to say, okay, we have to start teaching the kid how to use his powers? Um, it's it's really odd, and I feel like we were blue balled on all of that drama because it just amounts to um, Vort being like, just leave him alone, you'll go away, and then he literally kidnaps the kid, and Vort are like, yeah. hmm, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't going great. Right. Damn it. Uh, you guys think he was a contingency? I don't know why. They said they the, literally said that the, 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 he was the plan. The, the the Homelander was an attempt to make Superman, and then uh, Ryan is the real Superman because Homelander's a fucking psychopath. Like Vort yeah. don't believe in Homelander. Everyone's fucking terrified of him. Uh, well, I I say that that's the my dream version because I really want <laughs> this show to be better. But I don't know how you can't laugh at Homelander in a lot of scenes and just like. And I think that's what they were going for with some of the scenes, like wanking over the city. That was, uh, <laughs> man, he's so intimidating. Um, so moving on, then uh, we get more deep we scenes. Get our Just gonna skip get that. It done. Yeah, we'll skip that, and then the girls get it done thing begins. Um, yeah, which I liked before they did it unironically. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Remember when they used to make fun of it, and then they and um, then they did the thing. <laughs> Mahler, I'm gonna send you a picture because I made this, and this is applicable to the to the memes as well that we're oh gonna God. see later on. Um, this is uh, it's it's kind of like a writing technique. It's also done with like PR and and political stuff as well, where essentially, um, essentially it's it's just a way of manipulating the viewer's opinion on things. Like you. You present something that most people would agree with, and then you say, oh, but this is attached to the worst person ever, therefore it's bad. You talking about memes? Is well, they it... did that with memes, but yeah. they also do it with the girls get it done thing, because the the whole the whole spiel is that, you know, the girl superheroes are better than the men. And like the, some of the, the journalists and stuff are asking that. And finally, Stormfront just says, no, that's just dumb, right? Like, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. It's, it's the, the content oh, of your character. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, yeah, because we thought that was cool. We were like, hey. Yeah, we're like, this that's... is an interesting... Well, I here's the thing. Now that I'm operating on this show with the information of what the writers think about people, I think that was supposed to set up the whole idea that, oh, all of these people who claim to be egalitarians, who yes. claim that maybe gender doesn't matter and you should focus on your own character. merits and talents and individuals. Yeah, they're actually fucking Nazis. Yes. yes. Well, yes. yeah, because uh, the whole Nazis can come in an appealing package sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. so it, but it, which is insane. Yeah, it sours those sentiments, which I think are, are interesting and positive sentiments that, um, People get it done. Good people get it done. Not, And, of course, we can at least take the value of, like, the show is making fun of, and everyone points this out, it's it's the Endgame moment where they say, she's not alone, right? No, no, that's Infinity War. What's the one from Endgame? What, what line Endgame is it? Endgame where she's got help. Uh, she's got help, yeah. Uh, and, of course, every single female superhero in the entirety of the just MCU just shows up, <laughs> which yeah. is... It's it's funny and stupid at the same time, and of course the show makes fun of it. And you're like, yay, high five! And then it does it in the finale, and it's like, oh. Mm. And a lot of people will say, hey, it's fine in the finale because they are women and they are superheroes. And you're like, yeah, what are you saying? The like, but they were women and superheroes in Avengers too. What? The, yeah. What? It's like, well, <laughs> like, okay, but they all had reason to be there. It's like, no, they didn't. Maeve no, they fucking didn't. teleported. Maeve <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, yeah. It amuses, yeah, that's, that's, it amuses me that people let this show get away with it because it made fun of it and did it, which I don't see how that which works. Which is worse than doing it. Yeah. I think. It's like it's like lampshading, right? Or lamp lamp what is that the the term for it when you highlight something stupid but then do it anyway? Is it lamp lighting? <laughs> oh nice. Uh, um But yeah. Uh and then um Maeve is like, Oh I gotta go. My plotline begins. It's like, ooh, and we'll find out more about that in a second. Uh, oh boy. So, May yeah, I feel like Maeve. They had no idea what they wanted to do with her this season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What What would be the summary that um? Um, uh, she's having issues with what's her name? Elaine. Is that her name? 
yeah. her girlfriend, basically. I forgot the yeah. name completely. I don't know. And that's like her thing, and she's afraid of Homelander, and then she wants to kill Homelander, and then she just decides to blackmail him, and that's to prevent him from destroying everything. Yeah. Also, from coming after it, it's funny. Um, we're gonna get to it, but like the idea that Homelander would allow someone to have complete control over him, uh, literally complete, like not even Stillwell had complete control over Homelander uh, through blackmail. Like, and you're like, yeah, but you know, the, uh, you'll 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 get fucked if I release this. It's just like fucking blow her head off, just do it. Yeah, it's just <laughs> laser her. She also just appears in that scene too. It's really good. We'll we'll yeah. get to the finale. It's so good. It's so well written. Um, Imagine if she didn't have Wi-Fi out there. <laughs> well, <laughs> she tried to upload the video. <laughs> oh, she's like tapping the upload button. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, come on. <clears throat> so I mean, he could have used his laser eyes to instantly melt the phone. Oh, he could have therefore... instantly. He could have killed her immediately. There's no. There's no way that scene works in oh, any got... way, shape, or form. So this is interesting. Uh, Butcher puts a baby in between himself and armed guards in season one, but you guys say he wouldn't kill a baby. He, he knows the no. baby. He knows the baby is super. He knows they won't shoot the baby. That's yeah, the whole point. And also, I've been seeing that guy for the last like hour saying how right you are about the fact that it's totally in character that Billy Butcher would kill a kid. <laughs> it's baffling that you would say that. You've been saying it for the last hour. You you are completely wrong. Abandon it. Give it up. It's not an argument that you're gonna win. Oh no. You. I don't, I don't know why this is such a hard thing for people to swallow. <laughs> um. <laughs> When you have, like, protagonists that are on, like, a righteous pathway in terms of making things better for the world, but then they will actually take a few... So, so sort of like, in, in aid of me stopping a villain, I will beat Fringy to death. It's like, ooh, that's that's tough, but, like, like what what's happening? It's like, oh, he's in the way, or he's trying to stop you, or he's brainwashed by the blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, all these different reasons. It's like, no, he's just... he's just there. <laughs> it's like, okay, that, um, that seems strange. Like, why? Because you guys haven't forgotten, right? Blowing up the C4 will do fuck all to Homelander. So why yeah. only kill the so, baby? Her, yeah, but what the implication is that Billy in will is willing to kill a child in a petulant act of defiance. I don't buy that. A character that's entirely focused on how he needs to avenge those who have been wronged by the soups Wrong. is will blowing wrong up child. babies. Yeah. Like, fuck well, off. I think I think so he He's not like trying to kill the baby, or he's not trying to kill Homelander. Right, he basically knows that he knows that like if he's alive, Homelander is going to. Oh, I'm totally cool with saying he's killing himself too, but it doesn't change yeah, the fact yeah. that he's killing a baby was... to do it. Yeah, yeah. So his yeah. priority was killing killing himself, but then uh, he just didn't care that the that the baby was going to get taken out as well. Yeah, which is bullshit. <laughs> That's just not that doesn't work. And unfortunately, I I think that they may have rushed it in season one or some shit. They should have written that. Uh, you didn't need the baby ultimately. You could have had Homelander walk in and talk to him and then blow off Stillwell's head. Mm. You didn't have to have the baby to prevent Butcher from blowing up the C four. I'm willing um, to bet that the show creators and the writers like legitimately forgot about the baby until I after think they the forgot. Show. Until the fact that two. the baby yeah. holds no interest in the season whatsoever other than a throwaway oh it's fine by the way moving on yeah it makes me think that, that it was brought to their attention post season <laughs> they one they're like oh they're fuck like... yeah there was a baby in that room <laughs> it's so absurd 17 miles away You're like okay <laughs> why 17 miles 34 percent of 17 miles um, maybe um, on, on, a, on a truck of cushions or something. So I'm actually looking forward to rewatching the show to get all of the specifics on Maeve and the other girl's relationship because I was under the impression that she like is done with Maeve. She, she, she like doesn't want anything to do with her. But then they're in the hospital yeah, and she's like, true. "Leave me alone." And then she's like, "By the way, Homelander like kind of kills anyone who shows interest in me in any way." <laughs> <laughs> Which again is like, like, "Are you serious? Why are you here?" Why did you why, come here? Yeah, why would you even come to the hospital? And it's like, well, I guess she she just wanted to tell her. Doesn't she say something like, "You have to stay away. We have to stay away from each other because otherwise you'll do something like horrible." Just doing. Do it over the like, like, like we. Ha that's the, our arrangement. That's what we were doing. <laughs> um, and yeah, and uh, but but it changes into like she's, uh, it's, it's Homelander reveals it to the world, and so then because we we're doing the arc, I guess we may as well the season arc, um, and and it's used. 
corporately is like, a, look, look, lesbians, uh, LGBT, woohoo, plus, 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 uh, except uh, she's bi, she's not gay, and that, that causes trouble. And that's something that I think was was okay, um, just barely any flesh, in, in terms of, like, yeah. uh, a commentary on how things work these days, which is, it's kind of... I could I could see that from a marketing wait, perspective. Wait, wait, it's like it's better yeah, for you yeah. to be lesbian than bi. Are you telling me that these mega corporations are not sincere when they change their You know? <laughs> you know? There may be something to that. I'm gonna say it. Um I said it. So uh yeah, and, and and of course I think that finishes out with her uh in the finale with Homelander, so we'll we'll come back to that as I, we go. I like how somebody's just pointed something out. They're still talking about the, the baby thing. Oh, Butcher knew Homelander would kill the baby. It's like, well, evidently, what? that's not what happened. Homelander um, saved the baby Homelander... from Butcher. i got to keep repeating that, because oh, it's the most fucking oh, yeah, bizarre was, statement. That, that guy pointed it out, though. He pointed out that it's like, but Homelander saved the kid, so n neither way does it work. It doesn't, there is yeah. no getting around it. It is a problem. You guys need... To... If you're still trying to say it's not a problem, it is. It's a very, very big problem. It, um... You, we went over this. The reason they had Homelander save the baby, despite the fact, by the way, that if you were going to choose, Homelander kind of hates the baby. I saw James Ball yeah, talking Homelander about this. Hated the baby. That was the thing. It's the one yeah. that stole all the, the attention from him. It yeah, perfectly it lines up that Homelander would let that baby suffer, but he saves it because if the baby died, we'd all be like, wow, Butcher killed the baby. Yeah. But the thing yeah. is, they're hoping you just kind of ignore the fact that he still tried. It doesn't matter if he did or not. Yeah. It's that's what we're talking yeah. about. Is his character. which is funny, right? Because that's that's what we call guilty mind, <laughs> which which makes it a cr like that. Yeah, uh, it, it was his intention. Rather. He was fine with killing the baby. He would have killed the baby. It was an out. It oh, is an external force guys, that saved the baby. Appa yeah. Apparently, the point is Billy knew that Homelander was having sex with Stillwell, so maybe it's his kid, and that's why he tried to blow it up. <laughs> that's apparently what fixes this problem. No, <laughs> that would be... Then he should be super invested and interested in this baby, as we learn from how he behaves when he finds out he has a son. God. Um, so I'm confused about this one, and again, I need to watch both seasons. Uh, I thought that um, the, the, this, this contact... Uh, I forget her name. What is it? Is it Madel Madeline? That was not it, right? The the woman no. who's the blonde lady. What's her name? Uh, uh, oh, oh still well is Madeline, isn't it? Yeah. The yeah. old one is Grace. Grace. Uh, Grace. I thought Grace? I thought that not she Grace? was like uh, in a safe house, staying undercover because of the fact that Vault were trying to kill her. I'm I'm guessing I was wrong about that because I was really weirded out by seeing her here. I was like, man, she came to a funeral, it's like quite a public place. She's yeah, in this car park. Wasn't... No, she her family was killed by by Lamplighter, yeah. so she wasn't like she I basically Vaughn's... just retired and and um. I thought Vault were the ones up... that had Lamplighter do it. No, Lamplighter Lamplighter decided to do it on his own because. Wow. Um, because they had information on they they had blackmail on him again because it's such an unusual <laughs> device in this show. Um, so they had blackmail on him in the flashback. They don't. I don't think they actually ever revealed what it was. But um, he walks away. He gets mad, and then she sends a Frenchie to follow him. And then he gets a phone uh, call from his friends. Yeah, but like, the OD. Okay. And Lamplighter goes and kills. Uh, Grace's family, which causes her to just, Throw just in the towel, retire. Sort of yeah. And because she was retired, she basically, you know, stepped away from all of it, and she didn't want to do anything anymore. So I think that's why Vought doesn't really care anymore. And it wasn't even it wasn't even Vought per se that was interested in her. It was it was uh, Lamplighter. I was gonna say it was hard enough to be sympathetic for Lamplighter, but that <laughs> that does not help. Oh yeah, I the idea that this show kind of tries to set up some sympathy for Lamplighter is pathetic, quite um, frankly. It's laughably <laughs> pathetic. You'd think uh, that would have bolstered her position on destroying the soups as well as Vort. And um, surely it would have been pretty... I don't know, I guess Vort covered it up? Because obviously he would be like, you would be in prison, right? Lamplighter for doing that if it became a public thing. He killed children? Yeah. He says he just... Uh, so... Apparently Vaught actually knows what happened, but they just kind of covered it up and right. he retired. 
It's like Transformers. What? You cover that all up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vort can cover it up sometimes, but not all the time. <laughs> 35%? 36? 40? 34%. Know. Yeah. Oh man, I'm looking forward. I'm pretty sure this is the episode with the really dumb blackmail. And I know that doesn't narrow it down, but we're getting it. <laughs> um, Alright, so... It is. Yeah, it is. We got right. the, the Patton Oswalt cameo. Just, uh, Which we can skip. Yeah, it's a nice go. chunk oh. of episode we can skip. <laughs> Girls Get It Done interview where Stormfront says things that are, like, accurate, but now with the context, apparently we yeah. now learn that it's a dog whistle. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, if a Nazi Remember, guys, is saying Equality it... is a dog whistle for Nazis. Also, yeah, I know I know, Lamplighter meant to kill her, I just mean that he, 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 he like, he it would have been known that he killed children. I'm just curious how he got away with it, and I'm guessing Vort would have said some kind of weird accident happened, and kids... Yeah, if they can cover up what Stormfront did in the apartment complex, oh, yeah. they can cover up literally anything, basically. Yeah. Also, if that was in reference to me condemning him as a person, it's not good to burn someone to death in their bed. <laughs> just FYI. <laughs> no, not, not very I'm nice. personally anti that. Yeah. I'm anti that, too. Uh... Mm. So yeah, but uh, girls get find a... out that A Train is uh is is alive and well, which is a major like whoa, because mm. if you remember, A Train was like furious that Starlight was major traitor, and if he used to tell Vort this, she's fucking donezo. Um, and he's an asshole, like as a character wise. I mean, he in total, um, the, all the horrible things he did is he, he killed his girlfriend. Um, because I can't remember, was that to cover, help cover up something, or was it because he was really pissed at her? He was. He was right. upset that she told uh, the boys about the compound, the compound v. v. Yeah, stuff. she was like had access yeah. to the compound v. Um, he threatened to kill Huey's dad. I think he was going to kill Huey. Like that was the plan before he was stopped. Yeah. And then of course he would have killed Starlight and Huey if he was able to. I imagine in the finale, but he was also uh, yeah. convenient, and we have the... inconvenient heart attack in that finale. <laughs> Again. Oof, wow, lucky. Unfortunate. Yeah. But of course, Oof. he's speeding around now. He's fine. Uh, yeah. Which is great. I'm sure that's not going to flip-flop depending on what the plot needs. Not <laughs> whatsoever. And of course, he's, he's hugging Starlight in, in the cameras. This is, this is concerning. What's, what's the deal here? And uh, we find out that he's exactly what you'd think he is. He's got... Do you remember? We were so baffled, we theorized he might be like a stand-in. He's not the and real Atron. Or, yeah, or a clone. Yeah. Which, by the way, yeah. I still think would have been the better plotline. They replace him because he died, and uh, he doesn't know about how he died. So Starlight's like, wow, you're, uh, okay. And then he, you I'm know, the new A train could be like, you're acting a bit weird. Yeah, like, what why, did yeah, happen? What, what's up? What are you doing? Why, why are you acting so weird? It, it's your old buddy A train. Yeah, I think that could have been cool. But instead, A train is more of a ping pong ball in this season. He's much like the Deep, but at least he has plot relevance, where the Deep is mainly just a joke. Um, yeah. So, of course, he knows he has leverage, and he decides um, that he's going to keep an eye on Starlight. That is that is what he's going to do. As opposed to immediately doing anything about it. <laughs> yeah, he could he could literally burn the shit out of it, but he's like, no, going to keep an eye on you, see what you're up to, which is really strange. He has all he needs to condemn her straight away, but uh, fine and dandy. Um, I, I think Butcher tells them that he's got the deal. They need to capture the telekinetic soup and give him over yeah. to the... Uh, the CIA, and in exchange, they he tells them they'll get access to something, but in reality, he's trying to get access to his wife, right? Yeah. yeah. Which why would uh, Grace have that information? Just just help me out. We'll be able to get that information. Military lady. She doesn't. So she... she doesn't know where uh, Becca is, um, but she's just going to use her sources. Yeah. To... Yeah. It's that soft. I'm I'm government person. I can you'd, get information. You'd yeah. think Vault you would need have it. that. Does the under, plot need it? I got it. You'd think Vault would have that under the most of wraps. The most, even with like fake places that she's not actually in, just to keep the main one secret. Although, can I can I point out that the facility where Becca is being held is being enclosed by a gigantic forty foot black wall. <laughs> That probably extends, you know, a couple a miles suspicious. at least. I mean, wouldn't that probably, I don't know, like, you'd have nearby people, like, thinking, hey, why is there, you know, Mordor over on the right-hand side? <laughs> at that point, right? I guess we can just be critical of Vort for being retarded enough to have it so that it can easily be spotted. 
or it wasn't it easily spotted there. and it was in the middle of some distant forest or something and it's just unfortunate that Grace had access to that information. Mm. <laughs> it's like, all right then. Yeah, I mean, it's, you got me. So, more of the Deep talking to his gills. What Pass. I believe what they. Sentence? I believe they sing a song. Uh, yeah, they, it goes on for long. Oh, that was something. It was funny. He's like tripping out in shrooms, and he's angry, and he wants out of the room. They lock the Deep in his room. He yeah, can't get out. out. It is. It is a. Is a wooden door with your standard lock, and for some reason, the Deep can't get through it. It's like a bunch of okay. windows. Like Maybe the shrooms it, reduce his powers temporarily. That must be it. Maybe he has a shroom allergy. Oh, also, yeah. He was blocked that's right. From the outside, which doesn't. That's not how doors work. It's a weird door to have a lock on as well. It's like his that's, No, that's that's their drug room. That's where they send everyone right. to be enlightened oh. by themselves. Well, they so actually this, did isn't the, it his place? They did the same thing at the uh, at the end of Enola Holmes. She gets locked inside of the house like they they walk in through the front door and they turn around like two seconds later and it's locked and they can't get out it's like you do realize that doors lock from the inside and they did the same thing in this show too it just doesn't make any sense it's just the plot needs them to not use the door so <laughs> this is is it the archer's place or is it deep's place i think it's I think it's Archer's place. Um, it's, maybe yeah. he's got a specially designed door just for this. Anti yeah, this is door. yeah, this is their drug room. It's, um, yeah, because they they're like, oh, he's got to work through it. They can't let him out. It's like, but he's a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, we're already next next to the supertism. So, uh, scenario: you got Stormfront just chilling out, and she has a bag. That's going to be important. And Starlight is just having a chat with her, and then Gecko, the guy she's got that uh, deal with, comes up and he just he just hands her the the pack that has Compound V in it in Vort. He just has it. He gets that. How he gets that? We well, he just he gets. He it. apparently stole it from the lab, but I don't see how you could possibly get away with that. That's like the yeah, it's five million dollars a pop. How do you manage to do that? I feel in, like there'd be general, so many levels of security on that thing, and he's just a test subject. He's not like someone I assume who regularly accesses it, but let's just say he does. I still don't yeah. get how you can steal that. Yeah, there's going to be cameras everywhere. There's going to be searches after you leave the area. I mean, even God, like even leaving um, certain secure areas, uh, you're going to be searched for stuff. Like there's there's no way that he gets out with this. Um. And to give her this in Vort Tower when she's right next to uh, right there Stormfront. By the way, let's see if I can get the shot. <laughs> this fucking blew my mind because I, I, I wanted to know because she comes back into frame a little bit later. Uh, let's see if I can. Oh, I should probably watch copyright there. Sorry. Um, so uh, when we see Stormfront again, she's got some food. Look how far away Stormfront is. Let me. I'll get you the uh, screenshot as well, guys. Fucking insane that the Gecko and Starlight would uh, either of them would ever think that this mm -hmm. is a good plan. I think Starlight is surprised that he's doing this, but yeah, he's a fucking idiot. Is is basically. I'm pretty sure she's just like, we can't do this here. Like, yeah, fuck. but they, of course, they they want it to happen here because something else happens, and that is A Train was spying on her, and he uh -huh. zooms up to her to ask her what's in her boot rather than grabbing what's in her boot, which he does later. Yeah. Really good job, A Train. He he speeds yeah. up. She's literally just put it in her boot, and he's like, "Hey, what did you put in your boot?" It's like you're a <laughs> fucking speedster. Just grab it. And um, yeah, he just speculates for a while, and then uh, he so rather than spying on her to know that she did it, this time he watches her put it in a bag, and hmm. he doesn't know what happened. There's to absolutely it. this scene was infuriating. There is no no way that he could not have seen it. When she's trying to put the bag inside of her boot, she has to bend over in order to get it in there, like right there. And then when she's walking over to the bag, does <laughs> like does her arm just grow and like an extra foot, and she can reach down into her boot to take it out? Like it just does. Like I know what they were doing, but it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's fucking over. Like she's caught, and <laughs> somehow this works. But unfortunately, it's it's Stormfront's bag, so. 
Stormfront picks it up and takes it away, and of course that'll be resolved toward the end, but yeah, A-Train... Even A-Train's really fast. What the <laughs> hell is A-Train doing? <laughs> it's, like, it's, such a, it's like, if your goal is to catch her out, you already have the information you need. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. It, and and it's like oh he wants to know what her current plan is I guess like yeah I mean as opposed to just getting her out <laughs> just altogether. getting captured yeah. but of course we gotta wait because um the show we need is we operating need as though he's already been blackmailed but he hasn't been blackmailed yet well Stormfront needs to have her scene where she talks about oh you know don't let people walk all over you so that she can be like he 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 oh, it is. now I'm the strong woman it is this on. episode uh it is this episode yeah. Oh no, I mean about it's... saying Homelander will get bored. Oh, Ooh, boy. is it? So, yeah, uh, the mum goes to the, like, I guess, the outskirts of the facility, and she even speaks to someone on the phone, and they're like, just put up with Homelander, hopefully oh, he'll yeah. get bored. <laughs> <laughs> That's their plan. It's, like, mind-blowing. Uh, Vought don't seem to give a shit. And, again, if you were like, what can they do? They could evac them whenever Homeland is busy with some kind of press tour. Yeah, but they don't. Um, I guess we yeah, kind of covered. Isn't it. there? Isn't there? The uh, the reasoning is like, oh, he's gonna find them anyways again, so we just don't. Well, do but anything. that's the plan of the finale. So fuck it. What do you yeah. mean, find him anyway? He didn't find them anyway. He found it from but having to did, interrogate yeah. somebody. So like, if if the logic is well, you'll just interrogate someone again. It's like, well, so what are we doing, guys? Just give up? <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh well, fuck it. Homeland is always gonna ruin our plans. It's like, good job. What a wangus. I tell you, man, Vort just they they reminding me of the First Order, which is not good. <laughs> um, so yeah, Maeve and GF having a back and forth. I think we kind of went over that. And then Homelander trying to connect to his son. Um, but even the son's finding him super weird. And then this is, this, this is what I find to be funny, where the, the mom is like, get the fuck out of here, and he's just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, yep, that was never gonna work, but alright. It's um, also pretty lucky that the son didn't hear that, since he may well have super hearing. And he's right, well, normal hearing might be able and to get you that. Normal hearing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If he walked up to the door. Uh, so the plan begins. We've mounted up with, uh, I think they've got pistols and a trank rifle, uh, ready to capture this guy. Meanwhile, Kimiko stands silent as the grave when they're yep. all essentially hunting her brother, who may very well kill them when he sees them, ex obviously except for mm -hmm. her. She knows how dangerous he is. Very fucking stupid. But hey, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, we find out that the people who have him in this building are the people who fucked her up in the first place, question mark? I think she kills one of them and it's like... Yeah, it's yeah. the shining light. Yeah. And so, uh, lucky for them, she gets to him first, and she establishes that they're cool, all the boys see it, so threat neutralized everyone, we're great, we're gonna be, gonna be fine. Um, Entrance, Butch! So, so Butcher is like, you know what? Nah, we gotta tranquilize him anyway. And I'm guessing the only argument you can make here is that Butcher doesn't want to make friends with this guy, he wants to capture him to get to, to give him up. But Butch... Yeah. But you don't make me say that's butcher now. Right. That's his sister over there, the superhero. She's probably not going to be happy <laughs> yep. with you doing this. And even if you yeah. trank her too, Frenchie's not going to be happy about that. It's like, what is your plan here, you fucking no, idiot? No, no plan. Shoot. Shoot. And so, yeah, despite knowing this, Butcher goes for the shot. Uh, Huey fucks it up, which, of course, he should, <laughs> because what the fuck are you doing, Butcher? But unfortunately... This, the telekinetic takes that as an attack, as he should, and he brings the whole fucking store down on him. Oh, well, yeah. a lot of it. Baffling scene, because uh, it, it all hangs on Butcher being an idiot, which you're going to be hearing us say a lot throughout these sort of episodes. God damn. Yeah. I know. So someone said, uh, uh, does she know how dangerous he is? Um, if you're referencing the it. telekinetic, they, they saw him pick up a ship and throw it, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And she does care about Frenchie, so there you go. <sighs> really annoying scene. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, we cut back to the whole situation with with Stormfront. As Fringy said, she she gives some a bit of a, a bit of a chat that's like perfectly good in terms of like I think at this point we were like this Stormfront character is not too bad because we were blissfully <laughs> unaware of what they were planning on doing with it. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't know anything about the comics either, so we were just like, hey, you know, she says she's, yeah. she's a little edgy, but she says some stuff that's kind of meaningful. You know, it's, it's neat. 
and um, it inspires Starlight, which we will see what, yeah. what that means in a moment. She takes back the uh, Compound V and puts it back in her boot. Luckily, A-Train is not watching her this time, <laughs> like, I guess, because he's, he's selective with that sort of thing. Not that it matters. And then um, uh, Butcher tells Huey to fuck off, and the implication there is, like, you're out of the team almost, and then uh, they're like... It's her brother. Like, Butcher, what the fuck? It's her brother. Like, why Why are you still trying to do what you're doing? And then he's like, wouldn't you, uh, you know, still take this guy down to save, to be back with your family, M.M.? And and, and they're all like, uh, hmm, this is, this is a bit dodgy. Uh, and then he's, he, he's, he tells them that it's all in aid of getting back to Becca, because Becca's still alive. Which, for some reason, is good enough for them. Yeah. Uh, so... When you have one of your team members, beloved, is in trouble, I don't think it's it makes sense for your team to decide, okay, at the sacrifice of one of our beloveds, we will save yours. It's like, wait, Aha. that seems contradictive, actually. Like, that's probably that's not... an equal exchange. And so they're just like, yep, let's do it. We're going to go have to find him. Let's hope Kibiko is okay with this, which, lucky for them, <laughs> like, we're, we're almost there. Um, so he tells them that's going on, and they decide, yep. So they're gonna go find them. I guess, uh, chat, you're welcome to let me know how they're planning on finding them. Cause can I, I... Can I also... Yeah, go ahead. Can I also point out that if Butcher actually had... Uh, I think his name is Mouse, whatever, her brother. If Butcher actually had killed her, uh, killed him, rather... Oh, he wasn't um... gonna kill him, he was gonna trank him. Was it a trank though? It didn't look. Yeah. I thought it... Yeah, it was. I I was curious. I checked it. It's definitely a trank rifle. Because was... the the point isn't to kill him; it's to give him up to the. Uh, I, I keep wanting to say CIA versus FBI. It's one of those. Yeah, think, yeah, yeah. one of those. I think it's CIA. Alphabet soups. Government okay. people. Okay, never mind then. Because I was gonna say, if he did actually kill her, the, uh, kill him, then Kamiko would have just ripped his face off like well, th immediately that's why I, yeah. I appealed immediately to butcher what are you doing if you knock him out and try to give him up kamiko's gonna be like fuck you <laughs> of course like yeah, why, yeah why, she's why? not gonna let him do that uh, it's a bizarre moment uh, butcher's brain just stops working in order to uh make it happen because of course we need this uh coming action scene we're about to get there but first uh we have starlight in vort tower texting oh Huey here we go that she's <laughs> uh she's got She's got it, and she's gonna fucking... It's just like, I, I don't get... We're already losing it. It's like, why why would you do anything in Vault Tower? How are their cameras not everywhere? Like, what? Fucking super dangerous. But then, of course, A-Train pops up, and uh, he actually this time takes it out of a boot. He's got it. And he's like, wow, you got Compound V. Like, so whatever your plan is, I'm gonna go expose it, you're done. Now, I, I would normally just roll out the problem with this scene, but I don't know if anyone else wants to take it. I don't want to talk too much. No, well, go for it. Not... Boot, though. Like, he already checked it and found that there was well, nothing. Well, I mean, our big problem is, like, it's over. It's, you're done. S Starlight loses. If he knows that you've stolen Compound V, he can just immediately run off, tell somebody about it, um, and, and it's over. You know, she's out. She's probably dead. Um, probably. And then I think she immediately pivots to, like, I'm going to tell them about, I think it was Popclaw? Pop was that? Yeah. That was, yep. yeah. They, they pivot to Popclaw and, and immediately it's like, A-Train, kill her. And just run through her. Or snap <laughs> her neck, kill her. And well, just do it. <laughs> wait, wait. So, the the evidence, right? So let's just say the five of us are on a jury and she's got him in mm -hmm. court. Now, uh, she says, A-Train killed Popclaw. And we're all like, <gasps> what's your evidence? Oh my goodness. Well, you Provide see, evidence. Um, several syringes were put in her at once. Do you really think she would have done that to herself? Right? That's, that's evidence one. And we all go, hmm, yeah, that does seem kind of mm -hmm. weird. Yeah, maybe. Hmm, oh, okay. God, maybe. Evidence two. One of the syringes pierced or scratched or, or whatever the bone. It, it actually like, went the into bone. the bone. So oh, clearly... Oh, yeah, she had access to the autopsy report. To wait, 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 well, we're getting there. So, she, that, <laughs> so that's evidence two, right? So someone did this to her. And you know what? The five of us like, yeah, okay, agreed. Someone did do that to her. It was A-Train. Okay, uh, I, I don't... Yeah, it's like, um, that seems like a bit... Not necessarily. Uh, it's like, well, I can provide motive. And you're like, go. It's like, well, they were dating and... Uh, uh, they, she yeah. made a deal with some people that A-Train hates with Compound V, so he was angry at her. And then A-Train says, no. <laughs> and then that's it. 
So, yeah. hmm. And who is Vort going to try and cover up out of these two? The one who is loyal to them, or the one who is clearly Making trying to fucking destroy them? Yeah. It's like, okay. So yeah, she's got nothing, is, is the point we're trying to make here. And uh, he treats it as though it's the smoking gun. He's fucked. He has to, he has to go yeah. along with it now. He can't do anything else. I mean, Vaught already covered it up. Like, it's already established that they did cover it up. But of course, a bit weird that she even had access to this forensic report that Vaught this did. File, yeah. <laughs> like, why would Vaught let her have access to it? And why would Vaught even report anything weird? Why would Wouldn't they, they just write be like, anything down that the. Yeah, that's they'd be like, weird. clearly suicide. Our forensics team said suicide. La la la. Bye bye bye. Yeah, and then they, they just the, keep the, these the, files around. Just, you know, for just, just good. It's just good record keeping, really, you know. And, and and all of this happens because if A Train leaves her alone temporarily, once Vort gets outed, it becomes much harder for him to actually yeah. get her in trouble. And that's the only reason this happened is because they wanted their scenes. And the cherry on top of this whole wonderful scene is he gives her the V back. Yeah, mm, yeah. Why? Instead of just keeping Instead it. Instead of just not and keeping it, yeah. Even if you believe she has full blackmail on you, you don't have to give the compound V back, you fucking idiot. And again, just do whatever you want with this, I guess. It's all good. All he needed to do was just run through and be like, yeah, she was going to expose you. See, look, this compound V, she took it from down oh, in yes. the lab. She blackmailed that guy. Fringy's right, so uh, of course if her claim is true, and she had unequivocal evidence that he did it, and it's in this forensic report, then just kill her. And then destroy the forensic report. Yeah, which is not hard it. for him to do, apparently. He, he has good access yeah. to reports and files that are kept squirreled away. Um, I don't think that A-Train You don't even need to do that. Sorry? I don't think A-Train actually can kill her, because she's... She has invulnerability, and she Sometimes can... not invulnerable. Um, she can absorb she's a 50 tough. Cal. She, she she's gets tough. knocked out by a fifty cal, and apparently Homelander can kill well, her. He can crush remember, her. Remember the fifty cal. The fifty cal knocked her to the ground. So yeah, I, I believe that A Train is strong enough to snap her neck. I I can't believe that he wouldn't be able to. Um, yeah, I'm pretty certain he could kill her. Um, but even if not, yeah. all the other points stand. But yeah, even if he even... could kill her, he can still run away and expose her, and then she's done. Even at the at the end of the scene, though. I like I have to ask what what has progressed like at the beginning of the episode we have a scene between the two right after right after he recovers right like he's playing the oh, guitar. they have yeah. a little scene where they don't trust each other and they both have blackmail on each other right she knows that he has he was been using compound B and he knows that she is in cahoots with the boys and what happened at the end of season one then we have a secondary scene of these two together where once again they don't trust each other and really nothing happens he doesn't you know he suspects her of doing something extra bad i suppose i don't know how you get worse than traitor but you know whatever <laughs> um and then we have this third scene here again where the where the result is nothing like there's no change between these two characters at the beginning they don't trust each other they have blackmail information on each other we get another one and then we get a third one and it's the same thing like they just repeat it again and again like what well, is the, the only thing that changed is that uh stormfront gave an inspiring speech and so yeah. now Confidence well, I've seen a lot of people He's inspired. Uh, say that this season could have been condensed into, you know, X episodes. Really not my main issues at all. Like, the idea of wasted no. time. I, I completely understand the complaint, but I'm so much more focused on how Tism the writing is. I could go I've, I've seen people say that, uh, that A-Train can't kill her, but if A-Train can run through a human being and be fine and not, like, cut up at all, he's strong. He, I don't, yeah, he I don't, just he's a He's very dude. resilient himself, yeah. He, he, has has to, he, he has to be resilient. He can't run at those speeds without being resilient. I mean, he doesn't have yeah. to necessarily just run through her. He just can just knock run her into her. Also, couldn't he and throw break something at her really fucking fast? Well, did, didn't, uh, didn't Starlight get tranquilized? or Not tranquilized, but knocked out when she got captured yeah, by... Yeah, uh, Black Noir knocked her out. Yeah. yeah, so she can be knocked out. Also, if you drop her in a Which volcano, means, what happens? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Grab her before she can even do anything, and the, I'm sorry, like, like yeah, grabbing, there's no way they can. What if you her. grab her foot and just run, like, you know, with, with her just going, blah, yeah. blah, 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 just slamming around all over the place? Like, yeah. I have to imagine that would do a lot to her. 
or just yeah, like you know, again, like, I don't know, super speed characters really powerful. Yeah, I think I feel like a lot of stuff forgets that if you're really fast, you're kind of are like the best hero. Nobody yeah, can speed, stop you. We've talked about this before. Speedsters are a problem. They're, they're so powerful. Uh, you got to yeah. be really careful having them. Yeah, as long as you're clear on how they work, like you'll. I guess it's, it's, <coughs> they're close to time travel in terms of how complicated you have to make sure you set your rules. Yeah. Um, I did see somebody mention that A Train's not smart enough to think of these things that we've uh, suggested. But not I running, like he's not, not smart gonna... enough to run fast. Oh, that's racist. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Mel. <laughs> nice. Storm front in the chat here. Oh, and as somebody's pointed out, he pierced his girlfriend's bone with a syringe and she was a superhero. It's like, yeah, he's strong. <laughs> There's no true, getting true. around it. He has to be. Um, but yeah, that seems insanely stupid. It's but then terrible. what do we have out? I was yeah. gonna say, but it gets capped out. Even stupider coming. Mm. So you got Kimiko and uh, Mouse. Is is his name Mouse? That's distracting me because of Batwoman. I think it's because <laughs> now I'm thinking about <laughs> yeah. Mouse. <or> Batwoman. <laughs> so they're discussing <laughs> what's next, and uh, you go. If you guys remember better than I do, I think she wants to go back to the boys. He wants to destroy Vort, and he doesn't want to team up with the boys to do it, but she does. Is that? I, yeah. I don't even think they've he's, really he's not... suggested it. Does he? He wants to go. No, she, yeah. One he of her to... options is to go back home, she even says, right? Yeah, yeah, she wants to go back home. He wants to destroy. He says, like, he phrases it like America, the country. Yeah, he wants yeah, to yeah. destroy but superheroes. They're all monsters. Yeah, so they have a common interest of destroying Vought, but she never mentions that, oh, yeah, we're trying to take down Vought. You want to kill Vought. So Let's we need to it. be working together. It's just like the obvious thing that we need, we need to do. But. It What's isn't funny, even suggested. Um, was no, it's not. Uh, when we watched this, uh, Fringy, you said you'd, you'd seen like a promo, or whatever. You knew that those two fought, right? I knew that they fought because so you, um, there was a shot in one of the promos. Yeah, yeah. You you said like they're gonna fight. You remember? I was like, why in the world would they possibly <laughs> fight? There's no fucking reason these two would fight, yeah. and, and they do. They have a battle. They do. It's you know, it's yeah. really fucking it's stupid. It's funny because um. Yeah, he like throws her into a building and she somehow manages to catch up. Kimiko's I'm, not super fast. I'm more but... okay with that than I am with, yeah. if we fast forward now to, uh, just quickly, to a line from him, he says something along, when he's captured, he says something along the lines, he doesn't want to hurt people. Um, <laughs> but he's willing he to He fucking her, tosses yeah. her into an apartment yeah. building. Uh, well, I think even worse than that is, so she knows what his power is, but he doesn't know what her powers are. She only says oh, that. Yeah. She, she oh, yeah. She only says that, well, I'm a monster. You know, he says they turn me into a monster, and she says I'm a monster too. <laughs> but she never explains what her powers are. So her brother, mm -hmm. who supposedly loves her, doesn't know what her powers are, doesn't know that she has invulnerability, doesn't know that she has super healing, and throws her through a fucking building. Um, like that yeah. don't know. The one thing you could counter with that is she could have told him between cuts. Yeah. Maybe. Um, but, but I'm also focused on yeah. whoever he threw her at. <laughs> like, yeah. He could easily have that, hurt the shit out of somebody. Building. Yeah. Um... Well, anyway, right, so that's not even the stupid part. Like, she immediately catches up to him and tackles him to the ground yep. and manages to, like, choke him out. And uh, it's like, okay, well, so, I mean, the only thing left now is for the boys to be able to find them, because obviously we have no idea where they are in comparison to the boys. And they just show up. Oh, uh, they just show <laughs> up, yep, yeah. They're just here. <laughs> they There's literally, one random man. street in New York. They turn a corner and they're just there. And it's like, how the fuck did you guys find them? What the hell? And you can't make the argument of they heard the apartment They heard wall. the apartment crash. That was several blocks. That was like at least a block away. And well, that, that, that doesn't even include how many blocks they would have been away anyway. This is a big yeah. place. The idea that they were in earshot of something like, oh god, it was so in New dumb. York. Yeah. They, were just, they were just driving around and they happened to stumble upon them. But I think another thing is, is if let's say half of your apartment building just like kind of collapsed because someone was thrown through it, don't you think that like emergency res emergency responders would be like covering they beat that the boys area right there? Now? Surely, oh, it's so dumb. They just yeah. show up, and then and then I think isn't the thing that happens in the end is that Billy punches. Uh, Huey. Uh, Huey in the face and is like, oh, yeah, because he get says, a, don't get in... me in my yeah. <sighs> Kiwi didn't even know. He didn't know, so it's totally bullshit. What the hell are you punishing him for? Anyone else is fine with this. 
Yeah, oh, everyone man. else just lets this go. Yeah, They're just like, well, whatever, you, you got in the way of him and his missus. It's like, what are you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so lame. Yeah. Not to so, mention and the... that. It was at that point, yeah. It, it's just, like I said, it still comes back to the issue of uh, we're happily sacrificing a team member's brother for a team member's wife. That seems weird. But, uh. Yeah, especially when the team member's brother is a much clearer save. You know, he's, he's a lot easier yeah. to save than your wife. All we're gonna get is the location of the wife, aren't we? In exchange for a person, yeah. so. But yeah, well, it was I mean, at this point that I think we turned on this show. <laughs> yeah, this. Well, so still, at, yeah. at the end of this episode, we were kind of done. We were like, "So this is yeah. terrible." He's still a member of the Shining Light, which is a a a, a bad man group. So, um, like they they can't just leave him running around which is actually kind of makes it even more dumb because when like he says he doesn't want to hurt anybody and yet like he seemed to have no problem picking up a ship and like throwing at like oh, at well, everybody the reason I didn't, I didn't cite that one just in case there's context of like that person trying to hurt him or some shit i don't really know it's a security we, camera no, no, no. but even then his he states that his enemy is it is America, right? Like, it's not Vought, it's not Homelander specifically. Like, his, he views his enemy as America. So it, it stands to reason that he's probably going to do some bad things to begin with. Um, so it, I it, think like, it, it, it seems conflicting. No, I, I think if his sister, who, whom they clearly love each other very much, so if his sister came to him and said, listen, you hate Vought, right? We both agree on that. Oh, yeah, yeah I, like, agree. I agree. Yeah, for now, like, can we just both focus on the common enemy? And then over time, you know, she, you know, because like these people, they actually helped me. They took me in. They, they're keeping me safe. Uh, that sort of thing. Like, I think that have a lot of, you know, sway with him. But even if it didn't work, which, you know, it might not. The I mean, attempt it does wasn't even later made. on. It does later on. <laughs> they do team up. Well, I mean, in, in that episode. in that in that moment, I mean, but yeah. like the the attempt isn't even made. And I don't know, maybe she doesn't. Yeah, know like how to the, the idea that they have to prevent him from doing evil or whatever. It's like, yeah, the, the, there's plenty of ways to do that that don't involve handing him over to the CIA as as the immediate choice. You think uh, there's yeah, lots of got, things you got more to do. options here. Well, I mean, they do. They try what we were expecting them to actually try, which is talk to him. Uh, seen in scenes to come. Okay, it's get so, him on the team. Imagine so... if he had the boys with two superheroes. Yeah, that'd yeah. be that'd pretty be useful. Well huh? It even mm. works out pretty well in this episode among a bunch of stupid garbage that we're gonna get to. Uh, I've, the I next keep episode seeing, is really bad. Keep seeing comments, by the way, about how much we're nitpicking. It's, it's uncanny. These are not nitpicks. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I don't know what to say to that. It's not a nitpick. Like none of these are nitpicks. These are all structural. Very important yeah. that we get these pieces right. So, it's just satire. It's okay. Uh, we open with Butcher <laughs> apologizing, and Huey doesn't like it. And there's just a bit of tension, conflict yeah. there. Well, and yeah, then... because Huey starts punching Butcher now when it should have happened in the last episode, like in that final scene. Well, now he's, it's weird. He's, uh, he's he's cowardly a bit. He's, he's working himself up. Remember, it's only the end of the season that he yeah. finally stands up for himself, okay? Even though he stood up for himself in front of A Train in season one. <laughs> Shut up. But, That's and, different. This is about him not being with a group and instead finding a different group to be with. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah but they're on the boat and they're uh they're having a conversation with grace to uh to set up their their meeting or like they're gonna send a helicopter to extract uh, also, uh kimiko's brother right you you said none of these are nitpicks of course some of them might have been but oh, you've been yeah, highlighting sure, a lot but... of important things like also yeah, someone else said, stop said misrepresenting the chat i meant literally none of them there um, are people in chat, a so lot terrible. of people in chat, who believe these are strong points as well. I'm just surprised that someone would say all we're doing is nitpicking. It's, 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 it blows me away, okay? Yeah, I, I well, feel like the, the range of issues that we've brought up, you know... Would why be, do you, kind of why do you hate yourself. your own audience today? I've always spoken to my audience this way, what do you mean? If I, the audience uh, is wrong, then they're wrong. Well, I, I mean, my what, audience what do you not. want, guys? Like, do you want to be able to just throw out, like, all of these arguments and never be responded to? Yeah, is like, the idea that we because highlight... you're saying it in chat and we're talking that you can just throw up any argument you want and nobody can take issue with it? We, we, we like, highlight things we <laughs> find funny, we highlight things we agree with, we highlight things with, like, a good points. We'll also highlight things that we'd be like, oh gosh, that's a really bad argument. Yeah. Or a general sentiment. Uh, you wouldn't want it to be that we never challenge you guys. 
surely. Yeah. <laughs> that would that would be shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. This I mean, is a live stream, you know. We we do pay attention to chat. You know, we. I don't know what you guys expect. Yeah, and I mean, in the in the whole thing of like trying not to foster an echo chamber, it's important to t address criticism instead of just ignoring it. I feel mm. like ignoring it would be worse than actually addressing anything that anybody's bringing up. Mm -hmm. I think you know, like I think sometimes. Yeah. Sorry, I I think sometimes uh, when you are critical of like the TV show or a movie, people take it as like a personal attack because Definitely. like. Yeah, I like this movie. Well, I'm not saying that you can't like it. You can you can like it. You can rewatch it as much as you want. It doesn't mean that it's perfect or that it doesn't have problems. <laughs> Someone just wrote, "I'm just happy to be here." Raw <laughs> 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 I mean, said, "If you defend this show, I'm gonna come and murder you in real life." I'm like, what? Oh, no. <laughs> I think that might I be a little, that. a little too far. That's some hyperbolicisms. Um. So let's get on with it. It opens with a tism straight away. Butcher right. like establishes straight up that um he's gonna give up the brother, and then he's asked on the phone, like, well, hey, what if the sister gets in the way? And he's like, Yeah, I'll sort her out too. And he says this really casually. Rags, do you remember when we were watching this? I literally said, Cue Frenchie's behind him. And then Frenchie's right behind him. Like, yeah. wow, dude. <laughs> How could you say that? But they do it even worse. I thought that was bad, but Kibiko walks down the stairs as if she's heard what he just said. He's just like, look at her like, hmm. Mm, <laughs> it's like, yeah. Good yeah. job. It blows my mind sometimes how, like, it's just from your 101 screenwriter's sort of drama generation. It's like, I don't know, who'd be really bad and to be standing behind him? And she's standing right behind him uh, the oh. whole time. Oh. <laughs> Instant drama yeah. in a can. Just add water. Add water to the can. Nice. Wait, wouldn't you have to oh, pop it then, open uh, first? Nope. Isn't it? The can is part oh. of the drama. The can is, you know that oh, mystery box? Well, the this can is a mystery is, can. Yeah. yeah, this is a mystery <laughs> can. Mystery can. Uncle JJ's? Because Uncle, you can't use Uncle Ben anymore, so this is Uncle JJ's. I mean, like, there's, isn't it Kimiko sits down with her brother to talk? Is that where we find out that his power is controlled by his hands? Like, his hand, his oh. telekinetic powers is his hands, yeah. not his head. That's... It's not his mind, it's his fingers and his hands. Yeah. I was gonna say it's worse for you, it's, it's individual fingers that could do it, which individual creates so many problems. It, yeah. uh, um, and, but then mm. later in the episode he forgets that so that he can get his hands broken by Stormfront and then get choked out. <laughs> yeah, well, we will <laughs> get to that one. Um, but I so have to- I have to ask, how do they- how do they know that? Like, he's unconscious. How could they know that? Yeah. I guess Kimiko when, was told it and she told them him. without being able to talk to him properly. Hey, his superpower so, is intense. <laughs> to, to, what, to what extent does his powers work? Because even even when his hands are inside of the tape, like he can still wiggle. So does you know that? That's oh a yeah, good, so that's a good point that I brought up. When I was, we were watching I was going to save it until later. But yeah, of course, if he can push and move through his fingers, that means he can push and move the tape to separate and break it. I guess what I want to know is how is it that. How is it that one uses their thumb to crush a can and then rip off part of the can and then, like, how does the finger communicate that information? <laughs> is it a mixture of your fingers and your mind? It's so yeah, I fucking strange. It. It's like yeah. there's battery packs inside his palms that allow him to do this stuff. Yeah. Uh, but again, it's just because they wanted to get his hand snapped so that he would get killed. That now, seems to be well, it's also it. because they can subdue him by just tying him up. So, yeah. also... Does does his finger need to move independently of the rest of his hand, or I, mean, I don't is know? It, is it related to four, you know, the fourth dimensional space where, like, if he just, if like, let's say his palms are put together, could he not just move both hands at the same time and effectively move his finger, which would control its power, <laughs> or or oh is it? God. It's like, so for, strange. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We nobody got this through. No, I want, to, okay. I want to preemptively head this off by the people who are saying that this is a nitpick. This isn't a nitpick. This is how he escapes custody, which creates a lot Major of other plot problems. issues. Yeah, yeah. It, it's how he escapes custody, which is how like the rest of the episode plays out, yep. and yeah. it leads to him getting killed, which then leads to a significant revelations and sign it's it's super important. I like that you said like this is not a nitpick. In my head, I was like, of course it. Oh right, yeah, you should probably say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I suppose we can. Uh, oh, 
uh, yeah, we can return uh, to it, but we they reestablished to us now that so A Train is just trying to live life large. Fuck it, he's got blackmail on him. Heart attack, you know. But oh no, still problems. Oh, still got heart problems, everybody. <laughs> now, uh -oh. when this happened again, I can't remember. If I, I said this to Rags and Fring because we ended up watching it. I had, I watched this twice with uh, each of you. Um, we we were like one hundred and ten percent certain this was going to save someone's life. We were like, this is yeah. this is going to be something that prevents. Uh, the bad guys from doing something 100% because there's no other reason why yeah. they would establish this. Well that's the problem is uh, when you watch something like Bly Manor you know something that's actually well written whenever you see something set up you think in positive ways about where yeah. that could go but How when it's a bad show off? you know that they're going to use it to get out of something that get out of something up. big it's going to be huge <laughs> yeah uh um, yeah, then we cut to uh, good old Homelander enjoying the life with the kid. I don't, I don't really have much to say about that until we get further along. There's not much going on there, yeah. And then we have, uh, oh, the scene where bat. Wait, if you criticize bad writing, <laughs> a dog whistle for fascism. Oh, I fucking love <laughs> that. <laughs> fucking, that was that was CJ's tweet where he's like, "Why did they make the person complaining about bad writing a Nazi?" <laughs> <laughs> Can you can you can you put up the picture again with the kitten? Because I think it's applicable, basically. <laughs> oh right. Um, yeah. Well, this, I mean, this is this is that this is that kind of through line thing that they're doing, where they're trying to take certain things that normal people would associate would say, yeah, that's that's fine. Like I agree with that, and then they attach it to to literally Hitler, and then they say. <laughs> Therefore, if you, it's like that whole guilt by association thing. If you think this, then you are literally this. So, not exactly the Socratic method, is it? <laughs> of figuring out what people think. I, no, for one, it's... still think kittens and good writing are valuable. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, right. Nancy. Racist. He did not just say Bly Manor is good. Please, no. Oh, I guess you missed the Dude, beginning Bly of this Manor episode. Fucking, it's close <laughs> to masterpiece level. Like it's, it's insane. Yeah. I love uh, that so show. With this, so if you if you criticize if you criticize or if you nitpick, I suppose, um, then you are literally this. Like that's that's. Well, the, the problem is like if it were a better show, I'd give them more credit. But like the problem is that the political commentary is so transparent that it's hard. Yeah. Not to imagine yeah, that was what I'm, they were intending. I'm willing yeah, to but... agree that that wasn't necessarily their message, but it's something that yeah. everyone's everyone's scratching their head over. Yeah. I think that everything about Stormfront as a character is done in service to the political ideas of the writer. I think that she's so on the nose and presented in the order that she's presented, where she starts out as one thing and becomes another thing. I think it is totally yeah, purposeful. It's funny, right? With I think the episode seven opening scene is the one where it's like, oh, you you guys like are on Reddit. You guys are put on Twitter. Well, with, like, the <laughs> expression, right, is the the other shoe drops. It's like that that dropped like a fucking silo on two. Angels, <laughs> yeah. Like, Dew. It's like, oh, I get it now. Okay, okay. Oh, the and then uh, oh, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, I was I was just gonna say like. You know it's like you can see what they're doing and you know that it's transparent but i genuinely believe that the writers on the show think they're being clever like they think <laughs> that they're they're sneaking this past and like people aren't going to notice it like I, I i don't i don't think that they're they're doing it deliberately on the nose to the problem is that audience. like there was a scene a lot later in the season where she was saying like people like what i have to say but they don't like the word nazi mm -hmm. and when yeah. i hear that it's like is that what you is that what you think I and mean, if that's what you think you can read a lot more stuff into the into the scenes that came before i want to give them more credit than that but i'm not sure that's i don't know well this is their commentary on all the people who are even in the middle or even slightly right leaning even center like they're like egalitarianism the right like th so, there there are things that like norm like just the completely apolitical person would think that is normal and like it's being painted as, as well it's just it, yeah I, I you know i don't know like <laughs> i it's not a big deal but um it's it's hard not to read into that And yeah, so uh, they're making the storyboards the the set up for the seven movie, which will be made across this season, I believe. 
Yeah, I think so. Um, but then know. the big thing happens. Vort oh, yeah. gets outed for Compound V, like in uh, straight away. The shocking truth about Compound V revealed. Uh, so this isn't a complaint. This is more just a question. So she would have provided the Compound V. Then what? Are the, what does a news station do with that? I don't know. They just say we got this substance that they, is. They apparently... just state that this is how it works, and people, are, superheroes, are made with it, and it's like okay. Well, how do you prove that? That's, that's yeah. what I'm getting at. Like, how do you yeah. what? And maybe they got like the, the testimony of of Storm, uh, Starlight, uh, but anonymous, I, I, I guess. Um. Yeah. yeah, it has to be anonymous, I guess. But uh, I thought it was I strange because I was just like, Compound V might not be enough, um, but I guess it was, and they're all like, oh fuck. And then A-Train is like, oh my god, like, what the hell? That's what you did? Boo. And it's like, yeah, you should have stopped it. What did you think she was going to do? <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird one. Yeah. Ooh, we got another deep scene. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> and wait not oh, no. no. Anyway. Uh, yeah, moving on, uh, Huey's celebrating that he with, with Starlight have achieved the goal that they had in the first season, right? That was the season one goal, was to expose yeah. Compound V. So they're really happy, yeah, but Butch is like, boo, because, you know, those two have got their, uh, their conflict right now. Um, he can't be happy for Huey. Like, he yeah. can't give him any success. Obviously, that, that's, that, you could call their relationship an, an arc. We discover that Butcher actually values Huey uh, through the roof. He considers him like a surrogate brother. Was it Lenny was his brother, or was Lenny just a friend? Yeah, brother. Brother, yeah, brother. Like that. Um, oh, and then we're back with Homelander, and he throws his son off the roof in the hopes that it'll uh, like jumpstart his yeah. use of powers, I guess. I love Tyler. Naturally, he's pretty upset about being tossed off a roof. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess this is just like, Homelander's just he's just poor at understanding how he should probably yeah. go about these things. Um, and then and then we got the, the obvious sort of, how are we going to get this kid to use his powers and you just have to get Homelander to threaten the mum? And then the kid's like, yo, fuck you. It's like, aha. I wonder if that's going to set up anything for later. Mm, well, again, the, the, that's probably the best kind of stuff we get from this That's season. probably the best setup that they've done in this <laughs> yeah. show. Yeah. And it's not that great. Um, and then we get the breakout scene. He, I guess, uh, uses the tin can to sort of cut through the duct tape to free yes, himself. Yes, crushing. Uh, and it's funny how if you can crush a can... What else can you crush? Can you crush Stormfront later in this episode? Can you crush one of her <laughs> organs? Can you, you crush think her eye? That, right? can crush, crush anything. Eye. Oh, nice one, Rags. I feel like we're done with that oh, one. That's man. an example. <laughs> oh, uh -oh. If, if Telekinetic Boy crushed her eyes, she's done. <laughs> I'm do? just saying, the whole eye-stabbing thing, that's a fucking <laughs> problem, guys. <laughs> yep, she's super strong, except for her eyes. <laughs> It's so, so strange. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, and then well, I mean, uh, we... once again, we just spot another pattern. The whole eavesdropping uh, is is something that yeah. happens throughout this fucking show. So, where is a bad place for Maeve to discuss anything with the girl she's trying to keep a secret? Probably uh, uh, the uh, office of the seven. Probably, <laughs> probably, <laughs> yeah. probably not great. The place with a lot of, yeah. We just the place got that's done. Probably flooded with cameras and microphones. Yep, we just got done with this, and Homeland is just meters away, and for some reason she thinks there's even a chance that he hasn't heard what she's just said, and what the person <laughs> but said. as we later find out, he absolutely heard what she said, well, and she didn't know that. I would just like us to remember Homelander's hearing is fantastic. Through the roof, yep. amazing. And this he is gonna be relevant. people are lying. He's gonna, yeah, he can do that too. He's gonna, this is this is going to be inconsistent by the end of the episode, but hey, he heard this, and so now she's fucked. Uh, probably shouldn't have had that call, Maeve. Bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Bad, bad call. Bad call, you might say. And of course, see, as we go through, the, these are all the pieces that start the, the lines that lead to big dramas. Like, th that piece right there is what almost thoroughly motivates Maeve to do what she does in the finale. She doesn't want him to kill, uh, her girlfriend. Elaine. Yeah. Um, so, and then, yeah. Uh, we move on to um, the brother has broken out and well, wait. destroys the... So the NYPD oh, yeah. have picked up the boys, which is yeah. not a part of the plan. This is bad. What do we do? And at the same time, Telekinetic Man is trying to break out of the he ship. He throws an anvil, I think, at no, the he just, he just throws... Doesn't he just throw telekineticisms at it? 
I, I'm, I've got no, the scene. I, I, what I, no, what I mean is, I think he pulls out the uh, he not the anvil, sorry, the anchor. He pulls the anchor out of the ocean and throws it at Butch's head, um, and narrowly misses. And then he destroys the helicopter. Yeah, he destroys it by uh, just telekinetic push. Yeah, just pushing it. Yeah, but it's funny. But because um, he's gunning to push them, his captors, and he is grabbed in such a way that out of all the directions it could have gone, it hit the helicopter specifically. It's just like, damn it. Oh. Ooh, what a shot. Yeah. Like, and why did... Uh, yeah, no, literally, the brother grabs the <laughs> anchor and throw... Why doesn't he just grab Butcher and throw him off the ship? Well, why would she grab so, the anchor and throw it at him? He yeah, once he again... Doesn't actually the, he doesn't hit the helicopter with the anchor, he just no. kind of... No, like, he just throws the, the helicopter, but, yeah. I, I do need to point out that this is, like, a super important, like, CIA op. They would be monitoring everything that's going on in the area, so... Probably, if, yeah. If the NYPD dispatches a helicopter to go out to the ocean to where their meetup is, I would assume that they would have interfered or, you know, like, in intervened. Or told them, hey, there's cops yes, coming to no. get you. <laughs> Maybe well, leave. Or, or even, or even like, the CIA would have contacted the NYPD and said, no, 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 you need to stay back. Like, don't, don't go over there. Don't go over there. And yeah, so, just like, to... the idea that this helicopter just goes out there and find, like, for how does he even, f I guess there could be a tracker in the ship, maybe, but. Just, uh, just, uh, uh, just clarifying again, though, because I got the visual now, what Fringy said. So, he gets a visual of the people he wants to kill, and he lifts the anchor out of the water to fire it directly at Butcher. The intent is to Instead kill, there's no doubt. Instead of just grabbing Butcher, yeah. You could, he, can, he can pick up a ship, you can pick up these people and crush all of their heads immediately. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's just a nitpick, um, <laughs> even though this <laughs> enables the rest of the episode to play out as it does, which it's... is a significant amount of important information. Dude, it's so far away from a nitpick. We, we, we <laughs> saved this the lives. This is the plot! This yeah. is the plot! <laughs> like, there's, there's a yeah, this isn't like some, like some aesthetic continuity issue or anything like that. This is this is what happens. These these are this is one of the things that happens. <laughs> yeah. We're not even halfway through episode three. We're not to the stuff that everyone hates yet. There's a problem yeah. with the powers in this show where they get turned on <laughs> and off. But there's also a, a like a deliberate depowering of certain abilities. Like this is one, right? And another one is when Stormfront can like kill people instantly or knock them out with her lightning. But when she's fighting against the boys, she just kind of like annoys them, tickles them, them. And knocks them down, and then they yeah. immediately recover. And she does it again with Butcher. It's it's like well, it's it's a big problem in general with the the concept is you can't have the boys and any of the major superheroes standing in the same room and expect. Yeah, which happens in this episode. Yeah, which they yeah, um, which unfortunately they where... do. We learn that apparently uh, Homelander is impervious to nuclear weapons, but not impervious to a truck being oh. dropped on his head. Don't, don't even. <laughs> we'll the, the second half <laughs> we'll of this episode is much worse than the first half. Yes, it is. It's it's kind of a disaster. So, and, um, and I, I don't I don't want to bring in the 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 comic stuff too much, but they again the 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 resolution for this in the comics is that the boys do have powers, like they use Compound V, so. Okay. They, they, they actually. That, in fact, I think that is the very, very first thing that Butcher does with Huey. He stabs him with a needle and gives him Compound V, which gives him. I believe he gets super speed, and Mother's Milk has super strength, and Frenchie has super strength too. So you don't have these weird kind of mismatches where you have a character that could, you know, instantly kill all of the boys with no effort. Hmm. So. You well, have. I think that uh, I like the that less. I, I like. I like that they don't have powers. Being normal people, yeah, I like that way more than if they both have superpowers. But I understand. Yeah, that if it's written well, yeah, I can understand how if they had powers, though, it'll allow them to escape death in an easier yeah. writing way, rather than constantly saving life. their lives by breaking the fucking back over the. Ugh. So <laughs> disappointing. Um, next up is a deep scene. Oh, yeah, boy. we can safely skip. <laughs> <laughs> Until, well, his next scene we won't be. Uh, no. So, yeah, <laughs> the then... The next scene with him. What, oh, fuck, what, what happens in the, the scene with uh, Edgar after this one? I forget. 
Uh, I think it was Edgar was trying to figure out what statement they were going to release to the public. Oh, about was, Compound like, deliberating. V. Yeah. But I don't think he gives an answer in that scene. No. Uh, I think well, that uh, we cut what away we know from it from the arc as a whole, is that this will play to their advantage. Uh, Somehow. <laughs> Somehow. I mean, they want to they sell it as a superhero power yeah. thing, so I guess this works out for them. Makes you wonder what, what they were, they were just waiting for someone to expose them. That, why wouldn't they do that in a controlled manner? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows what Storm a Starlight could have, uh, you know, released. So anyway... Uh, they're still trying to hook up to deliver the telekinetic. They've recaptured him. They put the duct tape on him, so he's got no chance now. Of course, that's how that works. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, Huey has a phone call with, uh, or leaves a message for Starlight about um, what were they talking? He, he's he, like he, saying he, he says, was sorry, right? Yeah. She's his second wind, is what he says. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just so excited to get to the end of this episode. <laughs> I want to talk about. Uh, yeah. So. Um, Edgar and, and uh, Homelander butt heads in, in the little room. This, honestly, is the last time I remember Edgar talking to any of the superheroes in the season. I think it is. I think I think it is. Um, he talks I'm to Butcher. Pretty sure and that's the only, yeah. He has Butcher and then Butcher again in the last episode. He is surprisingly underutilized. In yeah, this all season. he does is he talks to Noir through the phone. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. But it's not really a conversation, more of an order. Yeah, a really fucking stupid one that we're gonna get to. Uh, Hooray! But, um, I think this this scene is one of the first instances, well, where it's very apparent that the show doesn't actually understand what Homelander's arc is. They keep changing their mind on what he actually wants. He wants his family, but then he loses his son. He's like, "Well, no, the Seven is my family. We're gonna work together." And then after that, it gets he he kills the clone of himself in the next episode because he doesn't need anybody. And then he decides that he needs his son again. And, and then he Storm decides front. that what he what he really wants is I can do whatever I want, and I'm gonna masturbate on top of a building. <laughs> he's tired. They of being... don't have no idea. Well, this is the, I think... the finale. Seems like he's tired of being pushed around by everybody. But it's like, but he's got the ultimate muzzle on by the end of this season. Yeah, I do think that some of his irrational decision making can be attributed to his insanity. Uh, yeah, not being see because the thing is, is and again, comics. Um, the black noir character is like just gone like absolutely like flipped out gone um and i think because they're not using that arc and that like that twist in the show they're trying to merge the the homelander from the comics with the black noir from the comics and they're trying to 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 give him just a little bit of that like a little taste of that craziness in irrationality without going all the way you know what i mean I think they just keep changing their mind. I they need they to figure out that too, but... in each season, like, what... Because, again, in this episode, he realizes, I don't need my son. The Seven is my family. And in the next episode, he realizes, I don't need anybody. It's just me. And then when he sees Stormfront, it's, I need Stormfront, and I'm going to cut oh, out well, to Stormfront. Yeah, he, he, at and first then... he's like, no, fuck you, but then his memes save him. So he's like, you know what? I like Stormfront. To the point yeah. where he seems like... He seems almost a bit giddy like like he wants to be yeah him. and then that all goes and to then, shit and he gets over it really quickly yeah. too and then in the end at the end of this season what we learn is what homefront actually wants is the adoration of people whom he has no respect for i think he can find if you do whatever there. he wants yeah because i've seen it in chat you just said hor you just said homefront and i've heard stormlander oh, i've heard stormlander, <laughs> stormlander in the chat, so everyone's combining them too um <laughs> yeah, home, Homelander. It, yeah, Stormfront um, is less important to me because Homelander is like the most interesting. Well, he was. I think that they've uh, they put him in a really bad position going forward. I'm not sure if they can fix it. I mean, they can only go to route uh, <laughs> route route again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, they just snaps next season just fucking yeah, goes back i guess it's weird it, it feels like uh when you think about it it feels like season two has actually reversed his development from season one like in season mm. one it was very unstable and was progressing more and more towards knowing what was going on um and when he killed stillwell that seems to be an indication of he's in control of his destiny uh and but now they've changed it again yeah 
because he's just crazy Superman. But so, then what are you going to do from a writing standpoint where you just say, oh, he's insane now? Well, it's just, uh, I think him? it's less it's interesting, just, you know what I mean? Insane. Because, yeah. no, I, mean, I, I mean, like, in a way, it's like, oh, he's just going to kill everyone who's not uh, obedient or some shit. Like, who's going to stop them? Uh, him, I mean, because they still don't really have a contingency, especially now that yeah. Bond is not there anymore. It's like, hmm. Yeah, I don't know what their plan is, but you know, I'm not. I don't think season three is going to be good. <laughs> Just, you guys you know, throwing that out. Ready to kick in this last act of episode three? Oh yeah, so we're up so, to the we're up to oh the, boy, the deep. <laughs> so, so yeah. I want to preface his vanishing act. I want to preface this with I'm not a shark, so I don't know if this is actually a thing, but the speed <laughs> in which they are fucking swimming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they go pretty fast. Uh, again, don't know what the maximum speed of sharks are, and maybe you could argue that the deep somehow makes them faster? I, I... Well, what we find out is the maximum speed of a sperm whale is faster than a speed boat, <laughs> because um... the deep manages to get a sperm whale. What was the deep's plan, like, once he whoa, got whoa, whoa. I thought we he liked- Roll it back, we've got <laughs> right. so many things yeah. to talk about. So, <laughs> I laughed, and I was, I was hoping that- the, the like I was wrong when I was watching it with Rags, but I'm pretty sure I like I was just waiting for him to react to it because gunman Carl Urban just fucking picks up a rifle and starts shooting at the sharks. I was just like, yeah. what are you and doing? The immediate like, thought is, uh, bullets slow down as soon as they hit the water. Well, it's not even that's not really what I, I just think it's it's so futile. There's look well, at the amount yeah, of sharks. There's, there's like twenty of them. What are you gonna them. do? Your aim is going to be pretty inaccurate off the back of a speedboat shooting things that are mostly concealed underwater. <sighs> is it, I just, yeah, um... I was just he also has only one, one, one mag or two. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, um, so it turns out the sharks are, like, destroying the boat, and it's sinking already. Uh, I'll, I'll get the visual for you, Chan. Man, second. that's some sharp teeth, yeah. man. Those sharks have got some sharp teeth <laughs> that can bite through ships like that. Like, they, we that's just found job. out they were doing this, and the boat is already filling with water in a very fast manner. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Uh, was someone else going to say something there? Uh, no. no, I think I said what I wanted to All say. Alrighty. So, and then uh, they jump onto their speedboat they, next. They plan to get onto their, like, midi speedboat lifeboat thing, which immediately is like, well, that's not viable, of course. How could that possibly be viable? The sharks destroyed it. Like, well, not just, it's not even, it's, <laughs> let's just pretend it's fine. That doesn't really matter to me. It is fine. It's, it's more so you're going to a smaller, weaker, slower version of what was just destroyed in seconds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess we can assume that their speedboat is faster than oh, the yacht. Well, what, it's not moving is my point. <laughs> Until they oh, get yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. Like, I, I don't understand. They take so long to get into it. They're, they're showing them shooting their guns as if that could stop an army of sharks. I just... <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, uh... Yeah, go ahead, Rex. When, when I watched this the first time, I was asking to myself, man, they are Fucked. What are they going to do to get out of the situation? Wow. And they just take the boat, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. oh. I, I thought that was the thing that they were establishing was off limits. So but what? What All happens right. next is they get on their boat to race towards the uh, the beach because I guess you know the deep isn't as effective on land. But then <laughs> a sperm whale jumps out of the. Oh yeah, the the storm drain that they they were going to go into. Um. But then the deep gets on a sperm whale, launches it, and beaches it. So I guess that sperm whale is going to die. I guess he forgot about saving animals. But uh, it was he temporary. then stands there. I guess temporary, yeah. But then he stands there with this heroic pose, and <laughs> Billy decides <laughs> to immediately ram the boat into the into the uh, into the sperm, sperm whale. whale. And, and the, the, this, the number of things that don't <laughs> make sense here, the deep gets knocked off the sperm whale and gets knocked unconscious, despite the I, fact that he's a superhero. We need, Meanwhile, all I, the boys are fine. I got the visual chat. I got to see this because yeah. it's, it's a hard one to spot, right? So look at this CGI, I, I guess, chat. You ready? So we, this is the setup. You can see You guys are going to have to boot up the stream if you want to see the... Uh, I, what I'm I've talking got, about. Uh, I've got the episode up anyway. So there's the whale, and Billy is going to ram into it, which uh, it's like, that's the plan. We'll talk about how stupid that is in a second, but, um, oh god, I hate copyright. I can't just play the scene. I gotta wait. Uh, 
Give me a sec. How <laughs> far they pushed away. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's not even the first problem. Right, so, and... first problem is when you approach a, a, an object this fast and you like slam it forward, if you're standing on you top of it, you still keep going with the same speed <laughs> as the How thing that was if, if, if if you're standing on top of it, you go forward, they go, like, the whale they goes go... back, you go forward. Or, if anything, you stay still. Well, it's just momentum, man. If you're in the boat, you go forward. If you're standing on the thing, the thing goes back, and you go forward. Like, the deep so the... should have just fallen off into the water, but instead he stays glued yeah. to the whale somehow until it stops moving, and then he flings off. And the way he Backwards. falls, it, he's like knocked out before he even hits the ground. It's so fucking bad. Yes. And again, let's remember the deep is strong enough that he can withstand going to the Marianas Trench, which is as strong as having like 10,000 trucks stacked on your head. The deep is, is Aquaman. He He's not getting knocked out by falling off of a whale. Meanwhile, the boys are all fine. No broken bones, no nothing, no knocked out. No Even though they're normal people who got flung into a, sh into a whale. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's so much wrong with this because normally you categorize like a failure as like, oh, so this thing happened, it doesn't make sense, and it saved a life. This one saves all of their lives twice. You might be like, how? Uh, all of them would have broken the shit out of their bodies by flinging forward and flinging around all over that mess of a crash. People, and the deep being not- in chat. What? what Isaac Newton has left the chat. Isaac Newton has left the chat. Um, and, and the deep being knocked out, it's like, oh damn, I guess he can't stop them then. Like, that's the whole reason yeah. that he gets knocked out. That's so the whole reason it happens. Yes. So that he can't stop him, exactly. Yeah, but yeah so that they can have the Which is even dumber, because he's lying on the ground next to the whale. Do you think, for even a moment, that Butcher would have not just put a put a bullet in him? Like, they walk by, and, and like, nobody pays attention to, oh, oh yeah, yeah, the deep is I mean, he's behind the whale, I guess. They just, oh, you're right, they do. They would have seen him, no, yeah. No, because if, I you, if, seen if, him. You, if you fast forward a little bit, you're going to see mm -hmm. Butcher goes past, he yeah. turns around several times, um... And he would have been looking directly at the deep who was unconscious on the ground. I cannot, cannot possibly believe that Butcher would have allowed the deep to to to, to keep live. breathing. After well, yeah. That. There's and no if someone wants to establish, he can't because bullets wouldn't hurt him. It's like, how the fuck does he get knocked out then? Like, how does he get knocked weak? out? Yeah. Either either he's really strong or he's not strong. And 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 I feel like this scene, which you've got the footage up now, is just one of many examples of this show's over reliance on gore. It it's so gory to the point that I feel like they just are fans of having blood spewing on people's faces. Yeah, oh, I, I, I didn't know. like it. So I was I was like, oh, this is just oh just man. too much. Someone's just picked up a continuity issue. That's kind of funny. Um, the before they slam into the the whale, there's a track for where they're going to go that isn't actually there. Uh, in the previous shot, as oh. if like, yeah, there's no so you can see it on my stream. There was no track there, but then when they go on the wide oh, copyright, uh, <laughs> this is like yeah, this is this, this weird preset track. This is, I don't know what that's about, uh, but that would be a nitpick mm. compared to this totally not a nitpick. Compared to this entire <laughs> sequence, yeah. Um. So yeah, this was, I remember, like, episode one and two had pissed us off, three we were like, right, so this is just mm, over. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, they, yeah, they just don't over. care. They just don't care. Oh, that's and it right. keeps it going! It's, yeah, it's it's yeah, we're not even done yet. Yeah, there's still more to come. They go into the storm drains, and they're having their conversations, uh, and then the seven rock up. Yes. Oh, um, which is... Like we were when we were watching this, like it's done, it's over. The boys are dead. There's no way it's yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. you've it. got over. several speedsters and hyper powerful entities that are like at most half a mile away from all of our protagonists. Like, it's in a storm drain. Yeah, it's, we're so you're done. done. Um, but um, of course we're lucky because um, it seems as though the home... show forgets that Homelander is fast. The show forgets that Stormfront is fast, and the show forgets that Homelanders can hear. Really well, and, and instead, they can all fly. Well, he also has X ray fly. vision. Oh, that which... would come in handy too. Um, um, instead, they th it's so it, it amuses me beyond belief because the show is like, oh shit, 
A train will be able to kill him because he can run up to him, right? And all the writers are like, oh my god, yeah, oh yeah, jeez, oh, oh no, we're gonna have to write a way for A train to be stopped. His heart condition, heart we did attack, it. We're yeah. writers, everyone. <laughs> Meanwhile, I forget that home front can home front homeland <laughs> can fly Stormlander really and quick at Stormfront too. They can both fly. You see, they're done. It's over. <laughs> you see, A Train's having heart conditionisms, which, by the way, will be gone eventually when he needs to not have them in the plot. It's gonna be great. I do like uh, how they're also casually walking around the storm trains. How come nobody's like running? <laughs> you oh know? yeah, dude, it's, walking it's around. actually yeah. Nuts. You need to be booking. Um, yeah, and as if your brain is is not like is just having trouble getting over that. We find that Huey has fallen behind enough that he's actually right next to Starlight now. It's like what. I Motherfucker, show some yeah. agency. It's like, if you don't actually want to die, which seems to be his position, maybe keep up with the boys, the two superheroes you yeah. have on the team. But of course, Starlight is smart enough to know that, hey, I'm surrounded by my team, I better look like I'm trying to kill him, right? So she blasts him, but not before he says, ah, you got my message. Which he would have heard. Which Homelander um, would have heard. It is pretty it is pretty lucky, by the way, that um the first superhero who encounters him is the one who is most sympathetic. Yeah, the one who wouldn't kill him. Them, as the opposed to Maeve or something, fast. you know? The one who isn't <laughs> super fast or, or Black Noir or anything. Or Homelander. But yeah, uh it's over. Uh, Homelander would yeah. have heard him say that. He knows they're in cahoots, she's done. If you remember, yep. later in the episodes, he even nearly kills her under the threat that she might have betrayed the Seven. Next episode. Yes. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, yeah, then Homelander says uh, to uh, to kill uh, Huey. And of course, Butcher doesn't want that to happen, and so he says, Oi, cunt. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, for some reason, the rest of the Seven are nowhere to be found. It's just Homelander and Starlight somehow. I don't know why that's the case. Uh, and then... Uh, so th this is all. You have to really watch this slowly because of how much stupid shit happens so quickly. Um, Butcher presents Telekinetic Man as like, "Hey, look what we have," which is interesting <laughs> because he was their prisoner seconds ago. Like, yeah. I I'm curious if he was just like, "I'd rather fucking run away from Hobelad, fuck all of you, and throws them into him." You know, it could be anything. It's like Hobelad is a fucking nightmare, but no. Uh, telekinetic man, maybe he got talked down by Kimiko, it's fine. So he's like, I'm gonna take out you, and Homelander's just not impressed at first, because he's like, you tore the f- Yeah. You tore the floor away, that's strange, I'll just fly. <laughs> Which, but of course, and then... the, the reason they do that is so that there is a pit for Homelander to be in, because... Telekinetic Man brings down the ceiling, which happens to have a bus that doesn't even, like, s like fall down in a horizontal way. It comes down as though it was sent from the heavens, like a pillar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they bury him, and Homelander is out of the fight for the next ten minutes. So How does Homelander this happen? Is to nuclear <laughs> yeah, the fact that any of this happened at all... And it's just like, okay, so Homelander is impervious to nuclear weapons, you're telling me, but apparently he could be destroyed oh, by a truck. I gotta, pl I gotta plug leaks. So it's like, uh, Kimiko's brother hates Homelander. That's not my point, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to explain how the hell any of this makes any fucking sense. It, I, I, of course he hates Homelander. We said he hates like all superheroes, but he's smart enough to know who Homelander is. Does he really think he can beat him by throwing stuff at him? And the answer is, of course, but yes. For can. some reason, yeah, he yeah. can. Yeah. This shouldn't he just do has fuck to have all. A bus sort of thrown at him. This shouldn't well, yeah, do anything this should to be, him. If this happens, I mean, Homelander said in uh, in the first season that if he tried to fix the plane, he'd go through it. If he's strong enough to go through a plane, he's strong enough that when a truck gets dropped in him, the truck splits up around him as it like as he stands I mean, there. That's he, literally what Maeve's introductory scene was. Her yep. standing in front of an armored car and she like shreds and it in half. It, yeah. Doesn't even Home stop Lander her. Homelander also does it. So, and Homelander is stronger than Maeve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fucking stupid. And of course, so, all of yeah, this destruction manages to avoid Huey and Starlight. Neither of them are yeah, hit or involved. Yeah, pretty lucky. Considering um, that Starlight was standing right next and, to Homelander. <laughs> and you'd think that that's the peak tism of the episode. But wait, but we're not. there's more. <laughs> there's more! <laughs> so, <sighs> Kimiko and her bro are running away.
Unfortunately for them, Star Stormfront arrives Storm and she electrocutes arrived, them and throws yeah. them through an apartment building. And so at this point, you're kind of like, whoa, that's dangerous. Careful there, Stormfront. <laughs> you don't want to maybe destroy a wall, right? That's where we're at <laughs> right now. All in one yeah. Episode. Uh, but then, but then. So they're running away, her was, targets, I... <laughs> and a family, a, a nondescript family are just like, whoa, what are you doing? And Star Storm, I keep fucking up the names. Stormfront. Stormfront kills them. She electrocutes someone into a wall and blood splatters, and then people are screaming, and she's like, well, I guess yeah. I'll kill you too. Now, it wasn't hard to spot that they were at all black. At this point, it was, like, yeah, hmm. at this point it's like, oh, she's super racist. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but of course, you, you wonder, it's like, damn, if any of them had their phones up, maybe live streaming, or if anyone's in the vicinity seeing it, or if any of them survived Game these over. wounds. Like, yeah. yeah, this could all really go wrong, because we saw what happened weird. to all Homelander. These, all these people died of electric shock. That's kind of weird. as it turns out, not only did she get away with killing those three people, she manages to destroy basically the entire apartment block. Well, yeah, I'm going to get that. So the, covered up. the one I find funny is the guy on the staircase. She, like, yeah. throws him out Just a window, and he's like, out. whoa, like, that's his... It's like, I don't know that that guy's dead. I'm <laughs> Just saying. No, not necessarily. Well, it's but like we the get... plane thing all over again. You're yeah. Like, These people aren't dead. We get a nice shot here of how much damage she does. And, uh... <laughs> There's no covering this up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe forward a little bit. Uh, apparently, uh, 59 people died and 100 were injured. So, you get, so the a hundred like, injured people are gonna say, "Hey, Stormfront killed those." Nope, those people. because all of them would have been paid off, covered up, or thought uh, the story was true, yeah. which is framing the telekinetic. The telekinetic was the one who Even blew up the building. There's clearly electricity damage to the building and yeah. scorch marks and explosions. How In does fact, a telekinetic man do this? I would argue that this is the most powerful we ever see her electric. It's ripping the building apart while she attacks people with it, and they sort of go, "Oh, oh," and yeah. Yeah, it's pretty funny how she she has electricity that destroys an, a building, but not humans that she throws away when she's fighting the boys. Well, she like mm. killed everybody on an entire floor using lightning, and yet she's only yeah. able to 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 tickle the boys later on. Mm -hmm. Like Which right there, thirty four percent collateral damage, man. You know, even <laughs> though somebody somebody saw this, I'm sorry, <laughs> somebody has seen this. It's over. Stormfront is. Like, yeah, th there's no getting around it. So then, uh, our, our heroes get to the roof, and uh, Telekinetic Boy jumps across the building to another one, and Kimiko is not fast enough, and she starts getting beaten up by Stormfront. Now, of course... Yeah, for some reason she waits until Any normal person, across, yeah. that being us, was like, oh, how convenient. Telekinetic Man is, like, far away enough that he can still do telekinetic tisms, but at the same time he's not close enough to get, you know, seriously hurt. This is perfect. So he jumps up right next to Stormfront, and tackles her. Which, he's not <laughs> hes not a soup in the sense of strength, so that was, like, an interesting yeah. choice. Yeah, it should have been like he was immobile. He should have just bumped into her. <laughs> you know, in the same got, way that when like, home... Uh, why not grab yeah, her you... and just drive her through the ground like Scarlet Witch did to Vision? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, technically that's not the same thing. He needs to tackle her. He needs to tackle her so that she can grab his hands and break them. Yeah, so. and so people look so, at this. Yeah, she's grabbed his wrists. His his powers are in his fingers. Even though his fingers <laughs> can still work, just pop her eyes, dude. Yeah. Pop him anything. Pull, oh, too late. Her, she broke your hands. Pull her hair with telekin. Oh, he's dead. Oh, well, um, why would he tackle her instead of using telekinesis? <laughs> I don't know. It, I did. So yeah, this was the episode I'm, where it was just like, I'm losing my mind, I can't stand how fucking atrocious the right it is, this is so bad. But, the reason why we had it is because we needed the scene where she calls him a yellow bastard, because again, the show once doesn't have the balls to actually, like, fully commit to what a racist person would actually be like. Yeah. Um... So he's very soft language. Instead of, like, I, you know, if somebody was actually a racist, you think they'd use more pejorative words than yellow yeah. bastard. Killing? Fine, um, but I'm not gonna say the n-word, that's fucked up. <laughs> Whoa, <man. laughs> um, it's like, that's the thing, this show wants to be edgy, but it isn't actually edgy. It, it's, no, not, it's, it's not, it's not, not denial of edginess. Yeah. 
Yeah, and of it's course, superficial edginess. Yeah, and part of the this is this is a reveal in and of itself. It's like, yeah, you thought you liked her. She's racist. She's evil and racist. Well, I guess they're both. Of them. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you can, if if you if you were okay with her killing an apartment full of full of people, oh, well, now this you're was... really not gonna like her. Yeah, this was <laughs> right? just her saying that was confirmation. It could have just been coincidence. She could have just been someone who kills people at a whim, but now we know she's racist as care. well. It's, yeah. it's specific. She, she'll, I don't even know that she'll leave white people alone. Isn't it like she likes white superheroes? That's her, that's her, her preferred thing. Right? Um, well, it seems like her thing is that she, she definitely hates black people uh, and Asians. Um, she doesn't like uh, Latin American people either, but she tolerates. She, I think she said that Gus was okay for you know some of his kind. Oh, can we? Um, um, I just because to to end out that scene, right? Kimiko is still there, and yeah. uh, Homelander arrives. Stormfront forgets Kimiko exists, and Homelander and can't Kimiko hear her panting too. because Homelander fucking <laughs> sucks. Well, yeah, because we need Kimiko to stay alive to continue the Yeah, because it, it would ruin it. If <laughs> Homelander would laser her into two pieces, it would be over. And of yeah. course, by the way, Homelander showing up, covered in like, he's like, oh, that kill was supposed to be mine. It's like, yeah, well, you snooze, you lose, grabs. It's like, I, <laughs> what? <laughs> Why would she say that when she's so old? It's weird. Oh, yeah, wow. no, she's like a hundred years old. Hey, maybe that's supposed to be the joke, get it? Uh, oh. Also, need to point out that with his extremely advanced hearing, he would probably hear Kamiko's heartbeat, like well, racing. And, and away. I just realized, well, X-ray, he could see her. Yeah. So it's it's just over in every sense of the word. But the show doesn't give a fuck. Wow. I love how everybody in the seven is a psychopath as well. Not only does she hate people who aren't white, but she likes to see the lights go out. She <laughs> yeah. likes to suffocate them <laughs> well, to death. Well, Fringy, that's a setup. <laughs> Yeah, that's, just... that's, that's part of the reason why she dies, is she likes to see the lights go out. God. We'll get to that. Why does she forget <laughs> that Kimiko exists? I don't know! Because Kimiko would be dead if she didn't. Boom, there, writing. Oh, and so, yeah, I would like to make it clear, we're already three episodes in, there is a hugely strong pattern of inconsistent powers. We haven't even gotten to the, the ones that people usually cite. Like, when we were talking to Jay Longbone, she said that episode 7 was, like, the big inconsistent power episode. It's like, oh, if you... Oh, the whole season. But I think we could all agree, episode three is currently the worst. That was a disaster of writing. There's uh, just so much shit that's point, wrong. Yeah. One yeah. and two, I could get over, but three, I'd be like, you seriously don't think this has problems? Like, no? Okay. And funnily enough, the three were released at first, right? Because we, we were busy with other shit when this was released. We hadn't gotten to it yet. Um, but I didn't hear many complaints. I think people like no, like this. Uh, well, like I said, the first three seasons reviewed on Metacritic got an 86 out of 100. Well, it blows Bly mm. Manor out of the water, I know that much. Well, yeah, because Bly Manor oh. got 62 and an audience score of 50. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna die. Yeah, and, and all we it's get really is... It's really depressing. Vault covering it up, having the superheroes help people. Even though there's heal. no way they're covering it up. Yeah, there's just no way. If you can't cover up Homelander doing what he does later in the show, well, you, they can with memes, I guess. Um, well, yeah, killing an innocent civilian with memes, you know, that's, that's fine, oh, you're all good. They do the oh, first of many it's... shots where Kimiko wants revenge. And it's like, yep, she doesn't get it though, does she? <laughs> where she locked up, yeah. Really strange choice to not have Kimiko kill. Uh, that was front. an odd one. I was expecting it. I almost said... I, I was almost saying, like, during the the fight, at the end, I was like, all right, this is Kimiko's payoff. And I was like, well, this will be nice to get, you know, that, but it never happens. So well, maybe no uh, she'll kill her in season three, because she's not dead, right? Um, well, yeah, yeah she's maybe. Not dead. I guess she's, she's not, not technically dead. dead, yeah. Oh, do you, are they, are they going to do the fucking thing where Kimiko's... Well, I'm wondering if, are they going to do the thing where Kimiko maybe sees her in her state and doesn't kill her? Like, shows mercy or something like that? Some Maybe. bullshit? Some Last of Us 2 crap? Well, it's not really about mercy at this point. She's just a very dangerous person who probably yeah, should Yeah, but be I'm thinking, is the show you know, going to do that? With... Uh, uh, Fringy, you remember The Last of Us 2, right? They'll do it. <laughs> they will spare a human I, being. <laughs> We've we reached the point of just pure pragmatism. It's like, yeah, Stormfront is very dangerous. <laughs> and malevolent. Uh... And racist. <gasps> you said the R word. Which brings us to episode 4. Uh, there's several scenes of women sort of talking about love. Uh, the whole goal is, well, we find out that they're all auditioning to be the Deep's wife. 
Which I means don't... we can comfortably not talk we, about those. Yeah, we can <laughs> skip over those. Yeah, which results in absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, by, by the way, this is where I started taking notes. Like, friend, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we, we it's real- where you would like so, to do. For yeah. reference, we realized uh, that we would have to talk about this because we knew that the boys was beloved at that point, and we were like, "Good God, if we've seen different shows, like we're gonna need references. Like, there's no way yeah. we're getting away with just saying that this show sucks. It's not gonna happen." I have ten pages of notes, but uh, I was probably wrong because, uh, like I said, by the time the season ended, a lot of people were shitting all over it. So. But it's frustrating because we were up to episode three and it was already to, like kind of beyond repair. Mm-hmm. Um, um, let's yeah. see. So, uh, Frenchie takes um, I don't know what drug it is, and he tries to kiss Kimiko. Pretty awkward. Which um, obviously right. not a good thing not to a good do time. when her brothers just died. <laughs> you know? Then we've got Stormfront complaining on her stream that people keep dying and that Vought needs to do something about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just her playing. No, playing of course. Her. It's it's Vought. What are you doing about this woman? And it's like, well, you see, she can raise our stocks. <laughs> I just, I just don't on the get it. <laughs> Amazing. So, yeah, and, and of course, Homeland is upset at that, too. And then we get mm. him going to a house where he meets Stillwell, who uh, is actually Doppelganger. Yeah. Because he hasn't quite gotten over that. Uh, Which is weird. Yet. I thought really he was weird. totally over it. Um, I think what, I was gonna lay out some criticisms of that whole thing. We'll wait until he kills Doppelganger, I think, to talk about that. Yeah, um, sure. So, uh, Grace gives them a new quest, because the boys literally have no other leads to go with. Um, Telekinetic's dead. And it's to uh, find out, to, to pursue the history of Liberty, because uh, Grace is obviously assuming that Liberty is Stormfront. She's got a bit of a Bit of a uh-huh. suspicious eye on that one, and so that's gonna set it up. Um, then we get Homelander, uh, like associated with Taxi Driver. So I wonder if they try to muscle in another message did there. You, you never know. Uh, you, you reckon? Yeah. Did you see the? Uh, you, um, you know you can watch the like the X-ray, right? Did you see that? Um, you're gonna. Oh, have, I haven't right, checked those. Video, yeah. There's a whole bunch of these throughout the season, and they're all uh, equally stupid. Um, I can send you a quick screen. Grab oh, but... this is what it says. It says whenever. Ho- Sorry, this is the X-ray for general trivia in that scene. Yeah. Whenever Homelander is feeling down, his go-to movie is Taxi Driver, starring Robert De Niro. Homelander <laughs> relates to De Niro's character Travis Bickle because both of them feel a threat to their white male privilege. Oh, and what? Kind of the lash out with violence because of it oh what? no there's no there's why no would you white component to te- what why would you put this in what 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 is this i didn't even know that it was a thing amazon puts oh. in there I didn't, I, I sent, yeah i sent it in the- <laughs> there's other ones too that's insane <laughs> uh Oh, yeah, uh, doesn't Marilyn... Ma- ma- easy for me to Madeline. say. Uh, ma- <laughs> no, not Madeline. I'm uh, before that, Mel- Mallory. Grace. Oh, Grace, right? Yeah, Grace Mallory. I yeah, think that's that her was name, it. yeah. Uh, she, she, she gives him the info where his wife is. Oh, the, oh, oh came that after. I kind of lost track. Oh, yeah, she does give him, and he says, like, but yeah. I didn't come through, and she's like, yeah, it's... Yeah, but I had a weird dream, so now I changed my mind. It's like, why? It's oh of... yeah, you're right. She had a dream where she was looking at all of the people she's wronged or yeah. some shit, and it was like, oh, okay. all the people that died. I want to see you out there too. <laughs> it would be nice if there'd be at least one less person. It's like, what? Really? That's your okay? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's taxi okay. driver, very commonly known as a white privilege. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, I've never gotten the impression that Homelander is particularly concerned about his race. Yeah, like, I never know, got that. Ever. I got the impression that he's nationalistic, but yeah, not yeah. Idiotic, uh, something. But the, I mean, but his name never... is Homelander. Yeah, but yeah. not like the white part. What the? Yeah, where the hell never did that, that come from? Well, in Finnis, <laughs> he's when she says they're trying to erase the white people. His first reaction is confusion, and then he winks, uh, and the, the implication there is just that he's going along with it, um, which I still oh, think is fucking but, strange. But the point but, is that he doesn't yeah. he doesn't register that. He's like, uh, what? So I don't know if who writes the X rays. <laughs> like, I don't sure. I don't know if it's uh I don't know if it's Amazon or the show creators. I, I'm willing to bet that the show creators. 
um, put that stuff and then like it's included. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure the creators the creators provide it and Amazon just puts it in there. I don't think Amazon has any any say in what's what's on there. I would be surprised. I think that's from IMDB. Um but it's all written out properly, like everything's written correctly, they've got correct capitalization and punctuation. It's all properly written. No, it's so. it's made it's it's definitely made by either the show or Amazon. It's not like some with timestamps as well, yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It was probably a collaboration. Like what the actual text is was provided by the people who made the boys, and then Amazon put it actually onto the player mm -hmm. um, in Amazon. <sighs> yeah. Okay, someone, um, just, someone just wrote in chat. What does race even mean if you're a demigod? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> right. Ask Stormfront. She's hyper racist. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is where you reveal it's it's actually doppelganger, which. I think now is a good time to probably talk about it. I don't feel he would do this. Uh, yeah, I don't either. Linda. It feels extremely out of character for him. He's someone I who think is the only reason so... they did it is because they wanted a scene at the end of the episode where Homelander is kills... almost going to get his pain. Yeah, kills, kills himself. himself. Yeah, it's a very important yeah. visual. Uh, so I want to make it... This is, this is definitely going to be debated, so I, I do want to try and strengthen this. Like, so he... Is very obsessed with his image, right? And uh, the only time he's ever vulnerable in season one is with Stillwell. And I do like their relationship in season one. In this one, he's trying to have Doppelganger pretend to be here so he can feel like he can he can have that relationship back. But it's he knows it's not her. Like, and it's so, this yeah. other guy that he's doing this with. And it's like, yeah, but physically it feels like her and it looks like her. It's like, but it's not her. He knows that. And so, like, I guess we have to yeah, rely he... on his sort of mental state being wibbly wobbly because I just don't think he would ever want to be like this in front of anyone but Stillwell. Yeah. Um, that, that, and of course, then you wonder, like, does Doppelganger have a family? Does Vort care about Doppelganger? Is Vort you doing this? You feel like this? Doppelganger is a super is useful extremely hero. Extremely important. Yeah. yeah. He and couldn't could infiltrate the government. And if if Doppelganger is twenty four seven a captive for Homelander's own like fantasies uh is he does he not want to try and escape and by that i mean literally just transform to someone else and go out on the street uh, uh i guess homelander could find and kill him it's such a bizarre and like doppelganger as a character is irrelevant he's just a tool in this for uh homelander's i guess you could call arc of, of development something's happening i think i think doppelganger is one of the few characters that could probably escape and homelander would never ever find him like yeah he, i don't see how he could no it's a strange... It's strange. And I think, if you guys just mentioned it, Doppelganger is incredibly important to Vought. Yeah. You think so. Um, so it's, it's, all, it's all very strange. I don't, I don't quite follow, and I don't, I don't think Homelander would do it. I think it would present issues for Vought, and I don't know why Doppelganger isn't trying to escape. It's all... Yeah, I don't know. Is he there all the time? Is he there at only arranged times? Like they they like arrange this role play of theirs. Um, I assume that's what they do. Um, but I mean, I've just everything about it is just why does he kill him? Why does he? And, and are we gonna do the whole oh, lol Homelander is crazy defense? Is that always gonna be the thing? That's boring defense. It, it is you know? boring. And like, it would be nice to have a psychopath who's cunning and oh, it'd intelligent be and love clever. It. it would be so great. And I would be so invested in seeing how this super clever, guileful character gets the stuff that they want and how they manipulate others into doing their bidding. But we don't get that. We get Homelander instead. So, so um, next scene of interest, I would say, is uh, Homelander threatening to kill Starlight if she's an evilman. And uh, the, she, the elevator. We got yeah. We're gonna have to. Yeah. Be, we're gonna have to be very careful with this one because I know people are gonna deliberately misunderstand what I'm saying. So, she manages to pass his lie detector. Because she says a detail that she believes to be true, being that Huey betrayed her and it makes her sad. He doesn't pursue any other form of more specific questioning whatsoever when he can get a definitive answer for any of them. And the fact that that passes when it's being used as a white lie in order to escape the, the conversation, she's lucky that's not detected as a lie either. It's, uh, it's a mean, scene that really fucking annoys me. He's pretty sure 
that she's evil. He's gotten to the point where he's almost killing her. Which, by the way, tells you something about her... Either his immense strength or her weaknesses. Yeah. Pick whatever one you want. Um, and yeah, he's going this far, but he doesn't pursue any specific questions. Really fucking annoys me how Homeland is just so incompetent. Anything else you guys want to say about that thing? <laughs> I mean... Well, it's... Uh... I mean, lucky for her. I mean, mm. yeah, lucky I mean, I, for her. I only noted that went well. Well, that went well for Starlight. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, what I like, oh, That could have gone way worse, but yeah, it seems to be all right. Um, someone in chat said the Joker archetype is what Rags wants. It's like, well, what? no, not really. Someone who's crazy. I guess I should be specific. Homelander is an extremely charismatic individual who has a big following and people love him and people think that he's great. It's just on the inside, you know, he's not anything like what he seems. Joker is just crazy through and through. Take um Yeah. Isn't I haven't seen all the show, but isn't Dexter kind of this? He's he's like charming, well to to do, uh straightforward, smart, and covering up, but he has a severe desire to kill. He loves killing people. Like, that's the premise of the show. His whole thing is to try and kill the right people, as in he tries to kill really bad people to sate his desire. Um, not that that's what you should do with Homelander, just the implication is you can have a very intelligent person who doesn't give a fuck for human life, which, by the way, would be completely supported by him being a god-man. Like, he, he could just see humans as ants. He's like, I yeah, don't give a fuck. Yeah, he has no, sen no sense of apathy whatsoever. But he wants their love. Whatsoever. He likes yeah. being above everyone. Yeah, it feeds his superiority complex, which he has developed because he is physically superior to everybody around him by a long shot, and no one can ever stop him. Ozymandias? That could be someone who's similar-ish. We're looking for more evil, I would imagine, though. Even though, well, I don't want to get into Watchmen. <laughs> we yeah, got enough. He would be intelligent enough that their respect out of fear for him is not the same as their love and admiration for him. Like anyone could know that there's an obvious difference between those two things. And he certainly would, which is why he strives for one and not the other, Ooh, because one is cheap and easy. Hannibal Lecter. That's probably the archetype. If, if, if you wanted to give it a name, whatever hmm. it is, he's um, prior to being imprisoned. That's, that's what we're looking at. Um, Look, look at that frame having an almond joy in their hand. They must have been. It's a setup. That. It's a setup yeah. because he wants it away from him. Very good job, show. Uh, oh, God. Oh, no. This is the thing. Where Black Noir oh, arrived. Oh, no. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. So. Oh, I don't even. This is like unwrapping a, a poop. <laughs> it's like, yeah. here we go. Butcher knows where his wife is. He is going to jump the wall with, I guess, a grappling hook. No idea how he isn't detected by many different things at that point. No idea why there's not, you know, severe barbed wire or right. some shit at the top. He just does, and he sees a camera, and he flips it off, and then he runs forward, and the next time we see him, he's hiding in a car because there's too many cameras for him to avoid, which is a... I've already... What I've told you so far should already be like, excuse me? He flipped off a camera and then hid because of the cameras? Yes. He doesn't actually, uh, I believe the, the order is, is he doesn't flip the camera off until he's leaving. Is that right? I thought yeah. he did it when he enters. Uh, because, because no, uh, I'm, I'm almost certain that he flips off the camera when he leaves. I think because it's he... I was going to put that in my review and I went back and I double checked and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. He doesn't do it till he leaves. Where is I thought it's when he jumped down the wall. Yeah, he, it's when he drops down from the, the rope once he lands down inside. Anyone... Correct. But then he has to climb up over to get out. And when he gets out, that's when he does it. Where is the scene where he enters the building? The place, even. I'm trying to find it. I keep missing it. Is it like, it must be really quick. I feel, also, I keep missing it too. I think it was a later scene. I think it was some, sometime later. When no, it can't be later because he's in the place later. So it has to be... I'm, fi I'm getting here. I'm, I'm process of elimination this shit. It's gotta be just before this one, maybe? It's, it's relatively short. Cause it's, he's it's after uh, he leaves Steve? MM, but it's before he meets with the wife. So where is it? Damn it. Ah. <laughs> I can't find it. <laughs> oh, uh, go back. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it does. I, cause I realize it's on a delay anyway, so it don't matter. You know what? Yeah. I'm just going to run it in times two speed while we talk more about how shit it is. So, um, 
Wait, yeah. By the way, but, but, but before we could deal deeper in that, how fucking stupid is it that Black Noir has to come around and tell somebody <laughs> oh, to look for them? That's what I meant by carrying on. So we're, we're yeah. setting that up. There's so many problems okay. all at once. So he right. he breaks in, the cameras spot him, and uh, then he stays secret because of the cameras. Um, there's no motion detector. It's just recorded, and that is it. And then because Black Noir's task is to find Butcher, he walks into the security room, and asks someone to look for Butcher on the cameras. Yeah. Where well, he writes Butcher in big scary words. Yeah, I guess somebody was would've... looking. Yeah, well, if they would have seen Butcher normally, they would have just thought, oh, this is normal and fine. But now that Black Noir wants me to, th oh, well, now. Mm. It's staggering that uh, he wasn't just automatically detected and detained in this high security, most valuable human being on the planet to vote place. He, yeah, especially just... after they, they, they had their quote-unquote fight with the Seven. They should have been looking for them non-stop, trying to find them. And not chewing on some stupid Elm Joy. I'm trying to... Where is this fucking scene? Because it's in my head where he flips off the camera. I'm just trying to find it. Yeah. I'm where are you? The the, towards the end. Um, I'm trying to find... Oh, is it the end of this, uh, this episode? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what yeah. I meant, but it's, 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 a, it's in a later scene. I was, but I was sure he did it on his way in, not, um... In my memory, it's in a, in a later scene, but he... Oh, wait. The, the... Almost at the end. Is it that he does it on his way in, but we only ever see it in the form of the... in the security room? That's I think it. that might be the case. That might be it, okay. Yeah, he's coming down, and then he flips off the camera. Um, but wait, is, so the implication is he does that on the way out? I can tell you right here. It's at uh, timestamp fifty eight forty eight. You no, know, I got it. I'm just. Uh, are we guessing this is on the outside of the building? That looks to me like it's outside. Well, so in that case, then we're just saying he he was lucky to avoid all the cameras. Then why didn't did he not avoid them on the way in? How yeah, would why, he have even known where they were? And why would he want to be seen them? by them eventually? Why would he do this? Yeah, yeah, if you knew where the cameras were, why did you not avoid them? And why would you want to be seen by them? And why did you not go around them? And why are you an idiot? <laughs> like, you, why? Oh, God. Oh, but is... that's so butcher. This is classic butcher. Giving the finger to the man. Oh, he's showing them. Classic. The amount of time he spends in that place. I guess we'll get to all of that as we progress. But it fucking blows my mind that he got in there and out. And apparently as a sort of, fuck you, goodbye, he, uh, why would you even put yourself on a camera if you know where they are? And how do you know what all the cameras are? He shouldn't know where they are. He's never been there before. <sighs> God. All right. Well, yeah. No, that's so that's how good he is. And then, of course, not detected until someone is asked to detect him. That is yeah, the, uh... so insane. They should be looking for them nonstop. All why day. are they not looking for them already? This is the... This yeah, is the contingency I mean. for Homelander. Yeah. As dumb as that is, this should be really important, and you should have a lot of, a lot of personnel and equipment invested in this property. Yeah. Some people in chat are saying it's, it was he was on his way in. It's bad either way, but I, if I was to guess just from that shot, I'd assume it was on the way out because the 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 what do you call them yeah. like supports for the wall are more typically going to be on the outside, or would they be? <laughs> I don't know. I think it, I, I mean, have, ideally it works the same either way. I think for I those, those types of walls, you would have it on both sides. Hmm. Yeah. Like well, there's, there's going to be that kind of that L shape on the bottom towards the base. And you can't just have it on one side because then it makes it unstable. So you would rather have it on both, I think. Um, either way, it's dumb. So this is the first of the we're really pushing it now, guys, with the Huey and Starlight. They just meet up yeah. again in a park without their hoodies on. Right after Homelander shows massive suspicions against Starlight. In a, yeah. In a She's park, being tracked, guys. sorry. It's a fucking park. Like there's people there's people of... everywhere. Yeah. We lost it when we watched this. We were just oh. we could not believe that this is where they decided to meet up. With Starlight being as famous as she is. With the fact that she has this tracker on her. He's a wanted remember, criminal. Remember, remember how in season, you know, one episode, what, two and three, I think, how it was a huge deal that there was a tracker in Translucent. 
and how that was a big part of the plot in avoiding detection in setting up the special room and going to that abandoned building, how all of that was done because there was a tracker on translucent. And the I fact mean, that there was a that. scratch in the ceiling had Homelander nearly, you know, break up our heroes. Like that was a huge deal. And in this season, they don't give a fuck about this tracker. Yeah. Well, just... at the beginning on the first episode, they go into the subway and they meet there because it's supposedly yeah. The subway the one is time. the best moment in the whole season for counting for the fact that they. But wanted. now it's gone. We've abandoned. But yeah, it now until no one later cares. On. Look at that yeah, screenshot. For it once. It's fine. Look at that wonderful screenshot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> jogging beside. So. How? What? I mean, the fact that nobody is following Starlight when Homeland, which is under huge suspicion. After. Yeah. Also, people people know how Starlight looks without her costume. She's been spotted in the first ep first season when she helped uh, the the girl, the, the girl, <laughs> the girl. Remember that? Yeah when, yeah, when she was getting attacked and and it got recorded. Um, they were, made like a big deal, it's like, oh shit, it went viral and everything. What are you doing? It's like people people know how she looks. Like, shouldn't they be like, oh shit, Starlight, yo, what's up? Can I have an autograph? Super chat yeah. said it, the camera was half past five when uh well on the camera which means it can't be when he left because he left at night is that true well if it's half past five it ain't gonna be dark of course i just mean is I'm it true that um, he left morning. at night i can't remember i think so I, he I came there at night and he left at night right yeah yeah i think he i think he went over both times during the night well so we'll find, we we'll to get into the car we'll find out eventually anyway it'll be fine <laughs> we'll get there it's not a video um, I, li I like this in chat, by the way. To clarify, this is a valid criticism. The other 90%, not so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> fix. Hey, well, at least you're hearing them out. That's the important thing. So. <sighs> if he, uh, you're an idiot. Oh, my God. Oh, no. I'm oh, sorry. You're just, you're just an idiot. I, I, it'll, if you think the 90% of everything else we've said isn't valid, just I don't, if, you're an idiot. if you don't think that, that the show is already in like critical danger I, by the end of C episode three, it's like, I don't know what to say. I, I mean, You'd have to be. I I know no other explanation unless uh, I like the idea emotional that emotional investment. You know, it's a valid criticism that nobody recognized Starlight. It's not valid that Homelander could have instantly caught the boys in a storm drain, <laughs> and when they're only like less than a mile away. He said ninety percent, so maybe that one's a valid one too. Maybe. maybe. All right. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> um. I guess we don't know. So next up, she kind of breaks down. She's like, oh god, I'm gonna die. And so Huey's like, right then, you're gonna stay with us now. Wh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're gonna, yeah. But I want to be we fair to the show. We need to have you close to us. M.M. is temporarily the voice of reason. He's like, are you fucking nuts? Like, this is <laughs> never gonna work. And then she's like, don't worry, I told Vought I'm gonna visit my sister who lives I'm in the place you guys are going to. Yeah. Cousin or something like that. Which, my god. She's under suspicion. She tells you guys at Vought she's gonna go visit someone she she loves for for a day or two, or whatever. How do you not go? Someone keep an eye on her. How? Yeah. How is that not what happens? And yet, yeah, you she don't can have go on one a. Person who can track her, she yeah. goes on a full road trip. This episode blew my mind. I couldn't believe this was happening. Like, look at where they are right now. She's on the street. Starlight yeah. is speaking <laughs> to a wanted criminal. Two wanted criminals. On the street. It's like, okay. While she has a tracking device inside of her. Fascinating choices by the writers. Again, like any, even like B list celebrities get constantly mobbed with people taking pictures and, and, and all that sort of stuff. I mean, you got um, pictures of, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio and, and Keanu Reeves like just sitting on a park bench, but somehow Starlight is just completely unnoticed like probably one of the most recognizable people in the entire planet yeah pretty unbelievable <sighs> but uh yeah mm is convinced and so they go on their road trip <sighs> amazing um a train is dropped from the seven it's uh that i don't have any issue with this scene homelander's motivation to drop him is that he's not good enough anymore not only is he only in the top he can't even break the top 20 speedsters he's got the heart issue so he's just not he's yeah. not up to wow. stuff anymore hard to believe there's 20 speedsters out there at Damn. least yeah um yeah but also oh by the way that we actually talked about that it's like imagine vort having access to 20 different speedsters when they need information <laughs> they need like oh god can you run around the city like all of you? Just collect gonna... all of the secrets from everyone, everywhere. We have, to, we have all the secrets in like 20 seconds. 
Well, we've already seen uh, scenes with A Train where he moves so fast, it's literally not possible to even see him. So, I mean, like they could get anywhere, like pretty much anywhere. Um, so, yeah, uh, Homeland is dropping in for that reason, which we will hang on to because that's going to become irrelevant information by the time you hit the last episode. Right. Uh... Um, yeah, and then they're, they're just chilling, hanging out, having a little thing, and then M.M., I believe, drops a story on them about how his dad, like, killed himself working so hard. Oh. Oh, that that's when they are in... What was happening? It was nighttime when, when he broke out, uh, but those little things are on the outside. I wonder... Let me just... Maybe it was night vision on the security camera. Let me have a look again. You don't think they'd be on the inside, too? Well, I was going to say I, it could be. I, I just I want to check the security footage. Oh, fuck. I, I'm going to lose the if, scene if again. I was gonna put, if I was going to put cameras on there, I would have them on the outside. <clears throat> because you don't really need to see people inside. Who yeah, are you, do. you do. Because, like, this is insanely important and you well, have Vought money. I was going to say, there should be cameras literally everywhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the time is, the time is seven twenty-seven, not five twenty-seven. Mm. So. Oh yeah, it's it's dark time or early morning. Yeah. Um. So that could line up that he was on. Well, the, again, if it's summer, it's summer. It's still light out at seven thirty in the summer. True. I don't know if if that completely lines up, but I mean, it's we've as we've said, it's it's terrible either way. Like it doesn't really matter hugely. Um. I just wanted to see. So when he drops down, when he leaves, does he? the camera off when we see him here. Um, the gates of Mordor? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so when he lands here, he doesn't flip off the camera. At a 22, oh, 2234, someone, he doesn't do the flip. Someone points in the chat, well, they do monitor the inside, even as wife said there were, I guess, which is why they went met on the bridge. Oh yeah, there's With, but yeah, that's going exactly the car. right. That was the blind spot. But, yeah, but also, but, but, but as he's, this is him leaving, and he doesn't flip off the camera, unless it's a it, we cut that no, part that's out. That's him arriving. That's him arriving. No, the one I've got on screen right now is him leaving, isn't it? No, that's him arriving. Oh, god, my timeline's all fucked up. That's Wait, arriving. what? Yeah, that's no, arriving. but he arrived during the day. No, he arrived at night. I think he arrived at oh, night. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait, hold on. But this was the I scene I was looking for a... the whole time. It was it was here, I oh, guess. Oh, That makes I more see. sense now. Right. So that's because interesting. He's gonna, because he's going to go to Becca's house. He's going to leave the car door open, and she's going to notice it. She goes yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, 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 you're right. Um, yeah. So he both arrives and leaves at night time then. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, so technically speaking, that security footage could be from... Uh, yeah, I would I would actually now settle right. that it's it's of him leaving rather than arriving. I would assume. Okay. No, but again, it's still retarded. <laughs> like, there's no way he wouldn't have been caught. Um, I just it's it's amusing to me that he somehow got from that wall to the car, and was an and, he, and he's in the car to avoid the cameras. It's like surely the cameras have picked you up already then. Like, I, I don't really understand how that would have worked. Um, I don't. I don't think you you can't get in there without the camera seeing you. In which case, it's just like I guess they're just not motion capture cameras. They only record, which is beyond stupid. What else can you say? That's just, yeah. Um, so pushing forward, uh, Frenchie is sad about Kimiko, and he's gonna find out that Kimiko and and the girl he hangs out with have got a, a deal. Where she kills people for money, and that that's that happens uh, at one yeah. point. You can't you can't fucking tell somebody she has a brother, but she can make deals somehow. Could be a different but... day. He went there multiple times. I th I think he did it all in one go. I don't I don't think he uh, left and came back. No, no, it was just once. <clears throat> um. Do do do. Yeah, I mean, this what is, you guys think again, about that? She, she, she can't say, tell the people that the guy was her brother, but she can make deals with someone, no problem. Well, um, between the time of doing that and that, I'm sure it's it's she's figured it out now. She's got the like, whole okay. system. Maybe she taught that lady the sign language. You don't know. Oh, that would be kind of fucked up of her. 
Um, but yeah, so they're in a um, restaurant now. <laughs> oh wait, you, yeah. you go ahead. Oh well, just I, I'm not. I don't know that there was anything important happening in the restaurant. It was the after you know when they leave the restaurant that uh, a car crash just so happens to occur right in front of the restaurant to put Starlight in an ethical quandary yeah. to go and help but get identified, even though she yeah. can't really provide much more assistance than any normal person. Also, suddenly they care about not being uh, covered up. Yeah. <laughs> really like, oh, oh, now you... Okay. Oh, so this is interesting. I was, I was curious where this came from. So... The criticism about the meeting in public. EFAP has defended equally stupid decisions before because it doesn't affect the plot. It's a valid criticism, but EFAP is being really... They said consistent here, I think they mean inconsistent. And their example is when we were using an example of how, if in Die Hard, um, there was an option for John to pick up two pistols instead of just the one, and then he goes on to only fire, let's say, two or three bullets, him not picking up that second pistol really didn't make much of a difference at all. And so they're suggesting that because they weren't caught by being out in public, we can't really call that a criticism if we're going to remain consistent about the uh, the guns and bullets and stuff. What they failed what? to connect uh, is that what? what we were talking about in that context was repercussions or, or, or what, what happens as a result. It is a problem that John wouldn't pick up two pistols. That is, luckily, in that scenario, it doesn't have major consequences, as in he runs out of ammo when he could have had another whole pistol with, with let's just assume, a full magazine. Um, that... Th that that would be a problem, but it's a problem for John to not want to have more ammo when he could, anyway. In this scenario, it's really fucking stupid for them to be out in public, so that's a criticism of character, just like it would be with John. But um, somehow, against all possibilities, they are not actually seen or captured in any way. Meanwhile, the idea that John wouldn't expend all of the bullets in his magazine, that that's very possible, it really depends on how everything goes. These aren't the two... In other words, they're not the same thing. <laughs> they're not the same thing at all. Um, like I said, uh, if we said, because I'm, I'm pretty sure that's EFAP 2, if we said it's not, it can't be considered an issue for him to not give himself more ammo when he has the chance to, I would disagree with me from back then. Um, but I do agree with me from back then if I said that it's more important as a, as a flaw if it leads to like um an important consequence rather than literally nothing at all yeah the the idea being that in this case them not being caught enables the entire show to continue as it does it's very consequential yeah if john literally had to kill one more guy it doesn't really matter if he's a good shot whether he has 10 bullets or 100 bullets like yeah. he's just got to land one shot though i would still a lot that they're not caught yeah um as, as someone just said ultra celebrities like it's, we're talking the highest types of celebrity, wanted fugitive and uh, uh, celebrity of the highest order. Yeah, this analogy isn't a good one. Um, this comparison is does doesn't hold up. Well, I, I'm cool um, with clarifying if they, that's what they were looking yeah, for. Yeah, uh, but yeah, these are two different things. More than picking old baller. I can't remember. I don't think I would have said it's absolutely not something you can bring up. I just would have appealed to the consequences. Because, uh, yeah, consequences are what change a like the impact on the plot and the consequences of it are what are the difference between a nitpick and a non nitpick. Yeah, nitpick being that it's uh it's a flaw, but it's not very consequential. <laughs> a plot convenience be being oh, you sound Oops. like you saw something funny. Just as they said, can you move on to the finale? We're four hours in, and we're at episode four. <laughs> we're at episode four. We're still going to be talking for a while. This There's gonna... more bad shit than you know. Yes. There's more bad shit than just episode six onwards. Yeah, it doesn't start with episode the end. It doesn't it's like, start this is with a... the... Yeah. The re yeah. Like, remember, it was episode two where we were like, nope. Um. Yeah, so they're in a restaurant having food. Again, wanted yep. and celebrity. Gonna have to keep reaffirming how fucking retarded this is, but okay. Well, he would have yeah, gotten served. Butcher... Both of them would have gotten served. Well, yeah, when Butcher went to that restaurant, he got spotted immediately. Well, you see, Rags, the difference there was the the TV told her because it was it was on the right channel at the right time. In this instance, whoever served these two is unaware of both of them. How would you even? Is that even possible that a that a person serving food would even? 
like, you'd be like, fucking hell, that's Starlight. That's like more famous than the most famous celebrity, the superheroes, <laughs> real yeah. super, like you'd go nuts and everybody in that store well, would be surrounding like if, if also, you. Well, if, if, if Donald Trump just walked into your restaurant, <laughs> like yeah. you, know, you know who he is. <laughs> it's, it's that kind of thing. Also keep in mind, this is um, supposed to be more towards where Starlight is from where because like her yeah. family lives in this area and you would have to assume that they would be even more familiar with her well as far as i'm aware uh places the presidents were born in and and like like are uh, the town they're born in are like tourist sites literally because yeah, yeah. of that oh a lot of the time you want to see where they their childhood home like childhood homes are very common yeah. things that get sort of visited when you're a famous person and so uh yeah they <laughs> you'd get people surrounding you and then one of them would be like Hey, this dude you're sitting with, he looks like that guy. Oh, oh no, everyone run, call the police. Oh, blah, blah. How weird, and Starlight has to grab his hands and be like, I am capturing him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really hungry right now. <laughs> and then we get to what is absolutely a nitpick, because it doesn't have any consequences of any kind. I just find it so shameful. So, nitpicking, shut the fuck up. Starlight is trying to remain undercover. But you know what? There's a car crash suddenly. It's a really weird one too, because I was like, oh god, is someone here to attack them? Like, that's what I figured they were going for. But no, it's just it's just an unfortunate car crash that happens. And, um... Yeah, there you see it. I just put it on screen. So, she's like, oh my god, I must help them, because I am a superhero. And then MM is like, no, you can't. You'll give up your, your, your position, even though everyone can fucking tell you're Starlight, but whatever. <laughs> it's like, you can't do this, no. And she... It's like a moment of, oh, the, the struggle of maintaining cover when you know you can help. Isn't isn't this oh, isn't this sad? And it's just like, but, what do you mean? Who needs a superhero? It's two cars that have rolled to a stop after, you know, like a hit. That there's a guy who looks to be unconscious, the other one's fine, and these humans are going to carry him out of the car and wait for an ambulance. What's she going to do? Yeah, yeah, there's not much she can do beyond what any normal person can do. They didn't do this properly. The way the scene yeah. you need is a scene where only she is the one that could possibly help, and she has to choose not to to maintain her like if the, secrecy. If the car, if the car is on fire and like the the doors are like you know kind of twisted, and you need super strength to pull them apart or something, you could have that, but. I think MM even points out, it's like, there's already people helping, like, there's no yeah. problem anymore. It's, it's just a bulk scene, it's just her being stupid. It's like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, they'll be yeah. fine. Like, but I'm a superhero. Well, we just need more okay. of these scenes, right? Because we have conundrum here, and then conundrum where she murders someone. <laughs> and then blames him because he was in the way. Oh, we're almost to that <laughs> shit. I feel like we're almost there, we're probably not. Um... <laughs> so yeah, how do we sum up this retarded shit? So so Butcher is like, we, we meet. She's like, we'll we'll talk here because this is the place they have no cameras or mics. Like, <laughs> why is there a place they have no cameras or mics, and yeah, how do you no know where that is? Yeah. And what like, if oh. they lied to you when there are cameras and microphones? Well, it's, it's hilarious because um, <laughs> she puts her cigarettes to the camera as if to imply like, this is my cigarette time, you leave me alone. And then she goes off for like an hour, and then she goes back there soon to just have sex. And it's like, what? Is, why would nobody on the cameras be like, this is kind of weird. <laughs> would, wow, she's smoking yeah. a lot today. How would Wait, she we, know that this location doesn't have any cameras or microphones? I what guess she had a chat with him. him and then yeah, she asked him real nice, and they said, okay, here's the place you can be private. Like, like yeah, what, what other previous actions would she need is she meeting other people like <laughs> no, she incognito just likes, or she what just wants to be why would they let her leave to smoke while, okay? she doesn't have to leave to smoke just Im smoke outside dude imagine being on camera when you're smoking that is hell of course she yeah. wants to be off camera when she smokes <laughs> i don't want him to see me like this <laughs> just hilarious uh she just gets to it's just hilarious that she gets to just leave <laughs> Like I'm pretty certain we haven't that even gotten there, single, right? From from what I can tell, every single aspect of Becca's life is controlled by Vought. Like I, I, she doesn't need to work. She doesn't need to go anywhere or do anything. Um, and I, like she basically spends her whole day at home with her kid. I don't even think she goes grocery shopping. They probably just deliver that shit. So like, it yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. And so uh, they have a talk about which is the best chocolate bar and then they have sex and then as oh, you know then... as as you know it's what normally ha it's normally how mm -hmm. it goes butcher mm -hmm. and his wife have sex sorry human intercourse uh 
humanoids, right? Then oh, then he gives her way more details than he needs to about where their secret base is, which uh, is just funny because it it was just like damn, that's probably gonna come up, and it does. It's really important that she knows this because it's gonna be useful later. Um, instead of just saying, yeah, we're undercover in a place, he he's, like, says the kind of store that it is, and, and I, I can't remember if he says what street or whatever, but the point is she's able to find it thanks to this information, which very clever of Butcher. But again, I don't, I don't think that's really out of character. He's pretty dumb in this season. Um, oh, and then we get the reveal. We kind of, so this is the thing, we might be able to speed up as we go because we kind of covered some of this stuff ahead of time. Um, mm -hmm. Homelander... This is a really weird point. So they highlight that the the seven don't have um, good diversity in terms of race, and to counter, Homelander says, "Yeah, but Maeve's gay," <laughs> and it's just like, uh, <laughs> but um, the scene pivots into that, like, "Oh my god, she's coming out! This is amazing, diverse, diverse." And I was, I was just like, I don't know if that's just commentary on how vapid it all is, or if they just lost the point that they had, which was. Race and sexuality are two different things, but all right. Um, the kind of ironic is in the comics, A Train is actually white, so they changed him for the show, and even that wasn't good enough. They're still complaining about it. I guess <laughs> um, kind of makes the decision to get rid of A Train and to uh, abuse the shit out of the Daredevil guy as they could have been good for the diverse picks there, Homelander. You know, what, it's, it's just funny the idea that he's trying to shore up the seven when it doesn't even seem like he gives a shit about the seven in this season. No. Also, do, do you like that uh, Homelander uses his super hearing for eavesdropping, but not when he actually needs to kill someone? <laughs> well, as we've highlighted, he missed it with finding that Kamiko was alive. He missed it by yeah. further pursuing a lie detector test on uh, Starlight, and he missed it when. Huey made it blatant that he and Starlight were working together. Homelander's powers are very inconsistent. Yep. Um, Kimiko is gonna try and exact some revenge. Frenchie manages to stop her right before she does it. It's, uh, just seems lucky to me, I guess. In uh, a huge crowd, by the way. Well, it's not like they wanted criminals or anything, what? It's just, of all the times, like, this <laughs> is the time when all the rage it. steeds up, like, this is the time? It's, uh, it's fascinating. Um, so then they end up at this lead, which is the house of the, I want to say, the child of someone who was killed by Liberty back in the day because uh, uh, they were black. That's the only yeah, reason. It was her brother. She was, oh, okay. She was paid to stay silent, and she knows that if she ruffles feathers, uh, it can end really badly because a literal soup fucking executed her brother. And yet she tells them the story. Yeah, yeah, and, and after it, she's and, like, "Don't." And she's like, "Hey, don't tell anybody else." Yeah, it's, but she why tells do you them... think they're asking you about this? <laughs> like, so the reason that she tells them is because MM tells her about his dad. Right, that's the story. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's that, what gets her to. <laughs> but that doesn't line up. <laughs> that's just. Oh no 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 no! It makes t total sense. She Whenever should've, she'd be like, "Oh, that's a I... sad story," I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Whenever someone tells you a sad story about her, how their dad died, you instantly, it's like, you know, you did this for me when I didn't ask for it. So now I'm societally obliged to tell you all the secrets I know about my dead relatives because we have like a, you know, we're in the dead relatives club mm -hmm. and we got to tell everyone about all of our dead relatives and how they got dead. So this is the, the super cringe scene that shows the this, this show doesn't know just how to portray a racist it's or a victim of racism you have the car pulls up and the guy gets out and she's like being really really mean to him and then he's like wait you're a superhero aren't you you're, just, you're not supposed to be that she's like shut up black piece of shit and kills him <laughs> it's like yeah oh again because all you need with every scene of her is just hey your race um, bastard, your race, piece of crap. <laughs> uh, your race, like, <laughs> bad I, person. I don't <laughs> like non white. I have, I believe that people who aren't white are lesser than me, and they kill them. <laughs> and I there's always a witness. I love how there's always a witness to this blatant yeah, racism. Always... <laughs> These are not very smart racists. <laughs> we are. 
we're to assume that she's flying way overhead in the middle of the night yep. in a downpour. And, and maybe she has vision. We don't know because it's never. She explained. does. She can see. Um, but like, <laughs> how how would she even like? She could maybe she pulled over like, you know, anybody. It doesn't like. How does she even know who I, she's pulling? Like dude, who she's stopping? All you're highlighting is just the scenario is racism. And you're like, what? What? What's it's the just, context? Is racism is the context? Racism. Like, no. What are the details? So racism. It's okay. so <laughs> blunt, though. It's so dumb. Well, this is what I mean about portraying... This is, there are so many better ways to portray racism in like a meaningful way, rather than she pulled over a random car, pulled out well, a black guy, I guess, killed him and said, you're black. It's like, all right. Well, I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't the more interesting one be the whole like implicit racism thing, like a sideways glance, maybe putting a little distance between you and, I don't know, like a black person who's walking nearby, as opposed to, you're black, you're inferior to me, piece of shit. <laughs> And then kills them. It's so on the. It's. I mean, on the nose is putting it lightly. It's overt. Oh, no. So did Chess, and she went full Captain Marvel. <laughs> oh man, I was, I was, I was looking at chat laughing too because Great Great Club said she was on the short Panzer. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That is funny, but some Americans might not get it. No, no, some non-Americans might not get it. I get it because of That's too funny. much American media consumption. Um, That's funny. I like that. That's good. The but I don't. They don't even give like it would be so like the idea that Stormfront is a secret Nazi experiment, right? <laughs> it's like a meme. It's, it's, it's very very. <laughs> it's very very silly. Um, on the and doors. If it's very on the nose. Uh, and she did not check. She did not check for witnesses. By the way. <laughs> She, she, didn't, she didn't check inside the car in case someone else was there. She yeah. just left it. Um, fairness, doesn't she have super like awareness too? Uh, I don't know. Super hearing, maybe. Super racial awareness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Her superpower is she could detect the non-whites. She's super <laughs> racist. Someone in Discord said they, they should have had Stormfront make a 40-hour three-part series about why TLJ is bad. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the in the comic, Stormfront is actually, you know, Yahtzee's. And, um, but she was created as, like, a counter to oppose Homelander. I believe that's what it was. So she was actually, or as actually, it was actually a guy. Wasn't Stormfront it? was a guy in the comics. That's definitely thrown out for the him. show then, right? Because she, she predates Homelander, so uh, that can't be yeah, what they're doing well, in the show, I mean, right? In the, in the show, yeah. But in the comics, Homelander comes first, and then the Germans create Stormfront to be a counter. But after the war is over, uh, him and like you know the the scientists and stuff, they all defect to the USA and they bury the history. Get us the to the moon, yeah. But in Wait, the what? comics, Stormfront, like his history is there, but it's not like super important. It's not like he's just randomly pulling over cars and, and doing that like he's at least <laughs> pretending to be a hero well you see what if the audience didn't quite get the message Think what if that. it was <laughs> what if what if you had a character who had some bad experience with someone from a particular race or something in their childhood or some some other reason right that they became a racist that was you know somewhat developed in some way I, obviously not saying it's right I'm saying, but it would have been, I feel like it would have been a lot more interesting if you had something like that, like a backstory or something, not just secret Nazi laboratory experiment. Because <laughs> I was expecting it. I was expecting to be like, why is Stormfront like this? What, what happened to her in her past to, to give her this attitude? What, what, is, what is her story? And then there's like, oh, secret Nazi laboratory experiment. It's like, oh, okay, well, it's all that, I guess. So, um, that pushes us to possibly one of the cringiest things you can imagine, which is a TV show making its own memes. <laughs> Chat, I don't know how to properly translate this to you, okay? Like this is I, you wanna know what I wrote down? What? Look, it's memes. <laughs> you guys like memes, right? <laughs> <laughs>
Wait, can we? I I need to I need to examine the Saving America lol. Bitch. Oh wait, 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 wow. wait! I got I got I got the first one. Okay, so I'll just. All right. That's the first one you got. She has no sympathy for bitches. Like, that's, that's, that's that's barely a meme. Yeah, that's, that's not, not even like a meme. Also, I don't even know joke. what the what what's the I don't what's the context of the that. Uh she stopped the super terrorist. I guess but so. The yeah. super terrorist was a man. Well, he's yeah. a bitch now. Oh, okay. Got tries to save city. Can't even save his reputation. What's that? That's not a <laughs> that's, meme. That's I, I know, right? There's no jokes here. Like. <laughs> Well, like, these are the kind of memes where you throw them up and you're like, okay. These All are right. boomer memes. It's like, I, yeah, I get to, I get what you're trying to say. It's just, you just say it. There's no point in having this be a meme. Just say he tries to save the city, but he can't save his reputation. Because it, it has the same effect and it saves you a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the saddest part is as he's scrolling through them, Homelander is very upset. It's like, dude... <laughs> I mean, I'd be upset if someone was calling these a meme. I would be upset if people were making these memes. I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah. Why would you make such terrible memes? <laughs> it's Go an on. insult to the internet, okay? We try harder than this to make our memes. EFAP memes are way better than these crappy memes. You could, you could go to almost, well, almost any Reddit... And you will find memes like a million times better What's than this. Saving America, lol, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what a meme! <laughs> what? I don't even know what it's trying to say. I don't understand. Oh man, they've yeah. even got a tea, a, sp a spilling tea reference. Did you hear about Stormfront? The tea is scalding, sis. Ooh, you know it's like yeah. I know. Oh, you can feel it in your bones. Uh. <laughs> my back is breaking from the cringe. <laughs> like my spine is oh. snapping in two. Oh man, next top quality. Me what is even <laughs> this? What is happening here? He's got a remote that scrolls through memes. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 this is this this is one of the, the this is one of the things Homelander does. Homelander goes to the tower of the seven to their meeting room, and this is his meme screen. And every day he gets up. Bright and early, checks all the new memes checks for the day. The he checks the memes, make sure that they're all, you know, good. All they're pro him. Uh, and when they're not, when oof, he gets upset when that meme screen. Oh, man, with that wall be... money, get some better screens, dude. Like, those reflect like walls. Those yeah. Are <laughs> oh, meme yeah. screens are. Uh, mm. Meme screens are deep fried screen. Deep fried meme screen. <laughs> deep fried <laughs> meme screens. Favorite <laughs> <laughs> rags. Laughing at Homeland. <laughs> that's a great meme that's hilarious um i oh boy i did i don't what <laughs> <laughs> me oh my god <laughs> so uh, they even have the goal to have a meme about how good the memes are <laughs> uh, yeah you don't you don't do that guys come on oh <laughs> Someone said, excuse me, Rags, this isn't the meeting room. This is the memeing room. <laughs> right you are, because this is the room that has the meme screen. Such qua- Oh my god, oh, they did this one. See, this is how you know that they've got their pulse on the- Sorry, their finger on the pulse of the internet. That's how you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, see, that this, one is so played out, This, isn't this it? tells you that the world is starting to prefer Stormfront. How about that? Well, that's, they like her because, um, you know, they do. She's good at dog whistling, you know? Look at yeah, her. she's good at telling people they should protect their country, I guess. Poor, poor Homeland is losing it, man. Oh, God, look at him. I love but how that he's That guy like, should yeah, be looking his, at me. That should be me in the red shirt. His what? eyes are, like, twitching from <laughs> the memes, the, the meme is, overload. That's his weakness. That's his, that is the contingency for Homelander, is memes. Like, if this was posted <laughs> online, I'd just be like, what is... I don't even understand most of these. <laughs> because <laughs> none of them are funny, they're shit. Crack boyfriend is, like, the only, the only one that is actually a meme, and, like, I don't, like, all the other stuff, I, like, I don't even, I don't even, like, what is this? <laughs> I don't, like, all of them, they all, a lot of these have the exact same font, so you can tell the, the same person made them? Oh, yeah. 
they, they rushed these out. They probably had some guys oh, like, yeah. oh, I, I know memes. I I can. I can make this. some I mean, really funny ass crop, memes. Look at the crop on that homeland one that you've got on screen yeah. right now. You can see the background over his shoulder. Well, they got to make him look genuine. So I love how he's like there trembling with anger over these memes. <laughs> Imagine the direction. All right, so you're looking at some memes and they're really good, um, but it upsets you. This <laughs> so one, just do that. This isn't even a meme. This this one that's mixed in in the last one is just uh, like it's just promotional. It's not a meme. That, yeah, that's not a meme. Um, yeah, they just wanted to slip it in there because. Well, because I, I, I guess it had Stormfront on it. I think it's clear why because this is the following meme. Oh. They trying to but make this a home, sex thing? Uh, but Homelander is stronger than her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, they they really want to do this with Homelander, don't they? Like, we've got our criticism of him, but it's like the show is like, Homelander is very aware of race and sex. It's like, he is? He doesn't, <laughs> he, he doesn't seem to care that much. That's not really what he's yeah. about. Oh, boy. I, I would need a reference to this. Go, go home, homie. Go home, homie. You're drunk. Er, uh, drunk, sorry. Oh, man. I don't... What's the picture got to do with it? <laughs> it's just him got his hands out. Don't, don't you get it? What? Don't you... It's satire, you idiot. That's the point. <laughs> satire of memes. Yeah, this is satire of memes. Yes. Which are indistinguishable from shitty memes, as, the, as, it, <laughs> yeah. as it seems to be. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Me and the squad on our way to respect Stormfront. What? What? <laughs> no. Most people are just like, is. So what do we do with this? <laughs> what is happening? Oh god, there's so many at once. I can't even see all of the beautiful beams. I <laughs> uh. So these are terrible. But of course, it, they they're putting them on screen real quick. In the hopes that we don't uh, do that this. That you don't pay enough attention to them, you know. The point is, Homelander is anti-meme. <laughs> Wait, maybe, maybe Homelander is very, very pro-meme. And he's a meme connoisseur. And ah. he's so upset that these memes are super shitty that they <laughs> disrespect memeage. That's why he's angry. He's, he's like, like Stormfront, the these people on the internet that like you have the shittiest memes. We're gonna have to talk about this. In case anyone's confused, of course we know that he's upset that they're anti him, and he's going to be happy when the memes yes. are pro him, which is hey. just such a good plotline. Can I? Yeah, it's, uh, yes, that's. Can I beat the dead horse once more, saying beat that, that this is again the uh, associating certain things with certain people in order to make them appear bad? The the kitten thing that I pointed out earlier. Uh, this is just because I mean, l like, look at what they did with like Pepe and um, you know, OK sign and and other nonsense, right? Like they take things that are um, you know, whatever, you know, just funny, humorous, or, or neutral, and then they associate them with with you know, in this show, literally a Yahtzee. So, I, I mean, it's just it's so transparent, and and again. Like I said earlier, I think the show creators genuinely believe that they're being clever in in trying to make this association and trying to like sneak it past people. But why do they? I they could have made better memes. I do recognize they. Well, no, yeah, because then the left can't meme. They can't even make fake memes. Well, so. this this is just more evidence on the huge pile of proof that the the left can't meme is this I, show. I just think i think most people can't meme i was frankly. gonna say i know plenty of lefties <laughs> think, who make funny memes it's just the yeah and i know plenty of righties who make shit memes yeah There's i would rather say memes. this is this is corporate memes yeah corporate memes that's probably better right this is what happens well, when it's, somebody it's who's totally out of touch um, it's. I think it's the show writers being super lefty who made this show. But, the but right, if they were super righty, they would have similarly shite memes. As far as I, I don't know. I I laugh I a lot more at right leaning memes. I don't think so. I I, I don't. I think I right leaning, don't, I think I don't. right leaning people are way more willing to be edgy with their memes yeah, and push the it. boundary. Yeah, but you could be I edgy and cringe. Right you could be edgy and cringe. Sure, you could. 
but I think that if this was a, a right leaning show, the memes would probably be not guaranteed, but they would be more likely to be funnier. I don't think so. I, I think, think they would be just by as virtue terrible. Of the fact that it's a TV show that's made by a corporation, and yeah. this wouldn't have been like the showrunners actually giving direction on this shit. This was probably some intern who had to make this. Yeah, I would say they're completely like, disconnected yeah. from normal people life. And they're like, this, yeah. this is meme, yes? I was like, yeah, that's a meme. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you meme? Is it, is it good meme? Yes, it's good meme. All right, put it in there. What do you say? Like, it, it could be caught one for you, Homelander, with Homelander smiling and holding, like, SJW on a fish. I'd just be like, yeah. That's a no, I, I blame and I are right on this one. I've uh, the right nah, I, better dude, than the I, The thing is, is I in Australia, there's uh, you can you see a lot of like memes from people who vote for the Liberal Party, and they're fu the Liberal Party in Australia is the right wing party for some reason. But um, like the memes are shit. I've seen too many examples <laughs> of every political spectrum sucking well, at memes. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> uh, and I don't, I don't think, I don't think we're arguing that every meme on the right is well. Good. The problem yeah, is that there's no, there's not. But I think I think it's fair to say that the vast I don't think it's fair to say any though because we haven't seen all memes. If 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 you're only subjected, like no, no, you'd no, have no, to see all the memes about... to know whether or not there's a, a a a number of bad memes from any side of the oh, political no, no, no. spectrum. You, no, no, no. That's that's not what I'm saying. Like, yes, there there's a lot of bad memes, like from both sides. I agree with that. However, what I'm saying is the popular memes, the one that bubbled to the top are made by primarily... Oh, I don't know, man. The, Sim the Simpsons against the Liberals is, again, a, a one here in Australia, and it's a super left-wing one, and the memes are fucking hilarious. So, I don't know. I feel like there's no, there's nothing to say about whether or not, like... And especially in this case, this is a TV show. I think that some intern, they got them to make, like, <laughs> 50 memes, and they're like, yeah, these memes are good. Yeah, the funny thing is, I, I if you told me the person who made these memes is actually, like, I don't know, they're voting for Trump, I'd be like, I can believe it. These are just cringe memes. Like... You, and, and, and also, like, chat, you can't prove me wrong. You would need to see all the memes ever, and then no, calculate how many of the memes come from one particular part of the political that's, spectrum. That's the point I'm trying to make, though. You don't need to see all the memes. You only need to see the ones that bubble to the top, the ones that become um, popular. I think, no, I think generally, right memes are more funny than left memes. The well, that, why that's a statement I can, I can agree with that one, but I still think corporate memes from either side would be complete cringe. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, even like the shit Donald Trump retweets and makes is funny. But like, I would actually, because of the reasoning you used earlier, like the right are allowed to be a lot more edgy. And so they will often have bangers while the left is restricted, but they can still be funny. But ultimately, if, if you've got a, a production company in Hollywood behind it, I'm just like, oh, it's going to be so bad. Why would you even try? And well, I, mean, I think the fact that it's in that, Hollywood but... means that you can't have a right leaning show at all. And you also have to be very even see the thing is, and we showed this earlier with Stormfront, like the fact that she was even though she's depicted as being like this ultra ultra racist, she still has to be like really restricted. Like they want to show her as 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 being bad, but at the same time they don't want to go too far because they don't want to actually offend people. They just want to say, okay, yeah, she's bad. But we're just gonna, you know, like the what she did with the uh, Kamiko's brother and stuff, right? Like she's not actually, you know, there are so like was pointed out earlier, there are so many other words she could have used in order to insult him besides just yellow. But they're not going to go there. Yeah, no, I agree on that one. I just think that what's behind I agree, but like, this yeah, there's no there's these memes no reason scream to disconnection to me rather than uh, any political bias. Though I know, of course, that the show has a political bias. I, 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 I simply believe that the origin of it being a constructed, made-for-money show is why the memes are absolute garbage to you. Um, but there's a lot of reasons. This is all speculation. We're literally talking about memes made by Hollywood. That's kind of interesting, right? Like, that we're at that point. Yeah. Um, mm. Also, I can't show you all these memes. They keep flashing too fast. They they knew. I, they they're all, all the terrible. Ones. What they did was they went to... <laughs> They went to stumbleupon.com or something. I don't even know if that's still around. But they just found a random <laughs> image and were like, huh, is there a way that I could somehow turn this into like a Stormfront meme? Oh, look, a cat being fed a Tic Tac or whatever. A, a, a What are they? A Smarty. I'll just put a me on the cat and an internet on the hand and a Stormfront content on the, on the, the Smarty. Boom. 
Meme created. Next image. Yeah, and and I believe it could very well have been that one person made all of those memes. Oh, Is that a trash can? Trash I'll just put a picture of Homelander <laughs> on top of the trash can. What if Meme created. I, 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 like, like, I like to believe I like multiple people who did these memes, like a team of team of ten. It's, yeah, no, it's it's way funnier if three people worked on each meme. Uh, you guys are the <laughs> meme division. Uh, I, think, I think it's cool. <laughs> I think it's even funnier to realize that because that this is a show being produced uh, by Hollywood, and because there's like an editing staff and everything. There was someone whose job was to <laughs> approve these memes and say, yep, those are good. Let's go ahead with them. I love those memes. <laughs> some those great, some memes. great memes. This is it's weird. Great You'd memes. think it's one of those things in shows where it, it reminds me of the, the Batwoman um, Wikipedia copy oh, pasta. Oh, God, yeah. You'd think that with all the effort that you're putting into the show, because they are putting a lot of effort into it, they have actors and sets and all the trouble that make goes make show, that the easy part, they just don't do. Just hire someone who's funny. Yeah. <laughs> just do that. I mean, You'll be okay. You're not allowed. Like Johnson, you have a son on the internet. He can make memes, right? Give tell him to make us some memes for a TV show. He'll love it. We'll put him in the credits. Tell all of his friends on the internet. So um I remember this scene quite well because a prediction came yeah. immediately after it was over. She's like, hey, I can help you with memes. And he's like, I don't need help. And we were like, right, so something's going to happen that'll make him run to Stormfront for help with memes. <clears throat> That's the, there's nothing, like, because the writing is on the wall, as they say. It's very clear what everything is doing. Fuck, I forgot about this. Do you remember what Butcher says? That he's like, oh, fuck the kid, he's a soup. <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. Fucking he's a soup. That came out of like... Um, I'm willing oh, to let wow. that be a part of his character, but fucking hell, yeah. what a stupid thing to say. Like, yeah, just wow, Butcher. This is, this right is the Right in front son. of his mom and everything. She like, spent Jesus. her whole life, his whole life with her, and he's like, yeah, whatever, the kid's a soup. Like, what do you, <laughs> what do you think this kid... And yeah, you know, shockingly, she doesn't want to go with the plan now, because he said that. Uh... Butcher, just not the sharpest tool in the shed, as uh, as we learned from Shrek, it's a possibility. We or had a good um, Smash Mouth. We had a good meme detour there. We did, good. yeah. Nice uh, really, we, we put way more thought into the memes of this show than the people who made this show. Clearly, we, someone should call that section "Meme Fap Bizarro Land" or some shit. I guess <laughs> like we 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 don't discuss EFAP memes like we normally do on meme faps. We're discussing a terrible TV show's terrible memes. Yay! They get the EFAP treatment. Um, well, we get a part two in, in the next episode, I think. Oh, yeah, there are I more rate memes. Those memes. I rate those memes a, a two out of ten. They're recovery memes, aren't they? They were memes that are made yeah, yeah. to help Homeland. Oh, God, yeah. Um, <laughs> my, my meme squad assault division I love, I love on 4chan how, has made you how memes. memes are considered to be this just universal... Uh, product, uh, not product, uh, problem resolver, where like a couple cleverly placed memes can completely swing public opinion <laughs> on like literally any topic <laughs> of any kind. Like hey, no matter hey. how, no matter how vile or or well, they uh, think violent. that that's how Nazis work. That they're mainly convinced by memes <laughs> or 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 Star Wars analysis videos. I will yeah. agree with that. Yeah. These people think that if you're concerned with, you know, good scripts, and if you kind of like your own country, you're probably a Nazi. Or um, if you want to treat men and women equally. Nazi, just like the Nazis. Also, like someone, the Nazis. someone said, this is in character, Butcher does kill babies, so of course he would say, fuck the soup kid. It's like, <laughs> in fact, that's more reserved for him to say, fuck the soup kid, rather than just, hey, hey, old children. So we are doing better for him. He's developing. Uh, speaking of doing better, uh, someone said Kara made this and sent this. I think you'll like it. It's pretty great. Oh, dude. <laughs> we got a fucking awesome meme, guys. Check it out. <gasps> Whoa. This is actually higher effort because of the Pepe and the flag. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> guys, check it. out this awesome EFAP meme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I can see Patrick Willems is cycling through these, stressing out with his little remote control button. <laughs> He's like, no, not the meme. Not the meme. Turns out we we here on EFAP have our own meme army. Oh man. They got no chance now. 
Yeah, thank you for such memeage. Um, so quick. Yeah, so... Just, yeah! That's talent for you. Um, so yeah, this is just a commentary on how if Butcher's plan is to get his wife out of there, and he's willing to take the kid but then ditch the kid later, why tell her at this point that you don't give a fuck about the kid because he's a soup freak? Like, you might want to hold off on that part <laughs> until a bit later, because she might, and yeah. then she's like, nah, I'm not coming. And he's like, "Oh." Yeah, you think tactically, you'd be like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't say this. Maybe I could keep, maybe I could hold on to that little nugget, keep it in my back <laughs> pocket for later. And so, uh, she wants to stay, and he leaves, and uh, flips off the camera, which sets, uh, it's gonna set up the next episode Black where Black Noir. Noir is coming after the boys. Ugh, and so I'm just going to describe this scene. I'm not going to criticize it. Here we see Huey and Starlight in the middle of a very busy street having a chat. What? That is insane. Why would they do that? Oh, man. It's, and this is the thing. It's just beating you over the head with it every single time. It's like You'd think if it was the once, maybe we could be like, ah, oh, they got lucky. But it's like, oh, man. Uh, by the way, I, I made a note. They say in this scene, we can't afford to feel safe. They say this when they are talking. Seems there. like they can. <laughs> Seems like they're the mm. yeah, sure. It's so weird because the first episode they put all that effort into the meeting, but then it's like someone else did this. So someone else. It's like, man, doesn't it suck being wanted? It's like, yeah, yeah. It does suck. Lucky nobody recognizes us. Um, and are we actually able to escape episode four now? Is that it? Oh yeah, the deep reveal happens. They're giving him a wife. Oh. Uh, Homelander kills Doppelganger. Yep. Yeah, because uh, Homelander vad, so he kills him. So why not just let him leave? Because yeah, why not just be like, yeah, this isn't working out. I, I think he doesn't want to risk Doppelganger like um, telling anyone, but I actually so, have another issue with this scene because wait, we've so seen that, that mean Doppelganger... He was kidnapped then? Who, what, Doppelganger? I guess so, yeah. In which case, why didn't he try to escape? <laughs> I don't think Doppelganger was captured. I think this is something they arranged to yeah, do. Yeah, I think it was a deal. In which case, killing him causes problems? I well, know, I it's insanely... Because this is the same cabin. Isn't Isn't this the same cabin that we go back to later yes. on? Yes. Okay, why oh, kill him? Just say, this isn't working out. I just can't... <laughs> I, mm. Just Imagine enough. Doppelganger's corpse is just in the in the scenes that the kid is there. It's just like, don't worry about that. <laughs> I do. Have, I do have a question though, because Doppelganger is capable of shifting his body to like dramatic proportions, large, small, different shapes and sizes. So he has kind of like a rubbery type body. So wouldn't it be impossible to break his neck? Like, wouldn't he just, like, shift a little bit and, like, it would be mm, fine? This is one of those arguments where all they have to do is say, no, nah, it works the way that you see it work. Uh, I guess when he's in a form of any kind, he is now strong. It's only when he's transferring that he's floppy. I don't know. But couldn't he, like, try to transform? <laughs> well, during in, the if he transforms yeah. into someone with a very thin neck, <laughs> or a very stretchy neck, I don't fucking know, dude. Like, it's... I don't think you could stop Homelander from killing you. Yeah, I think Homelander no, gets no, you no, no matter no. what. I, like, uh, you could have just lasered him, to be sure. It just seems like not very smart way to kill a character that can stretch. I don't, I don't see why you wouldn't want to just use Doppelganger. Yeah, How useful Doppelganger, Doppelganger sounds... is. Yeah, I was like, hey, I need you to find out if uh, Star uh, Starlight is oh, yeah. telling me the oh, truth. Yeah. In an instant, we've already got a perfect use, but Boom. never mind. I want you to transform into this guy. I want you to transform into Butcher. I want you to transform into uh, Abraham Lincoln and say funny quotes. Like, just anything <laughs> that could be useful or amusing. Like, man. Ugh. Someone said Doppelganger might have faked his death to get away from Homelander. You can't fake stop at your heart. <laughs> and, and obviously, in case someone's not understanding, he could hear heartbeats. So if <laughs> you did, that would be, that'd be tough for Doppelganger. <laughs> At will to stop your heart from beating. Well, no, he could he could change his body, right? So he can turn himself into the Grinch, who, as we all know, has a heart that's three sizes too small, which would be a lot more quiet. So Homelander wouldn't be able to see it. Boom, plot fixed. Get Damn. fucked. Yeah, this show is actually amazing. Oh, 
get oh my god yeah and someone just said like imagine doppelganger turning into huey and just that's what i just yeah but, yeah you, that's, that's what he just said oh i, I, mean, thought, you, I would... thought you just said to, to follow well, i didn't realize you said that sorry oh well I, I i guess i was implying it i should have been uh i guess more explicit but i was implying that yeah he transforms into uh huey's doppelganger so that homelander who is very suspicious of starlight can you know he can verify what what's going on what a shame um, yeah but i mean what a that, shame but um, that would be like well the problem is homelander would have to be intelligent for that to happen oh yeah but instead now he just kills him because i be, I, I don't even really know why uh, um, he's mad, and we want our shot of him standing over a dead, a dead Homelander in a dress. That's all it was. Yeah, Homelander has killed that part of himself, symbolically. Yeah, even though it doesn't amount to anything. <laughs> At least symbolically, it, it means nothing. This actually, um, this kind of goes into a, a, another thing that I kind of noticed with this season, is... They seem to have been killing off a lot of season one characters that they just don't want to carry anymore. So you have uh, yeah. Rainer, the the the, yep. the CIA lady. You've got Doppelganger, um, the Doctor. Uh, what's his name? Vogelbaum or whatever. He just gets taken out. Um, I think there's some others too. Uh, the Speedster, like, technically. Yeah, yeah, that old the other Speedster as well. Um, what's his face? The uh, the Alistair, the guy who leads the church, it is it's like they're just like killing off characters because they don't want to to have to worry about future plot. They're oh like, man, yeah. they clean slate the fuck out of this season. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're not even. We're on episode five. This oh, it's such a disaster. Like, there's so much to cover. Um, <laughs> so so based in right in, we got them filming the seven film, and uh, they're commenting on the writing, and they and they just throw in. Yeah, to check out those Joss Whedon rewrites. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. you can't help. They can't help themselves. Bad shows can't help but shit on him. Uh, so all I would say is, you want to be smug when you write, and when I say write, I mean your show being superior to something of Joss Whedon's caliber, even if you're referencing just Justice League. Like I feel like that's what they're, they're satirizing, whatever mm -hmm. referencing. But it's so awkward because um, it's it's just like your writing is so shit. Like, you think you're better than Justice League, probably, but, I mean, I'm just saying, you, you're getting close. I haven't seen Justice League in a while, maybe I'm exaggerated, but, like, oh boy. It's just, it's just cringy to have your show be like, I'm better than this other writer. You're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> careful, just, just try not to do that when you're doing so shit. Especially when they're always shitting on his ability to do female characters when, again, Buffy Willow... <clears throat> Yeah, I was about to uh, list every character in the show. <laughs> you the, the problem with listing it is just like some people will be like, "Are they that good?" You'll be like, "Keep watching it." He's talking about it. it's fine, <laughs> but um, yeah, super awkward, but you know, good for them. like like I imagine TV shows that are of a much um, higher caliber, like like oh those haunting ones, I guess. The, do they ever have a moment where they're like, "We're better than other people"? Like oh, I don't think no, so. They, they just kind of just do their thing. There was one of it was one of the shows that Red Letter Media watched on Best of the Worst. It was some shitty monster movie where they actively like fuck around with a a poster, a movie poster of E.T. Oh, all right. Well, carry on. So, uh, yeah, we can move right along. <laughs> oh, are we that, up huh? to the scene where Homelander kills that guy? Um, Justice League has nothing on this. Mm. <laughs> Uh, Wait, what's that story? Uh, uh, Wicker Man said Justice League has nothing on this. Like, oh, um... I, uh, guys! All right, <laughs> is, gonna, is this going to be another gonna hot be take episode? Mad about what? It's just like I Snyder cut. It's it's probably not going to be good, guys. <laughs> All right, I'm just saying. Well, I probably I don't think it probably like either. with what we've been highlighting. Like these are major issues you, you like do you yeah. really think that this is entirely dissimilar from the problems in justice league do you really think so <laughs> just just you know and also keeping in mind that again justice league wasn't even his movie in full 
so it's an unfair comparison. Well, I'm more than happy to concede that Joss Whedon may very well oh, be a horrible sure. person, and he's done horrible writing. It's just funny that, to me. You know, he's done good writing, though, so... Yeah, like, it, he's done some of my favorite writing, and so when we've got, like, uh, those those Joss Whedon rewrites, like... Yeah, Man, okay. Joss Whedon, with all of his bad writing for female characters, <laughs> despite having written some of the best female characters in any story ever. For anybody confused, Fringy is cross-referencing Bojack there, because they're gonna be like, hey, the boys didn't say because that. Because Bojack so... also did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was in the episode I saw. Yep. No, oh, uh, yeah. it, it was, was the... in the... Oh, no, it was the a clip Bojack that you showed him. One. Yeah, you showed oh, the clip. Oh, yeah, I think I showed oh, it to yeah, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was... Yeah, I remember that. That was bad. I hope the, ba the Snyder Cut is better than Justice League, all right? It has to be, <laughs> by virtue of the fact that they've got way more time. It's twice as long. If it's worse, that would be unbelievable, but who knows? Um, but yeah, satire. Uh, moving on, the 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 assistant is like, "Ooh, Homelander, problem. You kind of lasered someone to death. Um, and for some reason, the yeah. DOD can't cover it up, even though it's definitely less than thirty four percent casualties of the area. But rip, someone had a phone, so the cone of silence yep. is irrelevant, which was always something <laughs> to worry about. But whatever. Um, so and yeah, the, we ain't it's even like gonna. A, and this goes into like the whole all both planes, both of them should have been discovered. Countless other oh, examples right. of Homelander fucking yeah, up. Yeah, the that plane they not have been. Well, I mean, right. in episode both one, that plane that he lasered would have had scorch marks into well, the well, side. Well, he lasered it in half, basically. The deep, the yeah. deep, the deep tattles on him, and he's annoyed at the deep for it. But it's like more than the deep will be able to tell it was you. <laughs> it's not going yeah, to go down him. to the. It'd be like, oh wait, this plane. Oh, so, how come um, the plane? Yeah. Exactly. It's either telekinetic or an airbender. Don't know. Either way, Homelander's like, ooh, look at the big scary bad guy. Lasers him down. Which, yeah. um... Already, funny... right? Before we even get to, um... Also, wow, I didn't realize this. The the bad guy is looking at the camera when he gets hit. Um, yeah. It's an in-universe camera, so I guess that's fine. But it's still, still a bit odd. You see the screenshot I got? It just... <laughs> like, it, it, it feels like he's like, did you get that? Because <laughs> Homelander yeah. being a naughty, but either way, um, the, it was weird to me that Homelander describes this as his win, like he wanted to get a win because of the stuff that's happening with the memes, but he, he treats it so nonchalantly, casually. Like, yeah, I'm just gonna walk he in, laser walk like out. A psychopath. What you'd expect is for him to land and say, stop. Like, I, you, you, you can't do yeah. this to these people. And then, like, he throws him down and he goes, no. And then lasers, like, something off him. And he's like, uh, you forced me to, you know, beat you down. But these people are more important than your uh, reckless vengeance. And then kills him or something. But instead... Yeah, like, it's weird that he treats it so nonchalantly. He doesn't showboat at all. He looks at it as a chore. He's like, oh, this is kind of annoying. How'd I go? And I was like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like this yeah, was before. Be your opportunity to do what you love to do, to get people to love you, and to play up the yeah. show and all that stuff. But I guess he just doesn't do that. Well, I, because I, I don't know. It's like it's, he doesn't even. It's the show forgets who he is, yeah. like what type of person he is all the time. And of course, this was before we had realized that uh, he accidentally killed someone or grievously wounded them. I, I don't know. <sighs> so. <laughs> That kind of destroys his entire career, I would say. Yeah, it's uh, over. Well, except for it's not <laughs> well, at all. Let me ask you, chat. If there was one thing that could save you from being caught on camera killing an innocent human being arbitrarily, uh, what would it, what would be the thing that could save you? And the answer is memes. Simple as that. You just got to get a crack team of memers. That's the universal fix. Well, as we've seen already, the memes are very strong. So I'm excited to show you guys what the recovery memes will look like. Oh no. Um, so yeah, that's a disaster. And he's like, if he had to be shown that. Like, I guess he just fucking didn't notice that he'd done it. Again, very nonchalant. He's not treating this as a super important moment for him to try and recover his uh, public perception. Also not face at all by the things that got flung at him. You know, remember when that was like kind of dangerous for him? Oh, so did we, did we bring up, by the way, because it was among many complaints, but I think we didn't. So he can travel at the speed of sound, meaning that if someone was trying to bring a bus down on top of him, the second he realizes anything like that is happening, he can immediately move left or right. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. that shouldn't have happened. 
piles a, on problems of piles of problems. Yeah, because that's another problem with speedsters, is it's really hard to surprise attack them. Not impossible, but really fucking hard. Um, so yeah, uh, I think Stormfront offers to help him out. Meanwhile, Butcher gets into a... he starts a fight, because he's feeling pretty rough right now, being that, uh, his wife doesn't want anything to do with him, which was his whole, like, motivation, and he decides he's going to, uh... He wants to go somewhere, right? Like, he just wants to leave, and he go. He wants to visit his, uh, his auntie first, I think? Uh, yeah. I think so. Um, but of course he squeaks a toy, and that means that, uh, Huey recognizes it, and they're able to put together that he's going to give that to his dog, and M.M. knows where the dog is, so they can head him off. Um, Anything here about Butcher just wanting to fight and beat up people? Well, I'd, like I said, he gets himself into a fight because he's feeling down. I, I, yeah, I guess. That's, he uh, just gets beat up, and I, I don't know. I just, yeah, meanwhile, there it is. Frenchie is following Kimiko. We don't know what that's about just yet. They um, also they, they do this the whole episode and just walk around everywhere and no one. Yeah, so shit. this is what people would be referencing. I think is just the when does the things happen? And it's like, yeah, we, we're we're setting up more things now. Uh, so Butcher makes it to the house. They chill out for a bit. Uh, I'm just I'm trying to make sure we catch the the bigger events. Something uh, about his visit to the aunt that doesn't make any sense is at no point does she bring up the fact that he's the most wanted man in the country responsible for killing Stillwell and blowing up the house. Like, she never even brings it up. Like, it's just not even a thing. Um, <laughs> what? Like, I, like, yeah. I, like if, if, if my, if, you know, if a family member of mine shown up and that person had been all over the TV, like, number one most wanted this and that and i would probably be like hey so um about the murders um, <laughs> question you know, it's yeah. fine hey remember she's a criminal too or could be she's got her own secret drug supply yeah. so she's fine with him being wanted for murder that's cool um we bump into to a train asking for rewrites and the writer's like uh no this is the plan and uh, Adrian's like, fuck it, I won't do it. And uh, it feels really weird in terms of a leverage thing, because it's just like, you don't really have a choice. <laughs> he's just sort of mad. And he's like, yeah, it's the, and, and I guess the writer does the right thing in this scenario. He's just like, yeah, I, uh, I can't change the script for you. This is not my deal, so I'll see you later. Well, um, how ca the only people who care about writing are the villains. Yeah, true. <laughs> hey, yeah. Um, this, is, this is another one of these. Uh, this is another one of these where they do the scene twice because he has almost an identical conversation with uh, what's her face a little later on. And she basically just says, no, you have to do it this way or, or, you know, whatever. So like, it just doesn't like the, when we have the second scene where he, where he asks to have the lines changed with um, I, I can't even remember what her name is. Angela something. Anyways, like, it renders the scene with the that writer guy completely pointless. Like there's, there was no reason to include both of those. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like I they could have just had the other one with the chick, where she basically says, "Look, you either do this, or we're gonna fucking kick you out, and everybody's gonna know you're a junkie, and this and that, and blah blah blah." So like, there was no reason to. It it feels like they're just kind of fluffing up these episodes, like they're artificially extending them with scenes that don't need to be there. Um, so Kimiko, <laughs> like this is pretty good, perfectly going to sub up the. Uh, we brought it up before, but the gore in this season, absolutely yeah. gratuitous. Uh, oh yeah. Kimiko just shreds these people, and Frenchie's like, "Whoa, what's this about?" That's uh, let's go in somewhere. Don't worry. Yeah. Like, comically evil, like someone comes into the bar. It's like, "Oh, what are you doing here?" It's like, uh, I don't know, one drink maybe. <laughs> the uh, the face ripping thing, by the way, is right out of the comics. That's something that she does in the comics. Oh yeah, it's just um, it seems that the show wants that to be like a part of their thing. It, yeah, I yeah, yeah. first noticed it with them um, previously on, 
for the season. They showed yeah, like all of the big gore from all the, the first violent season. Bits. Yeah. Ugh. The exploding head. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, there's loads from this season too. Um, I spotted someone in chat saying uh, she knows that the the the, the the soups are corrupt, she hates them too, or whatever, so that's why she wouldn't ask Butcher about killing people slash becoming wanted? It's like, no? Like, he didn't kill a soup, he killed it, a woman. It wouldn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Off. Even if he did kill a soup, it doesn't matter. He's a wanted- like, how does that not come up? It's like, hey, yeah. you're, you're wanted. That's pretty nuts. I mean, if for nothing- if for nothing else, you have to assume that because she has that uh, extracurricular activity down in her basement, she would be more concerned of having the and number she one was innocent. Wanted. If she was a totally law-abiding citizen, yeah. like she'd be like, "Wait, what? You're wanted. You like killed people. You can't come. What? No." Well, she she's got her own pharmacy down below, so maybe but she, she does, is a yeah. hypercritical. Critical? That's a word. So I guess it's it's very similar to murdering somebody and a baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but, like, you know shouldn't her so if, if she was completely innocent not doing anything wrong then she wouldn't really have any concern about you know the, I... the police or whoever arriving at her house but because she is doing bad stuff no 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 she she thinks that this guy has been on the news and everything is being a murderer like this guy's wanted by oh. all the police and he's been on the news report yeah. so enough, if he just shows up funny enough like, the oh, argument no, being be used here. is that she's smart enough to know lies from truth that he wouldn't have done that which for one thing is funny because he did actually do it at, at least with the baby yeah. and the second thing that's funny about it is the boys didn't they were all like oh my god is this true and it's like um remember grace doesn't grace is like oh did you do that you telling me that the boys and grace are able to believe the news but is is doddering old aunt whoever she is it's like nah i know it's lies you'd never blow up a baby and he's just sweating like no <laughs> i know not to trust Vot. <laughs> What a garbled defense. It's just like, it just it leaks out in all the different ways. And, I, and I, I'm so happy to move on to this bit, because the two times I yeah. watched this episode with two different sets of people, all people, um, uh, a laugh was had. A laugh was had. Uh, Chat, you watching? Chat, you ready? God Boom. damn. <laughs> Butcher goes to leave. <laughs> this is so monumentally bad. I'm glad we're here now. So... Black Noir's goal <laughs> is to kill the boys. He sees yeah. that all of the boys are in this house. He then sees uh, Butcher get out of the house, get into his car, and prepare to start it, and is doing nothing about it. That's one problem, and it'll become relevant as soon as we progress, because it was clear that Black Noir's only intention was to fucking kill them. Um, <laughs> Bet. Secondly, <laughs> even yeah. seeing it again makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Stealth one hundred. Stealth. Yeah. So you're an all black dressed person sitting on a, like a rooftop in a suburb. <laughs> like it's so funny. <laughs> what the yeah. hell are you doing? Yeah. But, and then the 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 final fuck to to not give is. You serious? You lined up perfectly with his wind mirror? Like, yeah. fuck <laughs> off. Like, it's literally in the center. Like, what is this? <laughs> <sighs> and that hatches the rest of the episode. That one moment. This is what I mean about this sort of stuff. Like, it, it can come across as tiny. You can be like, well, who cares about that? It's one moment where you see something in a mirror. It's like, do you understand how cataclysmically bad this is? Like, it, Yeah, the whole episode is, yeah. Fucked. Not only that, but it, it artificially delays the, um, like, what, what happens next artificially delays the confrontation. Because they don't want to have Black Noir confronting the boys right now, because then they wouldn't yeah, have an episode. game over. So they have well, to... Well, the thing like, is, when no, they do confront him, it still fucks. <laughs> like, none mm -hmm. of it works. Yeah. So, like, here's here's the thing. The boys are, like, the most wanted in the country. Like, even if Black Noir went into the house and killed all of them, he would be held, heralded as a hero. Like, they would, like, wow, Black Noir got three of the super terrorists and blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, or whatever, right? Like, there is there is nothing logical stopping him from going in and just killing all of them. And, and coming out completely justified in the in the eyes of of the world. And plus, they can cover it up. Vought can Vought covered exactly. up somebody killing sixty three people on purpose. <laughs> they can't cover up him just killing one person who might be innocent. 
Apparently there's a copy pass right this where it said, Odyssey, I've lost a lot of respect for you. Your Star Wars videos were fantastic, but you've really grown lax after interacting with all these jokers. I'm going to keep losing fads and respect the more I criticize things that aren't on the okay list. And I'm well, just, like, that's how it goes. it's the hill to die on, right? <laughs> die on any hill that's actually a position that you hold. Like I said, it's just the... Uh, Star Wars is not the only thing on the platter, alright? It's <laughs> writing. Writing in general. What we've learned from how shit Star Wars is can be applied to so many other things. And someone said, isn't yep. he just there to kill Butcher? It's like, it doesn't matter whether he's there to only kill Butcher or the boys as well. What he's doing is fucking stupid. He's a superhero. He could easily just kill Butcher and then walk away. What are they going to do to stop him? And yeah. the fact that this looks like Butcher could have escaped here. If he reverses and drives off, I don't yeah. know that Black Noir can get there in time. <laughs> well, and uh, if Black you remember... Black Noir faster than a car? <laughs> oh, he's faster than a car. You're right. Yeah, so I guess he wouldn't have. Oh, fuck. They shouldn't have said that. Like... <laughs> I keep Wait, doing did it say that? I didn't even remember that. <laughs> Wait, no, sorry. I didn't know that if he did say that. I'm saying, is he faster than a I'm car? I'm pretty sure there's a line that this, this, this he can outrun Doesn't... a car. I'm almost certain uh... of that. <clears throat> Which, by the way, another funny thing about the soups that are, like, resistant, they really like to do the whole, like, go ahead, try and use your weapon on me, and look how pathetic it is. Which can make some sense for someone like Homelander, I think. But when it's uh, Black Noir Black taking all Noir of the fucking play around, you know. Well, he takes all of the the booby traps, and then he's like allowing himself oh, to be God. shot several times. Like I remember in the fights, he's he's just like oh, I'm too cool. But it's like, but you're not actually immune to these things. You just regenerate really fast, so you're not gonna want to yeah, get hit this... by them. If this was a video game and we were playing as Black Noir and we set off all the traps in the building and got shot multiple <laughs> times by the people in the game, we'd be like, I'm restarting. I fucked up. Yeah, I feel like I haven't been There's very no good way. this time around. Like, I, I mean, at, a, at an absolute minimum, even if he's regenerating, I would have to imagine it's pretty painful. Yeah, unless he's got a pain power where he doesn't feel pain. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, I love this shot. They probably thought it was cool, but it just makes me laugh. Uh, I'll grab a few guys. It's, it's just beautiful. That's, he's just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually stopped the episode at that point and just started laughing. I love as well, they call the fire brigade to, to like cover their ass for a little bit to protect them from Black Noir. It's like, why wouldn't you try and leave now as opposed to battling him later? I think I mean, it's probably like one or two hours they're, they're hanging out there. And I don't believe for a second that no one sees seen. What's what I mean? He, the, the whole point is he can't attack them while they are there because that would be really bad for his image, which is kind of funny, right? With the whole... No, because then he just says, see, I've got the wanted criminals. I've got them. Well, yeah, be the, like, yay, witnesses. This implies that um, the Vought heroes don't kill you in front of other people. It's like, what do you mean? The first scene in season one, Homelander like, melts a, gu a gun into a guy's hand and then super uh, throws one of them so far in the air when he lands back down, he, like, crushes a car. It's like, they're okay with and killing then, people. Yeah, immediately a couple of kids are like, can we have selfies? They clearly don't care. Mm-hmm. And so it's just funny that they think this will cover them. But if they do honestly think it'll cover them, why would they... Like, because you could argue that they were hoping to hide from Black <clears throat> Noir in the house, which was never going to work, because they set booby traps all over it, so why would he assume you're anywhere else? <laughs> it's a booby. Um, and yeah, so why not try and leave when the fire brigade is there, if this is what you believe? It's all so stupid. Um, Black Noir is obviously still... <laughs> I think he actually forward. miss, uh, like, they, they made him move <laughs> between those two, two scenes. Oh, well, like, let me put that on screen. If you, if you, if you look, at, look at right now, he's actually trying <laughs> to hide behind part of the roof, but yeah. in the previous one, when Butcher is looking <laughs> through the mirror, he's like, just spread eagle on top of, uh, like right in the middle of the roof. It is. It is fun whenever we get a duality of chat. Yeah, du duality, duality of chat of moments are great. Chat. We love. We see the duality of chat. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the worst place to hide. This is a wrong blind bit. <laughs> I miss. Just look at the, look at this the uh, chat excerpt there. <laughs> <laughs> the duality of chat and it always happens like right after each other that's so funny <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so next up we have but if you always agree on so others no, echo chamber shut up it's a wonderful <laughs> <laughs> no the, we're echo chambering disagreement that is the echo chamber yeah oh 
so yeah, her mum is is used as uh, initially. I think the goal with with Stormfront here is that she's found out that Starlight was the one with Compound V or fucking with it, and so she's trying to show that her mum is now leverage. She would kill her if Starlight continues. Uh, at least that's the point of this scene. Then we get the weird lesbian uh, I was, I was, marketing I was scene. Was, hmm? uh, uh, I was just surprised that her mum was just able to just arrive there. It's like, yeah, hey, I'm just gonna chill in catering. Um, I, mean, I for... imagine Starlight's mom might get some, you know. Well, because she would have had to have worked with Vought to some extent, yeah. right? To get the compound V. So, okay, that's fair. this scene is like Fine. figuring out how we're going to market the lesbitisms, <laughs> which is weird. Um, the first thought I had was like, why the hell are you here? The one on the left? Like, why would she have agreed <laughs> to this? And she spends the whole scene talking about how she doesn't agree with any of this, and then leaves. Why'd you come? <laughs> I don't understand why she came. It's just like, like alright. Why'd you come? And of course, Maeve is like, damn it, this is bad. Um, we've already gone over the main plot lines, it's not really... Not important. They're setting traps in the house. <laughs> Butcher and Huey have a moment of um, there, right? like who's got the bigger balls, kind of. And then Butcher threatens to knock him down, but then MM is like, "You're not gonna knock me down." Like, damn. Oh, and then we get the big reveal. Frenchie finds out that Kimiko is killing people for money, which does yeah. kind of seem like, damn, that's a bit. Hmm. With the you're with doing the, this, all right. Yeah, all right. He's not happy with it on a moral level. Does this come back up? I forget. I don't think so. I think it comes up. He like he like has a reference to it, doesn't he? But not much is done with this outside of that. I feel like the only reason they had it is to have a a, a violent gore scene. Yeah. Yeah. It feels that way with this show. Yeah. Um, I don't know why Frenchie would really even be bothered by this. Uh, I mean, maybe... I think he'd be really bothered by it. Well. Okay, maybe maybe in regard to to Kimiko, he doesn't want her going down that path. But like with Frenchie's history, um, like he's involved in all sorts of like uh, oh. smuggling and cartels and this and that and blah blah blah. Like he's he's involved in some really really bad stuff in his own history. So the idea of like killing some gangsters wouldn't even like register on his scale like he wouldn't even care well, i guess he cares only because it's kamiko that's doing it but they uh they did set up that he has limits he doesn't like it when people are involved he's cool with uh supplies or, or if you remember they're like wow your, your people are smuggling people and he's like they didn't tell me that like that's not something he wants uh, secondly we don't even know who's getting killed i think that's part of the problem for him is that thought they were supposed to be like mobsters no. yeah they're rival games well, i have to imagine rival. that they are probably morally dubious but does he know that or yeah yeah he does how did he find out I guess if he's i uh, i forget how he finds out um i guess this contacts with his people in the the underground. Oh, but I mean, like in this scene where he's condemning her for it. I don't. I don't remember him knowing at this point. I can't point. remember. Um, but this scene's funny because she's raging at him in sign language, right? But then you realize it's a sign language that only she knows. So it's just awkward as hell because he all he does after <clears> her <throat> big shout rageism is I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I want to understand you. You have to teach me so I can understand you. It's, it was, I want you to teach me. She's like going nuts on him. It's just like, what do you, Kamiko? You know he doesn't. I guess she's just angry. It's just like, oh, it's just so fucking awkward. Yeah, he's like, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm done. And um, I guess the show is also trying to say, like, I guess Frenchie is trying to not have her go down the path that he went down. Yeah, maybe. There's a um, lot of reasons why he would be opposed to it. I, I yeah. can't. Yeah, I'm fine with him. Not have a problem like that. He'd just be you killing people for money. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you know, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I, so I'm I'm fine with this. I'm I'm totally yeah. fine with this scene. I mean, the like the acting in the show's good. Yeah, uh, yeah. as far as I know, so. it's kind of a shame that the material lets it down. <laughs> yeah, it really is a shame. So uh, Atrian's watching the deep on the Church of Collective. I'm assuming that gives him the idea to maybe start pursuing that. What does Stormfront no, say in this scene? Talk to him later. No, I know. I mean, that's planting the seed, is what I'm saying. Oh. Okay. Um, doesn't Stormfront say something about letting your kind into the seven? Then he's yeah, like, what? I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. 
No, it, it was about the collective. Racist. It was about the collective. Um, she says something about uh, how yeah. she used to be a member until they started letting certain people join. Right. And is then he like, thought black, oh, but right. she was like, no soups. What do you... Well, the thing is, the collective would have always had non-soups in there, so of course, that's just... That's probably a dog whistle. Yeah. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. So yeah, um, trying to... I mean, the funny part is, it's like, we already know she's hyper-racist, so whatever. Yeah. Like, um... So yeah, this is the conversation where it's like, A Train, stop trying to rock the boat. Just get over it. And then he, he films his goodbye scene with the Seven with a stand-in for Homelander, which is obviously supposed to imply how disconnected he feels despite thinking he was one of the Seven, which is like pieces of a potential arc. But again, A Train is used in this season to facilitate plot points for other characters. He's not really on his own pathway. Um, talking about gore... Homelander slashes the crap out of an entire crowd of people, but it's yeah, all... that was like oof in his head. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I almost wish it were real at this point, just so yeah, that it would be more interesting. Like, I guess. Oh, that would have been interesting. Yeah, it would have been so batshit insane. At least it would have been. Yeah, it would it would have shaken way. up the whole show, but he only dreamed it. Can I? He dreams for... about. Him. Can I for a moment make a rage that is probably going to be limited to to myself and some others? Um can you can you put the camera on the the military guy because that is the most jacked up looking stupid 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 soldier that I've ever seen. He's supposed to be looking at his rank, he's supposed to be like an E7 or an E8, which is upper enlisted, right? It goes E1 to E9. So this guy is super high enlisted. And yet he's wearing a beard, which is completely not allowed. Like that's, you would get in so yep. much trouble for that. On top of that, his collar is folded up again. Like this guy is more more jacked up than like a day one private fresh off the bus, like to boot camp. This looks like stolen valor stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is so. Uh, and uh, uh, I think one of the, the military not allowed to have beards. What? Did you say a beard? Wait, yeah, I'm sorry. You, I'm, I'm in, in the U.S. military, you cannot have oh, a beard. Oh, so you can't have like a Captain Price mustache or anything like that. You can Damn. have a mustache. Mustaches are allowed. Beards are not. So, is there uh, any reason for that? Yeah. So the official reason is um, that when you wear your pro mask, um, your gas mask, basically, you can't make a proper seal if you're if you have a beard. Ah, but also, okay. there, there's uh, there's like a professionalism stuff. The only time you're allowed to have a beard is if you have a medical exception um, or a religious exception, because there's actually some. Um, I believe there's a couple of uh, Sikh people that right. are in the, the U.S. military, and they have the exception because they're not allowed to shave. Um, but other than that, like you cannot. No, like this guy is okay. so jacked up. Well, are we missing the uh, the the thing that I instantly pointed out? I think was I don't think you're allowed to wear your uniform during political demonstrations. No, <laughs> no, that's like, another that's a big no no. Yeah, so like this is so stupid. Mm -hmm. What what's infuriating is um, most of these movie uh, or TV show or Hollywood productions, they always have someone on hand who is like you know the the weapons guy or the military guy, the advisor, right? And even if they didn't, like you could have like anybody. I guarantee there was someone on the staff, whether they were an extra or a camera guy or something, that was prior service and would know that this is stupid and should have at least said something or you could be like even call like call up some like recruiter or something call up a base and say hey does this look right like you don't even have to pay the guy you but just look at a picture of people uh, in uniform and be like yeah. does ours look like that oh it doesn't okay but let's change it i know most people probably don't even notice it but like well, I mean, I definitely didn't. Um, yeah. But then again, I'm not American, so. Yeah. But I mean, I was I was in for eight years, and like seeing shit like this drives me up a fucking wall. <clears throat> Sorry, I mean, rant it, over. Well, they just wanted to have the, a guy in uniform. Yeah, the point yeah. of the scene is to make fun of people who say like, "I have the support of the of the, the military or the the men who put their lives on the line." Then he's like, "You don't speak for us." And it's like, "Oh, look, he's wearing the outfit, so he must be one of them." Like it goes that far, I think. It's like, good job. You, you did such a good scene. And then him doing a 
flipping the bid at old Homelander is what makes him uh, fantasize about killing them all. And uh, yeah, Homelander is losing it, man. He is losing it. He needs the memes. Which is funny, because last episode, he was all good. He was like, I don't need anybody, crack neck. But now he needs the approval of everybody. It's kind of weird how his character development flips every episode. Yeah, the Homeland is uh, a big question he's, mark. He's... <laughs> oh, man. Here, here we go. Got some memes hot off the presses. This, these are the, yeah, the counter-murderer cool. memes. Opinions don't kill terrorists. <laughs> oh my god. That doesn't even like what what do you think that achieves? <laughs> oh man, like what? Wait, who made that? Was that Stormfront made that? Yeah, well I don't even her, know if that's pro or anti homeland. Like, remember, it's, tell you. it's her team of memers. Meme. Her meme team. This is what else they meme. Team. Yeah. Superheroes invade my personal space. Oh. Yeah. oh, Christ. Yeah. <laughs> they really do not want you to stop and read these. So, this one, which I don't even follow exactly, it's like, I thought that they were going to make a public statement about how he'd murdered somebody. It's like, photoshopped. Like, what? <laughs> uh, I think people have accepted it's real, uh, but I guess you could try that. Well, they do what? that. They do that nonsense in uh, episode eight too, when Stormfront is confronted with like the pictures, and she says that they're deep fakes. But she like, it doesn't make any sense because she says it to Starlight, who was like the one responsible for you know yeah. leaking that stuff. So, like, she's going after the people that leaked it, and she's lying to them, <laughs> saying that it was a deep fake. It's like, hold on, hold on. They know it's not. Like, why are you trying to convince yeah. them? Maybe it's to account for the crazies on the fringe parts that are like, you know what? Homelander's saying that he did it, but he didn't even do it. It's a hoax. Or, I don't even know. They, they haven't decided on whether or not he was going to own up to it, right? We don't even get... It's it's funny, because like, I'm, I'm thinking about how like how interesting that scene could be, and I'm like, well, the show doesn't even do that. They they argue, essentially, that the memes cover it all up, and he's he's dandy. He's, he's accepted again. Yeah. So. So people isn't even... literally see Superman laser a kid through the gut, and they're like, man, you know, this that was thing. pretty bad, but the memes... If we can pretend for a second that the Seven were, like, real, I'd be one of the many people who'd be like, I don't care how many people he fucking saves. Do you see his reaction to killing someone arbitrarily? Like, he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's clearly evil. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's doing this for the fucking... And you can tell that from all the different videos of him live, where he gets all upset when people aren't doing everything he wants. Like, it's so clear. Yeah. You think all that stuff would leak, you know? You'd think that. You'd think it. No, man. All they the got time, the cone of silence, but... you see. And yeah, also, that last one remember. doesn't look like a meme. It looks like a thumbnail for a YouTube video. <laughs> Maybe it I, is. I, I, it's funny, right? Because, like, you think about how, how many games get leaked. If game companies are unable to cover up that, like, a new Call of Duty is coming out, how many leaks are coming out of Vought? <sighs> Well, you oh, have yeah. the you have the not the Chris uh, the the what was the leak of the guy ranting the Batman guy um oh, what's his name Batman guy For, uh, Black Noir or? no the Batman guy um, the guy who played the actor by... the actor who played Batman Christian uh, Bale yeah Christian Bale oh. yeah he had that Wait, rant that went that, that got leaked and everything oh right yeah yeah. Um, yeah all this stuff this stuff happens like all the time these leaks about oh this actor's actually a shitty person or they're oh they're really cool and. People want to spread that. So, like his attitude. That's the thing. Like he's an idiot in the way that he acts. All yeah, the there's got to be there's got to be a tape, right? That is the Chris. <laughs> the, there's got to be a tape that's just like, no, no, shut the fuck up, mate. But no, no, <laughs> like don't shut me up. <laughs> You're fucking distracting. I'm gonna Oh yeah! Oh, good for you. How was it? I hope it was I'm great because so it's useless now, me. isn't it? Yeah, I, I I thought you meant like which of the, the heroes the one that looks like Batman or whatever. Oh like, uh, uh, no 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 no! <laughs> but um, yeah. So they hide in the basement. They set a couple of traps for Black Noir, and the plan, if you can call it that, is to hope that he doesn't find them. I think, but he does because he's not retarded. And then he throws a gas bomb down there, so they have to evac. And Butch is like, "You guys go. I'll stay behind." Which is like um. <laughs> I, so you're all wanted, Butcher. Like, even if he kills you, he'll kill them. I don't... It's a weird moment. I was just like, okay. 
Also, so then, Black Noir just walks into all these bombs upstairs, like three or yeah. four. Yeah, uh, Black Noir's <laughs> not like, very... Why? What well, are you doing? Care. I'm impervious to bombs, so I'm going to just walk <laughs> Allow myself get... to get blown up. <laughs> Allow myself to still be hurt a little. I, mean, I think you'd destroy all the evidence in that house if you needed it. You know, it's a... It, uh, mm -hmm. And you don't think it'd be pleasant either way? Yeah, mm. like, just because you're impervious to... I mean, it looks like it hurts, probably. And if not, yeah, that's still not a good all... reason not to do anything about in... it, you know? Like, in I fairness. don't get it. A butcher calls him a cunt, I think, so that's pretty oh. cool. Uh, yeah, that that's pretty great. So then so, the scene gets really funny. Oh wait, did you want to say something else? I was just thinking, like, if they're setting up these traps, like, okay, so think about it. How how would you set it up? Like you would put one in one room, you would put another on a door, another on a window. So it feels like it it, it almost feels like like Daffy Duck or something. Oh, you know, like going oh, yeah. through the Traps house, always going off deliberately, you know, like setting off every single trap. Like, because <laughs> if he goes through the door and the first trap goes off, does that mean he like goes out and goes through the window and like another trap goes off? Like, what is he doing? Like, how you would <laughs> wouldn't they be placed in locations to maximize the potential for one of them to go off? So, how is he like? going and setting up every single one of them it does it does seem like a especially because you only hear it you don't see it it sounds like yeah. a Looney Tunes skit, yeah. and then you just see him walk in with his beak backwards or like his face backwards yes <laughs> spin it back around like Daffy Duck and... um, <laughs> so yeah Butch is like I'm gonna do it I'm gonna attack him and I'm gonna lose probably but whatever I'll go out and fight and then then MM bursts the door down and starts shooting Black Noir with a pistol <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> like, this yeah, doesn't not do, do anything. anything, buddy. I and I know that some people would be willing to be like, "Nah, he's trying to help his friends." Like, no, stop. Okay, MM's not stupid. Um, th this is like a enormous boulder is heading right for your friend, and you're like, "I'm gonna help you by standing next to you." Like, that's not gonna do anything at all. It doesn't even seem to like even annoy Black Noir, but he just throws a ninja star at him. And this is another interesting part. It seems to do barely anything to MM. Like, it doesn't come up. Um, and you He's can got see two health bars. It doesn't come up at all <laughs> later, and, and you can see there, like, that's barely in him. But he's down for the count for the, the rest of this scene. Just that ninja star, man. Nailed it. Yeah, got him. It hit him in the, the nerve. It hit him in the turn off temporarily button, the sleep yeah. mode button. So he's out. And then Butcher's like, hey, whoa, 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 don't kill him. Which, by the way, Butcher is between them, so I don't even know. <laughs> like, you can just walk up to Black Noir. He, he, threw, he threw it around, he'd curve him like a frisbee. Those, well, what I'm saying is he can stop Black Noir by walking in front of the line of sight. Or he can say, hey, come and attack me. I just, like, he's treating it like it's a desperate moment of like, oh, fuck. He's gonna go after him, I better shout at him to make sure, like, he's a, a dog. <laughs> in case he's like, if I'm loud, he'll come for me. It's such a weird... Whatever. So he's about to start up the fight little, again. But then the in comes... Shuriken. In comes oh, Huey with the... Doing the exact same stupid thing. And he does the thing that drives me nuts. When you walk towards someone while shooting instead of staying back because you have a gun. <laughs> so of course, yeah, I, uh... Black Noir just grabs the gun. But then Butcher hits him. And this, oh, this epic fight ends immediately because they never had a chance. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. Um, so that's it. The boys die. <laughs> um, uh, all right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to EFAP. The boys <laughs> been over. We're done. Because, uh, of course, by the rules of cause and effect, there's literally nothing that could possibly save them now. It's over. No one's in, in range that could help them. They've got no way of stopping Black Noir. It's over. Uh, a lot of people weren't happy with this ending. You know, episode, five episodes of season two and all the protagonists getting killed, but... Yeah, it's weird that they... I just don't know why the writers insisted on having all the boys in the same room as one of the seven. It's just... I I don't know. It just seems like a, a crane... It just... What a stupid moon, m move. I mean, how could you possibly write yourself out of that not just multiple times over and over? I, I guess their luck just ran out. Ooh, you know? sweet. Uh, I just paused time and had all of the people here watch an alternate universe where things are even stupider. So now we can oh, review those goodness. episodes. You see, remember we were talking about all that blackmail? Turns <gasps> out we've got another blackmail. Oh, oh shit. God, Again. Wonderful. Wow, blackmail ex machina. So, Butcher says he has a photo on the cloud 
of Homelander's son, and he will release it if Black Noir kills anyone in this room. Man, I would have opened with that. Man. So, Which is funny, because if you kill him immediately, he can't release the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Who cares if he releases the picture? And who cares, yeah. Yeah, it's like, this is Homelander's son. So, like, um, what? No. We're expected <laughs> no. to believe that Vod is capable of concealing the true, uh, the true ca uh, cause of, what, like a hundred and something people dying in an apartment building, but they can't, like, dismiss a picture of, like, some random kid yeah. that might look a little bit like Homelander? It it blows my mind that this is something that they thought worked. This is possibly the stupidest blackmail outside of the Mave one. It, yeah. It's staggering. Um, to explain the mechanics, I guess we should start with... Um, Black Noir should know it's a bluff, because Butcher didn't open with this. It, it, had he opened with it, he'd know it's real. He only pulls it out once his friends are threatened. It's like, hmm. But then he also puts himself in the hole, you can't kill me either. It's like, hmm. Interesting. Um, if the, 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 he did take a photo, uh, revealing a photo of and calling it Homelander's son to the world, I don't know mechanically what that would do. Like, what what happens next? Anyone got anything? <laughs> I not. Say, no, say, okay. say the question one more time. I was uh, reading your chat. So if uh, that photo got released to the world and everyone understood it to be Homelander's son, quote unquote, what does that do mechanically next? What 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 is the detrimental effect to Vort? Uh, I don't see that there would yeah, be. Yeah, I guess this would. So, all. is it established in the show that if superheroes have kids, those kids are not superheroes? No. Um, in the show, what hap Um, it's not believed that it's possible for superheroes to have kids. Like, but that's you had um, but the guy in the first, what's his name? But the the kid, the child star with the show, he has a daughter. Um. Someone said that the fact that the boys are nerfed is a good thing. The ridiculous plot armor ruined the creativity in the first season. What do you call this? This is plot armor. <laughs> yeah, this is this is plot armor. What do you think happened with him in the sewer? Plot armor. It's, it's, it's absolutely plot armor. categorically plot armor. It's, it's, uh, crazy events happen to make sure they can't die. Is it also unrealistic that somehow the lens on the camera in Black Noir's suit survived multiple point-blank explosions? <laughs> We, you mentioned that. I, I said it was really weird that his like his cloth face mask was all right. That was kind of weird. But, all right. Maybe his suit regenerates. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe the suit's the real superhero, and the guy wearing it is just the stunt. Man, my Dilla. VLC oh, player is fucking up. Old. There are some cursed screenshots with these <laughs> faces. Um, so yeah, um, worst case scenario, people now know that Homelander has a son. It's like, okay. <laughs> we got the face. <laughs> Best case scenario, they're able to be like, sorry, who uploaded this photo? It's like, uh, anonymous. Okay, what, what does the photo say? Uh, this is Homelander's son. Okay. Why do we believe this? Well, I don't know. Wait, seems... Why does it matter? Sorry, company, companies are able to scrub stuff off of the internet. I just don't believe that anyone would yeah. give a shit. At all. Yeah. Um, but of course this works, and they're all saved. Which, by yeah. the way, Stad Edgar, the Gus, he's like, all right, let them go because they have that leverage. It's like, uh, dude, these are the boys. These are the guys yeah. who keep <laughs> fucking you over and have hell bent on destroying Vort. You might want to deal with them. Yeah, l let the picture get released. Yeah, if these it. people are dead, you're way better off than yeah. some photo that has no verification. That's yeah, fine. So again, not even not not even to mention that Butcher that Black Noir could just kill Butcher and he would never even release it anyway. So, um, yeah, we have to. They forget twice to do that part of the threat where they say, "If I die, it gets released." They never do it, but they yeah. treat the scene as though they've have said it. It's like you can't forget to say that. <laughs> you have to put that in, otherwise. Uh, uh, we got more of the deep. We'll just skip that, and then um, Starlight. <laughs> needs to get into Stormfront's account. Now, how do you guess a password, you know? Of all the things it could be. Her password is Hitler. She tries liberty, but of course, incorrect. What a shame. But if, if you're gonna have a password, would you not have the clue right next to your laptop that you regularly move? I think that makes no, sense. No, that's... Oh, I, I just, always I... make sure that I have that on my laptop. So she yeah, has a photo. Hopefully. 
with um, an old man, and then I'm honestly unclear on where she gets the name from. I'm gonna play it just so I have the right. Oh, I guess she just knew the name. It goes from her seeing the photo to just putting the. I guess she knew who that woman her was. Name. Was that yeah. who was yeah. in the photo? Um, it's her. It's her daughter. Adele. Or yeah. And so yeah, she guesses that, and it works. So much for the two capital, two lowercase. <laughs> you shouldn't put any numbers in there. Numbers and, and special characters. So it said the password is Hiddle? Hiddle, <laughs> Hiddle, Hiddle Subtlety. Yeah. <laughs> woman's name. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she gets in, and then she sees a lot of references to Sage Grove, which is um, like an institution for soups, which is going to give us the next episode. So good job. Nice yeah. slow wonder, thing there. I wonder how many people in the real world have their password be like something that obvious i mean, i guess i don't because it's, it's a trope actually, in tv it's 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 more common than than you think it's um sadly, i was um yeah. how common do i think it is i don't know but it's <laughs> like i was i was a network tech for years um and people got some people have some really dumb passwords um it's like it's not uncommon like i would go to work on someone's pc um, and they would have the password taped to the side of the laptop or oh, yeah. like it's, it's, it's actually, and, you know, obviously in the army, you know, OPSEC and this and that, blah, 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 lots of security stuff, particularly with like, um, like the actual, like you have un unclassified, then you have classified, then you have top secret classified, there's different levels and, you know, the unclass laptops and stuff like if someone has their password like nearby it's like all right you're an idiot you got to stop doing that but you would be surprised like even with like secret stuff it's like dude like and and here i am like you know an, like an e5 sergeant or something telling talking to like a major or a colonel i'm like dude you can't leave that password <laughs> for a secret machine next to it like no like, oh god. And kind then of I would defeats to, like, the purpose of having a password, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then I'd like then... I'd have to like I'd have to go and tell my like my uh 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 section section officer who's also like a colonel or something and be like, dude, you gotta talk to this guy. You gotta tell because he's gonna ignore me, but you need to drop the hammer on him because he can't he can't leave this near it. I think because in TV shows it's always people who should know better. On extremely important machines. Well, wait, so wait, it's wait, like wait, the wait, top you, secret. You suggesting she has sensitive information to protect on that laptop that involves her plan to take over the world to a degree? Well, I, I mean, <laughs> like, I was, I was, I was hinting towards that, mm. I guess. Mm. And she does seem like she's should be too smart for that, you know. It, like, I don't think she would forget the what name of Nazis you know, her are own smart person. ranks. I mean, they got us to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I think it's it's less to do with what the password is and how more to do with how she found it so fucking easily. Yeah, it's just kind of right there. Like, oh, it's a good it's a good thing. It sure is convenient that Starlight went in there. I guess not thinking there would be a password or banking everything on the fact that Liberty was the password. And um, she comes in after her, like a few seconds after her second password guess. Like, there's so many other ways this scene could have gone, but good lord, did it work out for her. And yeah, and we close out with um, Butcher saying you're alright for an old bag to the to the, to the auntie, and, and I just find it fascinating. He's blown the shit out of her house for <laughs> no other reason than he decided to pop over there. And uh, he's exposed her homegrown pharmacy, of which obviously will be found very quickly because there'll be cleanup crews and safety people coming in because a house in a suburb has just exploded. So rip that woman's life, I guess. Oh, fuck her. But she's fine with it. It's fine. Um, oh, I forgot. There's the really awkward soup sex scene between Homelander and Stormfront where he lasers her and she regenerates, question mark? Yeah, I, I think she does. But I think the more important thing is that um, he starts to use it at a low power and she's like, you know, stop being such a such a wuss. So he, he like cranks out at like full power laser eyes and it does nothing to her whatsoever. But then, like, later, Ryan does it, and it just chops her in half. 
like it re- goes all Anakin Skywalker on her. I mean, we just have to assume his laser is more powerful. That's it. Apparently, it's a youthful laser. It's one of those ones. I, mean, you just I, I have assume to take he could it. control the power of it. Yeah, because yeah. that's what he does. Yeah, but he, I mean, he goes full power. Like you can tell that. Does like, he go full power? Or does yeah, he just go like, harder than what he was? Well, I mean, it, I, I think I think it kind of looks like he's ramping up the power. Uh, well, yeah, he's he's making it more powerful when she asks to have it be more powerful. Yeah. Either way, it it still doesn't really. Does Stormfront really say she wants explain. to take over the world? I I I was more so just being general. I don't really know exactly what her plan is. She just wants to get an army of soups. That seems to be it. So it's a bit worrying. Whatever her plan may be. I guess I don't know why you need an army when you have Homelander and you. Yep. <laughs> Seems like that's enough. But it, like, I guess it seems it like you on only what... have to convince one person. Depends on what her overall plan is, I suppose. Uh... I mean, so... realistically, they could fly into any country's capital, completely eliminate all the upper staff for like everywhere, and then, like, what are you gonna, what are you going to do to to stop him? Like, right? Like, he's invulnerable to newts. Even if you could, like, wh- what would you do? Like, you launch it at him. And he has super speed. Like, he's just going to get out of the way. Like, you think he can't see it and hear it from, like, miles away? Like, there's really nothing that they can do to stop him. Um, so, up to this point, the tracker in uh, Starlight has pretty much been ex- forgotten. But they decide they'll remove it anyway, which is good. Uh, you can cut open her skin with a saw. Yeah, uh, easy, but, easy. But a fifty cal that has I don't even know how much more uh, power behind energy it. and penetration power, yeah. and probably uses some specialized anti I don't know whatever round. Like I don't know I don't know if like the people in the show don't understand this or whatever, but like a fifty cal is like it's an a, anti-material it, round. Yeah, you can you can destroy like tanks with a 50 cal like it is unbelievably powerful um it shreds right through buildings like you know paper so the idea that multiple 50 cals don't do anything and yet like this little tiny electric saw is able to to just easily get through with a a tiny amount of pressure is just absurd uh james moore said uh, her daughter's name is Chloe. Her password is the name of a singer she randomly mentioned. I'm ninety percent sure. Is that true? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> Either way, that is incredibly lucky. I love all of the um, all of the memes in the in the EFAT memes channel. Oh no, the there's going to be a bunch of ironic they're memes, isn't there? Yeah, there's some of them are really good. Oh, some of these are great. Um. So yeah, the tracker is no longer a problem, which when we first saw this, I was like, oh god, she's in trouble now. And you might be like, wait, what do you mean more? It's the opposite of that, isn't it? It's like, what do you mean? The tracker's been removed. It would be very unlikely the tracker wouldn't be able to send a signal out that it's been tampered with or removed. And even if uh, that were the, not the case, uh, the, the tracker, whatever they do with it, if they destroyed it, it's gone. And if they haven't, they've just kept it in a box somewhere. Uh, Vault will be alerted in one way or another. The starlight is fucking gone, and we can't even track her properly anymore. This is this is a good chance she's either been captured, killed, or she's betraying us. Which means you send Homelander out to try and sort that out. She, I would yeah. imagine Homelander kills her, and then you know, I don't know yeah. what one of your seventy speedsters works. Yeah, to. that would probably be handy too. Um, oh, I forgot the awesome scene where Homelander and Stormfront have sex right next to a guy they've just just. Uh, what's what's yeah, the word got, for crushing a person's they, uh, head? He crushed his head, even though he's a man with a gun, and both of them are impervious to small arms fire. And they're doing this... Oh, they even, like, rub the blood on each other. There's people yeah. walking past as well. Like, you can see them down the street. Yeah, uh, another instant. It's getting tiring, isn't it? It's like, yet again, you guys don't give hey, a fuck. Hey, Look at look at how far That's away that funny. it's surprising that none of these people even spotted that this is two of the most famous superheroes apprehending having some sex thug and having murdered somebody. And then, yeah, sexing on his blood. It's just like wow, that's really risky, guys. But you go ahead. And 
it goes along with the whole all he, he's just got a gun you're homelander yeah you are impervious to bullets you cannot kill him he cannot harm you i mean but oh well he's supposed, uh -huh. i suppose he can it's just that a lot of people out there like us would be like wow it's kind of fucked up that he just executes these people on the spot when he doesn't have to yeah, him and Do him you... and Stormfront try to rationalize it, like, oh, he's just gonna get left. Oh, out. we're on our way there. Oh, wait, are you talking about something else? No, no, no. This in this scene, like, they were going to to bring him in, and Homeland is like, I suppose we should bring him in because that's what heroes do. Oh. And then Stormfront's like, well, you know, with the way the judicial system works, he's just gonna get let out in a day or two, and and he's like, yeah, it's a shame the system doesn't work, and blah 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 blah. But, like, so, I mean, they try to rationalize it, but that still wouldn't, like, just because they can rationalize it to themselves in a really silly way doesn't mean that everybody else would buy it. But even they're then... They're not like, trying to actually rationalize no, it. They're just, no, they're going to kill him. Yeah, <laughs> they just want to kill him. Yeah, they're making a joke of it. Yeah, evil superheroes. Funny, funny. So, I'm glad you mentioned the Fringy. Speaking of evil yeah. superheroes and, and ruining things... Apparently, have you guys seen the pictures of the new Batmobile? I don't know. I from, don't think so. For Batwoman? Have you got it? Oh, yeah. Oh, so this no. is this is the allegedly this is the Batwoman season two, the no, Batmobile. No, don't do this to me. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh no. What <laughs> it's just a sports car with a it really is, big oh, it is no. so lame. Oh gosh. All right. Oh, it's, it's so it's cute car. to see them like try. A car with a, yeah. What? Can you can you call that the Batmobile? Really, I don't think so. Not really. <laughs> it's it's just like a, a regular stock car with like a yeah with a bigger dude, spoiler on the back. It, it, it looks like a Hot Wheel. Like it's just <laughs> <laughs> it does. Oh no! Oh my god, that's so bad. Though we are very excited. Honestly, there's gonna be so much hype for season two, episode one. So I bad. guess this is an upgrade from the the uh, the bike. the bike that was this nothing is... at all. So, if you're bulletproof, you might as well be on a bat bike, so you're more nimble. <laughs> yeah, I was but gonna say also, the bat bike is like, probably man, superior to this. Well, they're trying to imply that this is the best that Bruce Wayne could get, get done, like this, yeah. <laughs> putting stickers on a what is this a Mustang or something a Corvette? I don't even know what this is. Well. Ugh. Who knows what the dynamics are going to be? Stuck the little bat thing logo on the front. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this good job! Great. I can't wait! I can't wait! Every day we get <laughs> every every day we get twenty four hours closer to Batwoman closer, season yeah. two. Yep, it's exciting. Um. So yeah, we we, we just saw them kill. Yeah. Our, what's the f you know? Yeah. Next up is Maeve. Not yeah. this isn't blackmail. Maze this is a yeah. bribe, technically, um, as a result of a bribe. Sorry, the part we didn't mention earlier. So Maeve has told the Deep that he will oh. need a woman advocating for how he's changed uh, in order to win ultimately, and he's like, "Yeah, that's right." Even though obviously Vort could, even just... though he has his wife, but, but well, know, that and with... Vort could just pull the arm of any of them. Like if if yeah, Vort want him I back, they'll just tell you to do that. And so, you might think, oh, that might be able to get him to do some things. Yeah, some things, like bringing down Homelander. Like, uh, I don't think the Deep would do that. How but, is he meant to get back on the Seven if he's trying to take down the leader of the Seven? Not to mention that he's afraid of Homelander. <laughs> yeah. Like, he would never- Rightfully so. He would pick Homelander over Maeve any fucking day. Um, but no, he- yeah. She asked him to go and check the crash site of the second airplane that uh, Homelander brought down in season one, and he was unable to find the black box some fucking how, but he could find a but GoPro. But he found a GoPro. No, 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 yeah. it wasn't even him. It was like a dolphin that found Oh, well, it. that's what, sorry, I should have clarified that. That's what I meant by it blows my mind that he couldn't have found <laughs> the black box, but he's got access to the entire ocean, apparently. And what I mean by that is eyes everywhere. Yeah, so um, is, is he limited to just like dolphin? No, because he can talk to fish too. So does that? He can talk to uh, crustaceans as well. Yeah, so he could talk to all of those. They could be on the bottom. What about like plankton? I mean, like I, about... I would assume yes. I don't think they have a mouth to be able to 
Like I don't. Well, maybe that. Well, no, there's the lobster. So I guess they can just like telepathically communicate. Yeah. So I guess it's more about visual acuity as opposed to, as opposed to. Uh, yeah, I think it's just telepathy. Yeah. That's the um the Adam West. Yeah, it Batmobile. looks fucking sweet. It looks like, so. It the bubbly windshield and all the curvy lines. It is actually it is it's bitching of its compared. Time. Let's just say that. Wait, what is this? What's this? The one? Adam West. That's the Batmobile. original. Oh, yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah, it's it, it, uh, very fitting the for the that, time period. Well, I know that uh, the Batman, the new movie, they have a Batmobile which has a similar sort of uh, profile. Part like, it's, it's just a muscle car mm -hmm. with a giant, like, uh, rocket on the back. Looks Definitely. Cool. Batwoman, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just a sports car with a fucking some sticker on it. yeah <laughs> i remember the um the batman uh the batman and robin batmobile <laughs> oh christ that shit was wild <laughs> that shit was wild <laughs> now <laughs> that is the batmobile it's the bad whammon mobile do, 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 do. i hope they bring back the great soundtrack please 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 please, please. <laughs> So Supergirl got cancelled, right? Oh yep. no. Supergirl, yeah, mm -hmm. it sure did. Didn't didn't another one of them get cancelled? I thought two of the CW shows. So Arrow got... ended, uh, and Supergirl has one more season and then cancelled, which means that they're probably many of them are gonna have one more season and get cancelled, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um all right. So we're on episode, it's episode six. So there's a GoPro, on. and if uh, do you remember Metal when we were first talking about this? You were like, why didn't they just have it so that it was a black box? Why go yeah, to the lengths of making it? Box. Well, we gave you the answer well, back then. Do you remember what it is? Black box doesn't have the. Yeah, oh, wait, that's wait, right. I was gonna let him do it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, don't worry. The reason why, yeah, fuck it. The the reason why it's not a oh, black box ahead. when it could have been a black box is because it's not as dramatic in any way, shape, or form. In fact, the black box might not even give away everything you need to make it, like, a definitive thing. Um, because, of course, nobody inspected the crash, so nobody found all of the evidence yeah, in the, um, the cockpit that Homelander was there. Nor did they, like, anyone survive, which was, again, these are problems with Season 1, by the way. Uh, not perfect. Though, there was a GoPro. He's found it, and the GoPro is pretty damning. It's got a perfect view of every horrible thing that was said and done <laughs> on that airplane, so... Well, some top-tier camera work on a, with a GoPro. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, we'll, we will see it come up in a very relevant way once we hit the finale. Mm. Um, and then the Deep is like, hey, join the Collective, and A-Train's like, hey, yeah, I'll try it out, I guess. Then, uh, we go to the Institution. Oh man, we're, I can I feel like the ending is 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 now in in sight. It's in sight. Feels, oh. yeah. So the first funny thing I think that happened in this episode that was like already shocking the shit out of us was um, when they all break open the uh, sort of fence. They they punch a hole through it to go through. Um, Butcher considers shooting Starlight. It's really fucking strange. Oh, right, yeah, when he's yeah, on the roof. Yeah, it was so effective the first time he shot her twice with a 50 cal. <laughs> it yeah, is he's like... odd, and I, like, of all the, like, here, now, right next to this compound you're trying to sneak into in front of <laughs> Huey and everybody, like, now? It's, well, because the point of this episode is going to be that he has a newfound respect for her, so we're going to start out with, see how much he hates her? He even knocks the safety off his gun and prepares to shoot... Wait. Love how it's so transparent. Is that knocking the safety off or on? I am not gunman. Um, I doubt they would have him knocking it you off. You generally, your thumb will. I don't know how it is on. What is he using? An M82 right or a. Well, I, I can get you the shot. You'll be able to tell from this, I think. Is that safety on or safety off? So that's that right there is off. Well, yeah. So yeah, you, you right, flick you he's flick it down shoot for, for, yeah. for anybody who's wondering. He's got his sights solely on Starlight. He then turns the safety off. He then continues to aim at her, then decides, nah. And by the way, he could have shot her in the eye, and that would have killed her, so. Uh... Yeah, how about that? Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's really odd, too, because this scene shows that he's keeping them covered while they open up the fence, and that's it. With his 50 cal? Yeah, it's a really bizarre scene, because you're like, what, what exactly is his, like, he's not really covering them. It was more so because they wanted to have a scene where he considers shooting it. That was the goal of that. But they try and sell it to us as though, well, they're going to go burn a hole 
in the chain link fence. We need you covering us with your sniper in case, um, you know, some cool. we get found out. I guess. In like case Homelander shows up and then you can shoot him and it will do nothing. <laughs> They're not even like that far black. away. Like it's just such a weird moment, but it's all to make it look like he wants to kill her, which he does because he hates yeah. soups. Remember. But yeah, he jumps off the the van at that point. Um, it's just really, really strange. Then, uh, yeah, so Stormfront lies to Homelander. She's like, I need to go and uh, have a meeting in Vought Tower, and instead is going to the institution. Really dumb to try and lie to him that way, first of all, because it's a lie and you can detect them, but secondly, because it's really easy to verify if you're in Vought Tower. I don't, I don't know why she didn't come up with a better lie. But of course, that's setting up their big argument where uh, she's going to Nazify him. Um... But then pushing on, our team is trying to break into the institution because they want to find... Is it... They just want to find something incriminating about Stormfront, right? Yeah, I don't think they're looking for anybody specifically. Yeah, they don't know... They don't know what the purpose of the facility is right now. They're just trying to find out. Yeah, and so... Why they're going there, yeah. Unlucky for them, the time and day they choose to do this, Stormfront shows up. <laughs> and they're like, oh no! Oh, it's all going wrong. What are the... What are the damn odds? And then something oh, interesting happens that set all this of our eyebrows on. Oh, wait, yeah. what? No, I was agreeing that this is interesting. It's going to oh, happen. Yeah. A lot so, of interesting things happen, <laughs> is the case maybe. Yes. Well, this episode's not very good. So, well, no. none of them are. Um, MM yeah, and Frenchie and Kamiko come up with the very clever idea of we can break into security by telling the man in security that this patient has swallowed their tongue. We need help. So, if there's any people uh, in a hospital... Oh, here we go. So if there's any people in a hospital that know how to deal with a patient who swallowed their tongue, it's probably going to be the orderlies or the nurses, not the security guard. <laughs> so why does he fall for this? I don't know, but he's like, yeah, okay, uh, I guess I'll open it up and um, got to be careful. Also, do you here. work here? <laughs> yeah, the no need to check ID. You'd think a security room in, in an institution that's meant to stay secret would have a little bit more... Uh, Care about looking at security cameras all day, them, seeing people come and go all the time. Like you, yeah. like I don't know if any of you have ever had like a job, but <laughs> you notice that when someone new is there, and you've never seen someone before because you see the same same faces all the time, over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, I could agree with that. But, oh, well, I, uh, yeah. I still don't really get what like, they, uh, what the security guard you. thought they were going to achieve by going in there. Oh. Like, but the security guard just wanted to help. Yeah. This is where they keep And up. look at how he's repaid. <laughs> so he opens up the door and Frenchie pulls a gun on him. And in response, he goes to grab his and Frenchie kills him. Yeah. This now, baffled yeah. us when we first watched it. Uh, yeah, we were pretty shocked by this. Um, Frenchie's. The boys, we never got the impression that the boys were just cool with killing regular people. Yeah, yeah. The, I imagine um, the arguments are going to be, nah, he was, he was pulling it. his gun, nah, he works for Vought in the evil institution. It's just like, guys, the boys are that. usually a lot more careful about stuff like this. The thing you expect to see is someone like MM punch the guy, knock him out, and then tie him up in the room. That's the kind of thing you usually yeah, do. Yeah, not they don't have a taser, the a stun then, gun, yeah. they're not going to punch him in the face, they're not going to just disarm him, they're not going to threaten him in some other way, they're not going to anything else. They're just like, oh... This guy, after we pointed the gun at him first, he yeah. reached for his, so we killed him. There wouldn't have been a reason for him to get his gun out if they wouldn't... If they didn't pull they out their first. gun, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if, if M.M. would have just punched him across the jaw, or grabbed him, or if they, again, tasered... I think he or... cranked him. No, he didn't. There's holes no, in him. He's they, dead. He's dead. Two holes. <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> they killed him. At, at, at this point... Um, Frenchie and MM and the others, like, they don't know, like, you could make the argument... I don't know what the facility is yet. No, yeah, no if, idea. if they knew about all the stuff in the facility after, then I think you could make a different argument saying, okay, well, this guy is, you know, he's, you know, partly responsible for all the terrible stuff that's here, but they don't know that at this point. No. Uh, so also, their intent was bad, that's, yeah. Also, that's not how suppressors work. This drives that's me movie crazy. suppressor. It's super <laughs> quiet and you can't hear them. The they're, they're magically delicious. Oh, God, um, a suppressor still sounds as loud as a... It, it, like, it's still the same decibel level as a jackhammer. Like, it's, ugh, whatever. That's the movie. They're not, they're, well, they're I think uh, people forget how loud guns are, I think. This is, yeah. 
this is, you know, this kind of reaches over into the real world where people are like, oh, what if he has a silencer? It's like, dude, it's still super fucking loud. Like, it doesn't... We're hearing protection for pretty much yeah. any situation. In, like, a, a lot of other places in the world, it's considered a courtesy to use a suppressor on your gun. Exactly. Especially if you're hunting. Because that shit's loud. Hmm. Yeah. Um, however, the other thing here that's interesting is that didn't we get a scene earlier where Frenchie was really upset that Kimiko was going oh, around killing oh, people? <laughs> and he was really upset. Yeah, yeah but Rex, that, that was for well, money, so oh, that's, that's bad. Perfect. Yeah, whereas this was for yeah, some well, reason. He did for free. Yeah. <laughs> You see, those we were. Know, they think that this is this could be just some loony bin in Stormfront's here to check on some weird relative of hers that's just in an institution or something like. They don't know anything about what's going on. Yeah, here, this is basically. all a shock to them when they see the right soups. Now. So. Oh yeah, this is a. Oh. Which, by the way, is something I find so interesting. Is you got this guy, who's clearly punching holes in his cell. Like, how is that sustainable? It seems yeah. like that's a concern. Then there's the one that's teleporting around. Um, and it's like, I guess the room is built with something that prevents them from teleporting anywhere else? That's strange. And the, the acid guy can't, like, get through the doorknob. Yeah, he can burn his own mattress, which we catch him do for what seems to be the first time ever on this camera. <laughs> it's like, damn. I guess that doesn't and, work on... Uh, we're highlighting some of these. We're gonna come across a big issue regarding this soon, so we'll wait till we get to that. Oh, it's so funny though, Rex. It's just yeah, so these funny. Scenes, these scenes were clearly constructed to be like, see, they're they're seeing this camera. This is these people didn't exist until a second ago when there needed to be camera footage of them. Thus, the holes being well, punched yeah, in they're, walls. They're all the little acid. pieces for us to go. Oh, they're cool. Like, they're Schrodinger's patients. They don't exist <laughs> like until you observe them. I'd say so. They're all on pause if we're not viewing them. Um, mm -hmm. And so the interesting thing is they see Lamplighter killing someone at what seems to be the approval of Stormfront. And uh, the For big... A very tiny reason? Yeah, it's, isn't it that he can't... He's not strong. He's not controlling he he... himself well enough or something? No, he said he's oh. not going to do any other tests until he gets to talk to his wife or something like that. Oh. Yeah, I think it's... Right. Yeah, it's... Wife yeah, he's like, I'm done doing your tests. I want to talk to my wife, and she just nods to Lamplighter, and he's, you know, he just uh, incinerates, immolates him, which is one of the stupidest right ways to dispose of a body ever, and you don't need a soup to do so. Yeah, it's really weird. You like they that? That, that, that room just has a corpse in it that's all crispy. It's like, why? <laughs> and then also, it's gonna get on the walls, and it's gonna fill the place with smoke, and it's just the worst possible way. Aside from just chopping them into tiny, tiny pieces I mean, with a filling it up with mayonnaise, maybe? I don't know, but <laughs> there's some pretty bad ways, but this is up there in terms of most pointless ways to dispose of a body ever. Um, so, with that knowledge, they... Wow, what, what, what is their plan? Because they fuck it up. I can't remember what their initial plan was. Was it just to escape? They grab, they grab a bunch of the hard drives from the security room. Yeah, then they and put them under the bed. Stretchy. And they wheel out, but on their way out, Lamplighter recognizes Frenchie. Right, that's what I was going to highlight, was that um, they intend to escape. They happen to go down the one hallway that Lamplighter also happens to go down at the same time. They don't try and cover Frenchie's head, and they don't even, like, they just make no effort to cover themselves up, even though they see him <laughs> coming and they know exactly who he is. Like, oh, see, MM is like, oh, fuck, best best look away, and she's she's keeping her eyes on him. <laughs> and then Frenchie stares directly at him. Yeah. Uh, he opens his eyes and yeah. looks at him. <laughs> what is this <laughs> shit? Look at their faces. <laughs> oh, man, I can't see it yet. <laughs> oh, well, I've got it pulled up, like the episode. <laughs> it's so stupid. And yeah, they both immediately turn oh, right. around ready to kill each other. <laughs> <sighs> uh, what a way to create drama. So of course, um, yeah, dra drama ensues. Their Stay little there. scuffle. Yeah, when they get into their little scuffle, Lamplighter accidentally shoots at the door. And he shoots at the door with his fire, which <laughs> breaks the door and lets out this crazy powerful... <laughs> Soup. <laughs> yeah, like I'm gonna get the shot. To destroy everything. So, his fire was so strong; it seems to have melted a 
a hole door, through yeah. what seems to be like is that like eight inches of steel like an insane I, so here's the thing how hot does technically technically that door is meltable technically <laughs> not with that little puff is a puff of flame no yeah, it's yeah, fucking yeah. insane that they think that can happen and apparently it's like two so, seconds and it blows out the like the one you do not want to release and this <laughs> yeah. one, this one is a pretty an, inconvenient an, an incredibly powerful telekinetic um, for some reason can't escape the room on her own. <laughs> she needs someone yeah, to blow she, a fireball in there. She she instantly well, and effortlessly pulls all of the doors off of their hinges, right? Yeah, which she can't do that when she's inside she, of her room. Yeah, but she can't do that to her <laughs> one door? So they try to explain this later, and it makes it even dumber, um, because <laughs> the explanation given is that she is constantly kept uh, kept under uh, with some sort of drug, and it like limits her powers or keeps her in a sedated state or something like that. So the the excuse that Lamplighter gives to Stonefront is that some other doctor messed up the dosage, and that's how Cindy was able to use her powers and escape. But we can very clearly see in this scene that she has complete access to all of her faculties right now. Yeah. So. Wouldn't she have just been able to do that herself? Like, she didn't need the prompt of Lamplighter burning the door. As soon as she recognized it or came out of her fog, she could have just torn the door off. So... But, uh, but yeah, th th she gets out and lets all of the soups loose, and then they, uh, they lock the door on a dude who dies. That's on you guys. So how many deaths are on the boys this episode? They well, ruined that woman this one. They all, <laughs> dude, sure. they all work for Vault, probably. They're evil, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, and then they get into the room, and it's really funny, because Frenchie's pointing a gun at Lamplighter, and they're like, oh, this is a standoff. It's like, um, bullets are really yeah, fast, bullets guys. Are, <laughs> bullets are really fast. So this, yeah, and, I was just going to say, I've got the shot. This is not a standoff. This is a hostage situation, but Lamplighter yeah, has not yeah. realized that yet. <laughs> Iceman is the hostage, yeah. Oh, I should, um, yeah, we should probably comment on, that's the one thing I do like about yeah. this, is they made Iceman the, Pyro. That's cool. The Fire Man. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of funny. funny. Um, um, it's not so funny when he goes to Vort Tower to set himself on fire to fuck things up, but that, uh, I, wait, we're jumping ahead. Well, yeah, we're almost, we're almost <laughs> at the episode oh, that convinced oh, everyone shit, the show was oh. shit. Yeah. So, um, Even though the show is already at critical levels here. <laughs> So yeah, major collateral damage, but who gives a fuck? Whatever, it's fine. Um, yeah. uh, we're probably going to skip over a lot of this now, because if you remember, they have a couple of... Oh, I forgot. So Vomit the Dude comes in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he is able to break through the door? He just burst through it. I guess he threw up on the lock. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> and so he throws up on Lamplighter, which he mostly misses him, by the looks of things. And then... Oh, we gotta be careful for He accidentally right? throws up on himself. Uh, but how does that happen? <laughs> oh, Kimiko knocks him over, kicks him in the gut, and then he spits out a bunch of acid on his face that then melts right. his face. No, what so, a shit power. Yeah, he so, just gets through the door. <laughs> so now I wanna make sure we're specific on the criticism, right? Because some people would say, How could you uh, be affected by your own acid? And it's like, okay, so if stomach yeah. acid went on to our like skin, we're gonna be in trouble. However, this is a power in which he vomits regularly from his mouth, which means his lips are always going to be, like, this stuff is always going to be passing through them. Yeah. And yeah. yet, his whole face, including his lips and mouth, are all burning off. It's like, how has this not happened before? Yeah, I could, I could make the, uh, I could, I could accept the fact that, like, his eyes and his nose and other parts of his skin, but not, not his mouth and not his Lips like his teeth no. are yeah, going no. black. It's like, how is this happening? They... I'm sure vomit's gotten on your teeth before, buddy. Also, he, his t-shirt is unaffected. <laughs> oh yeah. What is <laughs> this well, show? I mean, it, like, yeah. <laughs> it, it, and also, if Kimiko kicked him in the gut, her foot probably would have went through him. She's really strong. And nah, clearly she, he's not. She pulled her kick there. She pulled, like, a pull-up. I like how she pulled her kick so that he died a much slower and painful death. <laughs> <laughs> how nice. Yeah, the heroes. The heroes who have now been responsible. Every death that's happened in this building is their fault. 
Like, there's no getting around it. That's on them. They let the person loose who let all the other soups loose. Speaking of collateral damage, Fringy, they let a person loose oh, who then no, uh, no, no, blows no, no, no. away the van that Huey is not seat belted into and thus gets and stabbed. And he's okay. No, he's yeah. not okay. He's not okay. Oh, oh, sorry. No, he's not okay. That's right. <laughs> I totally forgot. Oh, he got man. stabbed in the gut. Yeah. I um, don't know how that happened. I'm so confused by that. Well, the guy blew the van over and there must have been someone shop in there and, you know, life finds a way. But, uh... Fine. And then, and then <laughs> so Butcher kills the telekinetic. There's a lot of telekinetics, I've noticed. Yeah, it's pizza. Yeah. Um... Easy on the CGI budget. True. <laughs> and, yeah, and so Huey is injured and now the, the clock is ticking on him bleeding out to get him to a hospital, which should immediately raise you guys' eyebrows. You're like, what do you mean get him yeah. to a hospital? You can't get him How to a hospital. How do you get to a hospital? You guys are wanted fugitives. That's no bueno. As soon as you go to the hospital, you're done. Game over. Yeah, that's that's his wound. It's kind of unclear exactly how bad it is, but... Um, I guess what I would say is the more... Looks pretty like, bad. He is surprisingly okay. Consid you know, he's got the thing in his gut, but I feel like his neck should have been snapped. Or something else, you know. He's he's in a lot of trouble. If he's yeah, he was just in the back, getting flipped over like three or four times. The uh, the thing that more annoyed me about this scene is that they now I, I believe this is the first time when they acknowledge that Starlight needs nearby electricity in order to use her yeah. power. Now, yeah. in previous episodes, she has been able to affect it. Like we see, lights get brighter and dim. But I always assumed that was a result of her using her powers and having an impact on the surrounding environment as opposed to her drawing it in. And I think it's really just kind of a cheap cop out for them to say, well, I can't use my powers now. So we have to, you know, here's an extra situation when they could have brought that up at an earlier point in at, at like not even this episode, like any time in, in earlier in the season or in the previous season where they could have brought it up where it would have established, okay, this is an issue that you will have to resolve later. But instead, it's just like, oh, we need you to cauterize the wound. Oh, hey, whoops, I guess I can't. And it's probably worth mentioning yeah. that she could have used the battery power from the van. It doesn't matter that the van is damaged. There's still a battery in there. Or their yeah. phones. Yeah. Could have used their phones. Or their phones, yep. Well, or, uh, worst case scenario, drag him closer to the building. Yeah. But of course... You think there'd be power lines nearby, maybe, too, or under the ground? What's that? Inconsistent power slash intelligence? Oh. <laughs> In the boys? No Man, way. Man, perish the thought. And so, then, um, uh, is, the next scene is when Homelander burns down his own uh, trailer. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I, so I feel like you don't even need any context for that. So people who are listening to us right now haven't even seen the season, they're just interested in us covering it. Welcome to the next scene. Homelander destroys his own trailer. Why? And, uh, well, because he's bored. Lots of people, I think. I'm not sure anymore. I think there's like people around and they're, they're getting carved away, maybe. I oh, well, he's, it seems to have... Like, if you look at this shot, it's like, how much damage is there? Jesus. Look at the, this fire trucks. This how are you going to cover that up? Somebody's probably going to take a picture and say, hey... No, uh, he did. Homeland Remember? Did he this. said there was a chemical fire. Oh. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Look at the damage, holy fuck. Yeah, just fuck, fuck it, whatever. <laughs> Good old Homelander. Mm. And she's like, and that was weird, the and then he's like, you lied to me, you weren't in Vought Tower. And she was like, oh shit. And then he has a moment of like, I'm gonna kill you, maybe? And then the, we'll have more scenes about that later. Um, another deep scene. We'll skip that so for we now. Oh, this is... That. But it's about it's about A-Train, isn't it? Yeah, they say A-Train can't come back to the Seven through the Collective because Stormfront doesn't like black people, basically. It's like, all right then. Yeah. So, um, but they do... Uh, well, that'll come up again. We'll come back to that. So, kind of looking to skip most of this. We can summarize it as we well, get a flashback. Well, it's a Frenchy backstory, yeah. Yeah, we flash... Oh, God, yeah. They, they, they make fun of it in the show, but uh, Lamplight is a weird one in terms of his... Outfit and choice of fire source. Yeah, <laughs> just a giant stick with fire. I can't believe I'm saying this. Big, cumbersome, but X Men, heavy... X Men Three: The Last Stand. Pyro's source of fire is pretty cool. 
Yeah, so, a lighter that's just on his wrist. Yeah, two basically. lighters in each wrist, and he like cracks at them with the wrist to, to make them activate, and then he has his access to fire. That's way better than I carry what seems to be quite the heavy staff. <laughs> yeah. Well, Alchemist did this better. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but well, then the that's how he used to do it, Rags. Right? Remember, the Lamplighter had a, a lighter in this episode. That's how he does it in the future, that's... I guess. Yeah. Well, it's the old one I'm comparing it. The, 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 oh, the big, yeah, the heavy, one, cumbersome, sure. silly, massive yeah, yeah, yeah. staff. I mean, in fairness, don't devil's advocate here. <laughs> yeah. go, go for it. It's fine. Remember, remember that he's a member at this point in the flashback. He's a member of the seven, and a big part of the seven is the, the PR costumes. and yeah. the costumes and over the top and stuff. So it's it practically it's ridiculous, but it's meant to you know look. Yeah, you still think he'd have a, a lantern or something that wasn't so much well hey uh as some people said in chat they laugh at it it's goofy in universe so there you go yeah i guess um oh boy can we talk about the next scene it's the, the really bad one <laughs> right we're gonna, that's gonna take some Finally, time. We're just, excited about talking just making about sure yeah. just so, making um, sure we're all so... covered the, the, the frenchy plot line we're not gonna get all of it yet but uh that's just setting up that the boys once upon a time were such a great little team and they got lamplighter to do something that they want that's we're gonna come back to that but first, go ahead and so, introduce a way. Uh, the Starlight walks out of the forest onto a street and hails a guy oh. down. He doesn't recognize her, which again, you know, f fucking whatever. But she says that she needs a ride and then like Butcher walks out with uh, a profusely bleeding Huey over his shoulder. Um, the guy gets out of the car, obviously, to like, because it's pretty... It's pretty surprising that there's a dude in yeah. the middle of a forest with blood pouring out of a wound <laughs> in his chest. And naturally he is concerned about that. But but I think the, the, the key thing is he says, they're like, we need your car. And he says, I'll take you to the hospital. And they say, no, we need your car. <laughs> they want to yeah, leave he's him like, out yeah. here just, just instead of accepting yeah. the ride. Just want to clarify, he's in one of those moving vehicles that have four seats and there's four of them. Yeah. So just, just want to put that out he, there. He has offered to take them to the hospital. They say, nah, we'd rather go to the hospital on our own without you, even though it's <laughs> your car. This isn't suspicious at all. I'm it's, FBI, or whatever he said. It's funnier than that to me because of the fact that he actually does something that we would do, which is, so this yeah. is the middle of nowhere. Like, I don't want to be yeah. left here. Do you mind if I come with you? Like, that would make more sense. Do you mind if I come with you as well? Yeah, like, I'll, I'll drive you, you there. Hospital. I'm familiar with my vehicle. I'm, I'm um, going, I'm... I'm doing what most people would do, and I'm helping you out. Yeah. But like, then, no, uh, Butcher walks away, puts Huey on the ground, and through doing so, reveals the concealed weapon underneath his jacket. And so, the guy sees that, decides to um, pull out his own weapon, because now he feels like he's in danger, which I think is a perfectly reasonable. Totally response. reasonable. Absolutely yeah. reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he, yeah, he's pointing the gun. And Butcher's being like all calm and collected as usual, and Starlight's sort of just standing there. Uh, She's like, "Don't." He no, then, prop yeah, yeah. She tells him like, "No, she'll handle it." Uh, and she demonstrates how well she handles it when like, she <laughs> fucking shoots him with her fucking powers over the car. And of course, when we saw the scene, it's like, "Oh, he's dead. You killed him. Obviously, he's dead." Yeah, and that's our scene. She yeah, killed he him. He hits his head hard, like he's yeah. bleeding like crazy. He's bleeding a lot. By the time she runs over to him, there's already a lot of yeah. blood coming out of his head. And even, dead. even if he doesn't recognize her at any point during this entire fiasco, she could have simply said, I'm Starlight, I'm a member of the Seven. And if even if he doesn't recognize her, she could just like do some glowing. There's many things she could have done. She yeah. could have just stepped in front of the bullets. Um, if he was gonna shoot, just step in front of the bullets or like punch him down. Way, you are really strong after all. Butcher is like heh, right after she does it. Yeah. Like like good move. Like that was that was excellent. It's like it's, what the it's fuck is wrong move. with you, you shitty character. Yeah. Butcher's like, great. He's a great character. So... <laughs> he's he's the kind of guy who would blow up. <clears throat> he um yeah. And yeah, so she's pretty bummed out that she's just killed a person. Um I kind of want to skip to the next scene, because this is all connected. 
Uh, but of course, if anyone was curious as to what the problem is, she's a superhero that's immune to 50 cals in terms of you can't hurt her. She didn't put her hand on the gun's barrel. She didn't stand in front of the gun to just prevent him from shooting bullet. Butcher. She just killed yeah. him. It's like, good job. She's yeah, like, and then I think, isn't there a picture of like his kids or something in the car as well? No, there's, yeah. there's, yeah. A, there's a baby carrier. Yeah. She finds the baby carrier. He was a daddy. She's a piece yeah. of shit. And by the way, um, kind of, you know, it's funny how we can keep these rankings going, but I'm pretty sure Starlight is now worse than Batwoman because Batwoman usually lets people die, doesn't people personally die kill them. Starlight murders people. The, the Batwoman did kill <laughs> Creepy Skin Man, but at least he was villainous. <laughs> at yeah, least. at least, yeah, he wasn't a totally reasonable, innocent person who had just offered to help you. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, this is real bad. This is if Batman just kills a guy. Like <laughs> this well, is what it is. So this is the interesting thing, right? This you can see from the shot here. It's like, oh shit! So she's killed someone. It was stupid how it happened, but fuck it, she's killed someone. We talked about we we talked about a lot of this in the Batwoman episode. We were like, this is classic for superhero or um just just a fighter type character who's protagonist yeah. in your show when they're anti-killing, but they've killed someone through happenstance. Like, oh dear. We talked about this with the, the, the trolley problem stuff. We're like, you want to challenge these characters. How do we... What happens next? And so, we cut to a different scene, I think, um, until they come back. And funnily enough, I know this yeah, happens because uh, I was actually in a call where um, Voodoo was showing Theo this, and Theo couldn't believe it. Um, it's, it's just staggering. So, yeah. The butcher like gives her a look of approval, and she's like, "Fuck you! I don't want your approval." Which, which in a better context, could probably uh, work in some way, shape, or form. But th so their relationship is growing at the cost of her basically saying, "That guy got her in our way, so it's whatever." Yeah, she um that like she doesn't really seem to have as she much feel remorse. Bad. She's fine. Yeah. It's like, she, she feels like a little bit of the sad, but at the same time, she doesn't seem to really care all that much. Yeah. And I think, at, I think one of the lines is, she even, I think she even tells him, I think she even tells Butcher that she didn't really feel anything. I'd have to go and rewatch it, but I, I think she even says that she doesn't really feel anything about him dying. Also, it's just kind of like, meh. Someone said, didn't a Batwoman kill someone on the stairs? I think she only hurt that guy, if you remember. Remember the stairs no, killed his, uh, he he fell and broke his neck. I thought she, I thought he fell and like hit his head and she panicked and then she uh, could see that he was breathing still. And she went, oh fuck. Like, thank fuck. Oh, maybe. Um, yeah, he fell down, then there was blood everywhere. And... Oh, and... fuck. Uh, so that answers that. But I just want to get right back to, of course, Theo brought up, which, which fucking is the obvious problem. Butcher just witnessed a soup killing a person for no good reason, and he's happy about it. Oh, shit! Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. Fuck. <laughs> and that Damn. is what we call complete assassination. assassination. Down the toilet yeah. you go, Butcher. Oh, balls. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I was too distracted by her being a murderer. Yeah, so yeah, and then it's being hard. like, we're nothing alike. It's like, well, <laughs> you know what? You're pretty much, I mean, you just killed the guy for are. no reason. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, there was so many things to pass through there that I forgot the big fucking problem <laughs> that he shouldn't be approving yeah. uh, of it at all. Sorry, my bad. Thank you. See, chat, you're a good man. You get, you get, you get credit for that one, even though it was a specific does, person. Uh, it's chat now. Yeah, um, does Huey ever, um, acknowledge any of this? I don't, I don't think know. it, it this doesn't get brought so. up again, does it? No, it I don't think it ever gets brought, brought up, up now. <clears throat> this should be season-long material. Yep. But, yeah, you know, we ain't got time for that shit. So, I guess not. In between all that shit, <laughs> we've got uh, another scene where we find out that the reason Lamplighter was able to kill Grace's kids without Frenchie being able to stop him was that Frenchie was busy that night dealing with one of his friends ODing to the point where he had to save their life. And then, it, this is so fucking bungled. So first of all, the incredible coincidence that of all the times and nights that you could have had an OD, it was now at this <laughs> very that moment. One night, yeah. Then yeah. secondly, that Frenchie needs to leave, and he doesn't tell them that I have to go and save someone else's life, potentially, and they like, they like shit on him for leaving at that point, despite the fact that he came and saved them. And then it turns out that there's this level of guilt that Frenchie has because he thinks that if he had stayed that night, that guy might not have ended up ODing again a month later. 
because he, he by not staying with him that night the guy left and they didn't see him again until they found out he'd OD'd and killed himself what just, a bizarre series of events it's just like like it sounds like he's got a serious drug problem yeah it sounds like well do you remember um oh we didn't bring it up i skipped over it bad bad dialogue there's lots of it this season uh when frenchie is sad and hanging out with his uh the the, the french girl um she just like we were watching it we were almost baffled she just lets out that like you are trying to do good things for people because you want to make up for the bad things you've done Oh yeah, that was a scene that was very clearly exposition for the audience. Yeah, Just I was, boom. And we were all like, wait, what? <laughs> like, when, when was that a thing? Do you remember the introduction of Frenchie, where he's like this crazy gun-toting, drug-doing maniac who even tries was... to almost kill Butcher and, and Huey for being on his property, and then he's told that he's got no choice but to help them now because he's involved? Yeah. This is the guy who apparently must help people because of his past sins. Yeah, he sells he sells weapons to warlords, but he 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 also uh, works at the food bank on Sunday. <laughs> it's uh, it's hilarious. And then of course you'd be like, wait, isn't this whole history why him and MM have a huge disconnect, and why Ma uh, uh, what's her name Grace has a problem with him? It's like, yeah. So why didn't he tell them this? He just didn't. And and they're all like, why why? And he's just like, yeah. It's, that's just not something I told you guys. Probably should have, because it kind of answers everything. So you guys remember all the way back to season one where M.M. and Frenchie have this huge unspoken of history where something went really wrong and they had to move past it in order to defeat the boys. It was based on that a misunderstanding. It. Yep, that was great. That was a great payoff. Yeah, we had to wait a season and a half to find out. It was like, oh, that? Okay, yeah, we're cool. <laughs> all, right, <laughs> all right, then. I, I don't even know oh. what like why they did that. It, what a waste of drama. Takes care of that. Oh, sorry, I flashed ahead to the giant penis. Yeah, oh, so no. I I saw that too. I have it playing here, and I wasn't. Ha <laughs> ha! I saw the giant. Very funny. funny. Very it's very funny. Penis man's trying to attack. They they, they knock him out. Um, I, feel, I think we've gotten past most of the tism for this episode, right? A uh, quick thing on on that guy. Um, what what the hell is his name? I can't even remember. Um. Uh, lo what is Love Sausage? That's his name. So that that's actually a character from the comics. Um, he has a completely different set of powers. He's basically just a generic superpower, uh, super strength, invulnerability, that sort of thing. And um, he's also friends with the boys. Like he helps them. Like he's one of the the, the people that helps go after the seven. Um, I think it's interesting because in this episode we have Cindy, who is a, a character that is completely new, didn't exist in the comics at all, superpower female character, and they take a very important male character who's friends with the boys from the comics, and they just reduce him to a, a like a, a twenty second comic relief. And I'm, I'm sure there's no hidden no hidden agenda removing an important male character and replacing him with a unimportant female character well actually um while you were explaining that i was like skipping to the right place um i thought to myself wait how is it the stormfront defeats hyper telekinetic like i don't remember and then i played it and That's i don't know why lot. but stormfront entering the building makes like the light from outside reflects off the doors in this way that just like it's blinding like i'm gonna pause at it so this is the first shot. Look at that's her reaction to it. She's like, the fuck? And then we see it, and it looks like this. What the hell is happening? <laughs> in, guys, in case you guys can't see it, I'll uh I'll screenshot. That's some that's some intense light right there. Wow, that's bright. Oh, <laughs> so of course she can't see shit, and before she can react, Stormfront just electrocutes the crap out of her and uh, she's knocked out. Very well written. All right. Yeah, all because right. of course, if she'd walked in normally, and then the telekinetic exploded her, that would have been bad for the plot. Yeah, possibly. Just um, you can learn a lot from the boys in terms of how to write real good. So anyway, uh, Stormfront's like, "What the fuck happened?" Lamplighter tells her it was all like an accident. Uh, and then I want to say that's about it for the main plot of the episode because he escapes with. It. Ah, 
I wonder if... You know what? Should we let chat figure this one? Just see what they have to say. I also want to just hmm. see if they can pick it up just from this uh, image. Look at this image. What's wrong here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. What, Once again. What, uh, what could we've possibly been talking be about wrong? it a lot. It's... Three incredibly famous people. No, you're oh. supposed to let them guess. <laughs> It's Sorry, all right, I'm that's probably guy. enough time for them to have guessed at this point. Um, I hope yeah. so. Staggering. Uh, Someone said Stormfront Abrams. <laughs> yeah, those are some intense lens flares, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. yeah. It was funny, um, because when we were, the the, the part where they st steal the car from the guy, like, as we were reeling from all of the mechanics of that, we were like, what even is it going to do going to the hospital anyway? You guys are going to jail if you do that. But no. <laughs> <laughs> just, this is fine. He gets some really important, serious treatment done. Saves his life. I'm guessing he can afford it. Uh, don't even yeah, want to get into the specifics of that. Insurance. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Yeah, well, let's just take a look at this wallet in your pocket. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, and your two friends are. Oh, it. Oh my god. Oh. oh. Yeah. Um. So there's actually one more super stupid thing at the end of the episode. Um, it's oh yeah, when just to make Cindy sure we escapes. just to make sure we clarified on this one is just that um, their faces alone should be recognition enough, especially Starlight and the most wanted. But when you pull up any information on Huey, uh, he's done. They would know exactly yeah. who he is. They're all arrested. Too bad. So sad. Uh, but then uh, we we move on to like there are still more. Tism yeah, there are still more tizzles. I just the next episode. Yeah, uh, not the next episode. The next scene. Mm -hmm. Um, what's uh, Elaine or whatever Elena? Yeah, she she reaches. She goes to get like her charger, and it's next to the GoPro or something. Oh no! Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's connected to the GoPro, <laughs> and so she opens it up. And just immediately watches the video that incriminates <laughs> Maeve and Homelander. Good job, Maeve. Excellent work. Just dropped it in yeah. a random drawer. No security whatsoever. It's almost as stupid as someone like, I don't know, Stormfront having like a series of files that out her as a Nazi in her trunk in her room. Like, could you imagine how yeah. stupid that would be? <laughs> Lucky everybody in this fucking season is a genius. So yeah, she just finds it. She casually is interested. She turns it on. She watches the whole thing. And, um, yeah, so she doesn't trust Maeve very much. I, I don't even know if that's the repercussion. She just says she's afraid of Homelander, doesn't she? Yeah, as far but as the I thing know. is, like, she... But in episode 8, she says you're gonna leave me and Elena alone. It's like, wait, what? Are you... What? I thought it was over. I thought your relationship was destroyed by this. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, guys, we are about eight minutes from the scene. We're almost there. <laughs> 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 oh no. My body is ready. So yeah, uh they have a bit of a back and forth. Big sad so bad. Like I said, it's just that's going to come up obviously later that that video. Here's a fun little thing. They have a general trivia that the footage was, you know, stitched together with new stuff so it wasn't planned. This whole Oh, I never could have guessed planned. that. I checked the scene. The guy yeah. isn't in the scene that he would have to be in to be able to take that video. It's yeah. a retcon. Good job, guys. Always Why proud of a retcon. Why would you trivia that you didn't plan in this? <laughs> I guess they thought it was impressive. It was like, isn't it impressive, guys, that we managed to pull this off? No. I don't know. You can do anything with computers. It's more impressive what you do with writing. But so, yeah. Lamplighter, plot-wise, is like, yeah, okay, I'll be on you guys' team. I'll try and help you, because uh, Grace decides not to execute him, which kind of surprised me, to be honest. Yeah, I'm surprised too, especially because the way we're introduced to this character is him immolating someone alive. Yeah, yeah he's done a he's got a whole list of evil doings, but he's feeling kind of sad about them, and so he's spared. <sighs> oh man, what a, what a turnaround for like 30 minutes of your life <laughs> to just <laughs> yeah. realize that you're a monster. Well, Friggy, how minutes. else can we set up the horrors of Episode Seven, the absolute uh, shit fest that well, is Episode Seven? <laughs> Before you before you even get to episode seven, at the end of this one, Cindy escapes, and she's probably going to be a character in, in season, season three. Yeah. three. Yep. But the thing, how she escapes makes no sense, because when she gets incapacitated by Stormfront, right, she's left, like, unconscious in, in the, the middle of the, the opening area. 
uh, and then Stormfront comes in, Lamplighter, they have their little conversation, and they go off. Okay, so at some point later, Storm, uh, Lamplighter leaves and goes with the boys, and they, they head out. But why... Okay, so Cindy is not dead. She's still alive. She's just unconscious. Why would they just leave her there so that when she wakes up, she can just stroll out the front door? Wouldn't they, like, heavily sedate her and stuff her back into a room or something? So that she can do what? But she would just say, "What? What would that change? What well, because her? she is because she escapes at the end of the episode. Yeah. She's seen. Yeah, uh, but from the boys' perspective. No, 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 no. It's all about Stormfront and Lamplighter, yeah. right? So, yeah. Storm, yeah. While Stormfront and Lamplighter are still there, um, like, wouldn't they make sure that Cindy is put like resecured? Yeah. Yeah. She's a major insecure. security yeah. risk. Yeah. Yeah. Because after all, remember, Stormfront believes that Cindy is responsible for the entire incident there because Lamplighter blames it on some doctor screwing up a dosage, so Cindy got out. So it, it doesn't make sense for them to just leave her lying unconscious and not secured. So we're Sounds supposed fair. to believe that Stormfront leaves and then doesn't do anything with Cindy, or maybe she allows Lamplighter to take care of it because maybe Cindy's still unconscious. But the thing is, remember, Lamplighter now has this big change of heart where he wants to do the right thing. And does that include leaving Cindy, the you know, the, the super dangerous person, to just wander out and where she would do incalculable amounts of damage to the to the population? Like even even if he decides that he's going to go with the boys, he would still in his new kind of, uh, you know, I want to be a good guy point of view, he would still say, okay, we need to throw this chick into a secure room and sedate her so that she doesn't go and just Fucking wreck kill me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, so, we'll just wreck shit. So, like, there's no situation where it really makes sense where Cindy would just manage to get out. Like, she would have to be either killed or sedated once again. But somehow the plot needs her to, to escape and hitchhike, so she does. Yeah, so that she can be a bad guy in season three. Or a good guy. And I don't think a good I think a good guy. guy. Oh, it depends. Yeah. I think whatever. it'll be a good she guy. She could be an antagonist. I think she might end up fucking joining the boys, who knows? <laughs> whatever. Well Oh, and then well, the like, I said, yeah. like I said earlier, the character that she's effectively replacing in the show is Love Sausage, so it is possible that she could kind of try to take his his role in helping the boys go after the seven. Right. I feel like once she's on their side, it's over. She can crush them. But, um, oh, right, but before you forget, like the, in the last episode, there's our, like, yeah, she's a Nazi Stormfront's a Nazi. I think she says, uh, we're in a war for the culture, which was oh. like, you, you can't not read the modern political landscape into that. It's it's really impossible to ignore that line specifically. The funny thing is, the I think when Rags and I were watching this, we wanted the the Hitler picture, right? It's like, come on, give us. The oh, Hitler we wanted picture. the Hitler picture so bad. We had to wait for it. Yeah, you have to wait until episode uh, eight to get the Hitler picture. But I was get so it. ready for the Hitler picture of her next to Hitler, and I, well, they bait it. I thought it was going to be there. She's oh, like, they do bait it. She's cool. like, uh, everybody was like intimidated by the one man in the room. It was like, oh, Hitler, 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 Hitler. And she's like, uh, Friedrich Vought or whatever. And you're like, oh, oh okay. Mm. Well, I wanted to, I wanted and also, to see it's, it, Hitler. <laughs> it's weird that, uh, it's weird that, like, she says that minority, because, <laughs> like, Stormfront's like, the minorities are taking what's ours. It's like, uh, you're German. You're not American. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Or you just talk about the global scale that, but that it doesn't. Yeah, all right, whatever. whatever. It's just, you didn't think it through at all. You know, this is a good checkpoint, by the way. Before we get to what is considered the bad episodes now, because we're on the cusp. I think a lot of yeah. people didn't think this was bad. How are you feel in chat? Have we convinced any of you? Is how, or, or do you think we're still? And if you nitpicky? say most of this is nitpicks, I swear to God, <laughs> like, <laughs> my brain is going to explode. It's okay, Freddy. Let them have an opinion. That is no. my opinion. I agree. I agree, chat. Hitler bait. I hate Hitler bait. Hitler bait. Is Hitler bait. If you're gonna bait me, if you're gonna tease me with Hitler, I better fucking see Hitler. All right. But to their credit, we do see Hitler later. She, we do see her with Hitler. They just made me wait for it, and then I had my laugh. I I laughed so hard. <laughs> I, my heart left with joy because of this show. Be like, you see, there she is with Hitler. 
In case you guys didn't realize that she's bad. Someone said, why why pretend most of us like this? What do you mean? <laughs> we got loads because of pushback. Most people do yeah. We're the we're the hot takers for this one. I had to I'm, I had to go through this with a whole bunch of people. I I'm I'm convinced that people think the boys is good because everything else available is so much worse. Like if you compare this I don't agree people, with that. I think that this show is bad. I think this is actually pretty bad. No, yeah, but I mean other people think that the show is good because because everything else is so much worse. I mean if you compare the boys what? to the CW oh. right now, if you're looking for superhero uh, content, <laughs> it ain't that much better. Like that's I know. that's kinda that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I really do think so. People better. thought it would be in the hyperbolic where we compared it to Batwoman. It's like, dude, no, episode this show is like Someone yeah. said in the chat only rags nitpicks. I was like, fuck off. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Only <laughs> what are you my dude. Get dabbed on Rugs. Sorry, I mean in terms I, of where this show is. I do not come to I refuse to accept dab. the dab. Someone yeah, someone just brought up like the Mando effect. Like people like the Mandalorian and they thought that it was like really amazing just because like The Last Jedi and, and Rise of Skywalker. Mando and the boys are like three out of ten. So that oh, most with, said, with but I know, like my I, point though is that it's it's it People, it appears to be better, and that's why people think it's good. No, I think I think it's more based than that. I think it's just that these high concepts appeal to people, just in general. These are cool ideas. Oh, yeah, um, I think I, that the I concept of this show carries the fuck out of it. Yeah, like, you know, space bounty hunter adventures and evil superheroes are just two cool ideas. I don't think it has anything to do with the quality of the shows because neither of them are good at all. And I don't think they even stack up well against what's coming out at the minute. <sighs> I would imagine that NCIS season 20 is probably better than this. And like, that's like our standard, you know, sort of TV content is probably a lot better than this. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it stacks up well relative to a lot of other content at all. I yeah, would man. agree. I think that the I I think the reason for this is that the concept carries it, and I think a lot of people just they they go in wanting to like it, I really wanting to like it, <laughs> and so that just that clouds their judgment. I wanted to like the shit out of this. I was so sad. I, it was yeah, so I shit. Mean, nope. I really really wanted to like this show. Like yeah, it I was, did too. It was, uh, this is my jam. Like. Yeah. fucking commenting on the stagnation of superheroes in terms of people's work on them to a degree is like yeah okay cool but when you're like worse than the thing you're making fun of it's like mm, <laughs> this is just awkward now and embarrassing like I just like that in a lot of people's minds this is categorical that Captain Marvel is way worse than something like this and I'm just sitting here like um I don't know uh, yeah, it's not that much worse I don't think I mean this is really bad, guys. Yeah, in terms of the sheer amount of bad, the fact this that is, it's a TV show. This is before we've touched episode seven. <laughs> yeah. God, well, I mean, we ain't even at seven yet. Well, yeah, because like, if you think about everything, it's like, okay, production values, put all that to one side. Let's talk about the writing. Has any character come out of this unscathed? I don't think so. Oh yeah, the tick is like, dope. You guys should watch the tick. It's way better, and it's also oh, commentary yeah. on superhero shit. You are facing. Don't watch the tick. Don't waste your time with the boys season three because it's gonna be even worse than two probably. <laughs> Though we'll probably oh. watch it because I like watching garbage burn. <laughs> it's gonna be funny. The 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 sad part is that I I want to see what they do with Homelander still. Uh, yeah. I want to know how that story's gonna end or progress. Also, as people are probably noticing, uh, I've got a, I've got a screen up that represents the next discussion. <laughs> so, real, real, real quick uh, on all of my reviews and breakdowns for the individual episodes, all of them have like a ninety percent plus like ratio, except for seven, where it craters down to sixty seven percent. And then episode eight, it craters down even more to sixty one percent. Like wow, out. yeah, people like uh, people were upset pointing out how much dumb stuff was in these two episodes coming up. I think you get these people, and you just want to ask them like, "What was wrong about what I said? Just tell me what was wrong, or do you just not like it that you've been now now that now you know it?" 
I one of the comments that I got was it's a it's a fictional show. It's not supposed to be realistic, so uh, it doesn't matter if things don't make sense if they're not consistent. It's like no, <laughs> no. That's not how people who say that are pathetic. I don't know what else to say. Wow, what if they say you're pathetic? Well, then they could be wrong. Well, check uh, me. That is what we call a stalemate. No one could be proven right. Nope. Also, let me see if there's any general trivia for this retarded scene. At the beginning of oh God, no. <laughs> Not for this uh, one, but the next scene. No. There. The next scene. Oh, there okay. This whole scene <laughs> has a flicking through it. <laughs> This this oh. scene uh, pulled pulled I would imagine millions of viewers out of the show. They would have been like, "Whoa!" Uh, <laughs> the amount that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so why don't we go over what was intended first? I suppose. So let, let, the idea is: look at this normal person living a normal life in a house, loves his mum, goes to work, enjoys. Look, he's a, look at him. Look at him smiling. What a friendly dude walking past someone, just like, "Hey." Um, Oh, ignore the fact that he's a fat neck beard. That's not important. So he's, he's living his normal life. He sees on the TV a bit of Stormfront. He's got a Stormfront bobblehead. He's got a Stormfront poster. He's got... You know, uh, but it's all normal. It's all within the bounds of normalcy. Yeah, everything. You know? He, he, you know Nothing suspect he here. He could be... <laughs> you could be this guy, okay? Just a I don't normal... Know it's kind of sus. Dude, they keep having clips of him looking at women being unable to talk to them. Just, Just saying... Just saying. Uh, dude, uh, oh, hold mm. on, I've, I've got to play it again. <laughs> I think one of the women, like, mm. like, kind of rebuffs him a little bit or something. Like, we look, yeah, wow. he's. The clips are so fucking choice. What can, what else can I say? <laughs> they are... But then, yeah, when he when he gets home that night, he's just browsing, uh, re browsing, perusing <laughs> Reddit. He sees a couple of You wanted of to combine browsing about... and perusing. Yes, it did. Yeah. Perousing, we... yes. Um, Wait, before... I want, to show, I want to show the chat the meme he looks like, because I showed Gary it. It was so fucking funny. We're, we're... Oh my god, is this the one, or die? The, yeah, yeah, that's, it, that's the uh, meme. Immigrate oh, legally or die. It's such a funny fucking what? meme. <laughs> we're... Immigrate legally or can die. You, do you know where it is? <laughs> like, fuck now, Jesus. I'm trying to find it. If you can find it, just post away. I'm trying to because chat got to see this top tier meme. Oh, uh, do, 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 do. well, you, it's one of it's one, one of the times he's on seconds. his computer. I know yeah, that. Yeah, one minute forty four seconds is where you want to look uh, if you want to see it. He's scrolling through the memes on a nondescript Reddit esque. Uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's just a silhouette of these people standing in the darkness. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. They do it quickly great, too. They flash die. away from this. <laughs> you see, it's very subtle. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my. That's, that's not even a meme. Subtle. That's just it's not a meme. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's terrifying. No more of the boys' memes, please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, immigrate legally or die? die. Or die? Don't oh, kill you. Should, like, no, they no, should just not. square this in a meme put based on it, just to annoy okay. the libs. Just, um, you know, even though he's looking at some uh, kind of weird, uh, you know, Reddit pages, he wakes up tomorrow at the same time. He's still going to work. He's a little bit more tired this time, though. Um, no, he's losing he's sleep. He's watching the news. He's yeah, getting some more coffee. He's saying he's goodbye to his sleep, mama. Thinking about the immigrants, yeah. And watching uh, Fox, sorry, Vought News <laughs> Network. Vought News <laughs> Network. <laughs> <laughs> without having a discussion about oh and on the tv it says victoria newman's college dance videos resurface oh. and you catch that the first time oh. <laughs> oh, wait what does it say what does it, it say? says victoria newman's college dance videos resurface get it because <laughs> people always bring up non-substantive criticisms of leaders who are progressive oh no that's <laughs> A direct reference to AOC. That's what I mean. Well, oh, yeah. okay. well, that's. I mean, it's how, like, all kinds of things. The, yeah. the idea being that instead of, like, in Trump's case, Actually some horrible sentence. video where he yeah. says "grab him by the pussy," when you do it to the to the good people, it'll be vi just like, oh, they're dancing. That's oh, oh no, you've certainly got him now. Like a, never mind. Like all of the Can substantive criticisms of people on both subtle, sides. You know? No. Like this happens, Fringy. It doesn't matter if we only represent one tiny portion oh. of reality. It, it, as long as it happens somewhere in some way, that means it's good. 
Which, by and the way, has been the defense from many, many for. people that this scene is good because this can happen. Just imagine then, uh, you're being radicalized by memes. How pathetic of a person you are. <laughs> so <laughs> let me get let me get this moment. I'm just gonna play it for chat. Look at this. Whoa! So a car went past, I assume, and put some light in the clerk's face. This shocks yep. our neckbeard. <laughs> yeah, as he's watching, yeah, as he's watching the uh, the news of um, how apparently she defended Stormfront defended somebody who beat up a homeless immigrant or something. Wait, was it a homeless? Hold on. Oh yeah, a it was, homeless, it was a homeless immigrant. immigrant. <laughs> wow, poor immigrants that are homeless. Jeez. No, they have a home. It's where they fucking came from. That's the thing. Um. So we move them. Well, I mean, we don't know if they're an immigrant or elite. The, it's just the, the homeless the addition to the extra sympathy. A homeless. Im it wasn't just an immigrant. It was a homeless immigrant. Who would beat up a it, homeless you immigrant? You can't help but feel like that's on purpose, right? To make it of as course, overt, overtly evil as possible. Can we just <laughs> you know? appreciate this shot? I love this one. This should be taught in film school. Subtlety. <laughs> Subtlety in <laughs> and he's playing he's playing a video game on Facebook where it's shooting AOC in the face or something. <laughs> oh no, look at him. He's oh, so oh angry. God. He's gonna do it. He's gonna do something. It was funny because uh, the Facebook games radicalized me. Um, I, I think I was, I was talking to Gary about this like all that's missing at this point in the montage is him killing a brown person that's what we need to really complete the image and so yeah. why in the world do you guys think he would do it uh, it's like what, what reason could you come up with uh, you know outside of him saying I've been radicalized into hating brown people he thinks that the glare from the car was actually the guy lighting up his face I guess because he's a soup a disgusting immigrant yeah. soup. And so, what, he wants to what, interrogate this man to discover whether or not he is bulletproof, and he's going to do this by pointing a gun at him. Um, yeah, very smart. There is an issue here. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can spot it. It's yeah, like, so, yeah, yeah, my yeah, yeah. concern is that you're a superhero that's bulletproof, so I'm gonna try and shoot you to stop you. You're like, wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It, it is it is that Simpsons episode. If you're if you're a witch, you'll fly back up here to where we can summarily kill you. And if not, then you'll die and go to heaven. <laughs> so, it's that. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Unbelievable. And so he shoots the guy because he's desperate and crazy. And then he discovers that it turns out he's not bulletproof, and that yeah, makes him because... very sad. Oh man, I flarped it up. <laughs> How <laughs> could <laughs> this happen <laughs> to me? Oh damn. <laughs> People say don't do it, Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> oh my god. God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. This is scene. <laughs> just... <laughs> Goddamn mess. In the top right, from where he dies, there's a screen that says Stormfront condemns fake news. <laughs> <laughs> so this whole scene is a fucking joke. Like, it's so... I, I can't believe it was made. It could only be made by the most dense <laughs> fucking idiots in the world. <laughs> and uh, we knew when we saw this, like, oh, this is gonna send ripples through the, the boys' fan yeah. base. <laughs> <laughs> this is, and I think this has been pointed out, you know, a hundred times over. Like, this is exactly what they thought the Joker was gonna do, and nothing ever happened. Nope. So... <laughs> It's it's like it, but the but the I, I think the the more bizarre thing is one you had people actually rooting for it to happen like they they were like salivating waiting for something bad to happen and when they didn't they were disappointed but even worse than that is like they still they still think that this stuff is gonna happen because someone like looks at a meme it's just. Like, well, it's an interesting, like, sort of view into the mindset of of a certain, you know, some people. Like, this, 
this is a cartoon. Like this, this is so cartoonish. What do you mean? <laughs> Reality. <laughs> Every I, day, I, millions I, of young white males are radicalized hey, by hey, names. Going, young, going to fat, work. hairy you white males. Are you bulletproof? I'm going to check by shooting you. <laughs> it's a Homer Simpson I, thing to do. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did he not even think about this, think this through at all? What was his plan? <laughs> so and stupid. if he was bulletproof, then what do you do? <laughs> no, then you're fucked. Proof that bad memes cause violence. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> See, you gotta make good memes, otherwise people will start hurting each other. Just, I, I think it's it's a, a, the starting scene is a pretty good meme. This was a good meme, it's like... I don't understand but what the fuck they thought was gonna happen. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Poor fat Neil. He's he's fallen yeah, since community. Yeah, fat going to jail now. <laughs> so I guess we should move on. Um... <laughs> We have our scene, so now we've got Lamplighter, and the boys are all together. What's the plan? Well, we get him to the hearing. Alright, great. Uh, so until the hearing happens, we're gonna have to keep him here, I suppose. Meanwhile, yep. uh, where does M.M. go? Because Butcher has to suddenly go and visit his mother, because mm -hmm. inconveniently... Well, so... uh, he. Well, we'll get to that. Uh, I just, what do you want to say? Yeah, so, so what happens is they decide that Lamplighter's testimony alone is not going to be good enough. Right. So... Right. They need more evidence. Um, and this, of course, brings up the question, what happened to all the, the hard drives that they got from the facility? Like, why didn't they, like, just bring them out with them? You know, they probably would have had plenty of evidence there. Or even Lamplighter could have, like, gone back and grabbed some paperwork. I mean, at this point, Vought doesn't know that Lamplighter has flipped. So at any point, he could just go back and, like, get evidence. Damn, and then I didn't even think about that. And then bring it back and like, oh, well, my testimony isn't good enough. Here's here's a hard drive with like 18 terabytes worth of... And this you know, facility filled with yeah. a bunch of superheroes who are being experimented on and all exactly. dead. Yeah. Um, or they could, you know, go and get pictures of like mm -hmm. all the stuff that happened. So this is just creating a situation where it, his isn't good enough and they need to go and get someone else. So... Um, Mother's Milk and Not Greg go to uh, see Vogelbaum, mm -hmm. um, and this is when Butcher goes to uh, visit his mother um, with well, the jetpack. Pretty convenient. Well, man. yeah. So <laughs> yeah. let's do the structure of this episode. It fucking, it was you and you and I, right, Rex? We were watching this, or was it three of us? Um, I was it definitely was... there too. Because we we guessed, Why? yeah, I think it was us three, right? Because Metal couldn't make yeah, it. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, I would, we, I would um, we guessed the entire structure after the first five minutes. We were like, so everyone's going to be unable to prevent Huey from going on a stupid adventure to Vort Tower. They will successfully get Starlight out, but it will kill Lamplighter. But it because will kill Lamplighter. That will be yeah. really sad and unfortunate. If only we knew. If only we knew what they actually wanted to do. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and so... As a writer, you'd be like, well, how do we get everybody away from Huey? It's like, well, you send everybody to go and get vocal bombs, uh, like, authorization to, to come along, and Butcher is distracted by his... His mum wants him to see his dad in a weakened state so that he can stop... No, no. Feel no, no, this is right. She wants him to feel as though... Uh, he hasn't. He's like he's not powerful. He shouldn't shadow over him. But she tells him in order to get him there that the dad's dead. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's the but, whole um, plot line. Yeah. And of Crazy course, it sets uh, it sets him in a position of like I don't want to create another. Like this is why he doesn't want to look after the kid at the end of the show, right? Because he doesn't want to end up creating another himself by have, being a yeah. shitty dad. Be like his dad, because all dads are bad in Hollywood. <sighs> Surprising uh, pattern in the show. A lot of, lot of. Uh, you you think maybe that like it was a great opportunity? Maybe they'll still do it in season three to have Butcher and the kid. Well, that's you know? what I thought they would do because it was such an interesting setup. But we, they wanted the reset. Yeah, they and just reset. he didn't start with a kid, so he ain't getting one. So what anyway, a, what a great opportunity wasted. Yeah, yeah. having like actually, you know, you. Uh, I thought that we we were ha we were cool with our old grizzled man and son stories, you know, God of War. Um, I guess The Last of Us won, even though that isn't a son. I guess 
<laughs> I, guess, I guess that's probably it. I can't think of any other ones. I'm sure there are. Um, <laughs> the interesting thing is we're just going to knock this out. We'll knock out all the B-plots before the main one, so... Them going to Vogelbaum is a waste of a scene, because... Butcher just does the exact same thing as they do, but he uh, boosted on top by saying, yeah, so if you don't, I'll just kill people you love. Um, yeah. Rendering their visit just time sink. But the funny part is that he even let Butcher in, and that he has no security, and that Butcher has no leverage the second he leaves the place. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, why wouldn't he just immediately contact Vought and say, I need myself and my family to get taken out of here blah 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 like yeah Vol will protect the shit out of him surely assume, given given the the size of the mansion that he lives in i would have to assume that vogelbaum is fairly wealthy and would mm -hmm. be able oh, to yeah. do all this himself like he could just pay for everybody in his family to just pop smoke and and go somewhere else but you see they can't do anything to butcher because he might release a photo of a child online <laughs> Oh, and that'll destroy God. everything to do with Vought somehow. You know what might be worse than that? Homelander convincing the child to leave the fucking place. <laughs> that could be yeah. worse, I don't know. It's fine, you'll get bored. So, but, uh, yeah, that covers... So that's one of the B-plots, right? That's so that, that covers a lot of dad, the episode and, already, yeah. yeah. Another... That is, and then I guess... Uh... Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, so the ones we have remaining would be Maeve's... Starlight. Um... Homelanders and his sons and Starlights. Yeah, those are the three. We'll knock them out next, I guess. Which one do you want first? Well, because Ma Maeve's is really easy. So, um, his her girlfriend is like, "Oh, this is the real you, and it's shit." And so she leaves, and Maeve is now just completely detached. As She's very usual. depressed. And this will play into yeah. her attitude in the following episode. We'll pick that up. Oh, and also <laughs> she, yeah, but uh, but her, she is relevant to the main plot, but later, I guess. Right. Yeah. Um. Um. Homelander's, so, oh god, it's the scene where she's like, hey, do you watch PewDiePie? Uh, it's uh, like, oh. <laughs> god, I wonder, if, I wonder if there was any ill intent behind that reference. I'm, I feel like that one was, I, I honestly think that's coincidental. I think they were just like, oh, PewDiePie, that's like They're a, just uh, a boomer's YouTuber. making a show. Um, Kids like yeah. Well, yeah, there are two interpretations then. One is that that's a popular YouTube totally. personality that yeah. someone might watch. Two is, remember how PewDiePie gets constantly shat on for being a secret Nazi? A yeah. gateway, yeah. Gateway so, YouTuber. Yeah. as an audience member, you can take whichever one you feel is more overtly being done. Uh, I'd be willing to accept that it was a coincidence, but man, think you'd so. think they'd have the foresight. No, never what? mind. I'm not going to finish that sentence. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Um, <laughs> and so I guess, yeah, Starlight. So she goes to visit her mum. Oh who has god, this fucking food. scene, dude. Yeah, and so then, uh, I think what, it, yeah, Black Noir just sort of jumps in and <laughs> knocks her out. So where do we um, begin with this? Uh, why would you agree to meet your mum? Why? Yeah. You know she's connected to Vought and you're currently on the run from Vought, you fucking idiot. Yeah. This is a terrible also, risk. Also, they're meeting in a public place where everybody would recognize yeah. that. Yep, that again. The, just add I, that oh, on to our no, tally, it's I suppose. Great. It's pretty great how uh, Black Noir jumps in as soon as the information lets slip that uh, he might actually be coming. You know, it's like, it's it's the, it's the cliche, oh, bad, th oh, here's, here's a potential bad thing, and then the bad thing immediately happens after they address well, it. Yeah, it takes her like ages to ask about Vought. It, it comes out of the mum by accident, right? She's like, oh, Vought okayed yeah, it's, this. It's a, it's, a, it is, it's a nice little Freudian slip. It's so beyond stupid. Like, what are you thinking? You, you, yeah. Why would you? And then, of course, yeah, so the building comes down, and Black Noir hits her with... Something that would clearly not be able to knock her out. Because no, she's incredibly strong. Her. But they just cut away and she's knocked out and she's taken to a prison. Speaking of getting knocked out, when they throw in the little gas canister, like, everyone is immediately and instantly yeah. knocked <laughs> Like, the, they, they, they don't even breathe it in yet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gas. If you look at it, it knocks you out. Very potent gas. Yeah, it's, it's pretty absurd. Yeah, they literally all just Black fall over. <laughs> That's some funny shit. Can't believe Black Noir sitting women. It's fucked up. Yeah, that is fucked up, Black Noir. Um, and yeah, this is the episode where we were left baffled by the fact that apparently Starlight can't use electricity. Like, she needs the electricity to, uh... 
Well, yeah, we we, we uh, blame talked about it earlier. Just that it was clear yeah, in, in the yeah. cast scenes yeah, where they six. established this as an as an issue. It was just like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. But it was something that we never thought. And yeah, oh. I, I was exactly like you, where it was. I assumed that the reason why the lights would flicker was just because she was using her powers, not because yeah, she was it was like, an effect of her powers. Yeah, I didn't think that she was like Cole from Infamous, where she has to suck the electricity <laughs> out of objects. Um, so what? What's the power source for the lights inside of the room, though? Yeah, because like, it's green. green. You're right. Ironically, like, I have no... Fu- <laughs> Dude, uh, Gary problem? let me know about this. If you check the x-ray, it says, like, those ones can't be juiced for her. It's like, oh, okay. Please. Oh, All right. Please, let me see. It's, it's just, it's so just, is this still they, made they, for her? They say it like, it, like that's just how it works. Yeah, like, this is oh, what okay. it says. No yeah. power! These glow sticks don't have the energy Starlight needs to activate her super-powered energy blasts. So, also, oh, thanks. Um, do these people not understand how how buildings are made? So first of all, <laughs> Starlight is a relatively new person, and to my knowledge, no one else at Vought or in the Seven has ever had any kind of superpower that required them to be able to draw electricity. So... You're telling me that every single wall within, I don't know, like 50 feet doesn't have a single power cord running through those walls? Right. Yeah. Uh, Why are they allowed to have prison cells of that kind? I mean, this bot is allowed to do whatever they want. Yeah, Vault can do that. That's that's cool with me. The the silly part is that they put her in a room that has the potential to be lit up like a fucking Christmas tree. It's like, why would you do that? Um, if the room is designed to keep people in it, like, why would you have an emergency light that shines inside it? Like, why would... There are... Mm-hmm. What yeah. in the world? And then, of course, it's like, they describe it as super strong. She can blast it open with one hit from her tism power. Yeah. And and as some people have highlighted that even if the light is off where the, the electricity comes from up there, she should be able to draw power out of it. Like this. this well, yeah, just... because it's connected to the building. Yeah, so it's, yeah. none of this makes any fucking sense at all. And you can tell that the only reason she's put in here is to break out because they need to kill Lamp Light. Oh, I, uh-oh. So you know how uh, the reason why she gets out is because a siren goes off above her head, and then that's how she gets the electricity? If that mm-hmm. is connected to a power source, you can just pull the electricity from it anyway. That's literally or not almost word for word what I just said. Oh, sorry, I didn't. I totally didn't get that. I don't so, know how that happened. I totally <laughs> didn't get that that's what you said. Okay, so in, in fairness, it depends on it depends on where the switch is, right? Sure. Because, like, if, if just because you have a light bulb in your ceiling doesn't mean that there's electricity constantly going to the ceiling. If you have a wall switch, and it's going to trip, you know, it's going to sever the connection at the wall. So there isn't, there shouldn't be any live juice going up to the light until you make that connection, right? Um, but even then, it, it doesn't matter if those particular lights don't have any juice. There are, I mean, you can flip to it right now. There's literally dozens and dozens of lights outside in the hallway, not even like 20 feet away. On top yeah. of that, she uses her powers to like blast a hole in the door, but couldn't she just like punch it? I mean, she she's been shown to be able to punch through concrete and like you would have to assume that if the door is reinforced to the extent where a super powerful <laughs> character can't punch through it, wouldn't these little zap zap jubilee blasts not be able to get through it either? That's embarrassing right? shit, man. That light that's clearly like a meter away. <laughs> like, whoops. Um, I like, like so, someone said, by the way. The car and she's not touching the car. Someone said, by the way, that the, these are writers. They're not electricians. I, They're not writers. I mean, they guess they're technically writers. I mean, so, uh, right, look, it out. look at that! It's literally touching the wall. Okay, just want to <laughs> just want to say just want to say when Batwoman tries to give someone CPR because they've bled out, that's good writing because they're not doctors. They're not doctors. Yes. Um, Fucking hell! <laughs> you can't do this. Do at least like the most Some research minuscule amount of research, please. Emergency lights use alternators to light up. They are constantly powered and lit up when the power is turned off. Well, there you go then. So even then, there's still going to be power in there. There's many ways this fails. <laughs> so it's <laughs> like, oh well. And the funny part is, I guess that's closer to the main plot line because, well, we'll we'll come back. 
Um, but then the next scene is uh, like three minutes of porn jokes. Um, and the general oh, well, trivia says very that fun. it's called Home Banger, Red, White, and Anal was a wildly successful cuckold video produced in 2015 with more than 500 million downloads to date. What a, Red, what White, and Anal? Trivia. Yeah, that's yeah. the name of the video that's that they're clever. watching. Yeah, I know. Do no. you know people have actually put out like requests <laughs> for the full versions of those scenes to be released Makes like the sense. ones that the, the ones that the, the the adult scenes that were shown like very briefly on the TV in the show like people have been requesting that those actually get like fully released like the entire completed scenes um, uh, someone in chat said they've got electricians on set <laughs> yeah they would have yeah. had electricians yeah, on set yeah. to make the set <laughs> um, um and then the next scene is uh, where Homelander and uh, St Stormfront are doing their little rally, and they do the thoughts and prayers meme, which is another telltale sign of bad writing. Like all bad shows seem to do the thoughts and prayers joke. It's because it's, really it's easy, isn't it? It's like, smart. isn't it dumb yeah. how people say thoughts and prayers? Isn't that dumb? Guys, yeah, give me likes. Like, yeah, it likes. is dumb. We all know this. <laughs> um... It's it's yeah. I mean, it's it's very it's very blatant, like anti-Christian mm -hmm. nonsense, and. I don't think it's anti-Christian. I don't well, know if it's anti- I would say it's more just like, it's just a thing that people observe. Yeah, it's, and it's well, not, yeah, but, so, yeah. the thing is, is it, like, it, it originates, it's not, you know, it's not exclusively Christian, to be sure, but, like, the, the, yeah, it's overused, to be sure. People, people put it on social media because they want attention. But the fact of the matter is, is, like, they're, they're religious people. When they say, you know, thoughts and prayers, like, they genuinely mean it. Like, you know, if someone like Mike Pence or something says, you know, thoughts and prayers, like, you can you can guarantee that he's going to take, like, a minute out of his time to quite literally stop, do whatever he's doing, and to make a prayer. Like, that is where... I don't it, care, though. Yeah, but the thing is, is, like, the point is, is that people, people do this... Um, out of a genuine position of faith, and whether you believe, I don't or care not, though. No, wait, yeah, but, should, but he's not. That's not right. That's not the point he's making. He's so if the show is making fun of people for being non-genuine about it when yeah. they are, th th that would be what. But the thing is, there are people who aren't genuine about it. So the show is able to take that market. shot. It's just that it's like a I think, shot I think that it's is taken by is everyone. Thoughts and prayers is, is a is a platitude that often rings hollow. Yeah, because it, once yeah, enough people not, said it, even if they were being genuine, a lot of people just echo it when they've got nothing else they want to say. Like, oh, this bad thing the happened. Fact that it is, the fact that it's the same configuration of words, I think, is the problem. Everybody yeah, said thoughts Christians and prayers. Marking, right? yeah, thoughts and prayers. Platitude. It's always in that order. <laughs> it's weird. Um... So yeah, like, yeah. It, and whenever a show does it, like to make fun of people, I'm just like, yeah, good job, good for you. It's just unoriginal. It's dull. It is a pretty like even Red Letter job. Media does it, and Bojack <laughs> everyone did it. does it. Bojack did a whole episode on it. It was isn't, isn't the episode called for? Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. <laughs> that did they go in the episode it. you showed me? Oh, ah, yeah. uh, no, that was a different oh. one. I, was like, <laughs> I don't sure? think the gun control I, one is I thoughts think... and prayers, is it, or is it? No, 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 no it's. it's they, I think they mock that in it. Oh, the, maybe the, the fake panderiness because they're like, oh, oh no, another shooting, and then they type on their phones. Yeah, I think maybe. you're right. I think you're right. So did actually. they double dip that one? I think so. Yeah. Oh no. Um, um, in that same exact scene, they actually do. They do an orange man bad because that's when I think it's Stormfront who says, uh, "Make America safe again." <laughs> <laughs> So, it's the Ronald but, Reagan or but, something. <laughs> but here, here's the thing: like, like in that very same scene, if you look in the, um, if you look in the general trivia, they actually uh, have something about um, SJWs. So, wild, wait, wait, so wait a minute. <laughs> they do. They say it's like a pejorative against people that are something, something social justice. I forget exactly. Oh. Um, oh, oh, yeah. It says uh, SJW was an acronym for the pejorative term social justice warrior. That's the general yeah. trivia. So while they are essentially insulting other people and, and mocking the faith of others, they're also I don't playing... think that's what they're doing. I, I, I mean, I that's I definitely think that there's no mistake that that's what they're doing. They're mocking. But didn't they do like the episode, the one after where they they said that like Starlight had rediscovered her religion, you know? Faith yeah, or yeah. Something? 
I think they're just so, mocking uh, the fact that people say that as an empty platitude. Yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah. people who don't even believe in any particular faith will no, say thoughts and prayers. What what I what I think they're doing is they're mocking they're mocking people who genuinely use that in their faith because they like you don't believe that it has any meaning that they think that it, because it's because they don't have that faith because they don't believe in it because they think that it's worthless that's why they're mocking it and in in effect they are mocking the religion at the same time i, I, I don't stretch. know i don't think i don't think that's not a, i don't think that's a stretch at all i mean you look at what hollywood does like every single thing that they do um like it's it's always Anytime they depict a Christian, it's always in negative. In the first season of the show, they like they had the the camp where every single person there was like depicted as being some like ultra zealot bigot type person. Like they, it's it's very obvious what they're doing, and they're mocking it because yeah, that they think because they well even in this one like and they do it in the next one too. They they are like talking, they they frame it positively that Starlight has rediscovered her faith. Yeah, like, seriously, that, I yeah, honestly, that, they're I targeting, the as yeah. far as I can say, they're targeting people who use empty platitudes, and that's one of the most commonly used, like, used ones as an example. Again, this could they're be... You're I'm tipping my fedora too hard. Like, what part of this is me tipping my <laughs> fedora? <laughs> I, it's, it's like, I think I have pretty good references here. I mean, I like I said, people who aren't even a part of any faith will say it, and... Uh, well, a lot of people say it because, Yeah, like, it's, it's like a meme I now, think, because uh, of how I common think, it is. Yeah. I almost feel like uh, thoughts and prayers, the word prayers in that connotation, almost at this point doesn't even refer good to wishes, the literal essentially. act of praying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, um, like I pray to God or something. You, you know, when you say, like, an expression, it doesn't necessarily mean you're sitting down and, you know, pants And, like, it is, like you have to admit, it's weird that if you want to make the claim the show is very anti-religion, which, by the way, there are references for, it does have oh, a yeah. character regain their faith. So, like, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that starlight regained her faith at all like that she does she didn't she doesn't regain her faith she she like didn't she say that she thinks god it, exists it, because uh butcher did something good i'm pretty sure it is like literally yeah she puts she on the god exists uh, because butcher did a good thing across what, and everything what they do with with starlight essentially is they have her reject her faith and then find a new more palatable version of it is essentially what happens. So we're right. Hold on. Yeah, I, I, mean, need to, I need to. I need to skip. No, no, no because she's not. She's, she's, not re, she's not finding her faith. She's just twisting it to find something that is agreeable. Like she's not. She just says, she's, there's probably a, She's got to be something else out there more than us, and she puts on the cross yeah. around her neck. But again, so that's, that's part of being acceptance of like specifically the religion that she grew up with. You think, right? Which is Christianity of some sort, some denomination. I guess I'm just saying, well, like, I don't think that uh, I don't think that the thoughts and prayers is the criticism of it is based on religion. I think it's based on the broader idea that it's a platitude that oftentimes doesn't mean a lot. Yeah, I think if it was only used in a purely meaningful or not meaningful but like an earnest way it wouldn't be used in this context because it's mocking people using it because it's become a meme that people do that in place of anything or they say that and they act as if they've actually done something and yeah, that's and what I agree. mocking i totally agree with you completely agree with you but uh, it's it's still it still seems very clear that the the major mocking of it the, like if you look on on twitter and other social media and stuff. The primary mocking of it is not as that it has become a general platitude. It, it's that it doesn't do anything because, haha, your God doesn't exist. Like but that, they specifically use the platitude here. It's very specific. It's the phrase "thoughts and prayers" that's being mocked. I, I, mean, I, I don't think like that that's the phrase platitude. being used specifically. I, I, I again, yeah, I, I understand that, but it's not. It's not that they're they're mocking the platitude of it. They're mocking the the symbolism of it, and they're using it in the over generic platitude manner. Like that's how people mock it on social media. Like right, like when something bad happens, and uh, you know they they want to mock it. They're going to to say oh thoughts and prayers. That's how they do it. But like the the intent, the initial intent 
is to mock the faith of those that genuinely believe it. But regardless of any of that stuff, the whole yeah, I don't think so. Regardless of any of that stuff, in this very scene, you have the the clear mockery of 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 various groups and even Orange Man Bad. But at the very same time, in the general trivia, you have playing the victim card. Like, even though they are attacking and insulting other people that they disagree with or that they don't like or whatever, um, they're still pretending like they are the victim for being labeled an SJW. And that's in the general trivia. It doesn't show it in the, the actual show itself, but... It is a pejorative, though, right? Like, even yeah. though I... It is definitely a It is used as a pejorative, yeah, way. against people yeah. who are shitty people, generally, and do terrible things or have terrible actions. Whether yeah. or not, Yeah, whether or not it's a pejorative that should be used, or whether or not it's an accurate one is different to whether or not it is a pejorative. It is. Um, I don't mean, and, again, and um, plus, I don't know how much I want to use trivia against them, you know, like, also, the, in, in the regards stuff again to outside of the show. The reason is the thoughts and prayers, and then it couldn't be considered strictly anti-religion, would be because when someone, let's say the school is shot up, saying like oh you have my thoughts people are like oh, and also oh, oh, uh, hang on chill out uh, so it's like oh, sorry, people people saying oh you 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 know not offering any particular tangible aid rather they they put out a tweet saying you have so, my thoughts and prayers it's not necessarily anti-religion i've never seen it that way i've always yeah, I've seen, never it as, seen it used as an anti-religion thing so it's like, anti like, the sentiment of thoughts and prayers religion being used religion don't have so again, they, hang on like, so the religion don't have a full control over they, they have prayers sure but they don't have thoughts and so any normal person can say, you have my thoughts. And they're making fun of that as well. It's not strictly religion. It can't be. People say thoughts and prayers all the time about anything. You see it everywhere. It's a very good on-the-surface thing to say in terms of if you're going to interpret it in good faith. It's like, oh, that's, that's kind of you. The fact that I'm on your mind and you're going to pray for, for me to be better off. But a lot of people see it as a cop-out. You don't actually care. You're saying this just because you can't come up with anything else to say. Not and, your religion and, and is bullshit. It. Like that's rarely I, ever been the sentiment that I've detected. I agree with you, but still, the primary, the primary, and and the the major um, mockery originates from the idea that your your prayer is is irrelevant and it doesn't do anything. And if you don't believe that it works, then that's fine. It, you know, whatever to each his own. But the fact of the matter is, is when when people are genuinely offering that. Um, they are making an appeal to who they believe is the most powerful being in, in the universe. And whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. They believe that it's true, and they are making a genuine attempt to uh, make an appeal on behalf of someone else. And this is where, see, this is where the, the thing comes in, because you have people, oh, well, that doesn't do anything. Okay, that's fine. You, you can believe that. But again, it just becomes the mockery of the faith. Like, haha, you're praying, you're an idiot that doesn't doing anything kind of stuff, right? So, yeah, and so like, I, anyway, what we're saying like, is... I don't want to drag this out too much, but like... Um, well, it's just fine, we're like, having a conversation. So I don't believe there's enough yeah, references to prove that. I think if you were going to say that's the sentiment of like episode five in season one, I would completely agree with you. I'd be like, yeah, they're trying to shaft uh, religion hardcore in this episode. Yeah, clearly. But with with that reference there, I'd be like, no, I think they're just gunning for people who have empty platitudes. Yeah, I think so too. Um, that's, I that's think really... so because it, I think one of the key things is like the delivery, right? The, and it's one of the key deliveries every time somebody does this joke. It's like, yes, thoughts and prayers. Like it's this really quick thing that they just throw out. And yeah, then they every time I've seen it referenced, thing. that's how it's done. Yeah. Whereas mm -hmm. I, I feel like you know, if if there was actually an instance of somebody saying like, uh, my thoughts and prayers, and then they actually went over, sat down, and prayed that this show would not make fun of that, I don't think that I don't think that I don't believe that that's something that they do. I mean, I've seen that sort of thing like constantly on social media. Any anytime something happens, and you see, um. You see uh, someone like, uh, you know, an, an account like Ted Cruz or Mike Pence or whoever, right? Pick, 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 pick whoever. They, you know, they'll say they offer their thoughts and prayers for someone else. And then you just see, like, there's always going to be lots of replies saying, you're an idiot, your man in the sky doesn't exist, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's the mockery that I'm talking about. Like, it's not, it's not based on the platitude. It's based on the fact that they're, they're just outright insulting 
the the person who has that faith. And again, you can think that it's worthless or, or irrelevant or whatever, but it doesn't matter because that person is making a genuine, sincere attempt and an appeal to who they believe um, is a force capable of 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 making change. And um, again, you so might believe- Can we not apply this to SJWs? What's that? Can we not apply this to SJWs? Because they really believe in their heart of hearts that what they're doing is good. I mean, they believe it. It's it's real to them. It's very earnest and very sincere. Oh well, I think I think so we have an issue the, with SJWs. I, 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 think, uh, um, I think the more pertinent thing I guess here is like I don't want to pull from uh I, what other people you know like for instance somebody who derides thoughts and prayers may well be deriding religiousness you know like theism or anything like that yeah. as well but like i don't want to apply that to this specific context in this show what yeah, other people specific on the internet do like other people may well do that um but i don't know that that applies to this specific instance in this show is kind of i, I would I'm say at. i would say there is there is no doubt that given the other things including the scene that we literally just saw with the the joker analogy type thing uh, there is no doubt in my mind that the intent behind this remark and the other ones related to it are meant as mockery. Like there's, like there's, there's just too much of a pattern. If it was like a one-off, then I would say okay, sure. But when you have like this much stuff being repeated ad nauseum, um, and and in such a blunt way, like I just can't, I can't. I can't like put aside the the idea that like yeah this this is what they're doing like they're trying to be insulting they're trying to be mockering. But anyways, yeah, like I said, I believe they do do that at certain points. I'm not convinced on this one. Uh, I don't think the references are strong uh, enough. Yeah. I think that appealing Definitely not convinced appealing to the broad sense that they're making like that Hollywood hate Christianity or that this show hates Christianity is like that's fine, but that doesn't prove the point. Like, I, I don't necessarily disagree with that. Also, a lot of people are citing, like, th that we're hardcore atheisting right now. It has nothing to do with our arguments. I so just don't think that it. this show, in this specific instance, is making fun of religion. I think it's making fun of the platitudes that people give. That's yeah. all. Yeah, that's, that's that's all we fucking said. But everyone's, like, up in arms that we're, we're shitting on Christianity. It's like, No, guys. no, they're up in arms again. They're, they're shitting all over me. Oh well, yeah. else is okay. <laughs> They're just fucking admit, shitting all over me. It's, it's it's really weird that they've like hyper targeted rags when Fringy and I have said the exact. We completely agree with rags. Like the, this I is... have to be. I have to be completely honest with you right now. I am genuinely surprised that people are agreeing with me in the chat because I would I would have expect to be. Uh, well, because like, they would rather believe that than believe it was just a a, a conversation on platitudes. I I think. Because the, they see a lot of persecution for faith with religious uh, Hollywood products, which, by the way, I'm I'm not against that idea. I think that is true to a degree. Like I said, season one, blatant as fuck with that yeah, shit. It was very However, blatant. making fun of people saying thoughts and prayers as a definitive attack on the people of faith, saying that they what they believe in is nonsense. I'd be like, oh, I think you're drawing more out of that than what they're probably aiming for, which is platitudes. That's what I interpret. I don't see enough evidence for the uh, the opposite. True, but yeah, I would say that it's a continuation. It. I would say that it's a continuation of of a a, a sequence of of other uh, stuff, and they even do it again in the next episode. There's another joke about thoughts and prayers. Is that, anyway, I don't remember that one. Yeah, we can, uh, yeah, but... we, can, we can we can continue though because I think uh, I think we. It's been thoroughly explored. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the, who the says that? I think is. Uh, I think it's Stormfront who says it, right? I think it was yeah. Homelander, actually. Or was it Homelanders? Stormfront? All right. Well, oh, are, are they both religious? I... Stormfront almost I, certainly I, is if she's well, a Nazi. I, I, the Homelander thing is, is, we don't yeah. know. All right, well is, then. Is Homelander mm. actually religious, though? Like, I know he did the religious I thing. I don't, I don't know, know if he is. is. No. Yeah, he I might just—he might up. play it. He might play that card. I think he plays it up. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think he actually is. Well, so, someone said, "Why would we not believe they're doing it for the reasons we've seen them do it before?" It's like because that's not how proof works. It's not yeah. how motivation <laughs> works. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, this is. It, Let me see. I want it's to a very just, specific like, instance that we don't think it says Frank's, anything more than it does. Frank kills someone because they killed his wife or something, and then he kills another person a year later. I don't automatically go, "Wow, you killed Rags' wife too." That would be fucking stupid. 
you mean? So there are plenty of reasons they can involve each of these things. We were discussing them. Like, I love how much people like oh, move on. It's fun. like chill the fuck out. We're having a chat. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I, I, people are really fucking. Don't worry. God's apparently really powerful. He doesn't need you to fucking be on his side. I think he'll be all right. He the idea kills. that in seven hours and forty minutes we're on one topic you don't like. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oh, don't bring up him. Oh, he'll get really defensive about that guy. So let's but, talk about uh, Jesus. But, but it, it was, uh, oh, it was no, 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 no. Checkmate Christians, uh, thoughts and prayers isn't religious, confirmed on EFAP. <laughs> I don't remember yes, us saying was... that. Um, Fuck me. I, I just checked, by the way. It, yeah, it was Stormfront, and it wasn't, uh, I obviously miss. yeah, it, she's, she says it like, yeah, thoughts and prayers go out to, you know, such and such, and they're going to be making a donation. That's basically how it plays out in the scene. Even in the episode, if, so, if they're religious and they're saying it because they're being earnest, that's weird that they do it with these characters. If they're not being earnest and they're saying that in a religious oh, sense, oh, then what we're um, saying is correct. So, actually, so uh, I'm listening to the scene. There's a line that's interesting where um, Homelander says um, that the godless in human supervillains started pouring across our borders. Hmm. That was like the oh, and also he mentions one nation under God as well. It's yeah, because we, but we're <laughs> trying to figure out <laughs> is that yeah. something he really believes oh. or is he just playing it up? Well, I I don't think he believes it. I've he, no, I don't he, think he does he's either. Playing, he's playing it up, but I also want to point out that this again goes back to Kit and Hitler where Kit um, Kit where Kit Hitler. <laughs> again because we I mean we've seen this many many times like there's they they take something and then they try to associate it with with bad people therefore they make make the connection that like in the simplistic you know whatever uh, way of thinking you know this is bad Oh, excuse me, this is okay, but Homelander thinks it's good, and Homelander's bad, therefore it's bad. So, like, you can say this with the memes, you can say this with um, uh, whatever the other stuff that they were doing, Stormfront was doing throughout the entire season. And you can also do it with this. Like, it... I, I get what you mean in the sense that, of, like, the, so, the thing of the show's commentary being so overt, and, like, yeah. the, the crack that it follows makes it hard not to read into a lot of stuff. Sure. But, um... I do think that in in because I mean, for instance, they use the word SJW like unironically in like Stormfront. Like that woman does, like, yeah. yeah. It's used in the same way, like, like every time in these shows. It's just one of those things that slaps me out, but also reminds me that this is all pulled from like internet discourse. Um, and I think that it, yeah, in that con, yeah. I think at the beginning of the show, the writers had like this big list of things where like on a whiteboard somewhere they're like stuff that's bad and then they just have like everything and they have like stormfront and homelander keep doing like let's make fun of disabled people let's you know have memes we're gonna have you know the the <laughs> egalitarianism like you know the the religious stuff like all these different things like you know um they're bad so we're gonna make stormfront and homelander do them and then by association our viewers will think that these things are bad as well. I mean, it's such a such a transparent tactic. Like, you know, if if you want to to sway someone's opinion, you have to do it in in a slightly more subtle and um, you, you know welcoming kind of manner. But I mean, this just seems uh, like well, it's I so. Mean, in in general, I would advocate that uh, in terms of writing in general, that I don't know that I think that it's wise to in general try and specifically push a uh, a point um or, oh, or more specifically I, like a hyper what's that sorry oh i agree with you completely but the show creators are dumb and they're doing oh, well, it. yeah i guess uh i guess what i mean is like i tend to find that uh in the stories that i like if there's a point that's trying to be made it's usually some really fundamental uh principle or like moral or some kind of you know like it, instead of being this hyper specific these specific political talking points are bad it's usually like so here's like a good method for approaching a, a situation or a good method for uh dealing with life or like some kind of or if they are going to talk about you know political things not necessarily giving an answer but trying to explore the topics earnestly and debate them and have them go up against one another i just think that that's generally a better way to approach writing because oh well, yeah, because you know, plenty of people will yeah. feel as though you've just shat on them 
just because you must hate them. Specifically. There's no uh, ultimate point you're trying to make, or balanced point you're trying to make. Well, it's just, um, it, you know, if, if a story's, if, if, like, stories are meant to try and explore ideas, like, exploring is very different from telling somebody, you know, what, and of course, you know, if, when you're telling somebody what you think versus telling somebody what to think, I think are, uh, uh, quite different as well. Yeah, but um, exactly. And, and and I agree with you entirely. And that, like, that's a, a, a uh, I think. Yeah, that's a, I, I just think right. people don't like being Hollywood doesn't do that through. anymore. Hollywood doesn't well, do it that. it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel that way a lot of the time. Like, it feels like uh, you're being crossed This is how you should think. This is how you should think. And if you don't, you're wrong. Like, that's basically it. Well, yeah, though. But it, yeah, if, if someone's advocating that you should think a certain way, then of course, if you don't think that, then they do think you're wrong. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I guess it's it's the idea that um, you know, like it it's it's it tends to be fr and it's funny, right? Because like whether or not I agree with a particular branch of politics, I tend to be pretty frustrated where the social yeah. commentary is just so limp. And, well, and it's because like, they're just stating it, and it's on the nose, and yeah, it's yeah. Blunt, and it's TLJ it was like, look at these people well, who've benefited from a free market. Dab them. But it's like, okay. <laughs> 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 benefited from the free market i mean it's more than just like okay you're you're wrong you know i disagree with you like it's it's if you don't if you don't agree then you are the worst person to ever exist and everything about you is bad like well, this show can certainly color people like that in that light and go to the extreme onto it definitely one of the negatives right. of the yeah. show is how like, like how this episode started is just off the rails crazy. <laughs> we were where you just have to laugh at it because of how ridiculous it is. Like, you know how well, 1984 isn't actually all that obvious about who it's trying to um, well, like, tell you to watch out for? How it actually applies to a broad swath of people? Yeah, you know, you're right. All kinds of different political persuasions. You both know? sides will appeal to that being the other side. They'll be like, you're doing 1980. He's like, no, you, no, you. And it's like a big fight over, I guess, which is helpful for, for the person who made the book <laughs> so that they can be enjoyed by both teams. Um, But yeah, so, uh, wait. Oh, the next scene is the, is the next scene the one where Lamplighter now wants to leave and go uh, and cause problems for this entire well, episode? Well, I think one extra was... contrivance is that they happen to catch a news report saying that Starlight has been captured. Starlight is now an enemy of the state or something. Like, yeah. Another no matter... convenient news bulletin. Yeah, like if Lamplighter they... doesn't actually want to go. He Huey has no, to, like... Yeah. To... Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, but... yeah, you're right. Yeah. But had but they, they kept watching porn, there. it wouldn't have worked out. <laughs> just saying. This is a message yeah. that you shouldn't watch porn, or at least interrupt your porn watching and check the news. You might catch something important. At Can least my one? porn has a happy ending and the news is all fucking depressing. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, we could probably do this relatively fast, because he, he convinces Lamplighter to go. Do we even, should we even comment really on this With this really weird scene? speech about cucking and everything. It's, oh, there's say, lots uh, of... Yes. Times in this episode. Yeah. So they say, cringe. yeah, they say cuck a whole bunch. Uh, so uh, the scene um, with Butcher and, then, and his dad, I don't know if we should even... <laughs> uh, I mean, I... Yeah, I don't know what to make of that whole thing. It's nice to see Denethor. Uh, um... We find out that Lenny, Lenny killed himself, I think, and yes. Butcher's mad and he blames his father. Yeah. And his father Probably kind of rightfully him. so. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Based on what we know about him. Well, yeah, I mean, the only point being made here, seemingly, is that this puts off... Uh, butcher from ever wanting to be a dad, I think, because he thinks he'd fuck up his kid. Yeah, which is a little bit annoying to have it be the episode before the important yes. moment where that's tested. You yeah, know I mean? they <laughs> oh, they time this setup right before the payoff. Well, they time up every setup about forty minutes before the payoff. No, it's really frustrating. the almond joy was set up episodes before the payoff, like two. Oh man, yeah. something that isn't really yeah. that important at all. <laughs> they set up. But this critical, fundamental character development comes 40 minutes before it's important. Um, um, but yeah, then uh, there's another scene where Homelander and uh, Stormfront go visit uh, the kid. Yeah, we've, we, yeah we, we haven't really gone on to that plotline. That just ends with him getting kidnapped by Homelander, but like willingly, yeah, so yeah, not really kidnapping, but, but you know what I mean. Pretty, pretty. And then yeah, Maeve stuff, which I don't care about. 
Um, and then uh, what what else is happening? Oh, French uh, and Kimiko, they start learning the language. Yes, they start learning at seven episodes this after what, he discovered If it, it hasn't it, become yeah. clear already, we can skip so much of what happens in these episodes, which is, again, yeah. what I think people felt like this season was filled with air rather than... Yeah, which well, is concerning. Yeah. So um, when this is eight episodes. It, Go ahead. It, I think there's only really two things left in this episode, which is... Uh, Lamp watch, Lighter killing himself. Lamp Lighter the killing himself, the thing. Um, yeah, the and head, then the, uh, the heads. Um, and that's really it. Although, I, God, it it's so stupid how Lamp Lighter gets inside the <laughs> thing again. Again, like, uh, they lampshade yeah. it, I believe is the term. They point out how dumb this is, but that doesn't help how dumb it is. <laughs> so no, it's... well, I'm, I'm talking about even before the elevator. Like, there's the oh. gigantic door-sized vent without a fan behind it. <laughs> Why? Well, wait, didn't didn't he say uh, he and um, he, he and someone to, else yeah, had it installed? Yeah. Man used to sneak girls in there, but it still doesn't explain why there wouldn't be a fan behind the giant door-sized vent. Or why? Well, I mean, like, I guess nobody ever found out about it. Now, right? Yeah. Because that is a major security breach right there. But I guess they just never found yeah. out, so it's fine. Fucking dumb. Um. And they, yeah, his rattan print still works. Yes. They have. And they have a, 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 a that uses uh, like biometrics, but they also have like a screen door that lets you get in. It doesn't make yeah. any sense. The fact that, and, and you'd think that as soon as he gets put in, it's like, hey, uh, Lamplighter just yeah. checked into the building. You yeah, want to go so check that out? That should flag on the system. The opening of that particular place should flag on the system. The fact that someone's accessing it, there should probably be a security guard here anyway. Um, I love that he says, if this doesn't work, a bunch of dudes are just going to show up with guns in a second. It's like, oh. Oh. That Lucky sounds... you, I guess. Well, it just that sounds awful. Like, okay, we'll just carry on, <laughs> even yeah. if that's well, gonna happen. Well, the Vought Tower should be a fortress, yeah. and they just basically stroll right in. There oh. should be cameras absolutely everywhere. There should be a oh, camera yeah. watching the elevator. There should be a camera in the elevator. I mean, like, there, there's well, no there way. There should be cameras in the the Seven's room. Well, who cares? Wait, 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 wait. Why would there? it matter if there's cameras? They don't have motion sensors. Who cares? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, you we saw all the good the last cameras of those days. A human did. being, a human being needs to be checking all of those cameras at all times to make sure that <laughs> a fat guy sitting in a in a security room. I mean, like we saw that at the uh, at the facility, the I, Sage Room or whatever. I drew was him like... on EFAB Gaming. as tech support guy. There should be a guy. Why isn't there a guy? Well, it should be that guy from South Park in the TSA episode, just jacking off over all of the cameras <laughs> of all these people. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, they manage to get into the room, and then Lamplighter realizes that they've taken him off the well, statue, which of course they have. Bef just before we jump into that, I was going to say, should we comment? Oh, yeah. I don't know if this is in character or not. Butcher threatens to kill a bunch of innocent people to convince Vogelbaum. That kind of lines up with the baby killing, so yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose <laughs> is uh, do we believe that Butcher would, or maybe he's lying? You know, um, maybe I he's bluffing. I, I feel like it should be in character, but at the same time, I feel like the character is bluffing. Like, I, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't it could, know. Yeah, he could be bluffing. Thing. I'm not sure. Obviously, we'll never see whether he was or not, but uh, I it's funny. I say I hope he was bluffing, but I mean, it would help explain the baby killing thing. <laughs> but I don't think they want to commit to that. No, I don't think they do either. <laughs> Um, yeah, but Lamplighter kills himself next, which is great, because that's what we needed in order to have, you know, tension. Oh yeah. no, our so, guy- Not Lamplighter, oh so no. I, I believe, if only we were recording, um, when he did this, I believe I said, like, how does this free Starlight? I was like, how could this possibly do it? And then they just cut to the yeah. emergency light. I was like, wow. <laughs> well, as it turns out, they installed an emergency light into the room they built specifically to make sure that Starlight couldn't break out. Good job, well, guys. In, in in fairness, that room has actually been there for quite a while. And oh, I, oh, Lighter, but, I mean, they put her in got it. Put in that room quite a bit. That's how he knows that like oh, how it works and stuff but like he, but they put her in it is the point 
Like, so they would yeah. know that this would be the potential. I guess there was nowhere else they could put her. Can she use her light blasty powers without her hands? Would binding them have helped? I don't know. <laughs> only only if they use duct tape. Only duct yeah. tape. Yeah, only duct also, tape. You know that stuff? Will, feel... Oh, that's useful stuff. And then uh, the fact... I mean, this entire sequence is just baffling in the sense that nobody is around. There's no security. There's nobody, like, responding to the fact that she's broken out. Nobody cares. Nobody goes it's to empty. check there's a bonfire in the Seven's main... Yeah. Room. yeah. <laughs> it's Avengers headquarters. Like, this is like... Uh, well, it gets yeah. funnier. Uh, we need... A... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, we need... Lamplighter's hand to get past so he security his arm and then cuts after off. he self immolated. Yeah. Finger skin how, how, how doesn't do usually that? stay intact after it's been sizzled off. Not very good. Yeah. No. By the way, would, would you say that it's even in, in Huey's character that he would do something like that? Because I'm not sure where his character is at this time. Oh, I don't anyway, know. That's a good question. Sorry. I guess he's I, desperate. I just noticed uh, that, uh, Starlight gets jump scared by Black Noir. He just kind of pops out from the side and grabs her and throws her through a wall. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, oh, and also, is, but he, his hand is he, fine. Same. She misses uh, Huey by like five seconds. She gets. I was about to ask: Are the these the same room? rooms? These these are the same rooms. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's identical. Yeah. He lamp. Yeah, he's there. Lamp and they're fighting. What a, Lucky he didn't oh. run into Black Noir, oh. otherwise Huey's dead. And immediately, <laughs> look what her one blast did to Black Noir in this screenshot. I might just send it to you guys, that's a pretty funny yeah, way to freeze I, I'm it. I'm watching the scene right it's, now. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is what yeah. we call effective. This is doing yeah. some good damage, and she decides to not use it again in the entire scene, because she's <laughs> yeah. really fucking Do it once. stupid. And then try and run away from him by going past where he is. And don't even That's try to argue there's not enough yeah. electricity. That room is filled. Like, <laughs> there's shit everywhere. There's screen. She's getting hit next to a screen. She's right next to it. Um. Mm hmm Oh, and she almost forgets Black Noir's even there. She continues to walk yeah. and he grabs her when she's, like, facing away yeah. from him. Like, oh, no. It's like, what, do you, what did you think would happen? Oh, you're still <laughs> here. You might not want out. me to escape. You see, uh, many babies have to learn object permanence as one of the first lessons in life. And Starlight hasn't <laughs> quite gotten there yet. <laughs> one day. But yeah, we got Black Noir, he's he's winning, he's doing great, and then uh, Maeve teleports into the room and puts almonds in him, and he's out for the next episode. Yeah, and the reason, I'm assuming the reason you mentioned it that way is because had Black Noir seen her coming, it would have been a lot harder for her to do this. Uh, but she manages yeah. to sort of sneak into the room and behind him. And yeah, I guess uh, Maeve is stronger than Black Noir, I guess, right? That yeah, has to be it. He does struggle it. with her, yeah. Yeah. Why didn't he close his mouth? Why did he let her put the... <laughs> the, he didn't, the, the he didn't, it's, it's not even that like he closed his mouth. Like You can see that he the actor actually is opens, it. opens his <laughs> mouth and then chews. Like... I why? wouldn't have chewed my if it was me, I wouldn't have chewed. I probably wouldn't like, have either. I don't know who's stuffing stuff in my mouth, but I don't trust it. Yeah, not I don't even... care if someone stuffs a delicious lobster tail into my mouth from behind me in surprise. <laughs> I ain't chewing and eating that. What if it's a poisoned yeah, he... lobster tail? You don't know. Mm. Not resisting at all. He's like well, it's... It's assisting, not resisting. Her uh, her one arm is stronger than both of his. His arms, yeah. I guess Queen Maeve really is very, 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 very strong. Hey, girls, so get why it done. is she so afraid? Of, why is she afraid of Homelander then? Well, again, all we have to go on is what they show us. So power level wise, Homelander is above Maeve, but Maeve is above Black Noir. Even though Black Noir withstood an explosion. Oh, dude, that is actually really funny. He just opens his mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he does. <laughs> He's like nom. Do you also? I there's another little general trivia for this scene. Do you know oh, no. why? It, do you know why they did this to him? Oh, so I already explained at the beginning of our stream why, um, what what Black Noir actually was in the comics, and like it was this amazing story twist and all sorts of stuff like that. So in the show, they decided to go with the tree night allergy because the stuntman for Black Noir has a tree nut allergy. And they thought it would be funny to include it. What? No, then that's yeah, why they that's shouldn't prettier. use it. 
That is the, <laughs> in the trivia. But but yeah. then he'll get hurt. Oh well, well they, I mean, they didn't use a real they one. Didn't actually, yeah, yeah, they probably but, use a real one. But okay. moreover, that's not a good reason to do anything in your story. Ha, huh, funny, funny. <laughs> yeah, little did we know the stunt man actually is fucking die if we give it to him. Uh, it's, I don't, I don't know. It just it's not doesn't sound like a good reason to me. It's pretty. I it, like the idea that Maeve ran to a vending machine, to, to <laughs> and she's crowd. she's inserting a dollar into it, and it doesn't yeah. accept it. She and has to unfold the out. corners. You guys, <laughs> yeah. you guys are nitpicking. Right she would keep it on right. hand just in case Black Noir ever became a problem. You guys are silly. all of the like seven the have a spare that... almond joy in their it's super like, I, I do like that. Yeah. It's like Batman having a small piece of kryptonite in the. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, um, Everybody's gonna keep like a, a, a handful thing, of all Snickers bar. <laughs> the cool thing about kryptonite is that it's not easily attainable, and almond joy. Uh, <laughs> it, so how is Black Noir gonna be a threat to anybody ever again? If you convert that into a like airborne thing, like you oh, convert yeah. your chocolate bar into a gas, <laughs> like well. <laughs> Just have bullets that have almond bars in them. Oh, uh, yeah, have a knife laced with almond. <laughs> like, and... <laughs> knife laced right. with almond. Almond knife. So, uh, oh, this, no. we, we gotta talk about this, because it's not actually, like, it's all consistent in, in well, the, the, the allergy being a thing and him reacting to it this way, but, um, so many people were so annoyed that this was the end of the fight. Like... Oh, it, I wonder it, why. I think that after seven episodes, they're like, "Oh my god, superhero fight! Starlight versus Black." Uh, wait, wait. Oh, did you guys mm. run out of money, or what, what happened? <laughs> what happened? They sure as hell didn't run out of money. Um, Which superhero fight ending did you like more, the heart attack or the almond joy? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they Starlight super... always gets saved by some. Damn! Weird yeah, I didn't person. even. Yeah, well, technically I know... three times over as well. Mave saves her in the finale, right? So she saves her twice. Heart attack saves her, and an allergy saves her. Good job, Starlight. I want to know who there are people out there who think that the the superhero fight at the airport in Civil War is shit, and probably think that this stuff is top tier. <laughs> no. I want to know who these people are. Yeah, <laughs> like put them on a list. Do it. So, um, yeah, Mave is like, go and 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 of course, um. Huey is running away just to, to find uh, uh, Starlight, and he bumps into Starlight's mum because he can hear her saying help. So she is now rescued. That's pretty convenient. Starlight's mm -hmm. mom was just there at Vought Tower. She, what yeah, was she they doing had there? a captive because they used her to get Starlight, and then she was like, "Hey, help me!" The alarms. Oh my oh. god! And then he was like, "Oh, I'll help oh, yeah, you, person. Right. Hello, pit. Oh, it's the mom." You think she'd was... be like in a locked room or well, something? Well, I was, guess, yeah. but I the, the, was not. He unlocked but it with yeah. Lamplighter's hand. Can I? Oh, her. I got gotcha. you. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess like I mean like security personnel and stuff, but they're no. just. No, Not nobody's around. in the tower except for Black Noir and Maeve. They're they the only two people ran there. away because of the alarm. There go, fixed it. Yeah, they were scared of the alarm rings. Can I point oh. out the stupidity of Maeve yeah, sure. and Black Noir alive, even <laughs> after he poisoned him? No, it'll like, be fine. It'll be he fine. survives, and I mean, if he recovers, which he inevitably will, I mean, this kind of goes into a stupidity in the next uh, episode, yeah. where she right. like doesn't want to help. It's like, you do realize that the guy with the super healing factor who's like currently in the hospital, like if he wakes up, you're fucked because he's going to tell everybody that it was you that did it. And then Homelander is going to come and kill you. Mm. If you have super healing, would you, wouldn't any like nut allergy immediately disappear because it would heal? Like, I don't know your, how it your works. Would fill up yeah, and I don't know. I don't know if someone, heal. maybe they would argue like, because he's a super, Duper, the allergy like hits him harder than normally Maybe. would. I, I don't he has know. a super yeah. allergy. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like Deadpool with with cancer. Well, she kicks away his yeah. epipen, assuming that's what it is. Um, it's it's funny because yeah. it's like if she walks off, you'd be like, wait, maybe what if he has a second one? <laughs> what if he just crawls over to the epipen and grabs it? <laughs> maybe yeah. you gotta like maybe is the goal to kill him? Is it because you need to do more than that? She's uh she's a very clever man. Um but of course, why would Maeve worry when she's got the greatest blackmail ever prepared, Fringy? Like she'll just use that. A video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we run I thought this was the last yeah. scene in the episode. Oh yeah, we're close to the last scene in the episode. Um 
Ryan is upset that his mum has lied to him. Well, no, there we just is... forgot Tism. Huey runs into Starlight in the middle of a giant skyscraper with his mum. Oh, yeah, so at least Huey mom, was yeah. going to the holding cells, and that's why he bumped into the mum. At least there's but something there. why is there. she going to the holding cells? Yeah, why cells? did Starlight go here? Like, maybe she was going for her mum. That explains it. Did she even know that her mum was here, though? I don't have any clue. Did Maeve tell her that or something? Oh, no, I don't I, think Maeve I told her. Um, but yeah, they all meet up really quickly and escape, because that's the thing, we've got to get this episode sort of tied off, which is to kill Lamplighter and get Starlight freed. That's like the two things. Mm -hmm. Um, so Ryan's mad at the mum because the mum has lied to him and not told him there's a whole wide world out there, and she fails to mention to him that this is all Vort's doing, not hers. She just lets him be mad. And then of course he wants to leave with Homelander and does. So it's, uh, it's weird she never appeals to the fact that Vought have orchestrated all of this, to a degree, and that Homelander is the reason that they're not allowed outside, because he's a psycho. Like, she just doesn't try any of this. Kind of reminds me of um, a certain character in a certain game, when asked mm. why he mm. did something, something specific. It's annoying when characters yeah. don't defend themselves. No, yeah, they I just so let stuff happen. I I don't buy that Ryan would be so angry at the woman who raised him that he would go with a man who threw him off of a roof. <laughs> um, like regardless of what he told him. Also, I think like this, there's probably not ever really a, a good time to kind of tell Ryan how he was conceived, but perhaps that information would have swayed him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now is the time. <laughs> it, might, it might, you know, hey, you know, the, the guy you're about to fly off with kind of, you know, had a um, uh, persistent hugging problem. So, yeah. you know, maybe? Yeah. No? Okay. <sighs> it's, it's all so tiresome, as they say. We can skip the fucking butcher one, we kind of covered that. Um, yeah, yeah, so then there's the court scene, everyone's heads explode, it's all very confusing, and that leads yeah. us into the next episode, because there's not really anything we can say about that until we possibly talk about uh, AOC's big reveal. Yeah. <sighs> so that was the episode that got everybody very upset. Um, <laughs> naturally. Fucking it's, long enough. And I think it was perfectly made to piss off people who were in favor of this show, in terms of, they put the stupid, stupid scene at the beginning, and then they had the same kind of writing they've been having all season after it. And so it was way easier to see the shitty writing when you're, like, knocked out immersion-wise. Um, so, th like, it was it was handcrafted to say, hey, hey, we're not very good. Just so you know. Well, I think, I think oh, it's yeah. the whole idea that uh, if you get, if your suspension of disbelief is snapped, you kind of see what you're watching for what it is, which yeah. is the pieces. That yeah, when together. you're no longer primed to like the show and, and don't, want to really like the show. It's, don't take yeah. this as me saying, um, the like, haha, you sheeple were knocked. It's like, no, this happens to me all the time, where I'm enjoying something. <laughs> oh, it happened to me. And I, I'll be like, no, that's that thing I didn't even notice, or that thing is fine, but as soon as, like, the glamour is removed, uh, I'm like, oh, I'm starting to see things now. Like, things I, I mean, didn't want to see. The first time I saw uh, Star Wars Episode One, I thought it was amazing. And then on hindsight, I'm like, maybe not. There's going to be some yeah. people in chat who are like, you were right. <laughs> bad to no, Menace guys. Bad to Menace is bad. Who was, was it uh, Ben Shapiro who said it was better than Revenge of the Sith? It was the worst. He said it was oh, worst. Right, right. What did he say was better than Phantom Revenge of the Sith? Phantom Menace was worst. Um, I can't I he remember. He put Revenge of the Sith down really low, like surprisingly low, but I kind of can't remember yeah yeah because the the actual correct order for the films uh is five four six three uh either one or two probably yeah one two and then uh seven ah uh, it gets hard at the sequels <laughs> trying to figure <laughs> out where they fit um also yeah that's not to say that a whole bunch of people didn't already like dislike this season like we did i did see plenty of people in the discord being like yeah i've not been liking it or some people who said like they dropped out at episode three which is an episode i totally understand you dropping out on um mm -hmm. but again like shit tons of people were like this one's good um so i guess we'll carry on um rags and i kind of did coverage for this one on a different stream but there's no reason not to uh Get it all in this one big package here. Wow. So yeah. yeah, yeah, we we start off totally perplexed 
with a video about, you know, if there's a super terrorist in your school, what do you do? <laughs> and the immediate thing is, there haven't been any super terrorist attacks. What you... Not even like, what... one. Except, yeah. wait, not, except, yeah. except the telekinetic. Perfect. That's the only one you could argue, but even that one's really dodgy if anybody had seen any of it. It's absurd. This season wants to convince us there's so many attacks that now schools have to prepare for super terrorists taking them down. Yeah, at least after 9-11 happened, you know, and everything, you know, got changed in terms of the way we viewed security in the world yeah. and stuff. Like, that was a really big deal. Totally unprecedented. In this show, you don't have that similar buildup to the fear and paranoia that's caused. Well, it's it. just cause and effect, right? Like, the reason why airport security was amped up was because a terrorist attack using airplanes occurred. Whereas here, it's like, what's happened? Mm. There was a super terrorist in an apartment building many, many weeks ago, and nothing's happened since. But mm -hmm. now they're teaching kids about what to do in the case of a super terrorist coming into a school. Um, and even then, like, what is your plan? There's nothing that you can do if it's super Yeah, unless you're dealing with a vomit school. one. <laughs> you're yeah, probably one, screwed. One you can actually <laughs> shoot. Knock him over and he'll inevitably kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> kick no. him in the gut. Yeah, you gotta kick him in the stomach, <laughs> right? Don't punch me, bro. What a weakness. <laughs> uh, um, and, it, and also, it's, it's one of the starkest examples here of how they've totally forgotten that the whole point of season one was to get them to go on foreign missions in, like, Afghanistan and stuff. That's just mm. not happening anymore. I mean, so, even one of the one of the the quote the the memes that was uh, used for Homelander to make him popular again was uh, "better there than here." Was one? Of yeah, the that was one of the memes. You're right, but they've forgotten about it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not even a thing anymore. <laughs> So um, yeah, he does so the, very little superhero work. Like we, I feel like we skipped a season. Like it's so crazy. It's like whoa, <laughs> yeah. we've, there's so much work you guys have to do to earn this. It's like no, there's super villains everywhere. Maybe you're like oh, okay, and of course it's been convinced to the people by the memes, um, which leads us into the next scene. Which by the way, I'm almost certain that PSA Baffling. is to help support the next scene, which is the government are now panicking about super villains and they want to buy compound v from vort in order to throw i can't believe they fucking say that i was so thrown out they want to give it to first responders yeah um what what are you suggesting it's gonna be that the people like emts and paramedics have super randomly random generated superpowers i like thought super Useful if you're an EMT. I thought but the way it worked was you provide a compound B V shot to a young person, they will eventually be able to, like, th assuming they don't die, they will then eventually develop powers possibly, and the power could be anything. So if you just yeah. inject a whole bunch of first responders, most of them apparently will die. A lot of them will develop powers that are useless to their job, like the Vomit one. <laughs> like, what exactly well, are they going to yeah. do with that? The new, the new Compound V is is stable for adults, so they can basically take okay. the new Compound V. I inject thought they it. hadn't developed it yet. That was yeah. the point of the or facility. Is that, is that a part of the time skip? If, uh, who the fuck knows at this point? Because if they already have it, then what's the point of the facility? Yeah. And keep doing the tests and... Well, that's well, what I figured. They're still working that's on it. What they were doing at the facility. Those adults were given; those those people were given the compound B as an adult. Right. So, like, yeah, if, but, if but they weren't like, done clearly. Also, yeah, well, no, I, th I thought no, it was that I, um the the email we looked at it said eighty eight percent complete. Yeah. So I mean, you can assume that they're they're. I guess they're. I guess yeah, they're at hundred now. Cloth, right. Well, I suppose, but, yeah. I guess they wrapped that up. Either way, can you, uh, can you imagine being an EMT? And like getting a superpower, which is the acid puke, and what? then like, oh well, shit, I'm out of a job now. Who the fuck yeah. would agree to this? If you're an EMT, would you be like, you have a random chance of gaining one of many, many powers. One makes your dick enormous. You'd be like, oh, I, uh. <laughs> uh, and of course, yeah, I have sign me the fuck power, up. So, uh, <laughs> it feels like our uh, our total inversion of in reality. If what happened in the courthouse, Compound V is gone as a thing over yeah like because that, this is obviously a superhero happen. that did this this is a superpower that yeah. someone's using we're not going to give everyone this power yeah I mean, look at how paranoid sure a lot of people are about it. just firearms it, yeah, this, it's that, oh it's so hard to believe it is like there's so many ways this goes wrong and are you, are you really gonna have volunteers for this i just 
I don't, I don't see it. Oh, we're gonna shove them all into our first responders and frontline people. You're like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, and yeah, Vought are gonna make a huge amount of money off of it, and the AOC character is like, isn't it clear that Vought are the ones behind all of this? And he's like, doesn't matter, the president's subverting the FDA on this one. Uh. It's like, you would, you'd think that after all the shit that we've seen, the last thing anyone in this world would want except Vought is to get this shit destroyed, to never ever have it be a thing ever. To make it illegal, to get rid of all traces of it, to destroy the research involved with it, to not allow any company to produce it. But it's the opposite that happens? <sighs> this is a really bad episode, by the way. <laughs> Just in terms of uh, I'm, I'm relative. I'm only three episodes in. <laughs> Sorry? So We're only three episodes in. All right, three minutes oh, in. Sorry. Oh. Three oh, minutes. Okay, so we'll be here forever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never leave. Head popping convinces them to make more, but yeah, as opposed to less. Being a Yahtzee makes them decide no. But um, like, why would it matter? She's already been, she's like, oh, you're right. She's already been taken yeah. out of the equation. So like, okay, yeah, she's bad. But the thing is, is she's been Anakin Skywalkered, and she's also in custody, so she can't do anything anymore. But you still have the head popping problem. So are you just gonna like? Yeah, we know it's categorically proven that the head popping thing is beyond Stormfront because the dumbass pops a head when Stormfront is in hospital. Um, so that yeah, means and have, and that means there's more than on, sorry. I was saying, did we even address the whole? We can see that her eyes go white whenever she pops heads, but apparently no one never noticed that in the courtroom when so, that's being. I, televised and recorded. I did rewatch the scene. What they they do that's commendable is that she's she's got sight on every single person that explodes, but her eyes are clearly not going through what I don't even know what you'd call it because it doesn't. Her eyes don't glaze Sorry, over why? when she kills someone. It's after she kills someone, I guess. And um, it's, it's probably, not really. It, it doesn't happen in the courtroom scene like at all. Oh, and that's a pretty big fuck up. I mean. I'm willing to agree that that's like an actual, the kind of thing we were referencing earlier with a continuity sort of, you could argue that the CGI people could have done it, but they just didn't. I don't know. There's no reason why they couldn't have like put a little glint in her eye, like a small one, and that everyone in the courtroom just didn't happen to catch it. it, it it's annoying, but like I, I, I just think that was a really good point about how like the, the government are fully convinced we need to arm all of our forces with the. Uh, even even our first responders with Compound V, but they decided against it once they find out Stormfront blew up the heads and she's connected to Nazis. I don't I don't really see how that connects, to be honest with you. Hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm trying I'm trying. I'm really trying, but I don't I don't know. Because the concern is like full on terrorisms and Obviously, it would go beyond Stormfront. Or well, we already know that even before someone's head explodes after Stormfront, because the the head explodes are blamed on her. Which, by the way, since when was that an ability of hers? Does everyone actually believe it? It's just like, yeah, she can just pop heads, I guess. Yeah, people just accept that, even though it's pretty clear what her powers are. I, I guess <laughs> not, though. So <laughs> they spent the time they could have spent on the CGI on beams. <laughs> <laughs> there, should we like CGI the this really important scene here that could cause issues with our stories? Like, no, make more shitty memes. <laughs> it's important to memes, right. the memes to the VFX studios. Um. So we'll probably return to that. I guess we'll continue. So this episode, <laughs> like I said, you're trying to get over that scene, and they just throw you right into a scene where you've got several Becca. people with torches. You got dogs and you have helicopters with spotlights somehow yeah, chasing uh butcher's wife or uh, i can't remember what is her name do we have a name becca right um becca. she yeah, managed yeah. to climb over the wall be it with a grappling hook or whatever else without anyone stopping her despite the cameras and then she managed to be this close to people chasing her and she escapes them as i think many people agree no. escaping no. dogs at this point that's really hard. This so dogs are, that's why they bring the dogs? They're really good at yeah, this. dogs have got really good noses. Yeah, like, 
me watch the Mythbusters stuff about this. Like, man, we've been using dogs to track people for a long time. Mm. Dogs are useful. We got those. We we got the super sniffs. That's their superpower. Mm-hmm. That's all those scouts would have been helpful this... with, uh, when Butch did the thing. It would have been what? Sorry. Also, doesn't she have a tracker on her? Oh, right. <laughs> that's, of course. that's another thing. Silly me <laughs> for not remembering to mention that. Of course, she would be tracked <laughs> because yeah. that's just, how the fuck Why? would you? The kid would have been tracked too. Yeah. So, I, I want to know how she escapes from the facility. Like, there's no way she can climb over the wall. Like, she said she just... wanted to go for a smoke break, and they let her out. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. There's no I way. There's absolutely there no be. way she could have gotten over the wall. She, like, it's not happening. She's a, she's a stay-at-home mom. She's not like a triathlete. She's not a smoke-at-home mom. It all makes sense. <laughs> what are you doing? Why are they chasing her? The package is her kid. They don't want her getting away because she's the one that they think is going to be able to turn Mini Homelander into a good person. They, uh, Gus Fring says this a little bit later. I like the idea that that apparently Vought would just be like, yeah, you can walk right out that door, no problem well, at all. Just the idea that they've lost the package and so they see her climbing over the wall and they're like, eh, whatever. Eh. <laughs> I just like the whole idea with the kid anyway, so it's like, oh, we're just gonna keep this kid in here until it's like 18 years old, I don't know. And it's like, oh, by the way, there's like a whole outside yeah, world. Yeah, that'll work but well. But you be on your and protect America, it's like, excuse me? Yeah, because if... young adults have never reacted, like, irrationally to, yeah. to any kind of, that well, kind like, of, like, stimuli. Of... If a kid is super tough like Homelander and everything, he can't get hurt, just let him live a normal life. Not a weird quasi lie of a life that he that he will inevitably discover that because he, he's going to grow up. and He's like, oh, I was actually robbed of my childhood. Yeah. Um, so you're going to so, have so, Homelander 2.0. But I, <sighs> someone said, remember, Becca points out she was better at shooting or something than Butcher was. Apparently she has training of some kind. Yeah, it's later in the episode before they go to their uh, to the, 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 the grand finale. Uh, oh, there you like, go. Um, that's the uh, least of the issues. <laughs> yeah, Honestly, yeah, there's like a throw right line. I was better at shooting you, and then yeah, she was better at shooting. Then Butch says like, "Oh yeah, but you had a good trainer." Ha 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 ha. Yeah, I mean, being better at shooting doesn't mean that you have uh, what what, what is it? Uh, what the hell what? is the, the name of that? There's a there's like an escape training thing, like it, and and. Espionage? From what I understand, she was, uh, what's that? Like, tactical espionage? No, 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 there's actually a, a military course. I cannot, for the life of me, remember it. It's like escape, evasion, resist, uh, something. For Someone might know what it is, I can't think of it. But anyways, um, Becca in her previous, like, she wasn't military or anything like that. I don't think she was involved in CIA. She was, like, basically a secretary, and she had, like, political and bureaucratic jobs and stuff. Like, the only reason why she went to, like, the range was because that's what Butcher did. And they just, like, went together and that's it. And so they they put out that, oh, yeah, she's a better shot than her. But that, that doesn't mean that she has the skills required to escape from the, uh, maximum security facility. Yeah. To be fair, all it takes is Seer a grappling training. hook. training, there you go, thank you. Yeah, we've, we've seen plenty of people do, it's fine. Um, hey, yeah, all it takes is a grappling hook and convenient editing, and you could just escape from anywhere. Someone, uh, someone said in chat, so you guys don't like the boys, what a surprise. The only thing Mola likes is Infinity War. What? That, yeah, that's that's it, that's the only thing. Infinity, Infinity War, War specifically. Yeah, it's just, as long as you guys don't talk shit about Infinity War, we're all good. That's what that's he faps about. It, we're pro-Infinity War, anti-everything else. <laughs> Fuck everything else. Um, that was, yeah, that was a weird comment. It's like uh, we, we were we were hypercritical of Endgame. Does that count for anything? I hope no. so. No, we we regularly say all the time that Civil War is the best of the Marvel MCU movies. Well, That's probably redundant to say Marvel MCU, but the MCU movies. Shut up. Talk about how great Homecoming is. We started this EFAP talking about how insanely good the Haunting of Bly Manor is. But well, all right, in it's fairness, fine. It's a pretty Whatever. boring show. I mean, you guys are pretty big fans of Batwoman, too. So. Oh, Batwoman is top <laughs> tier. Batwoman is gold, though. Everyone should watch Batwoman. That's fucking great. Um, speaking of gold, I really appreciated the uh, the setup with the, uh, the the 
incredibly important pocket knife. Oh that right, was yeah. Like, I mean, like they they made sure to put it center screen, and like they even zoomed in to make sure that like well, there so was the, no way that you didn't notice it. This one's funny. Oh, because... they also added the sh sh noise, like the unsheathed noise. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. That, that's what knives sound like when you, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, I'll play that for chat in a second once once I can clear a cover. But I was just gonna say that um, so again, I love to picture the writing room. They're like, oh man, this payoff is so fucking cool where she stabs Stormfront. Wait, 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 wait. Where would she get a knife from? And some other guys like, oh shit, yeah, where could she possibly have a knife? We'd have to set that up. Yeah, there's no the way someone could carry house? a knife. Yeah, carrying a knife would be absurd if you're going to attack superheroes in any way, shape, or form. Like, like just having a knife, that's just an impossibility. We need to, we need to show the people that she has a knife. Yeah, it does do the shink sound. <laughs> do you know, you know what it makes me uh, think of? It's textbook. Like, it's... Imagine the writers, like, opened chapter in a, in a writing book, and, like, it was chapter two, Chekhov's gun. Yeah. And, like, they're like, this is awesome! We gotta put this in. And, like, they... It's like a, a like a fifth grade writing assignment. Like, they, they put it in in such a a like a simplistic and obvious way like this oh my god i think a much better way for them to have set this up is during the scene when the boys and all of them were getting ready to go and grab ryan right you have all of them gearing up they're loading weapons and this sort of stuff during that time you could have seen becca like taking a knife and like folding it and putting it in her pocket it would have been really subtle and it but it still would have established the fact that oh she, she has the knife on her and that way when it gets pulled out and when she actually uses it like you may not have been thinking about it when you first saw it but the back of your mind would would recognize oh yeah i remember she put that in her pocket but instead they do this which is just like obvious and dumb yeah um, at least they set up the knife that's what i was mainly getting at <laughs> high five Thank goodness. That's gonna be useful for an eye stabbing later. We're totally gonna get to it. So we get a nice little, what I might call a throwaway scene, where she's like, Mum, go away and be careful. And the mum's like, okay. And we get um a really weird scene. I don't know how else to describe this one. We're gearing up to attack the soups. So, we've got an RPG with electronicisms on it that's gonna try and take care of Stormfront. Sweet. Okay. We've got Almond right. Joys prepared for Black Noir. Uh, like, what, what can you? I, I like. All right. I mean, fair enough. I just like the idea that uh, you you have a like a neutral cube room. You spawn MM. You spawn Black Noir. MM's like, oh, I'm gonna die unless I have an almond joy. Thank fuck, I do. It's like, all right. What do you think you can do next? Show me. Like you well, walk like, up oh, to yeah, him and stuff the chocolate bar. Is like, what do you picture is gonna happen, MM? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to like rub it on him or something? I guess so. we're gonna give him some skin irritation. All Black Noir has to do is get a mask that's not easily take off a ball, I guess, and he'll be okay, maybe. Or he yeah, like, I guess it's a good thing he's got that mask. Yeah. Or he can like, throw shurikens at you, which seem to be fairly effective. Yeah. So not if, not if just, you got almond joy. He's losing. That's it. Uh, for A Train, they have. Uh, like, is it like a adrenaline? I forget what the thing they have. They, they're gonna fuck with his heart. Is the point? They're gonna inject him with something that'll fuck his heart up. That's their plan. <laughs> so, as far as they know, A Train can run fine. Um, how do you propose injecting him with something when he can run that fast? Again, the I just I just wonder about these things. Okay, I'm just like no. you, you guys have these plans, but you seem to have thought about zero seconds on how to execute any of them. And so, that's about it, unless I was to rewatch it and find more references. Um, you might think to yourselves, wait, how are you dealing with Homelander? Well, they're gonna <laughs> play a really loud noise. And yeah. that's about it. They're hoping that he'll be distracted by a really loud noise for long enough that nothing else could go wrong. We're gonna ah, come back to that. So dumb. Also, Mel, you sound dying. Like, if you wanna go to sleep, it's totally okay. I'm not going to sleep. It's gonna be wrestling in two hours. I'm gonna watch. Jesus. The <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, so yeah, that's our plan. We're loading up. We're gonna kill any any and all soups. This is the big finale, guys. The boys versus the soups. Um, this is the scene where she says, 
Gus is smart for his kind. I can't remember anything else that yeah. happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that uh, oh right, hold on, let me uh let me skim forward a bit. Uh, Wait, we're about to be up to in terms of timestamp just to because I was away for like five minutes getting some coffee. Uh around about well, we're on nine thirty now. Uh, unless there was anything in the car ride you guys would want to Oh. Nah, not that oh, isn't maybe um oh, what does she say? she says something like why would you why would you come save me? Like, as if you would need a reason beyond the fact that they care yeah. about each other? And yeah, they're clearly yeah. in a relationship and they care about each other. That, duh? Like, these two... <laughs> well, the show seems to forget that for some reason. Like, well, they wanted said, to, is that says, to remind the audience? She says, after how I treated you, remember? And, and, and it's like, but you didn't... Like, what What exactly you treat was... treat him that badly. Yeah, what like, are you talking about? Enough that he would happily leave you to die? Like, I, I don't think I follow that one. I don't get that, yeah. I don't uh, know. The only thing you've really done that was bad was kill that guy. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> he, he doesn't, apparently that. doesn't even know about that. So yeah. he doesn't even have to wrestle with that moral quandary. Besides oh. the murder, you're pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other than that little detail. That would be great in the finale. Everything works out. They're all chilling. He's like, did you kill someone? What did I dream that? <laughs> She's like, uh... Oh, what no. a terrible dream that was. Um... Yeah, and, and so they go to Maeve in the hopes that they can recruit her for help. Um, she shouts at them. She's like, no, you're stupid, you're a twink, and you're annoying, I think is the summary. Um, mm. And as we said in the stream, Rags and I were like, oh, this is 100% gonna be who saves the day. It's clear as <laughs> fuck that she's gonna come in. Yeah. We Little did we know that uh, that that would be the case, but in a way that makes no fucking sense at all. Unfortunately. Yeah, we. It was pretty clear that we'd get a Mavex Machina. We didn't think that it'd be like twice, but and, and that neither. Know. I thought they'd justify them. They could have a turn up for reasons other yeah. than you know. Uh, boop. But... Um, well, by, by the way, I, I don't know if someone mentioned this, but they uh, they say at some point uh, that Black Noir has brain damage from the allergic reaction. Ah, uh, he'll forget. <laughs> oh, yeah, and forget. he's right. he's on the sidelines, and well, they'll just bring him back whenever they want him back in the story. Yeah. In fairness, on... they can argue yeah. that he didn't even know Maeve did it. Ah, uh, who else is strong enough to do that? No, 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 no. He'll just be like, you know, someone someone shoved a chocolate bar in my mouth. They could have, I don't, and it's like, were they really strong? And he's like, you know, I just don't remember. Think about you know, it. surely they must have been if they could have done that to me. I just feel like a normal person, I wouldn't have wow. allowed that to happen. How about this? Do they not have records of where these trackers are going in all of our soups? You think so? In which case, no. check the history. Who was the the tracked cameras? right behind Check Black the Noir. fingerprints on the vending machine. <laughs> that would work. <laughs> oh. I, Maeve's logic in this scene just makes no sense. Like, she wants to stay out of it because she doesn't want to get in any more trouble. But when Black Noir inevitably wakes up, he's going to blame her, which is going to put her in a potentially life-threatening situation so really the best option for her is to, to throw in with starlight and and the boys to try to, to 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 win that way because if she just like sits on the side like i don't see how she wins by not helping like yeah and the whole point of her having that footage was to use surely well i guess so she's she... abandoned that right she's given up uh... Well, I think that's what they were implying. It doesn't make sense, but yeah, I think that's, that's what, what Joe thinks has happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> every, every soup's fingerprints would be on the vending machine, right? <laughs> you, you fool. I don't know. You, you fool. I, I assumed you were fucking around. I didn't I, think you I were was like, fucking no. around about. Because remember when we did the joke about her? <laughs> un, uh, she gets the, pulls out her super wallet. She gets a dollar bill. Or, or maybe she doesn't have one. She has to hunt someone down and ask for change while this fight's going Dude, on. In the if next Batman room. can have a Bat credit card, she can have a Maeve credit card, okay? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. So, card. in terms of problems with the episode, card. this one's much smaller, but I still think this is fucking retarded. Um, you have the hideout, the boys are underneath, they're preparing. Above is their store, the, the storefront, it's like it's more of a fake thing. 
Becca comes in saying, Butcher, I need Butcher, where's Butcher? And the guys up there are like, huh, there's a lady asking for you, Butcher, come up. That seems to be a major breach of how the security should probably work in this place. Butcher, someone fucking knows you're here? Well, yeah. not just that, but like if someone, if you, let's just say we are the ones who are running the store for the, for the boys looking after them. Someone comes in going, oh my god, can I'll I speak like, to Butcher? I need him right now. I'd be like, who? I'll be like, ah, uh, the Butcher's who? next door. <laughs> like a like, person yeah. called Butcher. You, uh, like the uh, but, like you're looking there, for the Butcher? The, yeah, who? The shop? Yeah. Yeah, and then well, I'd be yeah, like, hey, uh, can one of you guys no, uh, ch check if anyone here is called Butcher? That's a weird one. Uh, check in the back, I guess, and then you can go down and be like, shit, someone's here right now asking for Butcher. You need to leave. You need to get out the back. Um, yeah. But no, they're like, hey, someone's looking, and he comes to the fucking front of the now, store. <laughs> He's well, just like, yeah. can't Wouldn't exactly. it have been funny if it was Homelander? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for Butcher! <laughs> hey, Butcher, there's a guy here. <laughs> and then lasers everybody. <laughs> And it's funny because this would probably be major if not for the fact that they've treated it this way the whole damn season. They just don't give a shit. Like, uh, it's so annoying. But yeah, she found the place because he gave it away as part of his things that he told her, which again, Butcher just doesn't yeah, give a shit. He's an idiot. He he didn't tell her the, the address. He just said that it's in XYZ part of the city, right? Like, it's this area. Didn't he and... say what kind of store it was? He just said it's a pawn shop in such and such store, in such and such part of the uh, the city. Did he give but a the street? Thing is, like, what's that? No, Did he, I, a... I, I, he didn't give a street. He just gave like a um, um. If you want, put it on subtitles, you'll probably see it. But like, he tells it's like a part of the city. It's not a specific street. But even then, like, it doesn't matter because if you've ever been to a city, there's like pawn shops everywhere. When... So. Yeah, I was going to say, like, either he gave her too much information, or not enough that she could find yeah. him. Like, how does she find the exact... First of all, how does she even get there? Like, she teleported... <laughs> she outran the dogs. And now she's teleported into the city, and now she's in the area, and there's like a dozen pawn shops, and she just happens to go to the exact one. Well, the funny part is that she's like a raving person and they're keeping her outside and I just like the idea that she went to the wrong one and she's demanding to see Butcher. People will be like, are you okay? The Butcher is across the street, you whore. <laughs> oh my god, so mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're lucky that they meet up, everything's so great, they're all gonna prepare. Oh! Gus and Collective Leader are talking about how, um, uh, they, they talk about how they've got they've got shit on Stormfront. Uh, in the middle of their conversation, as well as saying that A Train is out because of uh, Stormfront Stisms, which she used to be a part of this, she's not anymore. They've got they've got info on it, and uh, turns out A Train decided he would eavesdrop on this conversation. Um, I wonder how hard it is to open and close a door as a speedster, with in a way that wouldn't alert anyone or make a huge gust of wind. You know what I mean? Yeah, because everything else is still, you know, as normal. Like, if you open and close a door almost instantly, like in a split second, that's going to go... <laughs> we should be like, whoa, what just what, what, what just happened? Like, why? But of course, uh, he manages to sort of... Maybe only opened it a little bit and then... Cl I don't know. It's, it's very strange. Um, but he hears it all, which is going to give him access to... Uh, allow the destruction of Stormfront. Just keep an eye on it. It's gonna come back. Um, then the... Again, we mentioned this before. It's a little bit hazier on it now. What's the the line that uh, Ryan says to Homelander that's like a, a plus? And then uh, Homelander is like, ugh, she has a lot of sayings. Is it about learning? Yeah, it's like, Mom says you should always, you know, try and learn new things. He said it's a good thing to do. And, it, and Homelander, because he's a fucking imbecile, instead of using that and said, you know what, your mom's right, that is a good idea, let me teach you a few things. Uh, he says like, oh, how about you says a lot of things? Because Homelander's an idiot. Yeah. Um, then they take him to Planet Vort to chill out for a bit. It's mostly, I'm, I'm just trying to edge us toward the big tisms. Oh, here's yeah. a big tism. So they're driving along, sad that they couldn't get anything from Maeve, and uh, lucky for them, A-Train has already stolen the information 
and he's going to hand it over to these guys. Um, yeah. I suppose there's no real issue in terms of, like, relatively anyway, the issue of him finding them. We'll just assume that he found them. Yeah. Because he's, he's, he, he, he does say, like, I just ran around the block and found you eventually. It's like, okay. Um, yeah, but I mean, isn't he supposed to have like a heart condition? Or no, yeah. oh, I guess no, that's gone now. No, 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 no. You missed the scene where he said, "Thank goodness, I have been fixed of that issue." Thank In fact, I, I like think how it, all these bystanders actually... don't care that he's there. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. So the big problem with this scene is uh, everybody's an idiot again. Um, a train is going. He needs to give them sensitive information to burn Stormfront instead of waiting for them to be in a private area. He waits. He does it right like, in the open, yeah. He does it while they're driving on a main road, which, by the way, they're going to be freaked out that they see you, so why would you risk them crashing the car, which they kind of do, by the way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they, drive they off narrowly, the road. yeah. And then, of course, um, you'd think, like, how are they going to recover from this? It's like, well, they will step out of the car and simply talk on the street as A-Train, Starlight, and a criminal, which, by the way, Starlight has been criminalized by Vought as well. Yeah. Yeah, because oh, yeah, they, they blame her for translucent stuff. staff. <sighs> and of course, yeah, they don't have any trouble with this. Loads of people walking by. Nobody cares. They, they've seen a current respected member of the superheroes hand a bunch of shit to two criminals. It's like, hmm. That seems a little dodgy. Why would you do this in broad daylight? So stupid. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the, the, that's going to become relevant real soon, I think. Oh, now, yeah, so we're on to the, the, uh, the, the Gus Butcher scene. Um, this is the one that has that, that line where Gus says he can't being angry is a white man thing or something. Yeah. Yeah, he's like I being something along the lines of he doesn't have the uh the privilege to like to do be that. angry. Says the yeah. extremely famous rich actor playing the extremely famous super rich CEO. Well, I mean, massive... it's not his fault that that's the line. <laughs> like... Yeah, yeah, it's just, I, yeah, yeah, I don't blame him at all. It's just it it's deliciously ironic coming from <laughs> that actor playing this character. It's fucking crazy. It's just one of those. It's one of those virtue signal moments. Like, see, we said the thing. <sighs> Apparently, he gets in trouble actually because he's um, I think he's uh Danish. Uh, I don't know if he's he's definitely uh European. Hold on. Uh, damn it. They were all yeah. They were like all mad at him. Getting thrown a fit for, uh, for getting Latin American roles. Yeah, um, because that he game is uh he is. Well, he was born in yeah. He was born in Denmark. Um, I mean, uh -oh. obviously, I think it, <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. I, well, the uh, fact <laughs> but yeah, all right, let's uh, let's uh, let's. What was what was the pertinent thing in uh, in that scene? It was that they cut a deal, and Butcher is going to turn over. He's going to just take his wife and not the son. Yes, um, the the plan is. Uh, you guys will sweep up Ryan. I will be able to live a happy life with my wife if I can get you Homelander away. Or if I can get you the kid away from Homelander. Deal? And they're like, yes. They don't even question how it's possible. Well, actually, I think they do, and, and he's just like, hey, I'll take care of that. And it's like, uh... I, like, why would you risk all of your men in Vought if, if, on, on this crazy idea? But I, I guess maybe they don't care. They're like the First Order in terms of just, we'll just plug them in, see what happens. Um... It's it's a it's an insane plan, and uh, I don't see how anyone thinks any of it is going to work. Um, they are going to get Homelander away from Ryan by setting up a bunch of speakers to play a loud sound. And of course, if you have super hearing, that would be more annoying. Um, I saw, I, I think it was someone's stream, someone we didn't even bring up. Had uh, Homelander taken Ryan with him to inspect the sound, the whole plan would have fallen apart. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even thought of that. I was just like, damn, yeah, it's lucky he left him behind, I guess. <laughs> um, because the idea that it's like, no, he left him behind because he knows it's safe in the cabin. I'd be like, okay, number one, you don't know that. This could have been, a, like, if Homelander had half a brain cell, he could assume that this is a plan from somebody. Two, Ryan's a superhero. So, it, it, like, I don't see what, like, what would be the concern? Stormfront killing him or some shit? I don't know. Um, it's... Him destroying the sound things doesn't make sense either. Because, like, there's, like, 50 of them. And he chops and off, he like, three. <laughs> yeah, shit. he lasers, like, 10 of them, and then all the rest of them just, like, 
stop working even though they're in I guess it would condition. look a little bit weirder if he was just going zigzaggy, you know? Like, well, I, I suppose mean, you could cut the scene at him starting to laser and then yeah. cut back later. I mean, there's all different ways they could have handled that. Oh, or they sure. could have just had, like, one big device. Like, they didn't have to have, you know, a million of the little things, right? Well, yeah. Um, and it's it's just an odd idea. They think that that's gonna like I'll, I'll be able to show visuals for it in a sec, but we got a we got a meme. Everyone, check it out. <laughs> it's a funny one. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's a good one. <laughs> His face is so perfect. Those faces yeah. fit really well. They do. Yeah, the good job. Fit very well. Um. Well, the scene that follows cutting the deal is like one of the few actually good scenes in the in the entire show. Oh yeah, one last thing before we go to that one, I guess, is yeah, that yeah, uh, Butcher thinks that he can have Ryan taken away by Vort and live happily ever after with Becca. Yeah, yeah as if that's insane. like <laughs> how what is that a an option? He is <laughs> fucking idiot. But yeah, yeah, she would never is ever really ever big... stop. Yeah, I mean, she'd never forgive him for sure. Like, why would he think that she'd be? This is that's her son. <laughs> I mean, like, she her wouldn't... child. Yeah, she said the reason that they didn't leave together the first in the first place yep. is because she said Ryan's coming with us. He already oh, knows you know, this won't work. Yeah. So, but that's the thing is like, dude, you fucking head man. Like, you may have not grown up with this kid, but she raised him. So, son, you think she's just gonna be cool with abandoning him? But but she's an idiot. Like I said, everyone's a fucking idiot this season. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, this was a good also, scene. Um, it, that actually brings up another question. When they were originally going to leave with Becca, Ryan, and Butcher, and they were going to climb over the wall, like, how... Okay, so how Butcher... Explain Butcher yeah. Well, Butcher can climb over himself. Becca doesn't have the upper body strength, so maybe with help, um, like, Butcher could have helped her climb up over. But what are they going to do with Ryan? Like, yeah, he has superpowers, but he doesn't know how to use them. They'll dig. So are they going to, like, put him in a basket and, like, <laughs> His mold haul him, <laughs> and, like, haul him over the, the wall or something? Yeah, fuck it. Let's just throw him over. <laughs> He'll be fine. They He'll can survive. attach the grappling hook to his shirt and just pull him over the side or something. Maybe, maybe that is the ad, so he'd hold on to the I rope while know. Butcher pulls the rope up. How about that? Or he'd yeah. say, oh, I'm going to go for a smoke, and they just hide in the car or something. <laughs> um, so yeah, this this scene is Homelander talking about how you don't go from, you don't automatically become a Superman type. You you move your way there, you grow your way there, and that uh, even he has cried before. It's like the one scene that I actually, of this season, I'm like, hey. This, this is, is a good scene. I really yeah, like this yeah, scene. Yeah. And it stands out as being good compared to all of the pretty much terrible ones uh, or passable ones. But this one was actually good. And I want to know where this character has been this whole season. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, imagine yeah. they like all the writers came down with some kind of like food poisoning when they got an order. And like the guy who, I don't know, cleans the room was like, I can write this scene, I guess, while you guys are ill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like when Ringo wanted to write a song. And so they were just like, yeah, yeah all right, sure, write your song. Da, da, da. And then they looked at it and it's like, oh, shit, this is actually really, really good. Can you teach us how to do this? But it was too late. He was already down the <laughs> hall and taking waste baskets thing. and he was gone. He was, <laughs> I never saw him again, except later. But yeah, we, we have that cool scene. And then the next scene is in preparing for war while sending, you know, pictures to the press that Stormfront is a Nazi. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, more memes. Like, someone manages to make, like... Okay, Nazi so memes. I can understand, I can understand, like, images. You could throw that stuff together in, like, two minutes. But someone manages to make, like, a fully animated cartoon. Oh, you're right, yeah. Oh. Oh. Like... <laughs> Within like within minutes of the announcement and the information getting yeah. out there, someone well, takes a while, guys. They <laughs> they suspected it, I guess. <laughs> they they just had a hunch that. that she was a secret Nazi laboratory experiment. They just had it. They called him crazy, but he knew it, and he he had this ready for that announcement. And once it came, the news came out. He slapped upload and is like, mm. Finally. Ultimate vindication. Oh my god, I made a Nazi vision of like every single one of them, and this one's finally going to be relevant. <laughs> like, here we go, <laughs> upload. Uh, and then I think, what what did Kimiko and uh, Frenchie talk about in the scene right before, like, oh, they're talking about Dancing. her like freezing up over uh, yeah. Stormfront? 
yeah, to, not really important at all. Honestly, it feels like something that doesn't seem important to anything that was happening. What the fuck like, is this animation? I just, up? I, don't get it. I just managed to get it on stream for everybody. Nazi <sighs> Stormfront Hitler's star. I guess these are lyrics. Run her over with a car. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, Oh, what did she? She said uh, she she used the word the term white genocide in this scene before that, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. It's uh... another one of those. It just slaps you totally out <laughs> of the whole thing. <laughs> These internet terminology. It feels like they didn't even really earn that. I I get that she's well, racist, yeah. but she thinks there's a white genocide now. Like, damn. Yeah, I don't know where this came from. The weird one. I like, think she would have alluded to it. Because no. we never really got the whole race message that they ever put out to anybody, you know? But why is she saying it to a kid who's totally divorced from the political landscape? Yeah, well, <laughs> he's yeah, he's just... He has no idea what you're talking about! Yeah, he's just confused. He just, he's just like, yeah. okay. Also, I, I did Even like... Even Homeland is confused. Well, I was gonna say, <laughs> Homeland is stupid enough to say this, I just still find it funny. He's like, I find it easier to start up my lasers when, I, when it's someone I hate. You're like... Yes, okay. To set up for thirty minutes later. <laughs> no, of course, but on its own, it's just like, what are you? <laughs> what? I love how it's just that's that's all I've got for all of these things. It's like this thing that just sets this other thing up <laughs> a few minutes later. Hey, Fringy, did so... you did you catch how dumbass Homelander is teaching his kid how to fire lasers, and he's <laughs> placed the target right in front of his own fucking house. <laughs> See, at this oh, point, you man. wonder if it's on purpose. Please burn it down. Do burn it. it all fucking down so we never have to come here again. Um, He's also using a toy of the deep, which the deep, which uh, yeah, the deep is a joke. Ryan might be opposed to destroying. Yeah, like, whatever. Wait, would Ryan even know. know what the deep is? I guess he would at this point. Yeah, um, well, he knows who Homelander is, so he. Yeah. yeah. Wait so, a minute. <laughs> Why would he know who Homelander is if he lives in a fortress designed to shelter him from like? Is the, the idea with world? the fortress that it's like the world is out in this fortress? You're just not allowed to go see it. Like the Truman Show, kind of. Kind of. No, I don't. Uh, I don't think. I don't think he learned about Homelander until the end of season one, like when he first appears. And um, Homelander's like, hey, I'm your dad. And then, like, there's kind of the uncomfortable explanation. Because later on, when we get the whole PewDiePie thing, um, what's his name? Uh, or, or, or Stormfront's like, oh, your dad was in movies. And Ryan's like, oh, you were in movies? And he's like, yeah. And he starts listing off a bunch of them and stuff. And then he's like, oh, there's even a roller coaster. And he's all excited and he wants to leave. There's actually another scene that we kind of skipped over um that i thought was actually decent which was when um becca gets mad at this because she doesn't want ryan to know about this stuff and they go outside and then becca and ryan have oh excuse me becca and homelander have a talk and he and he says like look you can't hide all this stuff from him it's gonna fuck him up and you know when he when he does get out there he's gonna panic and he's like look what happened to me like it's kind of like, he kind of recognizes that he's screwed up, and he doesn't want it to happen to his kid, and it actually seemed like it was kind of a sincere, sincere moment, and he's like... Hmm. Um, I would agree with that in concept rather than execution, because he's, uh, the way he's handling it with his son is, like, awful, so the idea that we got this one moment where he's, he's being almost intelligent, which, like, much like the other scene where he talks to Ryan about a... The crying, crying yeah. thing. To me, it's just almost like out of character. There's someone someone in chat was like, that is kind of in character for him to have placed the doll there that it would burn his own house down. I'm like, if the show's convinced you he's a dumbass at this point, then yeah, I guess so. <laughs> like <laughs> that's fine, honestly. Like but I just that that takes the parts where he's intelligent to a position where I'm just like, Yeah, I don't think that's the character you've been building. Um so they leak the evil Nazitisms. Um, and the funny picture that we all wanted to get with her and Hitler arises. Yay, finally. Storm it was, it was glorious. <laughs> Did you just notice that on the bottom there of the CNN it says, Credible lead ties Stormfront to Jeffrey Epstein's death. Oh my god. Really? 
I'm sure not sure what it, that we meant to me, no, what great. I... Uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> I, I honestly think that's their attempt at being funny, I guess. Like, I, I feel like know. that's meant to be a joke, yeah. Um, um, and I, also, I guess you, we see that, uh... Oh, yep. You know the idea that this is a deep fake or this is a Photoshop? I could believe it. She doesn't really look like Stormfront there in that particular picture. Yeah. She looks kind of weird. I'd I guess like, it's the hmm. documents, right? The other stuff. Oh, of course. It's just I find this picture things, amusing because yeah. it's... Hitler. <laughs> well, I mean, it's because that one probably is like a fake. Well, it has to. Well, been. they're all going to be fake <laughs> if they're. Uh... Oh, I think I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I got. Well, a but time like you machine. could fake. You could fake it better than that. You could use yeah, you her. Could. You could Photoshop her into it, but it looks like someone else. It's so. Great. Oh, and I think the idea is she's think... there with Hitler. It's just. It's... <laughs> it's... I think that the idea in uh, the subsequent scene is Maeve is like, oh no, now this makes me care because you're a Nazi. Like the kind of look she gives her when she's walking past. She was apathetic, and now she actually needs to stop her. Yeah, uh, may as well signpost that. Maeve spots Stormfront in Vort Tower. There she is. She's looking upset. Wonder how that'll affect things to come. And so, yeah, once they activate the sound, they knew that Homelander would check it out separate from Ryan, and they knew that he wouldn't be able to deal with it very fast. For example, traveling to the sound source at the speed of sound, probably going to be pretty quick. <laughs> it's Lasering quick, it, yeah. and then traveling back at the speed of sound, your window is going to be very small. You gotta, and yet they managed to drive all the way over to this cabin, search it out, and then have this discussion that lasts way too long. Yeah. Um, and of course drive back, and somehow they manage to get out fine, and, yeah, and Homelander arrives a little late, and he wants to interrogate these group of Vought security soldier people who are like, wait, where's the kid? We're supposed to pick up the kid. What's going on? Then Homeland is like, yeah, what is going on, gentlemen? What's, uh, where's my son? And he apparently <laughs> blows all of them up to the point of splashing flesh and blood all over him in an attempt to find an <laughs> well, answer they that they don't have. Well, they wanted him to look have. scary, even though it makes no sense that he would be drenched in blood. Yeah, he would. I, I, I like the convenient chatter on the, uh, on this walk, on the guy's walkie-talkie as well. So oh, like, shit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get a kid? Like, oh, yeah, so <laughs> Homelander going into this building has no reason to assume anything evil of these people necessarily. They could, yeah. They're a part of Vought, too, so they could be like, Sir, we're, you know, we're here to help you, or something like that. Oh, yeah, like the, uh, the yeah, obvious thing that they out. say is, we, get, we found out the kid was missing, we, we came in to investigate, have you seen him? Have you seen your son? But unfortunately for them, someone on the radio <laughs> says, did you get the kid yet? And so Hoblad is like, hmm, <laughs> like, oh no. Uh, but of course, it doesn't make sense because if he was to talk to the, you know, commanding officer, whoever they may be, and say, "Where is my son?" and the commanding officer says, "I don't know," Homelander would be able to tell he's not lying, and that would be it. Yeah, yeah. So instead, Homelander has to rip into and them all Homelander personally. Homelander wasting all this time. Yeah, and allowed... splash flash all over the yeah. room. Make and, him look creepy when he. Uh, well, but if he had done, done that, that, and then left the place, he would have been able to catch up with the boys because they're all having a big discussion right now. Naturally. Um, this is one of his childish like outbursts, like burning yeah. down the trailer and stuff. I, I just mean it's just super lucky for our heroes that uh, Homeland is making all the decisions he makes in this episode. I mean, it's super what lucky. What was Vought's plan, though? Decided to fly back to Bot Tower as well because yeah. Oh I yeah. Mean, Sorry, yeah. We didn't is... mention why did Stormfront fly back to Vault Tower? Why to look at the video on on that video screen? Why? <laughs> you can <laughs> only do it on the meme screens. Yeah, you can't just... do it on your phone oh, yeah. that you have. It's funny because just... whatever reason you come up with, it will be in opposition to whatever the reason you can come up with for why she came back so quickly. You know, like this doesn't work. Also, uh. I can't remember where or when this was, but we definitely got an answer on this. Hey, uh, hey guys, does that belt yeah. look buckled? It da, doesn't, da, da, it da, da, doesn't da, da, look buckled. That doesn't look very safe. Hmm. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> oh. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> like, I, I, I'm sure all of you never really buckle your belts, and how many times have you crashed? Like, zero. So really, it's fine. Unfortunately... Stormfront is on the prowl. She comes back to this exact spot. Who knows why? Like, honestly, why? I don't know. 
Um, and this is what happens to the car. Just, um, <laughs> let me let me get that distance shock. So I always find it really funny. Um, you know, we were talking earlier about the the Huey one, and whether or yeah, not he should have been more or less hurt, depending on a couple of variables. I think this one's a little bit more categorical, don't you guys think? <laughs> the fact that the car didn't get crushed oh. is pretty unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> it's so absurd. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how high up it went. It's crazy. It's oh, crazy. The car is mostly like, fine. Jeez. Like, come on, that's insane. There's no way they survived that. Or at least they were seriously injured. It would be a miracle. If they lived with seatbelts, I would be shocked. So the, the big surprise that I think both of us had when we first watched this immediately is, so this is, I'm about to play the scene where it it's coming to a stop. Boom, 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 boom. The car doesn't seem to bend or break. It just, no. it's solid. Yeah, which is car. really if they odd. didn't want to do the the animations to have the model you know change or well crumple, I, I assume it's to justify wanted... why they're unhurt it's like see the car yeah, managed it... to take most of the damage you're like what yeah as to point out what someone said in chat i rolled a truck off cliff from icy road rolled five times down not a scratch so here's the thing i totally believe you if you're wearing a seatbelt and all your car does is roll over you're fine and you're walking out of that crash because that's what cars and seat seat belts are designed to do that's what happens but they weren't wearing seatbelts, and they got thrown and, through the air. And, and as someone pointed around. out, they landed roof first, and it doesn't yeah. buckle. It just bounces. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, that's insane. But, you know, it freaked us all out for a moment there. Very scary. Now, this is the interesting thing. We kind of brought it up earlier. Uh, everyone's going to face off with Stormfront. Our retards don't go and grab the RPG. <laughs> Instead, they pull out their pistols. RPGs. Yeah, don't. Yeah, that'll stop her. Your pistols will definitely. Well, maybe if they hit her in the eye. You had one job. Like, let the superheroes distract Stormfront, set up the RPG rocket thing, uh, electric mm -hmm. thing, and then use Go it. On. But no, we gotta have our big old fight. Guan, get your rocket launcher with your EMP. Yeah, oh, and for reference, everyone in the car is fine. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, yeah, they're fine. Don't worry about it. They don't even have the rocket launcher like lying around here somewhere. It's like in the back of the car on the back seats, propped up. It's like, wh why? What are you doing? You think you'd have somebody with it ready, like yeah. behind a tree or something? You'd think. Yeah, and so they're like, oh, it's so bad. They're like, wait, Huey, quick, go and get the RPGs. <laughs> get the RPGs. <laughs> and so Stormfront just blows them up. Because why wouldn't yeah. you? Anything else would have been stupid. She remembers the Panzer Shreks from the 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 World War Two, and she's like, "Nah, -uh. no bazooka, I mean, Americano." No bazooka. You wouldn't even have to yell. Like, doesn't <laughs> she does have some level of super hearing, right? So, like, he, I think so. He, even, if, even if he just said it, like, "Hey, hey, Huey, go get the RPGs," she would probably still hear it. Do you so, need like, one? You would think that they were like, wouldn't he just? Man, Go they were really him. close to the explosion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. By the way, is there, is there a window open or something? Because normally electricity doesn't get easy into a car, right? Well, if I you're in a car and you're struck car. by lightning, you'll be fine. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I was getting at. I mean, I, I don't know how it exactly works, obviously, when you well, it lifts do one of your superpowers, I, say, I mean. <laughs> yeah, they're lucky about that explosion. That's yeah. fine, though. I'm sure it's all fine. It's all fine. Totally unscathed. They're unhurt. It's all good. And we've effectively set up that the RPG is gone. Oh, no. I, oh, no. I also think we've, we've talked before about how her electric can do between 0 and 10 damage, apparently. And whenever yeah. it's one of our heroes, it's on 1. Yeah. Or well, whatever, you know, whatever it's like a human who can't, the boys specifically, it doesn't kill them immediately. And then Maeve Ex Machina, right on <laughs> yep. schedule. Oh, there she, she is. Sneaks up. Yeah. Woo! Sneaky What's Maeve even... taking a peek. <laughs> she just, uh, she was at What's Fort even... Tower. Stormfront left Fort Tower and started this fight immediately, a few minutes after Maeve is here. Maeve has no superpowers that involve traveling beyond jumping far. <laughs> if we can call that that. Sorry? Which wouldn't even really increase her speed to any significant degree. 
Would, and yeah. on top of that, if she was like leaping through the air and like slamming into the ground, don't you think people in the area would have noticed? Like <laughs> when there's just suddenly this massive impact yeah, noise? She, she wouldn't be able to surprise attack Stormfront while doing that. Um, What's even dumber about this though is if you go, oddly, frame by frame, <laughs> sorry, cat. If you go frame by frame, you can um, actually see like behind uh, Stormfront, it, it shows an angle of uh, Kimiko on the ground and it shows the road and there's nothing there. Oh, then it shows a front, front view of Stormfront and you can see behind Stormfront. At, granted, it's at a little bit of an angle, but you can still see behind her. And in both of those scenes, like both of those like little cuts, there is absolutely nothing on the road whatsoever behind Stormfront. And then when she turns around, she's just there. So, like, I mean, maybe if they had made it so, like, you could see Maeve, like, walking forward when Kamiko is on the ground. And it's like, oh, okay. Oh, 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 what's going to happen? But no, she just, like, boop, there. It would, be, it would be cool if she was sprinting toward her in the background when, you, when we do these pauses. But that is not the case. There you go, people. That's the shot you need. No Maeve. She must have jumped and landed right next to her and then hit her. <laughs> to dramatically do all that. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, of course, girls get it done. Yeah. Bet they do. Yeah. Remember that thing uh, we made fun of? We're doing nothing, it. <laughs> nothing to do that they have superpowers here. It's whammons, beating up on a whammons. Now, but then, that is... Oh. The complete of the the first what you could call climax and it's a little confusing because she flies away You're like wait is it over then because i mean mm. stormfront can regroup now and um yeah. i can't remember who i asked this last but fuck it, i'll just throw it out to any of you guys who don't like try and aim for a genuine answer as if you hadn't seen this episode what is stormfront's goal right now uh Escape. kill them all i guess right? um so if i'm being beat the fuck up by a bunch of people around me Three of which I know are superhero. Oh, all of them. Um, I would want to leave. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. escape. If I was beaten to a pulp and uh, my goals in life are to generate that soup army, that's my main thing, then yeah, I'm out of here. Uh, hopefully Homelander can help me out in future. I can probably work on getting that PR storm dealt with. Um, but no, I mean, she... Chooses to go after Ryan. Uh, For I don't, some reason, I don't get it. But think about well, yeah, because she doesn't have an issue specifically with him. Because okay, so she's getting beat up. She flies into the air. None of the other characters can fly. She can just like hover zap and zap them with lightning the yeah. entire time. Like nobody. Like what are they gonna do? They could oh, like try to oh, we throw, throw something at her, but like. At it's Mola, like it's doing anything. Girls Get It Done is a reference to Endgame's female scene. The crew said so. But, like, it's done unironically. So, I guess they missed the first half of the stream. Um, when they satirize it, and they have it as part of Vought's, like, promotional shit, where they have three girls with their fists up saying, Girls Get It Done. That's great. I love it. Great stuff. When you actually do it, you've, you've done it. I don't understand how this is sat <laughs> satire anymore when you literally do the thing. Uh, oh, girls really do get it done. What, what, like, uh, do we do understand the difference, right? I don't know. <laughs> just, I'm just a little bit lost on this one. It's, um, but, but yeah, uh, Stormfront doesn't take advantage of the fact that she can fly and shoot lightning at the same time, I think. <laughs> Well, the show net seems to forget all the time about the flying ones. Just fly through these people. <laughs> like, that's just do that. I just love the idea that it's like, oh my god, uh, making fun of Thing. Thing is so lame, right, guys? Yeah, let's do it. Instead of yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah, but when we do it, it's okay we do it the do right it. way. They can't even appeal to it. Like I said, they can't even appeal to making sense because it doesn't. So it's just like, go away. Because the you could argue that the Infinity Infinity War has one. Remember the three girls together, beating up. How the girl? could I forget? But like, I, I just like the, the, that one seemed fine to me. But no bullshit uh, had a problem with that one, right? I believe. Which one? Sorry. Uh, it's not overt. It's just that uh, 
someone's beaten a black widow i think and she says like you're gonna die alone and then someone says she's not alone and it's uh, it's Scarlet yeah, Witch it's, and okay. I mean, I th I don't feel like that is the thing that people think it is. Then I don't know. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> I, the, like, those three are on the battlefield. There's no reason why they wouldn't yeah. help each other. Like I'm fine As with it. As opposed to like 15 people. Being yeah, the, in the, the end game one is absolute time. garbage. Um, and then this yeah. one is cringy because it comes from them having made fun of the same shit. So I just don't get it. Um, yeah, so she zaps Butcher, but of course she doesn't kill him, because that would be bad for the plot. Mm -hmm. She yeah. she even, like, hardcore throws him into a tree, and uh, it just doesn't... He'll yeah, he'll just recover. Like, he didn't even have a seatbelt on. Um, <laughs> so, like, Becca stabs her in the eye. Oh, wait. Uh, that is a... Oh, yeah, right, all right, right before, ahead. I just want to highlight how funny this moment is. She just... Zombifiably walks up to Ryan like, Ryan, it's okay, come with me, it's all gonna be good. She gets like really close and holds her arm out, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Woman yeah, doesn't want to go here. with you. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's She gets so optics. close and uh Yeah, then the thing happens. Go ahead. <laughs> well, she stabs her in the eye with the Big knife that's hit her brain. She's dead. Yeah, <laughs> crazy precision as well. Yeah, pretty, pretty <laughs> nuts, isn't it? I think, but you, yeah, she's I think dead. Could, I think you could even argue that her invulnerability wouldn't allow that to happen, anyways, unless it's like selective. Well, this is the whole thing, right? Impervious to nukes, but apparently knives can go through eyes. Well, guess what? Nukes can also go through <laughs> eyes. Well, so, <laughs> and shrapnel and explosions and concussive and force. Lots of things. Hey, man. Yeah, bullets. How big that knife is. Uh, long that knife is. It's huge. Yeah, well, I wanted to highlight, right? So we can see here that it's gone through what looks to be like flush to the handle, which is pretty. Yeah. Pretty bad. And now let's see how big that handle is. Oh, well, the knife is relative to. God damn it, my pausing game is off today. I right, hold on. I'll, I'll get it. Let me see. Oh my! It's it is it is the length of her like fist. <laughs> <laughs> so that's you're dead. Gonna hurt. You're dead. Yeah. Well, Jesus. Her is my <laughs> Look at that beast, and it's not even like yeah. it's thick too. Well, thick as in <laughs> what's the correct the 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 depth of it. I'm not sure which dimension I'm I mean, gunning for I here. I don't. I know what you mean. But uh, it's, it's wide. It's, yeah, it's a big knife. That's gonna hurt you. <laughs> That's in your brain. Yeah. There's no way about it. Also, I do like this image of her. She looks so annoyed. Like, <laughs> oh man, not my eye. You took my That's eye. That's my secret Nazi lab experiment eye. <laughs> that was so, my favorite eye. Um, so yeah, I don't see how anybody would have watched this and not been like, wait, what? You can do that? That? Yeah, it, it's it's so dumb. It, in the span of about one minute, so let's see, she's immune to bullets, but then her invulnerability gets turned off and she gets hit by the knife. But then it gets turned back on when Butcher is trying to hit her with a crowbar and it does nothing. Oh, dude, why but didn't he they... stab her in the eye with a crowbar? That would have worked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then it gets shut off again when Ryan hits her. Also, I should point out that um, the reason why they did the eye thing is because it happened in the comics. Except right. it wasn't Becca who did it. It was Kimiko who did it. And um, the reason why Kamiko could do it is because she has super strength. She basically like gouged out Stormfront's eye. So my question is, okay, you want to do the thing because the thing was done in the comic. Why didn't you do it in the previous fight with Kamiko, uh, Maeve, and, and Starlight? That would have been a much better kind of... Um, uh, rationale for Stormfront to just quickly escape. You know, she loses an eye, she panics, and then she flies away. And then when she finally lands and she tries to talk to Ryan, obviously she looks gruesome, her eye's been ripped out. That would make it even more repulsive. So it would link all these things together in a logical way where it makes sense. Okay, superpowered person commits, you know, has damage on another person. Instead of you know, Excalibur pocket knife <laughs> able to... Well, someone you know just what I mean? Like, it seems to have cut her eyelid as well, which now it raises even yeah. more questions. Oh, uh, wait. Wait, no, that can't... No, no, no. that's going to be possible. <laughs> <laughs> 
God, you just you gotta pick something. Is it her skin? Is it her eyeballs? What what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out. And then, and then yeah, Ryan lasers uh and pretty badly hurts uh Yeah, so hierarchy of powers we have to just assume then that his laser is the most powerful laser, like it's a fucking intense laser. Well it's gotta be stronger than uh yeah. than Home, uh, home that motherfucker yeah. went into space. It's going to slam into a planet at some point and destroy the whole thing. <laughs> um, because it, it takes her legs off and her arm. We had someone say like uh, that we'd missed a detail and that it wasn't Ryan who killed the mum. It was Stormfront. She dug into a neck with her hand or some shit. It's like no, they're they explicit. Would. It's Ryan who did it, which is confusing because yeah. a laser would probably cauterize. But uh, yeah, it's well, weird it's... that this is the first yeah. time this knife seems to create that kind of wound well it, i think what's weird is that you know stormfront's pretty messed up and yet the mum isn't a pile of goo well so this is this is something i think i asked rags when when, when we did the stream i was like what happened so you have two <laughs> bodies one with the arm on, on the other's neck and you have a laser yeah. go off that hits body a's head uh, right arm chopping it off and both legs chopping them off and only the left part of the neck of person B like damn that's some interesting cutting around you did there I yeah. just it's weird to me because if you lasered off uh, Stormfront's legs you'd totally hit in the mum's legs I don't see how you'd you yeah. miss here mm -hmm. Um, but uh, but she needed to die dramatically and in a way that she could convey information to him. Wait, well, yeah, everyone um, felt like it's what's the dealio? Like it's just like pop culture reference to Anakin. Like people actually feel like that's what they're going for, I guess. I, I oh, you think so? Like uh, that, I was, that's, I that's mean, what I've is. heard. Look at her. One it of is. her arms is fine, and three of her limbs aren't. Yeah, and the face is burned. Like it, it I gotta admit, it's like damn, that is close to Anakin. But, In, yeah. Yeah, uh, so the knife thing is definitely pulled directly from the comics, but um, other than, like, she, like Stormfront never, that never happens to Stormfront in the comics. In the comics, he loses the eye, and then he gets his head smashed in, and his brains get pulled out, basically. Huh. So. Well, I'm guessing they may want to bring her back. Mecha yes, Stormfront Season 3, 4 even. Mecha Stormfront yeah. Season 4, there you go. Yeah. But yeah, that's um, Mecha dead. Uh, oh, and someone sword. highlighted worth mentioning. It's weird that Starlight can't use the electricity that Stormfront uses against her. <laughs> yeah, yeah like that's supercharged. And what's funny is they referenced as an example <laughs> of Thor powering up Iron Man as like a cool combo thing, and it's like, yeah, but the MCU is way better than the boys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's the edgy, controversial take. Well, I guess I should clarify the the better movies the of the MCU. Of, yeah, because there are there yeah. are movies of the MCU that are. Captain Marvel is probably worse than the boys overall, I guess. Uh, but we're not uh, like Iron Man three. Yeah, Black oh, Panther God. is pretty bad. Yeah. Um, those are the those are the trifecta of bad from the MCU, right? And then you can have like Thor two and a few extras, the really bad ones. Um, so yeah, she bleeds out, and she tells him to look after the kid, and then. We get to the big final blackmail. Oh no, here we go. Yeah. Homelander shows up and he's like, oh geez, Stormfront, <laughs> you're looking weird with your German and you're <laughs> dying. <laughs> I can't understand you, what are you saying? Uh, most Before people were off. laughing at that, by the way, her just talking in German. It's just like, what yeah. yeah, stop That's doing that, That's funny. <laughs> um... Before yeah. Homelander arrives, like right before he arrives, um, Butcher picks up the crowbar and it looks like he's gonna go and kill Ryan. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but... then he only stops because Homelander arrives. And then he's like, I made a promise. And it's like, wait. <laughs> you were gonna kill him like two seconds ago. Yeah, I didn't mean to uh, mismatch that. That was a bit of a weird back and forth. Um. So Homeland is upset, of course, and he's like, right, I'm taking my son, getting the fuck out of here. And then uh, Butch is like, lol, nah. And then he's like, okay, I'll just kill you then. Like, yeah. it's been long enough. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, uh, he kills Butcher, and the credits roll. And yep. next season yeah. we'll see Homelander and his son, probably, uh, learning to bond. Yeah. It's going to be a lot Very of fun. Very interesting to see how and he carries he... on the story, you know? Yeah. But for the fun of it, uh, we've actually designed an entire simulation <laughs> of this episode <laughs> in The Matrix... And we're going to inject Maeve into this scene, suddenly. 
We're just gonna drop yeah. her in copy paste style. It's gonna be really funny. Let's Boom, let's see how it thrived. plays out. She's here. Oh look, yeah. there she is. Let's see let's see what happens. Oh, she's gonna pull out her phone and say, "Hey, you know this thing that you did? I'm gonna show the world if you unless you don't pursue." Uh, her, her girlfriend. You don't you... pursue them, you don't pursue me or Elena, and you don't pursue Starlight. You basically, like, and, and it's funny, she may as well have just said stop being evil. Because, yeah. like, <laughs> why not at this point? And, um, Homelander agrees. Yeah, he agrees. He says, I, yes. I do like that if Maeve showed up a few seconds later, yeah. they're dead. <laughs> And do you like how she showed up, but none of the boys are? Like, where is everybody? Yeah. I guess they're just chilling They out. can't teleport like Maeve can. Well, do you, just, do you yeah. like the idea that they're all waiting in that, like, runway area, whatever it is, and uh, Maeve is like, I smell something, and jumps. Sure and then they're fine. all like, I'm sure they'll be fine. Where are you going, Maeve? <laughs> What's going on? She's how, like, would she, how would she even find them anyways? Maeve doesn't have, like, super hearing. She doesn't have anything. She just uh, she just turns she's up. She's just Wonder Woman, basically. She's just generally yeah. strong. Yeah. <sighs> um. But yeah, th this is so Homelander. What you should have done, uh, is just killed her immediately, or <laughs> shot the phone and then killed her, and then killed Butcher, and then congrats, you win. And then kill Starlight as well, I guess, and the boys just find them oh all, God, and then dude. you've won. You win! How about, it's over! How about, like... we, how about we do the ending where Homelander doesn't land there in time, Butcher beats the child to death and it actually works, <laughs> blood is everywhere. Then Homelander sees it, goes nuts and burns Butcher to death, flies over to the boys, slices them all in half, grabs Maeve like a rag doll, and just slams her into several planets and then into the sun. <laughs> And then he's like, he just rules over Earth as Emperor Homelander. Like, yeah, fuck it, well, let's do I mean, it. Yeah, this this should be your death note, you know, light standing over... Oh, uh, we... I mean, surely we can do spoilers for 15-year-old anime at this point. Well, I think, I think people yeah. want us to see that one. I don't know if it's... Oh, yeah, actually, I just realized, because, yeah, I'll, uh, don't worry. <laughs> That's fine. But, uh, but, yeah, the general thing here is you've won. And as I was watching the scene, all I thought is, oh, it's, it's over. You. This is it. This is the end of the show. It has to be. Yeah. Uh, this was really disappointing. This was one of those balloons letting loose all of its air. You're just like, uh, okay. That's how it ends. She's just gonna threaten you that. Could, you um, could just laser the phone, kill Maeve, kill Butcher, fly yeah. off. I mean, why would it matter anyway? He's been seen killing innocent people. If you just get some Nazi memes going, he'll be fine. Like. What's the concern, Homelander? The funny thing is, uh, he wouldn't lose the adoration and love of the world with that video well, getting released Well, yeah, because her logic is that uh, no one will ever... And also, Maeve, are you... He said, hey, if you do that, I'm just going to end the human race. And you're like, yeah, that's cool with me. So well, you could, <laughs> you could call that a bluff, I guess. It's a, it's a rough play by Maeve, but I, I still just think that he would have just killed her. Oh, of course he would. What... Like, and, and also, you know you're not safe. He'll just get you when you least expect it. Well, yeah, and rolling on, now the status quo is Maeve and Starlight are both in the Seven still, and, and they've been reinstated, yeah. which is like, wow, okay. <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, did you well, that's put, the thing. Did you put um, a new tracker into Starlight? <laughs> or... that's, uh, it's, it's weird. The show wants its status quo, but the status quo has been irreversibly destroyed. Yeah. Uh, they um, said everything bad in the world was caused by Stormfront, so that's <clears> fine. Um, and Homelander... Yeah, and everyone just goes along with that. And Homelander's got his position as respected and awesome Eroman, and he masturbates across the city. <laughs> yeah. He was really sad about losing his son, which is why we see him masturbating in this scene over the city. Yeah, I don't quite understand how any of this really works. Is she... Because I don't see... Like, Homeland is really stupid, I get that. But, like, what? how is it that Maeve can be like, yeah, so I'm going to hold this over your head forever? It's like, mm, I don't think it's, that's... So is, is, that, is that the get-out-of-jail-free card for, like, everything? Everything, every... yeah. <laughs> every single thing they don't want Homelander to do, I guess they'll threaten to release the video. That's just... I'm yeah. yeah. I'm sure he'll just stand for that. Um, um, I think they were really yeah. proud of this shot. 
of him. I think they were too, yeah. <laughs> they were like, this is so cool, but it came so just ill-timed for me with this, because I was trying to understand what they were doing with Homelander, and I thought it was kind of cool when they <laughs> zoom in on him having to lie about everybody who he kind of hates being a team player. Like, that's, yeah. that's interesting, and then that mm. happens, and I was like, oh. Well... Well, we had a few good seconds. Yeah, whatever <laughs> whatever works for you, show. Like Boomer memes. Someone, ugh, someone brought up uh, Black Noir waking up. And I, <laughs> I don't think it's going to have any issue now because Maeve has been brought back into the seven carte blanche. So yeah, even they... when Noir wakes up and says, hey, she did it, uh, it's not going to change anything. No, unfortunately. Uh, and... Like, like, I just don't believe Homelander would allow them to have this kind of leverage on him. It controls his entire life, and then he ends with saying, "I can do whatever I want." It's like you literally can't. Uh, that that was the point of um, the, the the leverage they had on you. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess A -train's in the seven. Right. Uh, A train is welcome back into the seven, which doesn't make any sense. The whole reason he was booted out was because he was no longer in the top twenty runners, and he had a heart condition. His heart condition is just gone. Is he one of the best runners again? I don't know. He's reinstated thanks to the collective when he was booted out by Homelander. I guess the leverage on Homelander means he can no longer decide who's in the seven. I don't know. What well, wasn't the idea that they need some? Black representation after all the Nazi stuff. Yeah, but Homelander yeah. decided he's not in the Seven. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. I, I'm just I guess that means that nothing there. now. There was their explanation. Well, I don't like. I don't really need an explanation for anybody getting into the Seven from the perspective of Vought or the Collective. I don't care who they yeah. choose. But Homelander was the one who booed him, and he was for a very specific reason. But that reason <clears throat> is forgotten by this point, I guess. Even though nothing's changed. It is kind of yeah. funny with the heart condition, though, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think there was a seed they had for that, or they didn't keep it in? <laughs> this isn't important. That's See, just the show. Do you think there was a scene to explain this, and they, they just didn't put it in? They, yeah, they kind of did during the... Um, when he was handing over the, the files to Huey and Starlight, she asks, you know, uh, you know, how's your heart? And he says, it's fine. Do you want to try it sort of deal? You want to try me or whatever, whatever? And like that's it, and that's like, okay, he's he's a hundred percent again. Like we're just supposed to take it at face value. Um, someone in chat said, uh, I think that the, the deeps arc was a waste of time. You know what? You're right. I, I think I you're agree. on point with that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, in case anyone isn't aware, uh, the, the deep is told at this scene that he won't be coming back to the seven, and he's angry, yeah. and then he says, "Fuck Fresca." It's funny because they gave him Fresco. Yeah. I you know, I've just paused on the shot where it's uh Butcher and, and uh Ryan sitting next to the lake and I'm like, this could be a whole season, this frame, and you <laughs> you've you just decided not to do that? What <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. Do the this idea of a person who despises soups like raising having to a raise soup. a superhero as his yeah. son. He yeah, handed a storyline on a platter, and this is the thing: you can make that a storyline. You can make the boys continuing without Butcher under the tutelage of uh, Grace a plotline, and Huey with the Senate a plotline or Congress, whatever. Ugh. But nah, nah. Um, eh, eh. Oh yeah, and, and it's like what a fucking shame. Huey the more and, I think uh, about it, the more it depresses <clears throat> me. Yeah, we, it makes me well, sad. I was gonna say we, we were almost there now. Huey and Starlight are back together. Uh, they've got their own team the boys the mother's milk uh, is back with his wife and, and daughter which and feels Kimiko weird and the french are going on an adventure because yeah. i've brought it before uh i'll have to rewatch the shows like both of them but i'm pretty <laughs> sure the last we heard about mm's family was that they were pretty fucking pissed at him i don't know yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. of course he made her a dollhouse so <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and they go on an adventure, Master been over the city, blowing up the guy's head, yeah. which we've commented on would get her in. Why would she do I don't know why she did that. Why did she kill him? I don't know, I guess she doesn't like him. What? I Yeah, it seems like they were, I, get, I don't know. They wanted a cool reveal. I guess, but like... It seems dangerous man, to kill him. Like, a... Once we know all of the details by the end of season three, I guess, this seems like a bad choice. Um, 
Not I only because so. Stormfront is behind bars or hospital beds, whatever. Um, but this guy was like on your team. He was willing to give you information yeah. on other soups. In exchange for tax cuts, which I'm sure she's willing to push for when her so, greater goal is to do with superheroes. Really stupid. So I'm trying to figure out what could her motivation be to where that isn't something that she would not only not want, but want to destroy the guy who offered that. Yeah, and besides, he's just going to get replaced by a different leader for the collective, isn't he? Yeah, and then they're going to go through with the... Imagine if like, they checked the who the last person he spoke to was, and they, well, like... It's, Obviously, know. that's really suspicious, but not. Yeah. I say not enough. I mean, it was enough to convince <laughs> fucking A Train, right? So I guess the. It's yeah. pretty suspicious to get off a phone call and three seconds later your head just explodes for no <laughs> reason. That's a little sus. But hey, that's just me. Imagine um, if they had a camera outside of the Church of the Collective office and they just saw her there. It's like, oh, <laughs> game that over. Would, that would be awkward. And that's yeah. the boys' season two. Fucking uh, disaster. So, like we've gone over, uh, I'd say the most significant things are the damage done to Homelander and Butcher. Um, mm -hmm. Both garbled messes. I don't really understand much about either of them at this point, nor do I like them. Uh, it's <clears> annoying <throat> watching Homelander be so incompetent, and it's annoying watching Butcher be so incompetent and, like, confusing in his goals. Uh, or uh, it's mainly the incompetence, I think, for both of them that I get annoyed with. Of course, the yeah. killing the baby and uh, respecting a soup killing a human stuff like it's you you have it all floating around. And it's just frustrating to um have to deal with, and you just feel like they've gone in a completely bonked direction. Most of the yeah. other characters don't have much going on. Uh, Starlight was destroyed with that one scene, but if that scene hadn't existed, I wouldn't have much to say about Starlight anyway. I'd just be like, she's yeah. there. Maeve is there. Um, A-Train has been uh, not only healed, but also completely redeemed. Like, when he gives the files... I don't feel like he has a character the... anymore. Yeah, yeah, he always seems really... He, he seemed like... Plot? Pro just plot pro person? He's a, yeah, he's a prop, I think is how I'd categorize it. He's He's not... He's being ping-ponged by the plot. He doesn't have his own interests, by the looks of things. Nothing that matches what I understood about him in Season 1. Season 1, A-Train's a full-on character. Season 2, he, like, starts out... Like, because we went through it. He's like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm looking to fuck over Starlight, because I hate her because of what she did. Ah, I've got my information. Oh, no, she has leverage over me. Damn it. Oh, she revealed that Vort is doing the things. Oh, this sucks. Oh, I'm booed out of the Seven. Oh, man. Oh, I'll go with the Collective. Oh, sweet, I'm back in the Seven after I managed to kind of betray the Collective. But it turned out to be beneficial for both of them. Like, that plotline is so odd, and it only makes sense once you realize that all the things he's doing are pushing other plotlines into different places. Primarily being cool. the, uh, the super... The, the Nazi information and letting... Starlight keep the compound V and not dobbing her in. All of these things are not necessarily within his character, but of course, <laughs> they help out everyone else's plot lines. He's just Finn of the boys. Yeah. Uh, the deep, as we've been over, is... Uh, I don't think I've ever seen such a bungled attempt at trying to make a, an entire arc in a drama that's all comedy that flatlined. No. Like you, you tried? Question mark. <sighs> isn't it? Isn't it so funny that the deep is stupid and sucks? Like, yeah, no, that's um... hilarious. It's hilarious how every time he tries to help an animal, it dies horribly. That's hilarious. Who else is there? <laughs> uh, Fred, <laughs> Shieb, and Kamiko. I, like I said, there's just not much going on. Yeah. Yeah. Shame. I mean, I guess I like. Frenchy, yeah, I like I like, I like Frenchy. Yeah, I, I don't like, I like him like sort of, except for that though. whole murder bit where they killed that guy. Oh, yeah, um, except for that. Why do we keep saying that? <laughs> I mm -hmm. like him, except for well, I don't. Yeah, that's actually exaggeration. The murder part. Well, I mean, <sighs> I like the boys. That's kind of the thing. I like him, but uh, I don't know. That there's a lot wrong with them. Oh, I honestly think what I like is not even the show's fault anymore. It's more so just my idealized version of what I'm seeing. Right. Like, I'm imagining yeah. a lot of what isn't actually there. I'm just like, oh, this is this really cool show where a bunch of normal people have had enough of superheroes taking advantage of the world, and they want to try and take them down. 
But yeah, that's a really cool thing. It's not not really what I'm getting though. It, it's even worse, I I think, when you know what happened in the comics, and it's it's kind of like uh, um, Game of Thrones a little bit, where like, like you know, like there's good stuff. Just just please use it. Just please use it, and they never do. And yeah. This thing, I think, I feel like when it comes to us not liking the boys, like I feel like we're pretty consistent on the reasons why we do and do not think shows are good. Mm. I would like to think that up to this point, we've been really consistent. Even if you don't agree with our like individual assessments, can you see the system that we're using? Can you see the the criteria that we're trying to apply evenly? I think they do. It's just that uh, some people so. believe the categorization goes from significant or nitpick, and they. Th I think, as we saw, with, at least with the first two episodes, that a lot was getting categorized as nitpicks. Um, I just, I I just want generous. characters to, to behave in, in logical ways. Like, I, I don't want them to, to just suddenly become stupid because the plot needs them to. I don't want them to do things that are opposed to their own interest because plot needs them to. Like, I don't want people teleporting. Like, that's not too much to ask. Um, a few different people have asked about, like, the potential of Season 3. What do we reckon? It's like, well, it could be good. Mm. Um, there's always the chance. And, I, and I'll check them. it out, because I am curious how the events will go down. But I, I, I don't have any yeah. faith in these writers right now. I think there's going to be a competing team uh, called Payback in the comics. Um... There was another team called Payback, and I believe Stormfront was actually the leader of that one. Uh, and they've talked about uh, what's his name, uh, the dude from Supernatural. He's coming back. Uh, he's going to come on the yeah, show. Yeah, he's playing a guy called Soldier Boy, Boy right? Yeah, yeah, who was in in Payback, and so um, that group wasn't really in competition so much or opposed to the Seven or anything, but they did a lot of like screwed up stuff. And the boys went after them. So it seems like the new group that Butcher is going to be in, you know, probably you'll get the other ones eventually. They'll come back after a couple episodes or two. Um, like they're going to go after, they're going to go after Payback as the, the second group. Because I think what's going to happen is, is that there's going to be like, even though they shut down uh, all of the, you know, the compound V, like, it wasn't supposed to go out to everybody. Inevitably, people are going to get it. And I think that's probably what they're going to use. So I, I think the Seven might actually be kind of like back burner material for at least the first half of the season. For, for You know three. what's sad is I think there are so many things they could do for, that they could have a good season three <clears> with. <throat> Imagine, like, Compound V does get mass released in some way, shape, or form in different like purchases or just black market releasing in general. And the seven actually have to start fighting off many different people who are going nuts with the compound and killing people as like a group of heroes that protect whatever it is from people going nuts. As much as it's all marketing and um cynical and stuff, they actually are needed. They people need their strength to be able to fight off you know, just just running a season through with like the team and you have Homelander and Starlight and Maeve having to work together in order to beat these people. Just situations that can make everybody really rethink everything that's happening. <sighs> and that's, you know, that would be one plot line. You could have all kinds going on, but I, I just, I wouldn't be surprised if season three is, like I said, worse than two. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think we're going to see surprised. Ryan in season three. I think they're going to wait a season and then they're just going to age him up. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. And everyone else stays the same. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> we kind of did characters there. The The plot is just in tatters. Uh, mm -hmm. Of what they were trying to pull off with the plot was dumb in and of itself, and then the way that they managed to have it happen uh, just next level in terms of uh, contriving everything. Um... The world's also taken a whole bunch of damage with how the governments work, how everything, everyone gets away with everything, how if you're wanted, it's literally no different from not being wanted. It doesn't make any difference. <sighs> and then, um, 
I don't know, I guess the, the satirical value of this season? It's like, I, I feel like you should just rewatch season one. What about the themes, Fringy? Do you like the themes? I... I mean, what are the themes? <laughs> Like, that we shouldn't put so much trust in no. those who are more powerful than us. That Nazis oh, are hiding behind so every meme. In memes. <laughs> in memes. <laughs> you can I have, just, I... dude. He was a radical memer. Like he, he killed so many people. Well, like guy... tiny man meme jihad. It's happening. Radical memes. It, it, I, I just feel like it because Eric Kripke had the quote that was along the lines of not allowing logic to to get in the way of something cool and i feel no. like that kind of <laughs> philosophy for writing explains this season no. um i don't think you're making any i think i don't think you can reliably make anything good if you're relying on that kind of rationale where hey exploding heads that's kind of cool hey it, it'd be pretty cool if they drove into a whale hey, it'd be pretty cool if this happened and that just being the guiding force behind all of the decisions that are being made. It really feels that way. It feels like they had their list of scenes that they wanted and things that they wanted to do and how they got to each of those things was secondary to those ideas and never sacrificing any of those ideas. A fundamental misunderstanding of... All right. of I would actually how think to tell that... a story. I, I was actually thinking that exact, exact same thing yeah. um, the other day when I was uh, finishing um, one of my review videos and stuff. Like, yeah, it's it's like just a couple of plot pieces, that, uh, set pieces, big action scenes, and they want to get there and they don't care how it gets there. It's very, very JJ kind of. Well, like... it's like Modern Warfare 2, isn't it? Hey, war in America, that's kind of cool. Oh, that's impossible. Yeah, but it's cool, though. <laughs> so let's do it <laughs> um and it's and that's the thing is uh there's only so much cool before the story kind of breaks down yeah at case, what point can just anything happen cool. well yeah that it's it's that whole idea of the less the stakes become understandable and the events make sense the less you can really it's hard to be invested in something where anything can happen seemingly out of nowhere oh and where God. it just so, yeah. so, so the chess referenced it would be pretty cool if we had a zombie polar bear so episode Hell yeah episode seven of season seven i think of game of thrones or episode six uh they're trekking through past the wall they're on their way to uh fuck i don't even care the point is a zombie polar bear attacks them and they have to fight it and you find out from D and D and like these after the episode interviews, they were like, "Would it be really cool if we had a zombie polar bear?" That's that's why Wouldn't they have a zombie really polar cool bear. Wouldn't it be really cool? Seems to just be the <laughs> justification it's, for so many of these things. It is rot. It is like the worst kind of rot. You're just like, ah, oh, I just want stuff to happen. Fuck you. I like that's, it when yeah, stuff that's kind happens. Of the thing is, it's like the coming up with the stuff is the easy part. The the hard part, the writing part, the craft part is figuring out how to make them connect to one another. Ideas are easy. Ideas are really easy. Figuring out how to make them work is hard. I feel like that's just what makes it for a good writer is can you earn each of these payoffs? Can you earn these beats? Can you connect them to one another in a way that just flows and makes sense? Or if it doesn't make sense, it makes sense when you rewatch it. Again, Bly Manor, a much better show. <laughs> Everything follows. The things you don't see coming make sense once you once they play out. That show is going to have massive rewatchability. But Fringy, is it worth it if the show is boring? No, stop. Uh, boring. <laughs> Your arguments um. are boring. <laughs> I don't care. I think I think that's another uh, good good point to bring up too. It's like rewatchability. Like there are so many old shows and uh, movies where you can just watch it again and again. And like even though you know everything that's going to happen, you can probably recite line for line dialogue it's like it's still an enjoyable experience to go back and, and watch it but stuff like this or like you know game of thrones I, like there's just oh like what value no, are you going to get from rewatching any of this like, there's no desire to to watch it at all like and I, I think game of thrones is kind of unique in this where it just 
completely killed the entire <laughs> the entirety of the show. Like yeah. prior to season eight, I used to go back and watch season one, two, and three because those are the best. Mm-hmm. And I would watch them, you know, just whenever. Uh, and ever since season eight, like I've just been so disgusted. Like I don't, I don't even want to watch it because I know how it ends. And I'm like, oh god, I, like John, yeah, do you know a lot of people? Yep. Yeah. I think uh, I definitely think this show is um it's going to age poorly um in part because of the heavy-handed political commentary. Um, I'm calling it now. That's... Season three will be bad, and it will make most of the fans be like, "Nah, this is shit." Now, season two was yeah, okay, it, it... but season three was shit. The West World. <laughs> yeah, it ha- it's West not just West World. Uh, yeah. Stranger Things happened with that as well. Season two was actually bad, but everyone was like, "Nah, season three was the first bad one." It's like, no, you guys. Feel like it's just... When I think it's that when it's first bad, it strips a bit of the veneer off, but you can put up with it, and then you reset, and your emotions aren't as fully invested, and so now you're gonna see that shit straight away. Um, and it, it's just di- different people take different amounts of time, but like I, I just don't like the idea that we'll in future be looking back like, oh, the boys season two was 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 fine, it was okay. It's like I don't know how season three happened. It's like it, it, the signs were all there. <laughs> like, it's all... <laughs> Well, I mean, as as has been highlighted, season one is not as good as people think it is. Um, it's really yeah. floated by its concept, and season two is uh is now just proper bad. Yeah, this they some, know some that good they're shit. being carried. There's some good shit in season one. There's also a lot of yep. tism. Uh, yeah. But season two, there's hardly any good shit. It's mostly tism. Uh, if you've tism. noticed, I... it was either tism um, or just delays uh, if you if you know what i mean like it was scenes where we were just like kind of like uh, yeah yeah come on come on come on come on come on like there's nothing to complain about but there's also nothing to really praise yeah, yeah like I, we I, skip yeah, all the yeah, deep yeah. stuff yeah we just skip it yeah the deep uh, uh that's a lot of screen time yeah like pr- possibly an hour like one eighth of the show and it's just gibberish i feel i feel like uh I, d- I don't know what it is, but I feel like, um, I mentioned it earlier, shows like NCIS and Bones are probably, like, a lot better than many of the shows that are heralded as good now, because I think that a lot of these get credit for a really cool concept, good production values, and being serialized. I think that that gives shows more credit than they deserve. It's like, well, it looks really good, it sounds really good, and the acting's good, but the script is dire. But it's hard to, I, I don't know if it's because it's like hard to pinpoint or if it's just um that the veneer really covers up the the rot. But yeah, it's it's the writing is atrocious, and it all comes down to the writing at the end of the day. I don't think there is such a thing as a good story with bad writing. I don't see how that's possible. The writing is the story fundamentally, and here it's. Yeah, you'd uh, you'd call it holistic, crap. right? Like it's it's all all of the pieces make up the part. It it is they are inseparable. Yeah, uh, yes. Um, but I guess it's the whole idea that writing comes first all the time in any story, because a story always begins with an idea that you write down on a piece of paper. <laughs> like that's that is the fundamental component of it, and I feel like it's just yeah, now the writing. If you nail the writing, you can, at you'll all, you know, barring it's impossible to see what's going on and the audio is so loud that it blows out your eardrums. <laughs> like, you know, if the writing's good, your story's probably going to be good. Um, barring, like, massively terrible acting or cinematography or anything like that. You know, at Mola, Kripke confirms Stormfront is live. The show confirms it. They say that she's Well, like... yeah, the show said she's yeah. in captivity. Like I said, Robo, Robo still in front. Um, someone said it was it was uh, Jeff's fault that Fat Neil was radicalized after calling him Fat Neil so many times. I think that explains <laughs> it. <laughs> but they played Dungeons and Dragons, and he was happy. True. They've ignored the arc. They've betrayed Fat Neil. <laughs> His character has been assassinated. Um. So, uh, yeah, I figure. Um. Uh, what time are we at? Yeah. So normally, I, 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 I've not got enough time to be able to, it would be futile to be able to start and basically stop Super Chats relatively su- straight after, so Rags and I will have to add them 
We will take. I didn't realize it would take ten hours. That's. I know. I say that every time. It's. It's. I know. <laughs> but Rags and I always catch up. We will. Um, apologies to those who sent in their messages. Like hoping to see them addressed today. That just they will be. Uh, I think. I'm not sure how our days are looking, but I, we should be able to fit either um, a Super Chat catch-up or um, maybe Resident Evil 5. We can do part two of that while reading out the Super Chats from this stream. That wouldn't um, be a bad idea. I think that could be something that could work. But before we do any kind of ending, um, I suppose uh, thank you so much. Uh, blame the controller for being with us for 10 hours and being a really engaged and critical guest, you added a whole bunch to this stream. Thank you so very much. Mm -hmm. well, no problem. Thank you. Um, I don't mean to shit on Fringy and uh, and, and and metal or anything. <laughs> you, you guys are great too. <laughs> it's just you're always great. So shut up. Yeah. Oh. Anything. Fuck you. Wow, metal. Go watch wrestling. Soon an hour. I don't know why I'm still awake. <laughs> to watch <laughs> wrestling, you have to know who pins the other person. Yeah. Uh, so, well, I mean, a natural segue would have been, so, Blame, what do you do on your channel, and why should people go and subscribe to it right now? Okay, so, I actually, uh, I have two channels, my main one is my gaming channel, uh, you don't have to worry about that one. Uh, the second one is, uh, called Clipcoin, and there's a link in the description. Um, I just do reviews, it's like, uh, I do it more for fun than anything, um, because uh, you know the gaming channel is is where I earn my pay, but um, it's just the thing is is like back when Game of Thrones was in like season three or season four, I wanted to be able to talk about like the shows that I liked and and stuff that I didn't like, and I just never got around to making it. Like I couldn't put any of those videos on my gaming channel. So finally, like just recently, I finally broke down and said, all right, I'm just going to make make a, a review channel. And so I've got a bunch of stuff on there. The Boys, um, Lovecraft Country, which is awful. Um, Cursed, which is oh, also it, awful. Um, Lovecraft Country, was, is J.J. Abrams made that, right? Or he produced yeah, it? Yeah, him and Jordan Peele. Uh, him and Jordan Peele. How does, is it? Is it really bad? Is it? Is it? Oh, it's awful. It is so. Oh God, every every if you're every single person in the universe that's white is like a card carrying member. Like oh. it's awful. Um. Also, they don't Why, seem to. Did you understand. find out about the meetings we have? Uh, apparently, I think we let it loose. Yeah. Whoops. Damn, the other shit, the other thing is is like they fundamentally don't understand what Lovecraft and cosmic horror is. It's about the futility of humans like basically we are nothing compared to the universe right like we exist as just ants scrambling around in an uncaring universe and that's not what like lovecraft country does like basically they wanted to make a show it's full of contrivance it's full of plot convenience and just some of the dumbest stuff ever um and they they make it like a hopeful show and it's like, hold on, hold on. I don't think you quite understand what cosmic horror is. Um, it, like where the good guys keep winning and it's like, no, no, that's not how it works. And it's just, it's, it's ridiculous and it's full of um, massively full of woke nonsense, like just constantly packing it in every single episode. When I saw that, so, uh, Cthulhu was in the trailer chasing someone. I was like, ah, uh, nah, nah. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, See, that's a that's like super bait and switch because at the very, very beginning of the first episode, they have a dream sequence where the main character is dreaming about like Cthulhu and aliens and all sorts of stuff, and then he wakes up and you never see any of that again. Oh, like. Wow. Um, well, I guess, uh, how does one make a show about Lovecraftian mythos? I feel like it would just be, hey, there's Cthulhu, game over. This, <laughs> this, dude, there is so many ways to approach it. I'm tired of everyone resorting to, oh, there's a bunch of creatures, you gotta shoot them. They all look like tentacle monsters, squid things. That's no. basically what they do. The, there is, there's so much to Lovecraft stories that go beyond, like, it shouldn't be that, like, Amnesia does a better job of being Lovecraftian than, like, a shit ton of Lovecraftian games. And well, Amnesia's, uh, like, trying to do other things. 
I think the because uh, I just I went to as I always like to do just skim in Wikipedia. So Lovecraft Country isn't like based on. So it's based on a book that's based on like Lovecraft, but it's not. I don't. I'm getting from this description. It's not meant to be about Lovecraft, but it's about like racism in America during like Jim Crow era. Like that's what the it's, topic is. It's using the name Lovecraft to trick people into thinking that it's Lovecraft. Like that is there well, is, is it absolutely... the Lovecraft mythos. I guess is that so like, they is that what they, they do use? use they do use parts of it like little aspects of the Lovecraft mythos, but they are like. They're 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 few and far between. Um, like they do. There's there's a type of monster. I forget what it's called. They they do put that in one of the episodes, and they do have some other stuff. But like it's like okay. They they called it Lovecraft Country. Like the book is called Lovecraft Country because if he had called it anything else, no one would have bought it. And the reason why it's called the show is called Lovecraft Country is because if you had called it something else, nobody would have watched it. Like people. You get butts in seats, like people are, are showing up for day one because the word Lovecraft is in the title and people think that it's going to be a certain thing. And it's just not like it's it's so massively bait and switch. And it's just it's just an unbelievably I, yeah. awful show. Like it's like it's awful. I get the, and I you, get the impression that all right, go ahead. I was just going to say, so you've got reviews of uh, all the episodes on your channel, I'm assuming? Yeah, most of them. Um, I think the final episode is coming out tomorrow. I'm like a couple behind, but I, I'm trying to get those. But uh, I do. Uh, so I've got that. Uh, Enola Holmes is actually taking off right now. There's getting some traction on it. I don't know why. But, I've heard uh, bad things about that movie. <laughs> oh, it's a terrible movie. It's awful. It's absolutely awful. Um, basically, Sherlock is an idiot and Enola is better in every way. So no, um, that's like, funny because both of those are like you've taken public then public domain and then just done something entirely <laughs> different with yeah. them that partially shits on the original material. Like, well, it's because, I mean it's 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 a it's a trend. They you know they they can't come up with something original. They have to piggyback on on the creations of of those that came before, and they just you know twist it with their little woke thing and 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 they call it a day and it's oh god like enola holmes is just awful also as well like she spends most of the time talking to the audience like breaking the fourth wall and it's just exposition dump after exposition dump it is so oh it's awful do you think but it's anyways, worse than it's, it's movies of us yeah. watching it and riffing on i mean it? you can watch it and rip on it if you want it, well um, he's asking like do you think it sort of lends itself to that or or is it something of a boring thing or oh no no, no. you can rip it apart you absolutely can rip it mm. apart hmm. um yeah, hmm. and hmm. if you want to see it get ripped apart you can go over to my channel right now because there's a 38 minute video do it. um well uh, uh henry cavill actually does a pretty good job as sherlock holmes i mean he's too muscular for the part but um, otherwise, he does a good job, except when they're like shitting on him. Like he's, uh, he's got a lot of stock right now, just with everybody. I'd say, like everybody likes him. Likes him. Yeah. Good actor. Well, yeah, I think besides good, yeah. being a good actor, he also has a genuine love for the fans wholesome, and respect man. for the fans. He's a whole. He seems dude. like a good guy. Builds computers. Like you know that that's a good man right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's <computer>. like us. <laughs> Name a bad person who ever used the computer. Didn't think so exactly um, <laughs> he's got range man like i feel like he's actually got range the number of roles he's played and how like disparate they actually are it's pretty impressive yeah. did you did you hear him talking about witcher 2 he sounded uh, i have the game no the move uh the show he sounds witcher season 2 he sounds okay. so depressed i heard it from um it was on a nerd rotic live stream where uh, he was like they were asking him about stuff, and basically he is saying that th he is not the focal, the main character in season two. Like he's but being sidelined. It doesn't matter. <laughs> he's being sidelined, and and when you listen to him, like you can hear, like he's so professional about it because you can tell that he's like he's he's both angry and heartbroken at the same time. You can you can hear it in his voice and the and the, and the the words that he's using, and 
like he he's like i'm gonna do whatever they ask me to do because i you know i love the show and i want to do my part and i want to help but i'm being put on the sideline how do they put the witcher on the sidelines of the witcher (laughs) dude they put in the mandalorian on the sidelines of mandalorian so you know why the fuck not yeah but he shit (laughs) yeah the idea that mandalore Mandalorian is not going to be in Mandalorian going forward. <laughs> Potentially, well, what's, what's yeah? What's his face? Almost got almost got fired for throwing a fit. Pedro Pascal. Yeah, I mean they could well because he they can recast yeah. him, right? They just need someone who can do it a good impersonation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and underneath under the after the helmet effects, like I bet a lot of people qualify. Yeah, well we've seen his face, so yeah. Well, he just never take the helmet off again. I he suppose. has never take the helmet off. You know, like they should have always. They done. should have never taken it yeah. off yeah. in the first place. Uh, Fringy, what are you up to? Tell people about it. Um. So, what? Well, I, I, oh, do I want to keep that a secret? Um, I'm working on something. Hopefully, it'll be well. I have how many weeks? I've got two weeks to finish it. Hopefully, I'll have something. But uh. Yeah, other than that, just chipping away at some stuff. But uh, next thing you can hopefully expect in a couple of weeks on my channel. Excellent. And the new video that I made. Uh, yeah, watch it. Character development is overrated. Also, character development refers to both depth and change. All right? <laughs> I'm sick of trying to explain that one over and over again. Character development can mean both. If you had to explain it, your video must change. be shit. Yeah, I... Uh... <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> damn it. I wasn't paying it up. But my brain isn't working properly after 10 hours. That's all yeah, right. Talking about this great Boy. show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It does things to you. But mm-hmm. yeah, go check it out. Metal, what are you up to, you sleepytism? Wumbo! I'm going to uh, put, yeah, put that. Uh, the usual. Uh, Struman on the Twitch uh, playing the Gorms. Um, I'm, I'm planning to replay all the God of War soon. No, you're so, not. You plan on playing Rebirth soon. Yeah, but after. Yeah. <laughs> after I'm talking after Spooktober. Like Fine. The, the, Spooktober is pretty much all booked. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, your yeah, channel link is in the description and your Twitch link. Oh, that's not a, why isn't it? Why isn't it a link? What have you done? What have you. I, I don't know. What's wrong with that? I mean, it's both yeah. in the description. There, there's my my the, the YouTube, which is pretty much the archive channel. There's all the Twitch streams on there as well. Normally, right the day after, unless I forget, then maybe a day later, deal with it. And <laughs> yeah, uh, he's uh, very that, tired, but he does lots of gaming streams and he talks to his audience. So that's a yeah. neat bonus. And the link works read. now. Go have fun, okay? Subscribe to all the people who have. Who've been here today? Um, as for what's going on, the uh, Fappy stuff. Uh, I, um, in relation to Bly Manor, I'm a little, little interested in getting the the cut of all of us watching it together sorted and the discussions we have in a, a, about it. I'm about, I'm making my way through the Hill House one. It's going to be an experiment for the both shows. We're going to pop these videos out. They're not going to be like anything you've seen on Efap before, really. They're kind of, kind of weird. And depending on how everyone finds them to be, if they're like, oof, don't make these again, these are a little oof. Or if you're like, hey, these were neat, maybe do this with more uh, stuff that's good. Guys, oh, I'm a little cons- so I just saw something on Twitter, they're making another Die Hard? Uh, I they made like six. I think, I think they're shit. making another Die Hard. There's a trailer where it's got Bruce Willis, yeah, apparently, uh-huh. 10, 18, 20. Wait, that's- that's today! <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wow. Uh, please stop doing Die Hard movies! <laughs> like, I just want you to leave him alone! <laughs> You're never leaving him alone. <laughs> there um, were three good ones, and one decent one, and then one chip one. It's, it's over, leave it. So, those things will be coming, and hopefully that will be the coverage of Blind Manor, rather than us doing some kind of this thing, but with a good... I don't know how this quarter, kind of format we did today would work with a good show. That'd be weird, I think. Mm-hmm. We'd have to, like really remember all of the connecting pieces to be able to point out pieces of continuity. I don't know. Like, But, like I said, a video for Hill House and a video for Blind Manor will be happening. Yeah, sorry about the diehard news there, everyone. Everyone's very upset. Um, <laughs> uh, 
And of course, the the video I want to chip away at now, my my Last of Us Two, what is odd pause, is uh, Odd the Boys season two because there's so much wrong with this stupid show. Um, and doing this EFAB would have helped because it's discussed right through it, as well as seeing defenses for things in chat are always useful. So um, that that's about that. And and Rags, I believe you're coming along with the Mando video, right? Yeah, it's coming along pretty well. I've been putting in some good progress into it, and um. It's trucking along. Mm -hmm. And Sweet. we've got one or two or three or four or five, depending on how everything goes out, uh, Halloween EFAP movies. I have a strong <laughs> feeling that the first one will come out after the Spooktober is over, <laughs> because that's just how it works. Um, yes. And we're planning on playing the second half of Resident Evil 5, and on Halloween itself, we're planning an EFAP and a game stream with that 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 weird, what's it called? Something Chronicles? Anthology of Chronicles? The, the uh, Dark uh, thingies. Dark pictures, yeah. And yes, funnily enough, it is a five-man game, technically. You can split it between any amounts, mm. and so we might try and get five people for it. Mm. Uh, just to shake it up as, a, Ooh, as yeah. a big old fun event. Where It'll be funny if one of the five like dies really early and just has to sit there for the whole game. Like, yeah. <laughs> Though that's not a lot worse than pressing a button every once in a while. So. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Like uh, the catch up for episode one hundred three will is still we're gonna just we just need to find a slot for it as well as um, the catch up for this episode. Uh, we haven't seen any of the boys. Should I skip the show if season two is garbage? Ugh. I mean, yeah, because season one ain't that good either. Like, I don't know if I would say it is fun enough to see season one and then fuck it. I guess you can watch season two, but you're not going to be... Well, you might not be happy. Some people liked it. I don't know. I it guess, might work yeah, out for but, you. Uh, anything that you liked about the first season, the second season is just going to piss you off anyway. So. Yep. But that's about... Watch Blind Manor instead. Well, yeah. <laughs> everyone keeps saying it's boring. There's nothing we can... <laughs> Yes, go I mean, watch it. It's boring. I'm sorry that your tiny mind can't engage <gasps> with the incredible content. Wow. So, yeah, at me. I don't fucking care. Right, just, that shit's gold. Everyone's gonna at you in a second. Wait for it. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Do there, it. There was an article Come that I uh, saw with Jay that said, it was either Jay or Fringy, that, uh, you know the, the black and white episode ranks? Yeah. They said that one should be removed. It's a waste of time. What? Wait, who said that? It was what? in an article. I can't, I must have seen it with Jay because Friggy sounds surprised. No. So, yeah. They, they were like, the whole show. No, that's show... my favorite one. Yeah, I know. That's why I figured you'd find that funny. <laughs> wow. I, oh. I'm so happy we got that. Yeah. There you go, chat. Go and watch The Tick rather than The Boys. You'll enjoy it more. And there's two seasons, so it's equivalent, I guess. Um,. And then watch Blind Man, and don't get bored. <laughs> Find a way. Uh, Can yeah, I ask before, before you head out, um, I had one of your old videos recommended, and I just wanted to know why you don't do the hand-drawn face anymore. <laughs> um, I've always, if ever I make another one in the Dissection series, I'll bring them back. I'll have an artist make them all better, I swear. I just <laughs> haven't made that series again. So, Give it time. Hey, maybe if Amnesia Rebirth is really good or really bad, I'll pause my boys video to make a video on that. <laughs> I'm sure everyone will be happy to hear it. It's gonna be great. Um, yeah, there's a lot of tick shows. The one I'm referring to specifically is the one with Peter Saranofowitz. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. It's really good. Um, yeah, anything else anybody want to say before we give it the old hop out of roo No. Oh, I'm, good. I, I'm glad everyone um a lot of people stuck through this one i'm glad that people were able to listen to us talk about this show for 10 hours it it's nice to hear that people would actually do that um yeah, just don't call them nitpicks <laughs> <laughs> he calls, <laughs> calls some of them nitpicks some of them i i, I some even labeled them, yeah, sure, yeah, some but, are nitpicks, yeah. but not all of them most yeah. of them were not most of them were kind of big <laughs> um it's all set by others okay yeah, thank you all so much for hanging out, for watching, and for the, the very kind donations. We will get to them, like I said, and, um, well, I, I hope you had some fun. See you next time, whenever that may be. Good night. Bye-bye, everybody. Yeah. Good morning. No. Get it, because...